Now, what do you got? I think I can prove to a judge that both of these men had the men's rea. <gasps> what the hell is a men's rea? It's a uh, legal term the lawyers use. It just means the intention to commit a crime. Okay, come on, let's go. Men's rea. Put the cuffs on him. How could we have gotten men's rea? We take blood? Can you do it without taking blood? We, we both use condoms. How is this possible? I want to see a doctor. Can I have an independent blood test? The money. I feel sick. What are you doing? Men's rea. Oh, oh, my God. No. He's the best lawyer in Miami. Hey, everybody. We're in Florida today. It is me, Legal Vices. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? Well, regardless of where you are, what time it is, what you're doing, who you're doing it with, how good it feels. Um, hey, I'm here. It's a holiday here in Korea. It's great. Like there, There's a massive convergence of holidays throughout the world. We've got Memorial Day in the U.S. Korea is, uh, this is the Buddha's birthday holiday. And then in England, in the U.K., they have this thing just called the End of May Bank Holiday. So congrats to you guys for getting a random End of May Bank Holiday. Cheers to you, but uh, you're probably all asleep because it's ass early there. Uh, so, Ira, what are we doing? There's a new trial in town that I was avoiding. Well, I didn't know about, to be honest. I didn't know about it. Uh, then I was kind of avoiding it. And then Flux, of House of Flux, H-O-U-S-E-O-F-F-L-U-X-X, House of Flux. Go to, make sure you go there. She starts uh, sending me stuff on Twitter in the middle of the night. Watch this. Watch this. So I, I started watching this cross-examination and thought this is... One of the strangest cross-examinations I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, so I thought, hey, let's, uh, let's watch it. So we watched the, watched the cross-examination and I thought, all right, let's do it. So uh, that's how we got here today. We're gonna, we're, it's day three of the trial. Um, we're going we're gonna to go through it. We're going to take it as we can. We're going to do it as we can. The trial will likely finish before we get to the finish, but we're going to do our best to keep, keep us close to the actual trial schedule as possible but uh, today because it's a holiday i can marathon the mess out of this thing so that's what we're doing we're gonna we're gonna marathon this until i just decide i don't want to be here anymore and because it's her fault we're doing this we're gonna bring up flux what's up flux what's up guys how's it going what's up flux. mocha dick poon xoxo fully adjustable blow for freedom what does shit mean that's mm. the newest part, and it's from <laughs> this one. All right. Well, give give YouTube a little bit of time before you start dropping. Oh his yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, My bad. Now, just in case they're watching, um, I do not I do not glorify the consumption of alcohol on this channel because that violates policies. I'm telling children what not to do. Don't do this. Do not make this is today's cocktail to stay away from. Kids, mm -hmm. whatever you do, don't do this. This is Coke. Ooh. You pour a ton of rum into your Coke. Cooper Libre. I hate the I hate these like speed trap things mm. that slow down the pour. There you <laughs> have a rum and coke. But that's not the you know that's kind of dumb. That's kind of lame. Anybody can make a rum and coke, but what do you do? What happens if you take some lime wedges? These are frozen lime. I love my frozen lime wedges. You take your frozen lime wedges, you just drop them in there and boom, it's now a Cuba Libre. It's a Cuba Libre because you dropped some lime in it. The story there is sometime in the early 1900s, there was a a, a US Navy captain that was stationed in, in or around Havana. And he got a drink from someone. They brought him his rum. They poured some Coke in it. They squeezed a little bit of lemon juice into it. And he said, por Cuba Libre. And uh, then a cocktail was born. So there you go. Three drinks for the price of one. Cuba Libre. That used to be my favorite drink before I just went to straight up vodka. <laughs> Good to see you going upward with your quality of your drinks. Um, you know? Yeah, so there you go. Uh, well, now, Havana Club. Where, where do we get this? Havana Club for the win. Where'd that go? Ah, from Silent Tips. Not any Havana Club. You need the uh, Havana Club Maestro Selección. Ah, the Maestro Selección is, is just the most amazing age dark rum ever on the history of the planet. Anyway, um, all right, before we get into this case, real quickly, we've got the first Super Chat of the day, bringing us $2 closer to the Doggo Cam, which may be joining us during the middle of this trial. We don't know. It's Indigo Luna 7 saying, hey, Jeff, kiss, kiss, kiss. Hey, Luna. You are going to need a lot of alcohol for this trial. It's bad. <laughs> it's good. Bad. Now, it's have Maury. you watched the whole 
or just that part that you said? No, me? I've been I've been keeping up with it and it gets worse. It gets worse. Okay. Well, see, I know nothing about this. I don't know anything about this trial. I know nothing, nothing, nothing about it other than that one part of the cross-examination that you sent. And in a nutshell, but, you know, they well, effed you know, around and found well, out. Well, no, let's, let's, you know, we, no, no spoilers. We got to go through this. Uh, what the deal is, the only thing I can tell you is the dog is, is, is moving around and scratching the floor. So that's dog, that's dog maneuvering noises there that we, we, we hear. It's just 30 seconds of activity for the day, Yoda. Uh, but our, our defendant, Travis Rudolph, was apparently an ex-NFL football player. Uh, that really doesn't have any bearing on anything. Uh, just that's just what they're saying. You know, he's an ex NFL football player. Uh, he's been charged with one count of murder, three counts of attempted murder. I don't know why. I just know uh, that that's what the charges are. Well, I know why because he shot at and shot some people. Uh, but what we're going to do is really quickly just going to look at the arrest report, and then we're going to jump straight into the trial, knowing nothing about it. This is. This is a good chance for me to be as impartial a juror as possible. Uh, so let's uh, let's find out what happened here, shall we? Let's uh, do this. All right. Have you read the re Have you read the re re arrest report? Have you read the arrest report? No, I actually uh, just went into the trial uh, in opening statements and was like, wow. eh, "What's this?" And then saw the first witness and was like, "No, no." All right. Well, let's see. We have to. Oh, go away. We must turn off. There we go. This is the Travis. I, th I think I actually downloaded it already. We may be able to get a better, a better copy of it here. Hang on. Let's see if I, let's see if I did. I planned on downloading it, but I can't remember if I did or not. I did. No, did I? I did not because that oh. would have made sense. Um, all right. So anyway, uh, let's see. Reject all. I reject everything. But this is basically the arrest report for uh, Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. The arrest was 2021, April 7th. And it was Travis Deontay James Rudolph is our, is our defendant. First degree murder firearm. Attempted first degree murder, murder by firearm three counts. So there we go. Uh, are you reading a preview? Mardar. Hang on, let's. I I I have a subscription. What are you doing? Uh -huh. How rude! Are you logging in here? Uh, all right, we're back. <laughs> Boop. There we go. All righty. So this is our, our short report here on Wednesday, April 7th, 2021 at approximately 0013 hours. So it is 1213 a.m. And then when the West Palm Beach Police Department and West Palm Beach Fire Rescue responded to the area of 40th Street and Broadway Avenue in West Palm Beach, Florida, 33407 in reference to a shooting victim in a vehicle. Simultaneously, deputies respond to the area of 586 North Redwood Drive, Lake Park, Florida, in reference to another male suffering from gunshot wounds, which was later found to be related to the shooting victim at the 40th Street and Broadway Avenue. Upon arrival at 40th Street and Broadway Avenue in West Palm Beach, West Palm Beach police officers found a black male later identified via FCIC, NCIC as somebody unresponsive in the front. That would be the deceased person, I guess, if he's unresponsive in the front passenger seat of a black Cadillac XTS bearing Florida tag. Uh, da, 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 suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. So-and-so was pronounced deceased by West Palm Beach Fire and Rescue at 0026 hours simultaneously. The shooting victim found near 586 North Redwood was identified via FCIC and CIC as somebody and was transported to St. Mary's Medical Center in critical but stable condition. At the time of officers' arrival at 40th Street and Broadway Avenue, two additional occupants of the vehicle were still on scene, driver, so-and-so, and rear passenger, somebody else. In speaking with this person, he said that earlier this evening, he, he was spending time with the decedent, whom he referred to as somebody, comma, somebody, and somebody at somebody resident. When he was contacted by Redacted, who told him that she had been in an altercation with her boyfriend, we are going to be talking, we're going to be hearing the testimony of Ms. Redacted uh, later on. Uh, but yeah, so she, 
He was confronted by Ms. Redacted, who told him that she had been in an altercation with her boyfriend, whom Redacted identified as Travis Rudolph, who was born in 1990. Dude is one year older than my son. Jeez. Ugh. Wow, he's younger than me. Ouch. So you, you can see we've got some redactions people... going here. Oh, mm. Sorry, go ahead. I was You're just going to say, I remember when people weren't younger than me, <laughs> like celebrities and stuff, and now they're all younger than me. <laughs> Wait till the doctors start getting younger than you. That's kind of creepy. Oh, God. Uh, Redacted said that he has known Rudolph for approximately one year and has been to his residence before. Redacted said that after speaking with Redacted, he redacted, redacted, and Redacted drove to Re Rudolph's residence in Redacted Mother's vehicle with the intent of speaking with Rudolph. He said that no one in his vehicle was armed. Redacted said that upon arrival at Rudolph's residence, Redacted, all occupants of the vehicle exited the vehicle and knocked on Rudolph's door. So four people get out of the vehicle and knock on Rudolph's door, at which time Rudolph's somebody answered the door. He said that he asked to speak with Rudolph, and Rudolph's sub somebody else exited the residence along with Rudolph's somebody. And Rudolph, whom somebody was immediately combative, whom so-and-so -so said was immediately combative and confrontational, he said that Rudolph and Rudolph's somebody started fighting with all occupants of the vehicle. As their somebody tried to stop them from fighting, Somebody said that after fighting for several minutes, he told the other occupants to go back to the vehicle so that they could leave, at which time he saw Rudolph re-enter his residence while his somebody and somebody else remained outside. Uh, somebody said he entered the driver's side of his vehicle, somebody entered the front passenger side of the vehicle, and he was under the impression that the other two had entered the rear passenger's side of the vehicle. Uh, and then somebody said that he turned around before driving away, at which time he saw Rudolph running behind them, holding an unknown firearm. He said that he only saw Rudolph holding a firearm, and shortly thereafter, he saw Rudolph shooting at the occupants of his vehicle. Somebody said that he quickly started driving, uh, that he quickly fled the area, and shortly after the gunshots began, uh, he, he, somebody said he was hit. So somebody else started driving toward the hospital at a fast rate of speed. As they fled, he realized that somebody was not in the vehicle. Somebody else said that by the time he reached 40th Street and Broadway Avenue, his vehicle ceased operating due to the damage it sustained as he was trying to flee the area. And by that time, so-and-so was slumped over and unresponsive. He said that at that time he called 911. Somebody else's corro statement corroborated somebody else. However, he said that he had never met Rudolph in person prior to tonight and only knew him via social media. So why? What, what, where did all this start? We're going to find out, I think. Detectives spoke with so-and-so at the St. Mary's Medical Center who corroborated the accounts given by both other people. While somebody identified somebody else arrived and told detectives she had been in a physical alt, I guess that would be the girlfriend, arrived and told detectives that she had been in a physical alteration with Rudolph earlier this evening and had told her friend, I guess, who, who told her that he was going to go to Rudolph's house to speak with him. She said that she was not present at the time of the shooting. Okay, so she calls and says, I got to find my boyfriend. And apparently he, he, maybe there may have been some physical abuse. I don't know. It just said a physical altercation. And friend says, all right, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to talk to him. So he brought three, of, brought three of his friends over there, I guess. She said that she was not. So they're only going there to talk to him, I guess. Upon arrival to somewhere, deputies had already made contact with the residents and had conducted a safety sweep of the residents, at which time deputies noted that there were multiple video surveillance cameras affixed to the structure and a monitoring system was observed inside the residence. Upon attempting to speak with Travis Rudolph, he immediately invoked his right to counsel. Good man. Mm -hmm. And further questioning was not attempted. Smart guy. Very Upon smart. attempting to speak with somebody and some and there's somebody else, somebody both invoked their right to counsel. Some good for them. <laughs> While speaking to somebody else, she spontaneously uttered that the situation was self-defense. Okay, so somebody has brought up the issue of self-defense. Interesting. Uh, detectives were able to speak with a cooperating independent witness who told detectives that earlier this evening, he witnessed Tra Travis Rudolph, whom he knows as the football player, all caps, in a physical alteration with his girlfriend, I guess, in the front yard of Rudolph's residence. He said that within hours of seeing this, he saw multiple people to include somebody and somebody else in a physical altercation in the front yard. He confirmed that somebody was trying to stop the altercation. The cooperating witness told detectives that he then saw all participants run southbound on North Redwood Drive and then heard numerous gunshots. 
He said that he saw Travis Rudolph return to his residence from the area of the shooting holding a rifle. He said that he then saw somebody return to the residence, but he did not see somebody holding a gun. Based upon the above, probable cause exists to charge Travis Rudolph with one count of first-degree murder with a firearm and three counts of attempted first-degree murder with a firearm. That is all. Now everybody knows exactly what I know about this case. If everything was as simple as the police reports hmm. and the affidavits. <laughs> Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens on trial because we're going to get into the trial. Uh, Mandy, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm a Mandy, fortune uh, teller. It doesn't go well. <laughs> Ma Mandy says, that looks like a pant crapper drink, Jeff. I have no idea what that means. I Maybe because like the sugar know. content? There's no sugar content really in it other than... Because it's Coke Zero and uh, you know rum, all the all the sugar has been distilled out of it. Uh, so anywho, whatever. Don't know what that means, but thank you so much for the two dollars, <laughs> man. Tried. It's uh, one of the most basic classic cocktails you will ever have. So I'm not sure what that means, but thanks. <laughs> and Nicholas Starov says, guys, if you happen to stumble upon money, don't go for the first chick that shows interest because the ex girlfriend in this trial is that chick. Yep. Well, we'll We'll have to we'll have to see how all of this pans out because I'm curious. But Indigo Luna, who has been a member for one month of the Clean and Sober Crew, says because I was your first and can be your last if you're nasty. Wrong. <laughs> well, today is off to an interesting start, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> oh. All right. So, uh, yeah, how, Flux, how are you still awake? Asks Valhalla. That's the question because this is an awesome thing that I invited her to stay up past her bedtime for. Yes, and. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm, I got a cold. It's like summertime and I got a cold. Mm. Oh, a lady at work got a cold and then like gave it to me, I guess. And so I'm like, oh, I feel like death, but I popped a whole bunch of Advil and stuff. So I'm feeling good. I did the old soldier trick. Uh, Val reminded me ibuprofen or ibuprofen. I can't say that. Ibuprofen. There we go. And water. Wait. Here is everything. So just, so just like take some aspirin and drink a glass of water. Yep. It'll it it literally is the army Wait. cure for everything. Oh, oh yeah. Meniscus. Okay, yeah. 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 Just it'll ibuprofen. Solve. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see if it can uh, cure this. Because, again, I have no idea about this trial. I know nothing about it. I just know the cross-examination of the girlfriend was really weird. Um, mm. But, again, remember the charges here are murder, first-degree murder, three accounts of, a, of attempted first-degree murder. Um, and, as always, although we can form our own personal opinions based on the evidence we hear as we go along, we should be looking at this from a legal perspective. Ha we have to assume... We must assume, regardless of what we think, from a legal perspective, we must assume that the prosecutor got this wrong. We have to presume that he didn't do this. He is falsely accused of this crime. And we have to determine if the prosecution proves beyond a reasonable doubt that they actually did not screw this up and they got the right guy with the right charges. So that's the opening... Keep an open mind, but you can also have your opinions. But when you ha balance your opinions against what have they proven, and unless you hear it here in court, it is not a fact and it didn't happen. Because the jurors only get to hear what they hear in court. So but bearing those things in mind, let's, uh, let's see how it goes, shall we, Flux? Are you down for this? All I'm right. ready. This will be like, I think, um, the second or third time I'm going through it now. Wow. It just gets worse. Like, at first, I started taking notes because I'm like, I got to take notes. Mm -hmm. uh, then I stopped because it just became hilarious quotes. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not wasting my paper with these terrible quotes. Okay, well... Let's see if those quotes equate to murder, shall we? 
this is our prosecutor, I suppose, because he's up there first. And I heard the, I, I fast forwarded through the jury instructions. Unfortunately, this is not one of these trials where we get to put it at uh, speed because I listened to the first two minutes and this guy talks really fast. I will say this though. Um, this judge likes to take a 10 minute break every 10 minutes for every 10 minute sidebar <laughs> for every 30 seconds that there's another 10 minute sidebar. All right. Well, yeah. let's uh, <laughs> let's dive into this and see see where the trial of Travis Rudolph leads us. Oh, and by the way, audio is shit because it's court. No, it's yes. actually really, really good audio when they act uh, when they use the mics. It's just they rarely use the mics. Well, when they the do first the two minutes break. I heard suck. So. Oh well, he has a weird like handshake. With well, the now mic. just don't tell us oh, anything. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> We're just not. Go. We don't know the future. You don't know what happens. I don't know what <laughs> happened. Don't tell us what happens. <laughs> Only talk about the past or the present. <laughs> All right. All right. Kind of looks like Prince William. Uh, anyway. I can't remember what MLS law chat. Um referred to him as i think it was a young larry david maybe well i don't know uh i only care about my chat because we think he's prince william uh <laughs> at least that's what hey, i'm definitely about. here we go i see that and remember excuse me to stay near a microphone if you need a handheld that's fine too okay all right so, so that's good the judge will tells him to will you provide uh mr cloud God, he just gives me such creep please. factor i can't with the comb overs so the judge has told him to use the microphone so like maybe that's why it's a good thing yeah. oh he he says it frequently all right well, don't, now we don't know that yet sorry, don't sorry. talk about the future flux <laughs> you may begin yes sir opposing counsel your honor this might be a problem for me a German poet back during the French Revolution once said that murder begins when Oh, there's an objection already. Overruled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I think. Start again. I guess he was objecting to the word murder. Back in the French Revolution once said that murder begins when self defense ends. Good quote. Murder begins. I just wish he had the upper body strength to hold the mic up a little higher. Now that was a simple sentence said many, many years ago, but that simple sentence perfectly encapsulates why this defendant right there, Travis Rudolph, is sitting in the chair that he's sitting. Hmm. The reason he's sitting in that chair is because just after midnight on April 7th, 2021, he took it upon himself to take out a semi-automatic rifle-like weapon. Rifle-like weapon? That's what we, yeah. Were leaving the oh, yeah. area of his home. What is, <laughs> what is a rifle-like weapon? To leave the situation that had occurred minutes before, this defendant used that weapon and fired 39 times. Oh, he's nervous. Yeah, what? Yeah, pay attention. Into the car that they were in that was trying to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, he's nervous. His hand is shaking. Are going to be clear. Oh, it gets worse. Time you get back Just the keep your eye on it. That he was not on defense. He was on offense. He was not under attack. He was on the attack. And that's exactly why he's in that chair. Now, as you already know, we've talked about a lot. My name is Richard Quasi, and along with my co-counsel, Ms. Adrian Ellis and Ms. Francine Edwards, we represent the state of Florida. And as has been discussed at length, you all know already because we had many questions about it. We have the burden of proof. We have the burden of proof. Yep. The table right here. We have to prove to you beyond every reasonable doubt. We're going to keep bringing that up. Every reasonable doubt. Not possible doubt. Mm -hmm. Not speculative doubt. Not possible oh, his hand's shaking doubts, again. Not imaginary doubts. Not forced doubts reasonable doubt about what happened here. and we embrace that burden we embrace it and we intend on okay if he has parkinson's that's okay if he's just nervous that's really weirdly nervous you 
all know what those my cousin Vinny lawyer comes to mind <laughs> for an individual by the name of Sebastian and three counts of attempted murder three counts of attempted murder for Tyler Robinson Christopher Lowe Tyler Robinson okay Christopher Lowe and Keyshawn Jones You're going to get jury instruction. Okay, I, that, I don't think that's not a Parkinson shake because the no. second he moved his hand away, from, it was like that adrenaline point. Yeah, it's like when you get it's, a shaky knee. You, your microphone is really loud. Sorry, let me turn it down. Yeah, you're like screaming in me in my ear. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll turn it down. Um, approach, please. Ladies and gentlemen, feel free to stand. Wow. Okay, so he's like really, really nervous, it looks like, or, he, or he's really full of adrenaline because he knows this is an awesome thing. Uh, wow, that was kind of odd. Uh, <laughs> and he's forgotten to talk into the microphone. This I don't know what county this is. I, I just know it's somewhere in Florida. Uh, How, I, I can check the arrest documents in a minute. How's the mic now? Better? Perfect. Yes. Awesome. You're just yeah. animated. I you're, you're excited I'm, about this trial. It's so bad. And it's like, it just, with that nervous shake, I'm like, bro. The reason he's dead is him right there. And the third thing we have to prove premeditated killing. Premeditated killing. He thought about it before he did it. There we go. Oh my God, this is audio. Before he did it, it wasn't involuntary. It was okay, look, this guy is literally standing in front of four microphones pointed directly at his head, three of them, one of them on the desk, and he still can't manage to be heard in court. I'm sorry about this shitty audio. Flux with her future vision has assured us it balances out at some point, but I am. I am desperately, desperately uh, trying to manipulate the sound well, behind I the scenes. Like I said, it's is he's uh, the lawyer from my cousin Vinny. So he, he, once we get past opening and he sits down, we're good. We're good. Okay. I hope it doesn't yeah. go for six hours, but don't tell us how long it goes. All right. And uh, while we're while we're getting ready, we have a few super chats. Like I'm getting, I'm not going to pause this very much because I want to get through it and we want to fast forward through all the all the down spots. We're just going to treat this like a normal real time trial as much as possible. But uh, before we do that, we need the arbiter of truth, justice, war, sex, drugs, rock and roll, money, and everything else. Our very own Lafroditi, Danny on direct. Hello, hey, Danny. <clears throat> Thank you so much for having me. Girl, you're, you're, what? Oh, your stream just ended, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I was I'm all caught up for the night just so that I can I come and enjoy your guys' phrasing. wonderful party. I, yep. I noticed that uh, our, our Mr. Sir is having the shakes, and I don't think that's nerves. I wonder if he drank too much the night <laughs> before. It's possible. I I, I, I don't know, but like I said, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a Parkinson's thing because the second he moved it out of that position, he stopped shaking. And you look at his other hand, definitely gets steady. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Weird. People are saying my mic is way high, so I'm just gonna turn huh. it down. Okay. There we go. Is, is that better? Well, I don't know. You have to back up to a normal position. Now it's really also loud because you're you're right in front of it. Okay, is this better? No, it's really louder. loud because you're right up next to it. So back okay. off to where you normally talk. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> okay, what about now? Uh, sounds fine to me. Okay, I've turned down the I've turned down the gain as much as I can. So my guess is when I drink too much, like the night before, and then I overload on caffeine, sometimes I will get the shakes. And mm -hmm. if you add that to the adrenaline mix. Maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. We'll find out. I don't understand what's going on with his hair. Yeah, it's a comb over. I can't with the uh, comb overs. <laughs> it's so all bad. Right. Just and shave it and put balls. on a toupee. All right, let's do the super chats and get back in the trial. We all know his hair sucks. Even he knows it sucks. That's why he's poor guy. You know, there. Uh, <laughs> PSA: If you're gonna get, if you're going bald, shave your head. Nobody is buying a comb over ever. Not ever. Shave it and grow a beard. Says Lefty Lulls. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Uh, John Morris, JJ Morris, 
LNC cage. We'll get there. We well, Don't worry. We'll get the cage up. We just kind of got to get everything settled in and get in the groove first before I get even more distracted. Uh, <laughs> so John Gordon, prosecutor, looks like he stalks playground. No, he looks like Prince William, um, you know, the future king of England. That's what we're calling him. And Nicholas Starov, it's muscle memory from holding similar objects. Well, thank you very much for keeping the discourse high and of a, a sufficiently dignified caliber, Nicholas. Uh, <laughs> all right. With, with that, like I said, I am trying my best to deal with the way this guy literally cannot talk into one of the four microphones pointed directly to his skull. So bear with me for a bit. Uh, we live two blocks away in 2021, Palm Beach County. Good. Thank you for answering that question so I don't have to look for it. That's great. Appreciate it. Uh, so he's laid out the three things he's got to prove. They've got to prove he did it. Uh, he did it with that weapon, and he did it intentionally. Those are the three things he's got to prove. Um, let's see. Let's see. He seems to be on pretty shaky ground. <laughs> let's go. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It wasn't an accident. It was purposeful because he meant to do it. Now, what you'll also see in the jury instruction is that we also have to prove what type of weapon he used. And in this case, it's a firearm. And we're going to learn all about that firearm during the history of the day. Now, when it comes to the three attempted first degree murder counts, it's basically the same thing. We have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he tried to kill Tyler, Chris, and Keisha. And that the only reason they're not dead is because he failed or someone else intervened. And then again, with that count, he meant to try to kill those three. And we're confident we're going to be able to do that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as the judge has mentioned, how will we know? Well, we're going to bring in witnesses. We're going to bring in witnesses that know about what led up to this event and witnesses that came after this. Law enforcement, crime scene investigators, medical people, detectives, all of them that got involved after this defendant decided to take someone's life and almost take two lives. Can't perfectly plan everything that happens in a trial. But what we can anticipate are the witnesses that are first going to testify and who comes after. The first types of witnesses that you're going to hear from are people that know about why this occurred, how it occurred, what led up to it, and what happened that night outside of this defendant's home where he lived with his mother and his older brother. Oh, he lives with his mother and older brother, okay. Example, they all live with their mama the still. Or mama lives with them. He's going to give you the backstory. Now, now it's not the time for me to give you the whole backstory. We're going to have plenty of days for you to listen to the actual people that can give the backstory. But as a summary, in essence, what we're going to learn is that on April 6th, in the PM hours of that day, Keyshawn Jones learns from his sister. Microphone. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, thank God. That oh, works. dude, that's not how it works. Yeah, do that. Dude, just go stand behind the damn oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Weird. Weird. That was weird. All right. That's still of course, weird. I have to step away here for a minute. Uh, time for me to be domestic and switch out the laundry. Don't get me deplatformed while I'm gone. I'll be listening. I'll be back in just a second. <laughs> we won't get you deplatformed. I make no promises. I just got demonetized on two videos for nothing. Really? Just my most recent streams. Rude. Very. And once he tells his friends what had occurred earlier in that day, they get upset. We're not going to hide it, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be able to see text messages and phone call logs and things like that. Dominique was upset. With this defendant over what he did. Take no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Keyshawn was upset about what happened. Make no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And when they were upset, they talked in a way that was threatening. You're going to see text messages where Dominique says, go shoot his shit up. You're going to see a text message from Deshaun where he's like, Travis is a dead man. Walk. But this is all before they actually get. Travis's house. And ladies and gentlemen, actions speak louder than words. They truly do. We talked about it during jury selection. Sometimes people say things they don't mean. And what's important in this case is not what was said and done before, right around midnight. It's what did 
happened right around midnight when Keyshawn, Tyler, Chris, and Sebastian decide to go to the defendant's house to confront him about what had just taken place earlier in the day at Donald Trump. Now, you're not going to just have to rely on people getting up and testifying to that fact. Because what we're going to learn through the law enforcement officers that got involved after the shooting took place is they started getting as many surveillance videos as they could from around the neighborhood, from anywhere that might be able to pick up information about why this all took place. And what we're going to be able to see, ladies and gentlemen, is just after midnight on April 7, 2021. Right here is 550 Pete Drive. This is the home of the defendant where he lived with his mom and his older brother, his mother's house. We're going to learn that in a black Cadillac, those four boys get into the neighborhood. Their mother's they Cadillac. Approximately that <laughs> they park it away from the home in the front door <laughs> of this defendant. You're going to be able to see surveillance video. This house right down here had multiple cameras, and you're going to literally be able to see the car park here. All of them get out of the car. All of them put stuff in their trunk, and all of them start walking in the direction of this house, which, from where they parked, is approximately 300 feet away, 100 yards away. Now, you're also, through the benefit of a ring doorbell camera that was installed on 550 Drive, you're going to be able to see video. Those four boys coming up to the door knocking saying, hey, we got to talk to drivers out here about what happened. Please don't smile. It makes it worse. What you're not going to see, what you are not going to see is a gun in any of their hands. He's very not- Italian. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I think I wanted my hands okay. too, but. Yeah. <laughs> one thing I wanted to say, I thought it was very interesting what he said, and I thought it was a very, very good point. That's kind of a weird place for this to pause. Sorry about that. I'll make this short. Uh, is I thought it was a very good point he made that obviously there's going to be testimony that uh, he was told they were going to go shoot shit up and that he was a walking dead man, but the defendant did not hear them say that. So I thought that was a very good point. So whatever they said before they got to his house and confronted him can't go to his state of mind unless somehow he was aware that they had said that. That's keep accurate. that in mind. Yeah. Too bad he didn't to say it into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> like this, this whole suit, the hair, the style. This looks like he should be prosecuting like Ted Bundy or right. It's like it's like nineteen seventies stuff going on here. Anyway, I feel like he just he really needs a good chiropractor or like a massage therapist for how much he does the head rolling in the neck <laughs> movement. All right. <laughs> I tried it for two seconds, like this this back and forth thing he's got going, and I'm like, oh. And Ozzy Overlord said Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd had a love child, and he's trying a dramatic role. Also, my money is on something stronger than alcohol. Nice. Uh, Julie, oh, the attorney is like a politician from 1950. There we go. So we've all agreed he's an old timey guy. The people in the 50s would have had better hair uh, or a hat or, you know, something. All right. Sorry for that. Sorry for that interruption. Let's get back to our regularly scheduled trial. Not going to see that on that video. Now, we are going to be up front. He caught a fly. person out of those four that brought a handgun with him. That was Tyler Robbins. But the facts and the evidence by the conclusion of this trial, ladies and gentlemen, are going to show beyond a reasonable doubt he never pulled it out. He never pulled it out. You're going to be able to see it on that ring doorbell video when they first I'm looking talk. at his hand and it's not what shaking like learn? it was they before. They decide to go and have a conversation about what took place with their You know, I think it was probably just the weight of the head. microphone. They asked for Travis to come out. And what we're going to learn is he didn't say inside his house. He didn't call the cops. He didn't say they lost. He decided, he decides to come out and have that conversation with those four boys outside. He decided. Uh, no, Lorraine, we don't actually need to cover up the law and crime thing. They don't They don't copyright claim anybody anymore. We just do it because it's fun. But what the witnesses are going to be able to tell you is it started as a verbal altercation, and he started the physical fight outside. He did. He we're, we're, 
Okay, he started it. This guy, this is what eminent happens to theater threat. kids. Either. Don't remember eminent threat. Remember imminent threat. Eminent is different than imminent. The fight was over. You're going to see on the video, those four boys are leaving. They are leaving. They are walking back to the car they parked 300 feet away from his house. Walking this way Where'd he go? all the way down. Are we going to learn that the defendant stayed in his car? Are we going to learn that the defendant... Went back into his house. Are we going to learn the defendant grabbed his mother and bring her in the house? No. What we're going to learn is this defendant pursues them that entire 300 feet all the way down to their car. This is his Spartacus moment. During that fist fight, bro, he's been practicing this in the mirror for a long time. No shots were fired during that fist fight. No shots were fired as the defendant is following them with a semi automatic rifle like gun. As they're trying to get rifle like he says it twice. He said rifle like. And what you're going to see, ladies and gentlemen, what is a rifle like gun? Down at this house, a long gun. What happens when they get there? You are going to be able to see As in this man's the head. Car, the car starts. To it's my guess. And head out. I just think he doesn't want to use an AR-15 term. You're going to be able to see the defendant is on this side of the road. They are backing up to leave and escape the man that's carrying the semi-automatic rifle-like weapon. Well, that's not very good for the defendant, if they can prove that. Muzzle flashes from this defendant's gun as he shoots 39 times into the passenger side of that car. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> it is. I'm not saying it wasn't. Stops moving. That's what I'm saying. You, you shoot until the threat stops. Yep. Anyway. The only person that shot a hopefully the jury agrees with us you're movie. muted jeff <clears throat> i'm muted oh well i can hear you now well you, i haven't been talking oh i thought you said something never mind i just said 39 times is a lot <laughs> especially if what they prove is correct that they were actually running away while he was shooting at them 39 times that's very bad Oh, right, if they can prove it, right? That's the story. Mm -hmm. Now, there's more story, obviously, after what happened after. We're going to learn from law enforcement officers that respond to the 911 call made by Keyshawn. We're going to see where they responded to. There are going to be some officers, obviously, that respond right to this area. Crime scene investigators. That their responsibility, lock down the crime scene, look for evidence, gather evidence, and have it here for us today, or throughout the course of the trial. You're going to be able to see all that. You're going to be able to hear from the crime scene investigators every single casing they collect, bullet casings, from this area right here. All 39 casings belong to his gun. Not one casing belongs to a different gun. Mm. Not one. Mm. Not one. You're going to be able to hear from the law enforcement officers that eventually catch up or find the black hatlet. That at the time when they find it, the car made its way down. Take some notes here. In Broadway until it gave out. One of those bullets shot the oil canister in the car and made it as far as it could go. Died out. You're going to be able to see the body worn camera of when that first officer finds Keyshawn and Chris standing outside that car. You're going to be able to see body worn camera of Sebastian. That by the time, even after the short period of 10 to 15 minutes, you're here for medics as well. Sebastian is gone. Shot multiple, multiple times. And you're going to be able to hear from the medical examiner that will tell you every single injury that he sustained at the hands of that man and his gun. You're going to be able to see the detectives that went around, got the ring doorbell camera, got the surveillance camera, got surveillance cam from just on, on the local roads to pick up where the car stopped and where it finished. You're going to see all the hard work that these detectives did 
to try to figure out what happened on April 7th, 2021. And what happened on April 7th, 2021, is that this defendant- His head moves with his hand. Not out of defense of others, but out of anger and feeling disrespected, decided to take it out on four people. Mm. Almost killing three people. Something tells me that this prosecutor had a run in with Florida ice. You know, the year round kind. So, by the conclusion of this trial, ladies and gentlemen, what we're asking for you to do now open minds, as we talked about, keep us to our verdict, and just don't make any conclusions until you've had a chance to hear each and everything about this case. Because we're confident when you do that, when you've had a chance to factor in everything. <clears throat> The videos, the photographs, the testimony, the evidence that comes in, and your own common sense. You will come to the reasonable conclusion. That you know, he's probably a pianist. This man had no legal justification for doing this. He did it out of anger. And when you kill someone out of anger, it's how, it's it's how we play. You are guilty of these crimes. And that's what we're going to be asking you to do. When you go back in that jury room, you're going to get a verdict. With four counts on. First degree murder and three counts of attempted first degree murder. We're going to be asking you to check the boxes that say guilty as charged. That's exactly what you want. Murder begins when self defense ends. That, that is, is a good line. Guilty of these crimes, mm -hmm. And that's why we're asking you to find it as such. We're confident in the answers. Thank you very much for everything. All right. Thank you, Mr. Klaus. Oh, Ms. Perlet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. When well, they actually use the mics, it's really sure, good. Sure, of course. This is why this is why you don't make expressions unless you are putting emphasis on something. Because if you talk like this and overact every single thing you're saying, what you're saying loses its effect. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, apparently, she knows how to use a microphone. That's a that's good for her. So hopefully, she'll stand in front of it while she delivers. Uh, wow, that was. The, the judge and the, the def and the uh, defense lawyer, they apparently know how to use mics. Mm. The Chuggy Show Lives says, I do a cat cam on my on my lives when my cat cooperates. My dogs cool. are always cooperating and laying around. And so right now we're $60 away from Doggo Cam. And uh, when Doggo Cam starts, the law and cuck cage comes on. So that's a that's a double bonus event. I uh, I thought about doing a kitty cam, um, but it would be called something mm. inappropriate and it'd be fun. <laughs> 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 and Ju Julia 543 says lawyers need to see Ali on being on camera. Well, see, that's the interesting thing. They're not here for the camera. Yep. They, it, if, if, I mean, I can't fault him for not staying in camera frame because that's not his job. That's not what he's there for. He's not there for our entertainment. He's there for the jury and the jury only. Yep. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't, I fault him for not talking into the microphone because they need to, they need it recorded <laughs> and they're using voice to uh, voice to text transcription software in most courtrooms these days. So the microphone has to pick it up to make the transcript. Um, and that's why you know, some of the cases you see the people, the, you know, the, the court clerks that seem to be talking into some sort of, uh, you know, breathing device, that's actually them giving commands to the voice controlled, uh, transcription software. Uh, Tracy Ranger, we did a better call. Saul was a better lawyer. Law, turn on the puppy cam. Well, we are, we're getting there. Where is as soon as that, as soon as puppy cam comes on, Law and Cuck Cage will join it. Uh, and the Eva Blink, look, this better not be a Zach Anderson trial repeat. I already want the system to implode. This hairline will drive me over the line. <laughs> nice. Well, we'll have to see how we'll, we'll just have to see because I, I thought his delivery was kind of weird and kind of sucked, but. I think the the gist of the prosecutor's opening statement was good. Here's what we have to prove. Here's what we're going to prove. Here's what you have to pay attention to. It may have been self-defense up to a point, but then they turned their backs and walked away and he shot him 39 times. I thought that was a good, good opening statement. Could have been delivered better. I don't know. What do you, what, let me get through this here and then we'll ask what you think. <clears throat> I've just choked on my own air supply. <coughs> <laughs> that was weird. Uh, the amateur iconoclast says this prosecutor looks like he should be chastising Detective Callahan. <laughs> Who's Detective Callahan? 
I'm any confused. like detective from the 19 like 80s. 50s or any buddy okay. cop film you've any ever de- seen ever right. blue varo says go go dog on cam well we're getting there thank you so much john gordon release the hounds oh we're getting there quicker now uh, oh we're, we're there holy crap when did that happen you guys are awesome john gordon's profile picture yeah mm. all right so I, I hope you don't mind us being joined by by doggo cam here never i, I don't at all but uh, they will be our what i was oh, gonna nothing. say i was just gonna say this guy's the john malkovich of attorneys and that's all i had to say that's it okay and i was just gonna comment on natalie wisco's pug from danny's earlier oh yeah she, she was she had breathing they, they all have breathing difficulties oh, no, this one's really it's cute so I, know. Cool. I know it's awesome <laughs> All righty, here we go. Boop. I, I, all right, there, doggy. Doggo Cam is here. Oh, oh, it's a Yoda. <laughs> yeah, it's Yoda. Oh, the puffers. It's a Yoda. Strawberry is over on the, the veranda again, looking out the window. <laughs> well, well, sleeping facing the window. All right, and before we jump back into this, Anna One says, I love that y'all have started reviewing this. I've listened to all of it. I don't know if I can listen to it again, though, lol. Yes, you can. The testimony oh, yeah. of all the witnesses tells me they should be defendants. IMO. Well, now oh. we we don't know the future here. So don't don't uh, don't time travel on us. We're all ignorant See, slobs over here. You want to watch it with us because we'll give you all the commentary that you wanted yeah. to scream out yourself. <laughs> Danny, opening statements. What do you think? What do you think of the prosecutor's opening statement? Um, I think the statement would have been better had we been able to hear it. One, two, yes. had he not enunciated and overacted everything he had mm-hmm. to say like John Malkovich I probably would have actually paid attention to what he was saying you know like that so you didn't pay attention to what he was saying I didn't even pay attention to a single thing oh, wow. he said except for the good lines which was you know murder begins where self defense ends that's a good line and and you really do want those taglines when you go into your opening statements so that that replays in the jury's head a good one in the Lori Vallow case was this case is about sex, power, and money, and that how the defendant used sex, power, and money to gain more of those things. Very well done. Very solid. That's the kind of thing that you want. So very well done. Well, Flux, as our, as our local layman, we, you, you, this is the, the second time you've been a full-time layman observer on the show. Uh, what do you think uh, of the prosecutor's opening? Uh. Someone in the chat said it was uh, 1970s Joe Biden, and I haven't been able to think of him <laughs> any know, other way since. Uh, that's good. What do you think of the, what do you think of his statement, though? I honestly, I thought what he said one, if it would have been heard, would have been decent if they could prove any of it. Uh, we'll see. I I thought as an opening as a layperson. He tried to give strong points. I don't think it came across very well. All right. Well, let's uh, let's give the defense lawyer her opening statement. Oh, and can we just we take note for a second and look at the bottom of the screen? The prosecutor wearing this plaid suit. Yes. That she's wearing. I just wanted. That's to a make she. Note okay. Of, yeah. Yeah. All I right. just wanted to make note of her plaid skirt or her plaid yep. suit. Okay. I love it. <laughs> That answered my question. I was like, "That's a, if that's a dude, he's like way too hipster for his own good. Uh, no, it's a she. It's a <laughs> she. Right. Well, all righty then. It's, uh, this this uh, lady over here on the far right, I believe, is one that's giving the opening statements. I saw a flash, but uh, all right, let's uh, let's get on with oh, the let's get on with the I, show here. Yes. When I turn my camera off, I'm just blowing my nose and coughing, so just don't mind me. All right. <gasps> Oh, Yoda. Let's go. Fast forward to her. Oh, and of course it would be buffering just because I didn't want it to. Why are we buffering? That's weird. Why is Yoda making his bed like that? Why is it buffering? <laughs> because you put the cut cage on it. Probably. Like, no. no. Oh, oh it no. Went... You're going to be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah. around. Not the ring doorbell camera. Uh, that was kind of weird. Yeah. Right, do it manually. His hairline is distorting his head shape. That was the Did first time I've ever used Bing that it buffered. That was kind of huh. weird. Huh. All right. 
Uh, maybe I've got some stuff open that I ought not have open. I don't know. Uh, Jeff? What? <laughs> What's? Oh, what? yeah. never mind. Not um, asking what stuff. They have two podiums and he couldn't even use a single one. Are you kidding me? Oh, and they have a movable, like, stand-up mic that's, like, thin, too, that they whip out later. Probably a good idea. <laughs> the judge is oh. like, ha, oh, ha, very good job. Very good job, guys. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's, I'm apparently not supposed to touch this, because. Yeah, don't touch it, Chuck. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you may begin. I already like the defense attorney better. Oh, yeah. Uh, She's already coming off better prepared. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Okay. Ooh. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. The evidence is going to show that on April 6th of 2021, Dominique Jones, a woman scorned, set mm. a series of events tr that ended in a tragedy and forced Travis Rudolph to act in self-defense. Her rage and jealousy set this entire thing in motion. That's what the evidence is going to show. You're going to hear that in 2021, Travis Rudolph was 26 years old at the time. He lived in Lake Park on 550 Teak Drive with his mother, Linda, and his brother, Daryl, who also goes by DJ Rudolph. You're going to hear that Travis's father was tragically killed several years ago um, while he was oh. working. He was shot at a restaurant. And oh. because of that, his mother, Linda, felt compelled to have security at the home. They bought a door ring bell camera. They bought a security system called a night owl. Um, she was very fearful for her safety as a result of that incident. Her boys were there. They lived with her. Travis bought some firearms as a result of that for home protection. You're going to hear that he had a concealed weapons permit, that all the guns he owned were legal. There was nothing illegal about his firearms. Okay. He okay. kept them in the home, primarily in his bedroom. He went to the range. He practiced. He was trained. He knew how to use these firearms yeah. and never did. But this night he was forced to in order to save the life of himself and his brother. That's what the evidence is going to show. Ooh, it better. That's a bold You're statement. You're going to hear that on April 6th of 2021. Um, well, let me step back for a moment. You've already heard some of this in jury selection that Travis um, went to Cardinal Newman High School. He graduated. Now, see, see, he again, I, again I, I, I'm going to try not to pause this so much, but she has just taken a very, very bold step. And now she has she set it up where she now has to prove self defense mm -hmm. that he was using that weapon to defend other people and himself. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she, she's saying it was necessary for him to use it to save the lives of his family members. Now she has to prove that. All scholarship. He was a standout receiver both at Cardinal Newman and at FSU. Um, you're going to hear that, and you've heard a little bit of this already that he won the lottery when he got a contract with the NFL. He played with the Giants for a bit, and then he played for the Dolphins. His career with NFL was short-lived, unfortunately. Um, when he was playing for Miami, he sustained a serious in injury. His ACL was torn, and that basically put the end of his NFL career away. But that wasn't the end of it. He still wanted to play ball. That's, that's his passion. He started training and rehabbing down in Miami. He was doing that for quite some time. During the time that he was in the NFL, he also met a woman by the name of Dominique Jones, the woman scorned, and they had been dating for about a year and a half. When he got injured, however, he and Dominique um, started falling out, and they decided that they were um, probably you know, on the outs and they were going to break up. Another reason for that breakup was that Travis had uh, gotten a contract with the Canadian League and was set to leave and go play with them the following month in May of 2021. Oh, okay. And Dominique Excellent. Jones knew that, so they were sort of on the outs. On April 6th, the day of this incident, you're going to hear 
And you're going to hear this from <laughs> Travis Rudolph, who's going to take the stand. You're going to hear this whole story from his mouth. You're going to hear that he was down in Miami training, as he had done every day for many, many months. He was down at the NFL facility training with a friend of his who, who played on the NFL. He got home late in the afternoon, uh, what? went home. I had to comment so we could see the doggos. He and Dominique had been talking. Ah. They had been texting. And they decided that they were going to go to a movie that night. That was their big plan. Uh, they didn't pick out which movie or what time, but it was sometime probably around 9 o'clock that evening. Travis remained home, waited for Dominique to come over. You're going to hear that she arrived around 7 o'clock or so in the evening. When Dominique arrived there, Linda Rudolph, Travis's mom, was at Bible study at her sister's house. And DJ Aww. had just left a little bit before to go to the car wash to get his car detailed. Aww. Dominique came into the house, and immediately she told Travis, hey, I want to go to the liquor store to get a Patron bottle, a bottle of tequila. They drove to the liquor store. Dominique bought a bottle of Patron. And you're going to Come hear on, that Dominique, you can do better than that. Residence. When they got back to the Rudolph's house, they played a card game called Uno. They did a couple of shots of tequila. And you're going to hear this was taking place in Travis's bedroom. Uno, in the man. home. The and, downfall of all. Uh, you're going to hear that. DJ Daryl Surprise, the shooting came didn't home happen in the Uno around 8:30 or so. That's what I'm saying. When he got home, he asked Travis to step outside for a moment. He wanted him to look at his detailing of his car. He was dissatisfied with something and he wanted to ask Travis a question. Travis left his cell phone in his bedroom with Dominique and he stepped outside. When he came back in, that's when all hell broke loose. Dominique went into his phone without her permission. She sneaked around, scrolled through his text messages, it and saw that he had been talking with a woman named Kyla snooped. and some other women who were merely friends. But it set her off. She mm -hmm. became infuriated, enraged. She lost her mind. She became unhinged. Mm -hmm. Travis came back into the house. Before he could even do anything, she confronted him. And he said, she's just a friend, Kyla. She could not control her anger, her jealousy, her rage. She lost her mind. She picked up Travis's phone. It she snacked. FaceTimed Kayla, snacked. turned the phone around, and said, talk to her. I want to oh see. God. I want to watch your reaction okay. while you talk to this woman. And he did. <laughs> <laughs> and he, they were talking as though nothing was wrong. Can you believe she could not bitch? control her rage? She took the cell phone, smashed it to the ground, and broke it. I mean, who does screamed, that? I'm sending my brother over to kill you. I'm sending my brother over to kill you. Okay. She then walked over to his dresser, where he had yeah. a whole bunch of football trophies and other football things. Picked up a metal trophy, hit him over the head with the trophy. Oh my in gosh. Her rage. She then picked up his PlayStation, which was in his room, Bro. dragged it to the living room, this. smashed it there as well. Okay, she oh, oh my God. She was she out smashed of his control. PlayStation. Whole time screaming, I'm sending my brother over to kill you. I'm sending my brother over to kill you. What you're going to hear, though, ironically, is she was married throughout their entire relationship and never told this man this. She what? was married to a guy named Andre Kishang. <laughs> I told you guys this was a good one. Um, <laughs> little little old motion. Okay, from, then. <laughs> so she's like, who's the bitch? Like, who are you talking to? And he's like, a friend. And she's like, yeah, show me. He's like, okay, crazy bitch. Let me do that. So he calls her and he's like, no, no, no. Talk to her. Talk to this crazy yeah. woman. She uh, made, uh, she called the girl. She, yeah, she she called she the other made, girl. She called the girl. She, she picked up his phone, phone up and he said FaceTimed and said you talk to her. And then she Did smashes she she, and by the way, I've been married to somebody else for a bunch of years, bitch. No, 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 no. <laughs> she didn't tell him because that was none of her personal business. She doesn't no, tell don't him. tell us the future. Sorry. Sorry. So 
Wait, wow. did she yeah. say so she admitted to being married to someone else, or this is unbeknownst to him at this point still? This is apparently unbeknownst, unbeknownst to him. To him. You know what would have fixed all of this was calling the police at this point. Yes. A long time have. ago. Like but, a long but, time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. So being married to someone else is a big thing. Uh, that that might uh, that might cause some some friction. Uh, but what, what the but well, I mean, I stopped it because I was stunned. But I was getting ready to stop it because I I just realized that uh, that super chat a while ago from from uh, Blue Varo was, was a, a fifty dollar super chat. I just it I was just kind of surprised that we suddenly went over a doggo cam and I didn't and I didn't take uh, the time to to appreciate that that was an incredibly generous super chat. Uh, I'm scrolling up here again somewhere to to bring it up because uh, it it deserves special recognition. That was at twelve fifty. Why is this woman not in jail? Is she dead? Is she amongst the dead? I uh, know she's a she's the second witness. Uh, that, that's how I got involved in this. Flux was sending me the uh, she was she said you got to watch this. I'm like oh my god. So yeah, Blue Varo, thank you so much for the super chat. I, I apologize for not giving it the recognition it was due as a very very generous fifty dollar super chat. Nobody else in this case is charged. Only him. And Magician Sapphire, I just found out about this case. Has he been sentenced yet, or is this still going on? We are on day three, so we're going to binge this as much as we can, and we're going to uh, try our best to stay as up to date and as close to the actual real time as possible. And Wolfram, thank you so much. This woman is so crazy. Even though the broken baker says he can't fix her, even the broken baker says he can't fix her. Well, let's again keep us in the present time zone. We you know we don't know the future, at least I don't. Uh, but Peggy Bundy is doing a very, very good job for the defense here by making uh, one of their star witnesses seem crazy. I uh, mean, because she wow. is. Yeah. And Jim Satalis' legal advice is in Florida. The state has to disprove self-defense if the defense can make makes any showing that is plausible. I believe all states are that way now. If, if I recall correctly, Florida was like a holdout. If if I recall correctly. But yeah, they she has to make the initial proof that there is a at least a a plausible explanation by way of self-defense then it's back on the on the, the burden is on the state to prove that it was not self-defense yep and again we'll have to see what they show but if they show that uh, in fact they were running away and being shot in the back 39 times that's kind of <laughs> that's a big thing to overcome so that, we'll see what they can prove they have to prove that that happened we have but so. this is important and and this is an important mm -hmm. argument yes. to make she's not just discrediting the witness She's leading the jury to a reasonable belief that he, at mm -hmm. the time, thought if he didn't stop the threat, it wouldn't stop. Because clearly he got rid of this crazy bitch out of his house, and clearly the threat did not abate at that point. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Because like, we, we have the uh, the statements from the prosecutor saying that uh, before that, he was they were going to go shoot up his shit. There's a dead man walking. But he didn't know that. But here, we're, you know, she has told us that the uh, ex said, I'm sending my brother over to kill you. Right. So and then she you, did. What, so, so what can we prove? This Again, these are all opening. These aren't even arguments. Yeah, these, these aren't, aren't even opening statements. These are statements. We gotta still get into it. Damn, where's Jerry Springer when you need him? Oh, yeah, rotting in yeah. hell. Damn, oh, he's shit. in heaven. You think? Yeah. He's in heaven. I don't think so. I think he should be forced to watch every single one of his episodes like in purgatory before well, he gets into the heaven. Heaven is. Heaven, heaven is just Jerry Springer 24 7. It's awesome. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right, let's go. Shut up, Peggy, Peggy Bundy or one of the Sopranos depends on, on, on how you view this prosecutor. But uh, well, she sort of talks like Edie Falco, but she looks like Peg Bundy. So. I'll pronounce it. But never told him for a year and a half that she was married. Oh dear. They were dating for a. Okay. If you've yes. been dating anyone for a year and a half and they haven't bothered to mention they're married to someone else and you find out, go away. End it. Cut it off. And it, oh, just, that, yeah. Just All right. wait for the explanations, Jeff. It'll just yeah. wait. Yeah. Yep. And uh, John Gordon, how the F is she not charged with anything? Well, let's just watch and we'll see because, you know, they didn't charge it. Uh, and we, okay, we already got that one. So but let's uh, let's hear the rest of the opening statement behind her husband's back you're going to hear you're going to hear you're going they can't to hear be in evidence hasn't started yet go ahead you're going to what? hear that miss jones 
didn't get Wait, a did he sustain two that? Months after. No, 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 he said go ahead. He said go that ahead. Ms. Jones didn't get a divorce. I'm going to hear that Ms. Jones. Sustained. Go ahead. I'm going to hear that Ms. Jones didn't get a divorce until two he months He sustained that after objection. That was weird. His arrest. She found out two months after the arrest that she'd been going married to for hear no. that no, no, he found out. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Dominique was so upset after she smashed his personal items, she storms out of the house. And you're going to see with your own eyes her demeanor, her behavior, what she did, because it's all captured on the ring video camera oh, at the house. Nice. You're going to see her storm out of the house. You're going to see with your own eyes her attacking and beating up Travis. Travis is like this. He does nothing to retaliate. He does not touch her. He doesn't hit her. He tells her to calm down. But he's, Yet, he's, he's Travis, mad. that What's never like, works. Like, Don't tell a woman to calm down when she's PlayStation, angry. hit her work. over the head, broke his phone. So what does he do? He gets into her ear and he starts telling her, Kyla has a better body than you, <laughs> better looking than you, and this sets her off even more. You think? She storms out of the house. Travis, Travis, bro. See on the video that she trips. Him. He got you, this man Travis. had a death wish. Travis, <laughs> that ain't how it works, my friend. Never <laughs> tell a woman to calm down. Go, yeah, but that chick, I'm my side chick. She's got a better body. Than you. That does not help. He <laughs> is the epitome of hold my beer. Travis, <laughs> my man. Oh dear. All right. But it's not oh, just him. Well, there's, she had there's some so recent cosmetic people. surgery, but she pops right back up. Wow. He did not touch her. She claims, and she's going to tell you, and has made prior statements, that he picked her up off her feet and slammed her to the ground two times. That's not what you're going to see. You're going to see another one backing Boom. off. Two times. Boom. Not doing anything as she pounds him and beats him. His brother him. is a DJ. He's in her ear. Saying His Kyla has a better DJ. body, Kyla's better DJ looking than Khaled. you, and sh this just enrages her even more and more. Yes, understandably so. You're going to see on the video that she storms back into the house to get her tequila bottle after she's <laughs> allegedly slammed to the ground too. She forgot the bottle. So she runs back into the house to get her tequila bottle, goes back out the door, you'll see this on the video, and you're going to see Travis following her, and he's still in her ear talking about Kayla, and this infuriates her even more, that she takes the tequila bottle and hits him over the head with the tequila bottle. Oh, what a waste of alcohol. Naturally. At this point, Make DJ yourself another is Jack now this, this is a, This involved, is a bourbon coat, not a He's trying to calm the situation down. And you're going to hear... Wait, he's trying DJ to calm the situation well. down now? He will tell you this occurred. I the think tequila DJ, bottle was too much. She picks up a brick on the by the front <laughs> house on the lawn near a palm tree. And she starts heading towards Travis's BMW truck, which was the first big purchase he made when he got his NFL. Contract. This is like a this bad is wrestling thing. episode. He's no longer in the NFL. He this. doesn't have any more money. This is his pride and joy. And she this takes is some the brick and she's right walking here. towards the car, the truck, to smash the window. But DJ and Travis stop her and they take the brick from her hand. Okay. Uh -huh. Good job, okay. DJ. Oh, no. That car window mysteriously was smashed that evening. But Why didn't no one call the door. cops? While she's on the front lawn, acting this way, screaming, yelling. Because people of color are afraid bitch, of men in blue. Bitch. This is even heard by another neighbor. This bitch needs to she, go to jail. She tells Travis again, repeatedly, I'm going to have my brother come and kill you. And now she says it more, and she's okay. more serious about it. You're going to hear that she had driven her car to the scene, to the Travis's house that night, a black scion, I believe it was, parked it alongside his house. Um, she got into her car. DJ and Travis went back into the house. They, they didn't know what to make of all of this. It was just unbelievable. Uh, you're going to hear that while she sat in her car. I'm seeing some red flags in this relationship. This entire nightmare. Yeah, I think she calls her brother, the Without one that she said was going to come over and him. kill him. 
and she's crying and yelling and upset. I was going to say, you look Tells cute without your happened. glasses. He slammed oh, me to the nice. ground. He disrespected me. I just well, had a cosmetic surgery. Oh, he's oh, nice. now all yeah. riled up. She calls another friend of hers, a, who Keyshawn sees as a brother, close friend, Tyler Robinson, tells Tyler Robinson, he disrespected me. He slammed me to the ground two times. Come get him. So she's a crazy and lying bitch. She then sends a group oh, yeah. text, a group text that you will see to Keyshawn and Tyler Robinson. And she says, go shoot up his shit. Again, Go shoot he up his hear shit. that, so fair enough. He and what does Keyshawn that. respond back to her and, Ty and Tyler? He responds that Travis Rudolph is a dead man walking. Dead man walking. That's what he says. You're going to hear that Dominique also, in her rage, <coughs> calls Tierney oh. Coleman. Tierney <laughs> Coleman is Travis's sister. And she tells her, he disrespected yep. me. The sister's name is Tierney. Shut I just wanted up. to highlight that. Yeah, I just wanted weird. to highlight that. Her name that's is Tierney. Weird. Just name her nemesis or chaos or freaking psycho. And then no, Travis's sister's name is Tierney. Right. Well, there you go. There you go. Sort of Sort of like the uh, the lady I talked about last week who was on the run from the law for a while, named Cleatorius. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. How no, that was is her she... name. Her name was Cleatorius Aretha Roy was this lady's name. How <laughs> has she not been charged <laughs> I thought she with murder charged... or accessory to murder? Or like some type of conspiracy charge or something. Something. Some kind of conspiracy, accessory because, because to attempt would, a murder. I'm just would, so confused at this point. It would destroy the prosecution's case. This is a very good opening statement. If you have everybody oh, going. It is. Yeah. that's. This is very well done. Oh, All right. Well, let's, let's continue to listen to it. I definitely... I'm going to go handle him. My brother's going to go handle him. I'm going to come to your mama's house. My brother is going to shoot up his shit. She then calls Linda Rudolph and gets in her ear and starts telling her, he, I'm, I'm going to handle him. I'm going to handle him. He disrespected me, and I'm going to, I'm going to have him shoot Travis. Call me on she called shit. everybody. She, she could not control her rage. At 10.15, you're going to hear Tierney Coleman then called Travis's house, the house phone, to warn him, hey, she just called me. She called mom. This, she's, uh, she's unhinged. She's telling everybody that they're coming. They're going to kill you. That's important. She, she was, called everybody. Travis was concerned, but mm -hmm. not completely 100% because they had gotten into it in the past and they were on the outs and he was leaving in May. She had done this, you know, they had what fought, Nicholas they were said. fighting pretty in much Jack. all the time. How do they? 1045, Linda got home from Bible study and she looked at the ring video and saw that Dominique Jones was the aggressor. She saw with her own eyes that he, her son did nothing wrong, that she was the one that was pounding and beating up on him. So she knew that Dominique was not being truthful, but she was still concerned. You're going to hear that they spoke about it, but things were quiet for a little bit. So they went to bed. Travis went to bed. DJ was up. Linda was still up. Dominique drove to I don't her know. apartment I'd kill somebody for Danny. Beach. And when she got there, you're going to hear that yeah. Keyshawn, her brother, Jones, Please don't have present. anybody show up because then they'll she look at me crying. because I just said she that. She was upset. She had no injuries, although Keyshawn will tell you she did. They never show up. But the detective she met with that nice didn't, night didn't note any injuries. She never went to the hospital. Um, but she put on the show okay. and she Dang cried. It, I'm sorry, I have to do this again. Uh, Jim Stella says, I'm surprised they didn't do a self-defense immunity hearing. Would have been smart. They did. They did a stand your ground trial uh, hearing. They did a stand your ground hearing and the judge rejected it. So they cannot, he cannot rely on the stand your ground defense. So yeah, they, 
They did that already. Uh, back to our regularly scheduled challenge. Right, and he slammed her to the ground and he disrespected her. So what does Keyshawn do? Keyshawn grabs his nine millimeter Glock that he's known to carry. He has a concealed weapons permit. He's a gun enthusiast. He's bought and sold guns. In fact, he the gun that Mr. Clossy made reference to that, that Tyler Robinson had that night was sold to Tyler by Keyshawn Jones one day after he had purchased it. Hmm. He knew how to handle guns. And at that time, he had a nine millimeter, nine millimeter Glock. He took it, and what did he do? He went to his friend Tyler Robinson's house, who had also received the text messages to go shoot up his shit and that, Ty, and that uh, Travis was a dead man walking. And what you're going to hear is when he got to Tyler Robinson's house, there were other men that there were there too, that Tyler had called and said, come here, we got to do something. We can't let this go. We got to do something about him disrespecting Dominique. And when they got to Tyler's house, Sebastian was already there. Tyler's brother Tyrone was there. Chris Lowe was there. And then Keyshawn shows up. And what did they do? They conspired and planned to go to Travis's house at midnight, several hours after this alleged slamming to the ground, to retaliate and to kill him, just as she ordered. No, the rifle-like weapon was the one Two that the hours defendant later. had. The Glock was the pistol that one of the people that came That's to the what house the had. Is going Different to rounds. They weren't there to help a damsel in distress. She was home back in Delray in the apartment. <laughs> the threat was over. They Something. were there at midnight to act as vigilantes and to retaliate. That's what they went there for, armed. You're going to hear and see that when they went to Travis's house, they took Keyshawn's mother's black Cadillac. You're going to hear that Tyler Robinson <clears throat> was in the front seat. You're going to hear that Chris Lowe and Sebastian were in the back seat. All four men were armed. All four of them had guns. Okay. And you'll see evidence of that. Now that okay, the prosecutor said one of them did. They put Travis's I'm, now she's saying GP, uh, address into the GPS 550T drive, despite the fact that Keishan had been there on a prior occasion. They put the GPS in. Um, you're going to hear that they intentionally parked several blocks away. They did not park at Travis's house. They knew where the house was. He shouldn't have been there. Oh, it's a map. I thought it was a picture collage. This is Travis's house. The men we might be able to put her on 1.25. And the reason they did that See, and at least with her, she at least projects. Yeah. They didn't want to give Travis an opportunity to prepare himself for the attack, so they parked the car way down here, never expecting a neighbor, Mr. Nash's camera, to capture that. Never expecting that. And what you're going to hear is when they parked the car way down here from Travis's house, despite the fact that they were parking the mail, they couldn't park the one he parked, they did it on purpose to come up and do a sneak attack on this again. Sneak attack. They didn't want to give him an opportunity yes. to prepare himself. And arm himself in case he needed to before armed men came to the door. You're going to see on the video something very interesting. You're going to see. They snuck out of him just like a bunch of no good, yeah. dirty ninjas. They opened the trunk of the car, and you're going to see Keyshawn Jones put his cell phone in the trunk. He takes his house keys, yep. puts them in the trunk. Sebastian takes his cell phone, iPhone, expensive iPhones, puts it in the trunk, takes his backpack, puts it in the trunk. They put all their personal items in the trunk because That's they know they're going in the there trunk, man. for violence. They don't want their property to get destroyed. What That's what the evidence the is going trunk. to show. What do they do then? They pile back into the car, and then they creep up a little bit closer, another block towards Travis's house, but still almost two blocks away. Again, so that he doesn't see them coming, so that they can sneak up at the door, so they can catch him when he's off guard. And do what they've been told to do. I'm to from Mega Pipe. That's all on video. If you're only going to talk to someone, 
Why would you do that? Why would you do that? And Keyshawn Jones is going to tell you that that's all he went there for. He wanted to talk. He wanted to have a peaceful chat with Travis, why he disrespected his sister. But he has no good answer why he needed his four brothers to go do that at midnight. Because that was not the intent. The evidence will clearly show he was there to shoot Stupid and kill Zippo Travis. Zippo running out of That's gas. That's what they were going to do. I just get the ones from Ring video. the gas station, the disposable ones. Zippos are cool, though. That's true. But I have the backup torch. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take my sleeping medicine. It's my bedtime here, so. Oh, no, you're going to flee? You're going to exit? You're no, I'll just wait till I get sleepy and... I'll let you know. <laughs> You're not allowed to be sleepy. You have to stick here for like the next 10 hours. Jeff? You have to stay at least two hours past me. I do? Yeah. yeah. Because I'm, I'm three joking. hours ahead of you. It's um, 1230 here. And she goes to sleep at like 10 o'clock every night. Yeah. I'll help cover the stream for you sometimes, Jeff. I'll make it up to you. <laughs> also, that pipe is epic, right? No, this is this is a this was a hand, this is a massive handmade pipe called a, the I think they called it the Dragon's Fire pipe. It is huge and it's awesome. That is amazing. That's yeah, some too. Gandalf level shit right there. I'm in love. It's how you get all the ladies. Mm -hmm. I think it's key that she said that. Um, Tyranny called him to let him know that his ex was calling around telling people he was going to get shot up. Yeah. Yep. Tyranny is calling. <laughs> is that a gun in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? I'm going to say it's the first one. <laughs> you can see Sebastian right from pocket a large bulge that is consistent with a fire dog it's also consistent with being a black man I think and you already know I didn't hear what she said so I can't there's a there's a large bulge there's a large bulge near his front pocket which she believes is consistent with a gun I think it just could be consistent with you know not being white Why can't white people ever have any good stereotypes like that? Mm, I think we have plenty of good stereotypes. Okay, that's a nine millimeter Taurus. So that's different than the than the Glock we were told about. That's a Taurus. Uh, the Glock was looks, not. Tyler Robinson there, had allegedly. a shirt on when he got mm. there, as you just saw. But before Travis got out and his brother DJ came out, he ripped his shirt off, readying himself for a fight. They kept all their guns in the pockets because they knew there were cameras there. They couldn't pull him out right there. But when they move the fight further away. It's like blazing hear, saddles. Let me just that. whip this out. <laughs> You're going to see on the ring video when they got there, Sebastian banged on the door very forcibly. DJ was right there. Like that one closest. Pop, pop, he came right out. Down where he's patting the door down politely. They're all telling you that. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> and they demanded to see he's Travis. Like, you he said you didn't Travis. have anything. And he goes, officer, I didn't. Now Travis, who was sleeping, hears some commotion at the front door. You're going to hear that he grabbed his gun. He ran to the door. He did not take the gun out. He put the gun by the door and the couch area. He didn't run right out with the gun. He goes to the door. He steps outside. And the minute he stepped outside, you're going to hear that Tyler Robinson sucker punched him on the side of the face. And Damn. before he could do anything, all four men were on top of him, immediately attacking him, beating him up. Hmm. He had no chance. He didn't run back in to get his gun and shoot. They were fighting. It was a big brawl. DJ then okay. got, gets involved. He's trying to pull all four men off his brother. They start then attacking DJ. He doesn't go back in to get his gun. The brawl continues. You're going to hear that the fight continues down the lawn. They're attacking him, beating him up. Sebastian and Tyler are beating up Travis two on one. And you're going to hear from Travis that at that point, Tyler Robinson took out his gun, pointed it at him, threatening to kill him, and said, it's demon time. It's demon time. What? What? You disrespected Dominique. It's demon time. 
it was only at that point that after Tyler Robinson pulled his gun that you're going to hear that Travis Rudolph got his. It was only after he was faced with the gun. Some you're going to hear he ran back into the house. Him. You're going to see it on the ring video. You're going to see he grabs his gun quickly that because it was Roman. left at the door, never took it out until he was forced to a gun, had a gun on him. You're going to see on the ring video, he runs back out with his gun. He trips and falls. He's, in, he's moving so quickly, gets right back up. When he gets back up, he walks back towards Tyler Robinson, the guy that pointed a gun at him. And Tyler Robinson at this point says, you got this, you got this. Now he's scared. Where have you gone, Tyler Robinson? Tyler Robinson. You got this, you got this. As though he's surrendering. And so he runs many away. guns everywhere, He starts man. running down Redwood. Mm. In the this is a of really great part. opening statement. Yeah. You're going to hear that at that moment, Travis looked down to follow him, to follow where Tra Tra Tyler was running. And what he saw was that his brother DJ was on the street on Redwood being attacked by two men. Good, fantastic Sebastian for reference there. and Chris Lowe, the two thing, on one, were beating time. the hell out of DJ. That happened not near the house. This sounds like really strong self-defense. It concerns well, me that it got past the initial trial, though, the initial hearing. Well, I, we'll, 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 we'll probably talk to it after. We'll talk about it after we get done with, with the opening statement here, but... If what he was saying and they were actually, they broke off, they disengaged and they were fleeing at the time he chased them down 300 yards and then put 39 rounds into them. So I think self-defense is off the table, but so far it's self-defense. But as he said, self-defense ends when murder begins or, you know, whatever murder begins when self-defense ends. So I, I think, you know, if, if it's going to rely on what they can show after this point, I think, what do you think? What do you guys think? I 100% agree. It it totally depends on what witnesses are saying and what video evidence we have and, and then how credible your witnesses see, are in the defense. And I I think this is I think this is an excellent trial for witness credibility because uh -huh. we will see just how credible each and every single one of these witnesses witnesses is. Uh and not to mention I am excited for Travis to testify, but this is an extreme case of uh, get a get a load of these witnesses and uh, how credible are they? Well, I think this is a very interesting thing. I just checked. He gave a 20 minute opening statement. She still has 30 minutes left on her opening statement. Mm -hmm. You usually see the opposite where the prosecutors will spend way too long on their opening statements and the defense will get up and go and eh, just have an open mind you know, weigh the evidence, do this. She is going to be spending about five times longer on the defense opening than the prosecution spent on their opening. And, Read into that and what you want. This, not that this is a spoiler, but I did make Mrs. Flux, but. Flux watch a little <laughs> bit with me. And she goes, wait, 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 wait. Didn't that just happen? Or is that a glitch? And I'm like, no, no, that's another objection. And I'm and okay. she's like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, the prosecution has nothing else. All they can do is object to try and like huh. get their witnesses to like well, not. And I think we're going to see what I think she is going to do right here is talk about how all of this didn't happen in front of the door. All of this happened about 300 yards away from the house where the cars were. I think mm -hmm. that's where she's going because she just brought out the map. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see if that's where this goes. But in the meantime, we've got a few things here. Jim said, Tala, if they wanted to be shot in the front, they should have ran towards me. Raylan Givens, some men just need killing. Steve Gosney. <laughs> Thank you so much. And also, Jim said, Tala, I'm surprised they didn't do a... We already did that one. Jackboy20, JWF Productions. Hey, Jeff. Do you do freelance voiceover and narrations? I may be looking for one. Why, yes, I could, I would be willing to do that. That depends, you know, depends what it is, but hey, you know, send me an email at thelegalvices at gmail.com or on Twitter at thelegalvices, doing the Twitter thing. Eh, whatever. Hey, I, that sounds kind of fun. Thank you so much for the super chat, by the way. Lacey Pettit. Thank you for covering this at Legal Vices. Sending you all love and peace this week. Insert Danny's boop here. Insert it, Danny. Wait, phrasing. Uh, I muted. Oh, God. Oh, go. Now you've ruined it. 
I know. Do your boop. Boop no, me. No, I can't. I can't. Boop me. Can't Insert your boop. Oh, boop me. God, not if you say it like that. <laughs> come to come check out my channel, people. It's wholesome AF. Gosh, damn please it. boop me, Danny. Please no. boop me. No boops. You know you want to boop me. Do it. You get no boops. Please do it, please. You ruined it. You get a ban. Mm. Ban. <laughs> You just hit your microphone. That's funny. I did. I'm sorry. And, and by the way, that uh, the 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 boop stick that is uh, from Unhung Hero, give, given Danny the gift of a boop stick. That is awesome. Isn't that so sweet? And then That's look, so sweet of Unhung Hero. Philip got me this one. It says ban, oh. and it says Danny yeah. on at the bottom. And ban I had Danny because she won't boop me. Ban Danny. That's the perfect no, gift. No, you get someone just ban. Oh. oh, okay. Oh. Talking oh. about inserting boops and whatnot. Shame hey, on you. you know. You're not going to boot me? Not now. Um, phrasing? Okay. <laughs> not now. All right. All right. No boop for me. John. <laughs> John Gordon Flux, thanks for showing us this abomination. Yes, thank you, Flux. You know, I'm here to serve. Service boop me. Words. Insert your boop, both of you. Um, John Jeff. Gordon. <laughs> Just Don, Soulless Ginger, new member. Thank you so much for becoming a new member. We're not going to talk about members because I'm better than that. This isn't gutter humor I've got going here. This is <laughs> this is high level. Good. Wholesome humor. So we'll put on member talk. And Wolfram, by the way, a while back, like, and by a while back, I mean about 50 minutes ago, gifted five Legal Vices memberships. I definitely want to say Yay! thank you for that. So thank you very much for gifting five Legal Memberships the five legal vices memberships but don't stop there there's more to come uh again ju uh, just don told ginger which he joined the clean and sober crew and uh, lacy pettit also had the four months membership in the bent halos and broken wings mm. high level membership there it says definitely can't pass up sharing this milestone best youtube decision I've ever made oh Aww. vice squad forever oh we love you lacy pettit you are awesome and wolfram also gifted an additional 10 legal vices memberships so if any of you got a gifted nice. membership thank wolfram for those because he is awesome he is awesome and jake boy 20 also i live in massachusetts and i think it was the house full of cops that killed the other cop did you hear about that story? What? Oh, that's bad too. Oh yeah. Oh, that's what we're we're covering that one. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, that's we're, right. Yeah. We're what gonna be doing more on that this, this week. World. Oh, it's so bad. It's like, oh, talk about like my gaslighting and mind screwing somebody. Yeah, we we will be talking. We, we, it appears that the police may have framed a woman and and said that. Uh, she killed her ex-boyfriend cop by running him over with a car in front of a cop's house that was full of a bunch of cops at a cop party. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, we're we're talking more about that. We'll be talking more about that on Wednesday, as a matter of fact. Oh, by the way, let's let's grift for everybody while we're here. Me this week. Uh, there will be no Maritime Monday this week. This is our this is our Maritime Monday deal. Uh, so this this is taking this is just taking the place of it because it's a it's a holiday. I'm having doing the morning stream instead of the the Monday stream. Uh, tomorrow tomorrow regular time will be uh, what is it 9 a.m. Eastern time will be Law and Lumber Rob. We're going to be talking about some stuff. Wednesday will be a catch up on all of the outstanding cases. We're going to be doing a little little snippet little updates on all of the outstanding cases we've been looking at just to sort of give you a where are we at this point in time. Thursday OJ and Friday will be the one and only Drexel. Drexel will be joining us on Friday for a completely off the hook stream as always. Danny on direct needs to, she needs your subscriptions if you don't already have them. And she needs you to like every single video she's ever done with an extra emphasis on the ones that I'm a part of. So Danny Grift. That's it. Just come check me out. Come have a good time. I give you boops and blessings or bans if you're bad. And on top of, the, or I will ban whoever you give me money to ban. Uh, on top of that, we also have <laughs> Can I give streaming. You ban Val? Huh? Can I give you money to ban Val? No, you couldn't pay me anything in the world to to ban Val. Uh, <laughs> but that all being said, go check out my channel. 
subscribe, send me all your money. Sundays we do a cult stream, or at least we are going to start doing cult streams. Uh, we had a special guest, uh, Ms. Wisco, Natalie Wisco, uh, joined us tonight. And we will be streaming every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So that is that is significant. Yes, Flex? Don't we have our unexplained stream that we're supposed to do this Friday? We have an unexplained stream this Friday. Cool. I will okay. also be streaming right. in addition to the unexplained stream. Uh, where this mm -hmm. Friday we will be talking about the, the certain ranch. Mm -hmm. Yes, Friday evening on, on which channel? On Flux's channel, right? Flux's channel. channel. Yes. Yep. Friday evening, Eastern time. Yep. Awesome. Unexplained. And so and, that uh, will be the last, but if you haven't but, already, leave a like, you guys. There was 500 viewers, and we only have 200 some odd likes. It really does help us in the algorithm, and it spreads the good word of Legal Vices, yours truly, Law for Dighty, and Flux, our amazing one and only. So please leave a like in this video on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Exactly. And what she meant by sending all of your money to her, she meant what you have left after giving it all to me first. No, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. And then uh, Flux. What's up? House of Flux. House of all Flux. one word, two X's. House of Flux. I, I paint. Uh, I do Minecraft streams. I tried playing sh uh, Chivalry. That game is just chaos. That game is straight up chaos. And... Um, but yeah, on Thursday, I'm going to have Solomon Anderson on my channel at Sweet. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. Well, and, and speaking of Solomon it. Anderson, the one thing you're going to want to watch on my Wednesday stream as part of all this catch up. There was some tool out there. And OK, I'm, I'm sorry. I, let me retract. There, there, there's there's a, a fellow YouTube content creator out there a by tool. the name of Dr. G, who is a I believe he's a, he was a, a licensed I can't remember if he said psychologist or psychiatrist, uh, but he also is a body language expert. And he did a body language analysis of uh, the Zachariah Anderson sentencing. And I was utterly disgusted by listening to that absolute insanity that he spewed. Uh, so I'll be I'll be breaking down that video on Wednesday. Ooh, I am excited. Um, so yeah. But make sure you go to House of Flux, subscribe to her, like all of yes. her videos. Absolutely I, fun stuff. And if you give her enough likes, she'll eventually send the painting that she painted for me about a million years ago. I finished it like two months ago. You only <laughs> gave me your address like two days after that. <laughs> F does the best Mormon guilt ever, ever. Hey, Danny, remember that. how you said you were going to be here on time that time that you said yeah. it seven times? Yeah, you were still late, Danny. Well, she's already made Steve Gosney like a dozen paintings, and she still hasn't well, no, given me the I've, one painting. I, I've <laughs> made one for him, and I'm working on another one for him. Um, <laughs> but no, so I'm really excited to have Solomon on. I really, like, you know, he's he's going on all the different channels. It's been awesome because... yeah. It's almost like I've watched everybody's interview and it's like through everybody's interview, I've known like what I want them to touch on and emphasize. Like, no, there really was no DNA because it wasn't proven one way or the other. So no, there's no DNA. So there, there are th certain things um, I'm excited to just hit on. So I'm excited for that. Interview. Me as well. Uh, and MG Law, talking about the Karen Reed case, said, uh, may have framed a woman. That's one hell of an understatement. Yeah, we'll, we'll be doing more Karen Reed this Wednesday, too, as well. Mm. Horses are fruit, right, Flux? Always. And bees are fish, according to yeah. California. But did you also know that the watermelon is the Oklahoma State uh, vegetable? How is a fruit a vegetable? Because uh, it grows on the ground? Because a watermelon is not a vegetable. It is technically a gourd in the vegetable family. So Oklahoma was like, we're okay. making it our state vegetable. Or is that sort of like Ronald Reagan making a tomato a vegetable, declaring yeah. tomato a vegetable just so it can count as a fruit group don't come on your, for me. a food group on I'm your just tray. The messenger. Yeah. No, that was I the thing back in the eighties. Ronald me. Reagan did that because you had to have one of each food group in your student's lunch. So he declared that uh, ketchup was a fruit. That's all right. They're yeah. going to start declaring <laughs> bugs are a meat. 
So mm, delish. Well, that'll go fine here in Korea. Fiery Red Podcast is all right. I got to run for the night. Good night, Legal Vices Flux, Danny, Ozzy, Overlaw, Dazzer, Jay Lieb, got just Don Soul's gender and mods and chat. I missed. Have a great night. It was very, very good, good to night. have you. Here. Good night. And also, there there is a huge, huge development. Okay, I guess. Okay, I guess it is publicly known. I because. Uh, Solomon was talking with me this morning about it, but I didn't know if it was public information. But apparently it is because a couple of people in chat have mentioned it. Uh, Robert Barnes has agreed to help uh, Zachariah Anderson pro bono with his appeal. Wow. Did you, see, did you guys see them talking about it on Viva? No. No, I didn't. Oh. I'll have to check it, was, it out. Uh, MLS Law Show posted, it's like, I think, um, maybe like a 10 or 15 minute clip of them talking about it. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. And yes, yes. And Robert oh, Barnes the is the yes. shit. Yo, yes. Will someone get me in touch with him? I sent him a DM. So, cause I'm just a little lonely loser over here. And he's I never really... responded to a single DM that I've ever sent him. Because I really want to interview him on his thoughts with DeSantis and why yeah. he's still so pro-Trump. I'm really intrigued because um, I'm a conservative Republican and I'm just interested to see people's varying opinions one way or well, the yeah. other. So if, if, I, I, if, I uh, if Viva is on Eric Hunley's uh, Friday stream, then I'll, I'll mention it to him. To, Please to do. You're the best, Jeff. Thank you. You might want to. I think they were talking about it in the Facebook page today. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, that's that's kind of a big thing. Barnes is the shiz. If you, if you don't know who Robert Barnes is, he's done a lot of stuff, including uh, Alex Jones. He represented Alex Jones. He's represented a bunch of other people. He's representing a bunch of people now. Amazing, amazing lawyer. He's so, so badass. He's he so is. masculine. It makes me sick. I don't know. He's not as masculine as me, but you know, he gets by. Uh. Mm -hmm. I feel like you two would get along really well. Oh, we like, would. I feel like we, you guys are like mask, like the man, like the men man. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. There's so not it, enough, it, there's not enough masculine men in this world. So there's plenty I'll of testosterone. There. And I love because the Dylan Mulvaney gave up his. All right. Man. Let's uh, move, let's get back into this trial here. Say, we we have gone so far afield. What? Go ahead. I love the fact that like our, you know, we're just a bunch of wholesome degenerates and we've kind of like adopted the Zachariah Anderson case and have made it our mission to like, no, this <laughs> isn't going to work. No, please. No, thank you. <laughs> it's just been... Uh, been... <laughs> uh, Femme Natal, member for three months of the Clean and Sober Crew, asks, when is the next Unexplained? As we have said, it will be this Friday evening. Flux is going to set it up. It will be on House of Flux on YouTube. And uh, we, we've still only got like seven hours left on this, so we better get moving. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that's, I think she's going to go back and tell us why he didn't run 300 yards chasing them down. Nowhere near here. She said nowhere near here. Down here closer to where the car was parked. PJ was being attacked. Feet by Sebastian. Oh. Whoa. The nice. Whoa. Nice. I want some of this. Um. Wow. Wow, wow. wow. I literally had an oh, old red line with a $400 super chat. I honest to wow. God have no idea how to react to this because uh, 200 is the is the most I've ever, ever received. And that was from the Brandon Collective and D what? Um, thanks. Uh, th 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 I got nothing. Thanks. That's all I've, all I've got. I'm I'm so proud of all the law tubes who have rallied around Zachariah Anderson. It's the whole point of really loving our legal system. legal system we're gonna see how horribly me messed up this was this was not justice holy cow that's a big super chat it it, it is i i mean danny didn't get any but do we get a danny dance um <laughs> Because I don't have a Danny dance in me because you didn't. I, I don't want to. Movie. I don't want to yeah. you to lose your okay. viewers. But 
But no. what I will do wow. is I will boop old red line, uh, uh -huh. old lime red. I there's not enough to gratefully like to express my gratitude, except to say I gave a really good blessing to someone earlier that I'm going to give to you, mm. old lime red. Old Lime Rand, you strike me as a very classy individual. You strike me as a person who, when you walk into the room, you are the party. People come to just see you, which is excellent. And having that been said, I bless you, Old Lime Red, that from this day forward, every time you insult someone and you don't want to lose favor with those around you, that person won't know that you've insulted them. Your insult will be mm. so clever and so underhanded that it will take them until they are 20 minutes away from anyone else for them to realize that they were just destroyed by your stunning and brilliant intellect. So that is my blessing to you from mm. this day forward. Boop. And, and I, I, I th this calls for a, a super special cheers of some sort. So I'm going to let this play and I'm going to go get a, a something, a, a special bottle of something and, and crack it open. And uh, Hey, look, I'm Wilson from home improvement. <laughs> Old red line again. I'm absolutely utterly, utterly humbled. And I, I got, uh, I got nothing witty or clever to say just from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for that absolute amazing generosity it's deeply 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 appreciated and Ma and uh mahalo man mahalo man thank you so much for your super chat hey, as well hey, danny hey. needs to have some merch one item could be bandanas with a ban hammer printed on them she could call them ban dannies i like that ban oh, dannies brilliant. there you go there mahalo you go. man That's mahalo awesome. brother thank you and uh, I can tell you that I promise this week we will have Law Racks merch out. We will have a Law Racks t-shirt and hoodie available. Uh, Just put in on, time for summer. Put on uh, Feed the Ducks. I'll do a little super chat dance while you go get yourself a drink. Feed the Ducks? What's Feed the Ducks? Or walking the duck, feeding the ducks. It's feeding the geese is like is like a euphemism for you know something, but um, it's, I don't it's know. It's a what... song. It's in your video. It's in your music on Streamlabs. Or there's lo-fi. Oh, do you not use Streamlab or Streamyard? I use Streamyard. I use Streamyard. Yeah, go to your right. See where it says brand. Yeah. yeah. And then scroll down, and there's music tunes. You can turn yes, on music while you leave. Yeah, just put on a song. And it's called feeding the ducks. Uh -huh. That's weird because like feeding the geese is a is a. Okay, I don't want to know the euphemism. I have it's for masturbation. I I want yeah. to remain ignorant. Well, these are these are ducks, not geese. Feeding they the are geese ducks, is, is and nice. ducks are very cute. I'll I'll be back in one minute. Flux, you have to dance with me. Okay. Wait. No, that's good. You like my super matronly dress today? I do. That's so cute. It's what what is that called? A uh, baby doll like, dress? I don't know. It's because it's like a. I'm here. I just want to keep watching. Jeff, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I don't, this is why you can't have nice things, Jeff. Uh, <clears throat> um, no, I, I just got here. And uh, as I was as I was going about my business, I was just thinking, you know, 
there's probably someone that's really interested in this trial that just joined us right now and is like, what the fuck did I just walk into? <laughs> You should, oh, for those who don't know, if you go to my channel, I'm sure most of you already have, but if you don't, you know, whenever I get a hundred dollar super chat on my channel, I do what is called the, well, what you just witnessed, the hundred dollar super chat dance here. There was a $300 super chat that was so powerful that it echoed throughout the, the space and time of the interwebs connected Dionysus, our very own Jeff legal vices to me it was so powerful it forced me to do the dance well, that and, and is how powerful that that super chat was thank you very and, much and to, to quote scarface it's the best lawyer in miami first you get the money then you get the power then you get the women then you make them dance for you uh <laughs> wait i added <laughs> or okay. that <laughs> so, uh, everybody wants the doggo chat or the doggo video by the way yeah i'm had a malfunction so i'm going to have oh. to uh, reboot that and do that we will get back with the doggo cam as we go oh hang on we got it all right sorry flux just don't get over in the copyright cut cage there for a second um but again we, we're just taking this little brief pause here because old red line was so super generous i uh, i'm opening one of my bottles that if you know you know bottle i know it's one of i know danny enjoys it it's an it's a uh it's plants. It's a relatively cheap bottle, but it's highly allocated, and they can sell for hundreds of dollars on the secondary market. It, I'm opening a bottle of Blanton's, which is an unheard of whiskey in Korea. It, it is virtually non-existent here, and this is a Blanton's with the first letter N horse on top. Uh, yeah, wow. the, the, the Blanton's horse here. I love Blanton's so much. It's the best ever. <laughs> This was uh, bottled in on uh, August 22nd, 2019 uh, at 93 proof. So it's 46.5% alcohol. Oh my gosh. I love Blanton. Oh, I'm so jealous. Oh, does it smell like Kentucky? Does it smell like the mm. sun setting on an old barn with like mm. the, the little dust, the rays of dust? Oh, I love Blanton's. <sighs> So I yeah, this is the get back into drinking. This 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 is a, an 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 amazing uh, bottle of Blandons that I've been saving for about three years. But because this was an amazing super chat, cheers to you! Thank you very much. <laughs> Jeff, you need to share that bottle with me if I end up in Korea. By the way. Oh my God, that is so good. Well, you you might be here in a couple of weeks, so this is waiting for you. Oh, that's the best. That's so good. I'm gonna have another one. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to drink it slow. Um, this Blanton's is so good. All right. Thank you That's again fun. so much. Let's get, yeah, let's get back to the trial here. Uh, does this smell like Kentucky? Mm. Ah, wow. That's so good. I, I haven't had Blanton's in so long. That almost brought tears to my eyes. <sighs> All right. Let's get back to this and I'll put, I'll reboot doggo cam and uh, we'll get back into it. Thank you again. Sorry that derailed everything for about a million years, but it deserved it. Matt Schmidt said, Legal Vice is good morning from Vienna to the panel. Just heard the Robert Barnes news. That's effing awesome. Also watching you, Joe, and the movie Hannibal at the same time. Free Zach. Oh, I didn't know Joe was doing his thing tonight. All right. Oh, well. Hey, Joe. Great Joe Walsh out, by the way. Anyway. Travis is impeached. Hunter Biden is telling you that when he saw Sebastian and BJ fighting on Redwood, nowhere near the house, that he did not want to get into their fight. He did not want BJ and Sebastian to have a fair fight. So what did he do? He ran up and sucker punched him and jumped in. He's going to mm. tell you it was two on one, and that's the way he wanted it. And that's what Travis saw when he looked down the street. He saw two men beating up his brother. And he knew one of them that was running in that direction had a gun. So what did he do? He ran down the street to help his brother. He had his gun on him. And when he got down the street, the four men quickly ran away again, and they ran into the car. What you're going to hear is Sebastian was in the front passenger seat. Keyshawn was driving. Chris Lowe was in the back. Tyler Robinson attempted to get in the car, but never really got into it. I'll explain why in a moment. And when they piled into the car, you're going to hear. Hang on. I know what I'm doing. I did that on purpose. Hang on. <laughs> Just hang tight. Before At least your chat's not like going, Elaine. On the door frame of the back. 
I had to his do gun, to reboot pointed Dog at DJ and Travis, ready to shoot. And it was only then that two men were pointing their guns at him. It was either him or them, 20 feet away, that he took his gun and he fired in quick succession, 39 rounds. Yes, that's what happened. He struck Sebastian, and the reason he struck Sebastian was Sebastian wasn't ducking. He was sitting upright pointing a gun. That's why he got hit. Keyshawn will tell you he ducked. That's why he wasn't hit. Chris Lowe is going to tell you he ducked. That's why he wasn't hit. Tyler was hit because Tyler was in the doorframe pointing his gun Tyler didn't ready to kill him. Work. And that's why he was hit. Their stories match. The evidence is consistent with that because that's the truth. Thank you, that Tyler. He We're had two hours. Them or him and his brother. You're going to hear, as I said, that when Chris Lowe tried to get in the car, he either jumped out, fell out, we don't really know, but he never made it in the car. He ran away. He ran several blocks away. He ran, he ran so You're going to hear far away. That rather than keeping his gun on him, he didn't do anything wrong, right? He ditched it. He didn't want the police to find it, so he tossed it. Thank God for the... What? Mr. Robinson, excuse me. Mr. Robinson, oh, hang on, she said the wrong name. Uh, I don't want the lawyers up here, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please. Uh, the uh, voice of God has spoken from the I bench. So remember to obey the four cardinal rules. And uh, Julia 543 has legal advices. Who will be at Matsuri with you? Nobody will be with me. I'm a loner. I'm a rebel. I'm a loner. There are things about me you wouldn't want to know. Uh, good Pee Wee Herman reference for those of you that are cool. But there will be people that are there at the same time as me that I will be interacting with. Uh, Flux will be there. Danny is still undecided, if I'm correct. Come on. Wait, wait, oh what are God. the dates? I might be in Monaco. 9th to the 13th. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll come. Of August. We can. Yay! It was not and Chris Lowe, it was Tyler Chandler, Robinson. Mrs. Flux is iffy. He's the one that ditched his gun. Sorry, I misspoke. He ditched uh, his gun. Jess, he Jessica reloaded. So we tossed it. Hayden, but and of course, Nick has got his a booth thing, Camelot, lots of other important it was folks. In his path of travel. They were able to find the blood trail, and that's how they found it. I'll come down on like the after 11th. the shooting. DJ and that's what I'm Travis down went there. home. Uh, Linda was crying. Travis was shaken. DJ was shaken. They, they adrenaline they was were running. shook. They I believe is the proper proper term. Wrap their head around what just occurred. And they're in Florida. You're going to hear they that were not stirred. Within an hour or so of that happening, mm. Tierney Coleman and her husband, mm. who's an ex FBI agent, Tierney. came to the house. And. They weren't there for that purpose. They were dropping something off, coincidentally. But, of course, they walked into this mess. And they spoke about what happened. You're going to hear that DJ was pacing. Linda was shaken. Travis was shaken. Everybody was crying. Everybody was upset by what happened. Shook they did not call the police, though. Shaken. You're going to hear that Ms. Coleman shaken and her husband bait. left shortly thereafter. When they were leaving the house, they were stopped by law enforcement officers who were in the area. They were detained. They were taken out of their vehicle by at gunpoint, hands up. They were zip tied. They were thrown back into the police vehicle. Eventually, they were released because they realized they had nothing to do with this. You're going to hear that a, a neighbor across the street, a guy named Ruben Estes, who's lived in this neighborhood for many years, good friends with the Rudolph family. He heard fighting earlier in the evening between Travis and Dominique Jones. He heard Miss Jones calling him a broke bitch over and over and over. Mr. Estes is going to come in and tell you that he also heard the fight and the yelling and the attack later in the evening at midnight. He's going to tell you that it was so scary that he went and got his gun, put a clip in it because he feared for his own safety and he was inside his house. That's how bad this was. He'll tell you that at any given moment when he was watching, there were at least two men on top of each of the Rudolph boys. They didn't Ooh, stand a chance. That's going to be his testimony. What you're going to hear is that after Keyshawn Jones just, left that area on Redwood, he started heading south towards Del Rey. We're at 1.25. He drove five miles on US-1, which then turns into Broadway in West Palm Beach. The car was shot. You're going to hear that no time during that five-mile drive did they call 911 while Keyshawn lay beside them shot, bleeding to death? Mm. Not once. You're going to hear that during that five-mile drive, they had ample opportunity to toss their guns. That stretch of road is dark. There's a lot of abandoned buildings, closed businesses. It's not a well-lit residential area. This is US-1 turning into Broadway. They ditched their guns. 
either there or where they eventually ended up. When they got to 40th and Broadway, that's the spot that their car basically died. It ended up in a dark, abandoned- Strawberry likes smoke tobacco shop. smoke. You're Strawberry likes pipe smoke. From an officer, the first officer on scene, Officer Panagua, that he found something to be very suspicious. When he drove by 40th and Broadway, he saw two silhouettes and he found it odd Doug was that trying to breathe the pipe were not smoke. flagging That's him down. To do. He noted that. He rolled up on them and they never said, hey, help, we need help. We have someone shot. They tried to duck him and he thought that was strange. You're going to hear Keyshawn did call 911, but not until the car stopped. You're going to hear that he passed the hospital that he was allegedly trying to go to, passed two large hospital signs, when it about four or five blo blocks, full city blocks south of where St. Mary's Hospital was, where he was supposedly going to bring his friend. You're going to hear that this investigation- Windows are roughly open, she's trying to catch the smoke. Two scenes, Deke Redwood and then at 40th and Broadway. This whole of the 50 police officers, over here. roughly, there were sergeants, detectives, law, uh, uh, PBSO deputies. Elaine, you need to close the comment before you move the camera because no one could see anything. Not one of those people well, I here. searched the path of that path of travel that Keyshawn Jones, Jones drove for five miles. Never looked for any tossed guns. You're going to hear that while at 40th and Broadway, mm. Keyshawn and Chris Lowe had roughly two hours together to get their story straight before they were interviewed by what would eventually be the lead detective, Vanderlyn. Mm. You're going to hear that while on scene at 40th and Broadway, Keyshawn Jones was interviewed first. His interview was 10 minutes long in a homicide investigation. You're going to hear that Detective Vanderlyn was a rookie cop. She had only had one or two homicide investigations done uh, prior to this incident. Okay. She was overwhelmed, didn't care, out of her league. Sustained, sustained. You're going to hear that this was a shoddy investigation. <laughs> Sustained. You're going to hear during this 10 minute sworn under no oath statement that Keyshawn never told Detective Vanderlyn that Dominique sent him a text messages to go shoot up his shit. You're going to hear that during this 10 minute sworn statement that she took, um, he never told Detective Vanderlyn that he said that Travis was a dead man walking. He left all of that out. What he did tell Detective Vanderlyn was that he and his friends were going over to Travis's to have a talk, and he painted a portrait that this was just a peaceful discussion. He never mentioned to Detective Vanderlyn that anybody had a gun. He never told her that Tyler had a gun. Never mentioned that. At 2.09, Chris Lowe was interviewed, and that was a seven-minute interview. Um, he told, never told Detective Vanderlyn that anybody had a gun, and Detective Vanderlyn had an opportunity to take his cell phone that night and never did and has not to this day because she believes his cell phone is inconsequential to this case and anything contained on it, cell phone logs, text messages, anything has nothing to do with this case. 17 minute investigation. That's no, what it took. No obligation, we'll call her. magic. Don't, you know, if you made efforts and it was rebuffed Sustain. by Apple, then I appreciate there it. Were, between no. the two interviews, there was a 17 minute investigation between those two witnesses. And Travis Rudolph was arrested that night. Hmm. You're going to hear that Chris Lowe gave a subsequent sworn statement a few months later on July 21st of 21. And in that sworn statement, he said, regarding the attack on Dominique, we had to address this. Good we point. weren't going to let this slide. We don't call the police. That's not how we operate. Right or wrong, we're helping Keyshawn. That's what brothers do. All four would back each other up to the end of the earth. And he's the one that said when Keyshawn gets mad, he puts on his hoodie. And he said, Keyshawn always carries a gun. While on scene at 40th and Broadway, besides all those 50 or so officers and detectives and lieutenants, everybody showing up, you're going to hear that there was a medical examiner investigator that showed up and took a number of photographs and took several photographs of Sebastian's hand. Okay, why is his hand important? When you die, whatever position you're in is very accurate. You know, <laughs> important. When he got there, it appeared that nobody touched his hand, but it appears that something. So if you die with your hand like this, you're going to hear from a defense mm -hmm. expert, Dr. Donner, 
Sure looks like you were holding something. Former medical examiner, Palm Beach County, former medical examiner, Dade County, that he has handled many, many cases involving suicides and death where somebody was holding a gun in their hand. And he's gonna to talk to you about something called a death grip and what that means and why it's his opinion that the position of his hand is consistent with Sebastian having held a gun. Hmm. So are they saying someone took the gun out of his hand? After Chris Lowe in that five mile and Keishan were excused by Detective Vandalin from the scene at 40th and Broadway, you're going to hear that they made a FaceTime call. As daily as possible, Jones, Lorraine. And told her Sebastian was dead. And they talked. You're also going to hear that they FaceTimed, that Dominique FaceTimed Keyshawn and Chris Lowe while they were at Tyler's hospital room, which is where they eventually went. And the four of them, Keyshawn, Dominique, Tyler, Chris Lowe, were all FaceTiming in Tyler's hospital room at St. Mary's Hospital before Dominique Jones was interviewed by the police. They're FaceTiming? Come on. Before they were interviewed. Detective Emma was sent to St. Mary's Hospital to interview witnesses. And when he got there, you're going to hear that Dominique Jones was there and he interviewed her. He was surprised at how much detail she knew. Dominique Jones never told the Detective Emma that she ordered Keyshawn to shoot Travis. She never told Detective Emma that Keyshawn was a dead man walking. She never told him that she broke Travis's phone, hit him over the head with a trophy, or broke his PlayStation, hit him over the head with a team. Oh, do, do we have an Anna sighting? Apparently we do. Linda. She never told him anything. Anna, we've got doggo cam just for you, Anna. To Travis, that her brother was going there. At 3.51 in the morning, Detective Ema, and he doesn't see any bruises or injuries on her either. At 3.51, Detective Ema takes a statement, a sworn statement, just like Dominique's, of Tyler Robinson. Tyler Robinson doesn't tell him that he carried a gun. He never well, told him that he told him. See, now we have a very interesting thing. Like you said, the, the prosecution, the only, they Tyler only said in their opening statement there was one gun that was never used. Eight. She's giving very on compelling late, evidence for all now four. Interviewed by the lead detective well, not evidence. She's been giving a very powerful statement now that all four of them had the gun guns. Because they found oh, yeah. it a few hours earlier. Hmm. Now he can't lie. Now he has to admit it was his gun. Because they have it right there. He tells Detective Vanderlyn that he's the one that called everybody to his house to gather up. Vanderlyn, Detective Vanderlyn, tells him at that time that there was a camera outside, but doesn't say what it showed. And that's important because when Tyler came to uh, the state attorney's office for a sworn statement a couple of months later on June. Sure. Wow, the prosecution again, certainly has a stretch, lot ladies and gentlemen, of remembering objections. and obeying the four cardinal rules. It's the only thing they have. The you judge's voice is golden, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On June sixteenth of twenty twenty one. And and yeah, I I do like his voice. I like her voice. She's like she's got that Edie Falco, uh, you know, Mrs. Soprano voice going. Uh, I, I like I like her voice. Like the judge got a great voice. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, you may be wondering, what what's that Star Wars girl Anna doing here? She is like a ridiculous like uh, true crime aficionado. So she lurks occasionally. Hey Anna. One. Um, Tyler was subpoenaed to the state attorney's office. I've already described a little bit about, um, well, that was the other statement, I apologize. On the, on the 16th, he comes to the state attorney's office and he spoke to attorneys, myself, the prosecutors were present, a court reporter for about two hours. And he admitted that he owned the nine millimeter Taurus that Keyshawn Jones had sold it to him. Um, he also uh, did not have a concealed weapons permit at the time. So he was carrying a concealed weapon. Uh, which is a felony. Yet to this day, he's never been charged or prosecuted for that crime. Which well, that answers some of your questions. Prison sentence. He told us in deposition that he spoke with uh, Keyshawn and Dominique by FaceTime while at the hospital and told them about Sebastian and that they spoke about it. Um, Chris Lowe came to the hospital room to see him before he was interviewed or spoke to the police and said that Dominique FaceTimed Chris and Keyshawn while he was in the hospital room and that all four had talked before he was oh, in This is not the Rittenhouse judge. This is in Florida with a, he said with a much better really judge. important during that deposition. He said that Sebastian adamantly told him to bring his gun that night. Mm. Sebastian told him to bring his gun that night and everybody knew it and everybody there at Tyler's house heard it. That's important because none of the other boys told the police that they there was a gun or that Tyler had a gun. They all lied. During, after that line of questioning, Tyler, remember, now he knows that there was a, a video at the house because Detective Vandalin told him that two months prior. He remembers nothing about what happened at the door because he, he now knows there was a camera there. Huh. But after questions about what happened after the attack at the door, 
he now has a memory again. He said it's Travis came out shooting, heard his mom telling Travis to stop. He said Travis was having trouble with the gun Chandler. and he couldn't pull the slide Happy back. Happy birthday, Chandler. And Travis was shooting Happy at him while Chandler. he was running away. And he admitted to tossing the gun. A couple of months later, he was subpoenaed again to give another sworn statement. And what you're going to hear in that statement, he was questioned by Mr. Shiner and prosecutors, and he said he doesn't remember receiving a call or text from Dominique, doesn't know who shot him, doesn't remember giving a taped statement to police, doesn't remember Keyshawn, Chris, and Sebastian coming to his house to meet. He testified under oath, subject to perjury, that he doesn't remember anything from that night. He doesn't remember taking his gun to Travis, Travis Rudolph's house. Mm. Doesn't remember the fight. Doesn't remember who drove the car. Doesn't remember coming to the state attorney's office to give a two-hour deposition. He admitted that he's not on any medication and doesn't know why he couldn't remember anything. He can't remember if he went to Travis's house or not and doesn't remember throwing the gun away. I mean, that was his sworn yes, testimony. but... You're going to also hear that Dominique Jones refused to give police her cell phone. Eventually did, 10 or so days later. She did a consent. But by then she had deleted evidence, incriminating evidence. She deleted the text messages to go shoot up his shit. She deleted the text messages that her brother sent that Travis is a dead man walking. She deleted this evidence because it was incriminating and she didn't want the police to have it or this jury to see it. Mm. But remember, Keyshawn's phone was in the back of that caddy and that caddy was now in police custody. He could not get his cell phone. It was in police custody. And they found those text messages on his phone. And they found Ain't those text messages bitch. eventually on Tyler Robinson's phone. And that's how we have them. Wow. You're going to hear that when she finally did turn her police, uh, her phone over to the police 10 or so days later, she didn't turn it in to Detective Vandalin herself. She sent her friend, Paloma Feliciano. She didn't want to be interviewed. Oh, Paloma, Paloma Feliciano. I'm like a bird in the sky. Very Sorry, telling. All you Slim Whitman fans out Remember, there. Remember, she was interviewed. Dominique was interviewed about 2.45 like in the morning. Like over 60 on or the, me. Excuse me, on the 7th. Paloma, At 10 or so Paloma, the following, Paloma, that morning, I'm like a bird two hours later. You're going to hear that Dominique um, was doing some searches and she forgot to delete it when she turned her phone over to Detective Vandalin. And that search history was as follows. Stand your ground law in Florida. Self-defense in Florida. Self-defense, stand your ground law. Florida stand your ground law. Prosecuting attorney, Mark Schreiner, net worth. Pro bono, which means free, lawyer. JetBlue mean pro bono. Service. Pro bono, which means free. <laughs> Those are the witnesses you're going to hear. I'm pro boner. That's what you're going to be asked to rely upon, and that's what you're going to be asked to base your verdict on. You're also going to hear that there were many, many things that Detective Vanderlyn failed to do. As I just said, she didn't get to Dominique's phone until the 16th, given her ample time to destroy evidence, which is exactly what she did. She never forensically examined Sebastian's phone. Chris Flo's phone to this day has never been seized. She said it was inconsequential. She never had anybody search the path of the Cadillac, never did a search for guns, Sebastian's, Keyshawn's, Chris's. I love the name. She never asked the 50 officers to do any search, although she had all of them at her disposal. What was that? I didn't hear you. She never bothered like to speak to Tierney Coleman. She never bothered to mm. speak to Linda Rudolph. She never got a search warrant. Sure. Oh my God. Once again. Four cardinal rules. Once again, they prosecutor, they shut up. They, it, they literally have nothing. The only thing. Ever the All only right, the objection is sustained. Is Ladies and gentlemen, jury, you're to disregard Ooh. that uh, last statement concerning the uh, interview. Yeah. Never asked. D disregard that statement. Let me tell you what statement you're not supposed to pay attention to again. Nice. This this reminds me so much of football, like the very last part of the game where the opposing yeah. team has lost everything and they're just calling freaking timeouts for no reason because they can. That's mm -hmm. sort of what this reminds me of. Yeah, the, the last two minutes takes 45 minutes to get through. Yeah. <laughs> why, why he said that Travis was a dead man walking. Oh, we're just about done with their testimony. followed up with Keyshawn. Oh, this is, is the end. That out. She never followed up with Dominique about her text to this day. She's had DJ's phone in evidence since April 6th of 2021 and to this day has never forensically examined it. Oop. You're going to hear that between the hour, hours of 10, 16 p.m. and 1.31 in the morning on April 6th into April 7th, that Tyler Robinson made 29 outgoing calls, texts, and FaceTime calls to Dominique, Keyshawn, Sebastian, Chris Lowe, and some others. Tyler Robinson received 24 incoming calls, texts, FaceTime calls between the hours of 10.16 p.m. 
and 1.31 p.m. from Dominique, Keyshawn, Chris, and others. These other people included someone by the name of Hack, H-A-C-K. Hack? Who Tyler Robinson lunch? FaceTimed at 11.39 yeah. a.m., 20 minutes before the shooting and before the men arrived at Travis's house. And the text from Tyler to Hack says, Travis's address is 550 Keek Drive. Keek Drive? <laughs> What? We don't know why Hack was going to the house to meet these four armed men or what role he played. Four armed and or why four armed Hack was needed at the Rudolph residence Wait, to what? talk for the purpose of talking <laughs> to Mr. Rudolph. Sorry. Keyshawn and his armed brothers were not noblemen. They weren't chivalrous. They didn't witness an attack on an innocent woman. They were vigilantes. They were four men who went there to retaliate and kill <laughs> just as they were ordered to do. Wow. We don't want to plunge you in the darkness. We want the lights on. We want the fag unfolded. That's what we want. And that's what you're going what to hear unfolded? from the defense. Travis Rudolph acted in self-defense. And that is the truth. Thank you. Fan unfolded. All right. Thank you, Ms. Perlet. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you okay? Oh. Ready to hear the first witness, whomever that may be? Yes? Do you need so a break? you know that picture that I sent Anybody need you? a break? Raise your hand. Okay. I don't <laughs> this judge. What was that? What was that in here? Everybody, everybody, raise your hand. If you need a break, do you need a break? Yeah. Is Who's going to pee? Raise your hand. <laughs> Somebody, raise your hand right now. I got to go. Oh. oh, my gosh. All right. For, why are we buffering? I guess it's probably like a holiday and literally everybody in Korea is just sitting on their computer playing computer games or some stupid thing like that. Probably. Wait, it's a holiday there, too? Yes, it's Buddha's birthday. Oh, but yeah, we're we're in the midst of our Buddha's birthday holiday. That's right. I forgot it yeah. falls near my birthday every year. What windows we can close down here to improve our streaming quality? So okay, I, I she gave an amazing opening statement. That was really really good. Very it well told. Done. A really good story. Well, and, and a lot of what she said is directly opposed to what the prosecution said during their opening statement. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a, this is a thing where you know, say, like, okay, only one person brought a gun, but it was never shot to apparently all four people had weapons. Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of things here. The, you know, the police doing a 10 minute investigation of one witness. Yeah. And not checking any of the phones because it's irrelevant. What I really like about it is that she speaks to what the evidence will show rather yes. than yes. just saying this and this and this. Instead, she says the ring doorbell will show this mom witnessed this. This witness is important for this reason. So giving that little nice back road and, and a whole map of where they were going to go with this was really well done. I also like that she hit all of the elements of self-defense via the, her description of the facts mm -hmm. or the evidence. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's what a uh, that's what an opening <laughs> statement should be. And I know I've said this before. It should be a roadmap. This is what we're going to show. This is what this is what we're going to show. This is what happened. And this is why you need to support our theory of the case and arrive at our verdict that we want. And I thought she did. I thought she did a great job of that. Flux, what do you think? No, I I. 100% agree with you. My my whole um my whole thing is I've always I've always looked at lawyers as just I mean they're really good storytellers. And if they can tell whoever can tell the best story with the evidence wins. And um I really liked how she laid out the entire facts like the entire like you said the roadmap the whole story not just like okay she laid out a story that we will be able to follow along as you will yeah. through the evidence like especially starting with the whole scorned woman it was uh -huh. just beautiful yeah well here we get the first witness uh, apparently flux thinks it it Flux thinks he looks like that uh, meme picture of the rock with the, uh, with the fanny pack with a bum bag. Um, let's uh, let's see. Where's the uh, got to bring up Flux's tweet she sent here. 
Uh, I like the plaid. I just don't what, like the well, undershirt. This is, this is what we decided in MLS law chat. Like we decided that this was this was the situation. All right. Well, let's uh, let's see here. Stop that screen. Flux apparently believes that uh, this is the this, this is, is the first witness. witness. <laughs> this is our this next. Old, this, this is our first. This old witness. picture of the rock. Uh, so let let's see if this is our first witness. Again, this is this is the world according to Flux. It is. I've not seen the first witness. Let's see. Uh, so we've got like a, a turtleneck, uh, some some uh, very eighties jeans. We got a, a, a fanny pack slash bum bag, a couple of bracelets, right? a good watch, and an earring, and some 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 diamonds around right the neck. There. Little poofy hairdo. All right, let's see. Is this our first witness, or is this not our first witness? Um, well, let's uh, let's roll the tape with the Miss with, with Miss Scottish roll hips here. Apparently, yes, yes, Flux. Oh, I was just saying, roll the tape. Oh, okay. Uh, so we've got like Both a like hippie perfect like, Flux. Yeah. Huh? Your braids are perfect. Oh, thank you. They are. Seriously, really like not. you sectioned them so well. I they're literally like flawless. I appreciate that. I've been doing it for so long, it kind of does its own sectioning now. So it 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 balances it, but it's you you can't look close at it. Don't look closely at it. And it I'm looks looking, good. I've been looking closely at it for a while. It looks fabulous. Sorry, Jeff, to interrupt. Oh, my. I think Flux is right. <laughs> what? It is. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Okay. I'm just. Oh, I, our I, witness. I, yeah. Let me let me bring up the video here. Your face. Oh I my. thought I had said something because I'm like obviously out of it. I thought I said something nope. weird. <laughs> nope. They've. Yeah. The dog's in the cut cage. No, we, no, we, we have just uh, brought up the witness. <laughs> oh my god. Flux is right. All right. There you go. Hi. And uh, okay. Uh, what, is what is that? Is that a bat or like a bee? What I, I hope it's, it's like two bedly. flags or something, but I hope it's not a bat. That would be weird. I think All right. Bed, right. When you're comfortable up there, sir, please say and spell your first and your last name for the record. See the the jury. Jury. Michael. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Keyshawn Jones. K E I S H A U N. Jones. J O N E S. All right. Thank you. Wait, Wait what the fuck? And I'm your just last spelled... name for the record and for the jury. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Keyshawn Jones. K E I S H A U N. Jones. J O N E S. All right. Thank you. You may require okay. sell us. Is that the Virgin Mary with the wings? I, sure. I, I hope not. Weird. Very weird. Ooh, and uh, catching up, uh, Garrett Pace says, catching up, there is a Slim Whitman album three feet away from me. There you go. Because you're, you're a man of taste and distinction. What? Nobody said anything, and they've already got a sidebar going? See, I know. <laughs> Your Honor, the witness's appearance. He told his <laughs> name. You really need a sidebar. Seriously. Uh, Your Honor, this is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, clearly. Wait, oh. did she just pat the bottom of Plaid Lady? I hope so. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I just don't like Plaid Lady's undershirt. I think the plaid those. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa. Uh oh. Uh -oh. She's, she's she's got a toad. Oh, she, yes. She's got a toad going on. Hands are gonna be freaking thrown. There's some toad thrown. There's some disbelief in toadism there. All right, All right. maybe. Woo. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, oh wait. We, we we have another lawyer that I can. Oh, she's she's looking oh. she's looking miffed. Oh, but first we've got we've wait, got Cliff from direct? Cheers here. We got Cliff <laughs> Cliff from Cheers here in the house. So we've got Peggy Bundy, Cliff, Prince William. We we haven't we don't have a name for her yet. We'll have to think of a name That's for her. That's Tasty from Orange Is the New Black. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's an attorney though. <laughs> Well, these are all attorneys, obviously. I haven't that's seen a, Orange is the New Black. Oh, that's so a great show. That is I don't awesome. know if I should condemn, but just in case. And see, well, we'll see, we were talking about uh, you know, Peggy Bundy having Edie Falco's voice. Edie Falco is in uh, Orange is the New No, no, it, no, no, it wasn't Edie Falco. It was, uh, it was uh, Captain Janeway from Voyager. Sorry, I almost misspoke. Mm. Yes. 
All right, so never mind. Forget about that. So we've, so we've got uh, Peggy Bundy with Edie Falco's voice. We've got Cliff from Cheers. We've got Tasty. <laughs> um, oh, Feral Housewife says it's a picture of his dead friend, Sebastian. Okay. Uh, all right. Huh. Of course it is. <clears throat> of course it is. But yeah, look at this. She's got Tood. She's got Tood going on there. I like her a lot. Flux, does she play for your team? What's your feeling? No, no, no. Okay. She's just a, right. she's just, she's just a, black. Yeah, she's just a okay. southerly black. Are lady. we playing best More baseball now? More. No, we're we're no, playing Gator. I need you to speak loud. Oh, I can because the members of the jury, each and every one of them need to hear you. He's definitely okay. gay. I need you to speak loudly so they can hear you. You have all the things to do with the Okay. And okay. you gotta answer yes. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Is it hypocritic to say everybody I don't like is gay? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it is Jesus. It's Jesus with bat <laughs> oh, wings. <it's> Je Je <laughs> Batman Jesus. Bat Jesus. No, it's like that one picture that like no, looked no, no, no. <laughs> that was like no, going no, no. away. And so some woman who has never painted anything in her life repainted the Jesus thing and made it Jeff? look really weird. Jeff. Yeah. I'm sending what? it to you. I'm sending it to you. What are you sending to me? You're gonna, you're gonna drink, just drink more. Just drink more. I, well, I'm doing that anyway. You don't have to send me anything to make me do that. Oh, it's the picture of the necklace. Oh, oh, no. Are you tweeting it or where are you sending it? I'm sending it through the Twitter machine to uh, both of you. Oh, what is that? Are Which, we sure it's not Jesus? Hold on. No, you'll see the uh. pictures. Is that the girl that's macking on his cheek? Oh dear. Thank God. you, Feral Housewife. You the best. Feral Housewife. Dude, All right. Feral Housewife is life. All right, hang on. That's what Everybody, you went, girl. I'm sorry. This is the last time we're going to do this little break thing, and then we're going to get I into this first witness because we still time. have like seven hours to go. God, and um, I need to go to bed. It's like one thirty. It's your fault we're doing to... this. <laughs> I'm so to be you can't complain. To get over this cold. Oh dear. What have I got to do? <laughs> All right, we have to copy this, paste it over here into this. Feral house, Share right? You the real homie. Yeah, for real. This is all for the, uh, the 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 sake of this here. So he's he's got some woman kissing on him, and it's her picture with wings on it. Apparently. Oh no, that's wow. the dead. No, Jeff, it's the next picture. The next picture. Did mm -hmm. you not get both of them? Oh, I can't. I, I did. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, it's his friend. Yeah, it's the dead friend. Oh, no. <laughs> it's this dude. Oh, that's funny. the dead friend. The dead oh, my God. friend. <laughs> the dead friend. <laughs> okay, because, yeah, he's he's doing this, right? All right. I love you guys. This is too much. I got to go to bed. No, no. <laughs> Um, give, us, give us a second. Okay, so he's like doing this. He's got the hair. Uh -huh. uh, all right. Wow. And then if we uh, we get rid of that and we open this up, get rid of, oh, I'm, I, that doesn't help if I click on that one. This man uh, is literally li wearing lipstick. And uh, so we get rid of that and we bring That's this up. Thing. And you can see the locket. It's got like the fingers up there the just like the other one. I can't make this picture any bigger, but that's him. That's dude on the locket. All right. Flux is correct. <laughs> okay, so it, it's dead dude, the friend on a locket with angel wings. Got it. All right. Wow. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. There you go. Mm. And now back to our regularly. Oh, the dogs are in the cut cage. D Danny has uh, forsaken us. We're, we're done, Danny. You goodness. can come back now. Huh. There you go. Wow. I was semi being serious. I'm, I might need to go to bed, I but know. this is so much fun to watch. Wow. Oh, you haven't I just even heard the not testimony yet. I'm just you haven't not even started a witness. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to watch. That's what she said. I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. Homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Chandler. <laughs> Chandler, <laughs> no, no, Chandler, no, go to your room. You, 
Anne. You <laughs> can't me say that. Anne. Yes. Let so me make a note yes. of that so I can All clip it. Yes. Okay. 234 for <laughs> No, don't clip me, is it? No. <laughs> oh. Chandler, shame on you. All right. Wow. All right. Let's let's get on with this testimony. We've gone so far off the damn rails today. It's not even funny. Oh, uh, wow. Chandler, go to your room. And Chandler also said, I share my birthday birthday with Buddha. I never knew. Uh, Buddha's birthday was actually, when was the actual Buddha's birthday? Actual Buddha's birthday uh, this year, because it goes on the lunar calendar. That's right. the thing. You have to, it was actually on uh, Saturday, the 27th lunar calendar. So yeah, it's a lunar calendar thing. All right, let's get on with the, the friend of the deceased. <laughs> well, this is the brother. This the brother the of the deceased. Uh, no, no, no. So this is the brother of the girlfriend. Yes, the, the friend of the yep. deceased. You yep. know what? Yeah, I no. disavow this friend thing, okay? Just to be clear, I disavow. Are you saying they're not friends? Are you saying they're not friends? I don't know what this means, okay? That's what I'm saying. I'm his sure. friend that he has a picture of him on a locket around his neck this with angel allegedly. wings on a gold chain around a turtleneck. He just that kind of loves friend. his friend, okay? It's like... And he loves like, his turtleneck, and he loves his jewelry. It's like and, Achilles relationship. He loves, with he loves his, his immaculately sculpted eyebrows. Just his saying. And his earrings and everything. And, all right, let's go. The judge just asked you your name, <laughs> and uh, right how did you spell your name? Introduce yourself to the members of our jury. Hello, my name is Keyshawn Jones. Keyshawn, how old are you? 23. And are you in school, or do you have a job? What do you What do you do? What are yeah, you doing do right you now? Do? In school, and I have a job. Okay. He's Let's start lawyer. with the job. Where do you currently work? Right now, I have two jobs. I work at two different restaurants Brick Tops, a uh, restaurant on Palm Beach Island, and Ocean One, restaurant Dory. Okay. Cool. School. I go to FAU's Honors College, the Wilkes Honors College in Jupiter. Oh, I love and that school. Now, I used to live in college. Near what Jupiter. are you, a freshman, a sophomore? I'm a senior now. Senior now? What are you currently studying there? Uh, my major is biology, and I'm currently pre-med. He's lying. There's no way he's smart enough to be pre-med. There's no way to work two jobs and be pre-med. Uh, just some people whose names have been mentioned uh, a little while ago. Of course. Uh, first, Dominique Jones. Who is that to you? That is my sister. Tyler Robinson. Who is he to you? A long life friend. I consider him my brother. Chris Lowe. Who is he to you? Same as well. I consider him a brother, but he's my friend. Sebastian Jean Jock, who was Dave, he to you? Three way. My brother. Now you you describe these young men Brand. as your brothers, but I mean, are you by? They weren't brothers? friends. No. They're brothers. Just consider yourself disrespectful. Worse. You consider them your best friends. Yeah, I don't really have the biggest family, so my friends they my family. He's disrespectful. How long have you known I have no men? respect for this man. Ten plus years. This Were these child. the guys that you would kind of refer to as that you hung out on a regular basis with? Every day. Do you own guns? Yes. Okay. And when did you he starts uh, crying purchase early your first one? Um, his friend is dead. I think it was around mm -hmm. 2021 when I got my concealed license. And you, um, would you consider yourself a gun enthusiast? No. How many guns have you purchased since you got your uh, concealed weapons permit? As many as I needed. Two, to. I believe. Liar. Yeah, two. Look at him smile. He's of like two, I believe. Uh, handguns, one Glock, and the one other piece. They always look up when they lie. Mm. Okay. With a smile. Handguns. Yes. Now, did you did you ever sell any of your guns to one of you? Blanton's uh, the, the is so good. Just talked about either Crystal, Tyler Robinson. <laughs> Thank you so much, Old Red Line. Line. This is so good. And when did you sell? First of all, why did you sell that gun to him? Um, I really didn't want it anymore. I didn't really like it. Uh, I you bought it, and one gun. day later you sold it, and because don't you didn't like it. Of guns. Mm, um, you're an you're yeah, okay, whatever. Legally, of you course, Jeff. Guys up today. I still have one gun in the Glock. Do you go uh, to the shooting range with your gun? I haven't been <laughs> since I since a couple years, but yes. Have you that, that one gun that you still have today? Have you fired that gun before? Yes. Where, where where have you fired that gun? At the shooting range. Have you fired that gun anyplace else? No. 
The gun that you sold to Tyler, did you sell that gun to Tyler before April 6th of 2021? Yes. So the day that this incident occurred, uh, back in April of 2021, you had already sold that gun to Tyler? Yes. And at that time, is it your testimony that you only owned one gun? Yes. Okay. I'm talking to you now a little bit about Dominique. Yes. How would you describe for the jury, how would you describe your relationship with your sister? We have a very close relationship. That's literally, if not the closest, one of the closest people to me. Talk every day. I love her to death. Like, it's my sister. And Dominic, like he's just got like one of them boys' name and one just named close. Tyranny. Right? No, I'm probably closer to my sister though, but I still love my brother too. I like How the name you, Dominic. Uh, describe the relationship what? and the that you were your friends. What was that? Your friends and our Dominic, friends. it's a good name. You can I, like, I like the name yes. Demetria. For a woman? How would you describe I like Dimitri and Demetria. Oh, the it's woman. Oh, that's right. His girlfriend, her, Dominic. That's right. Yeah. It's, we're all close. Like. Daniel likes it. And when you say you guys are all close, uh, that includes Dominique? Yes. Okay. Now, would the other uh, guys hang out with Dominique as well as you? Us all together, yes. And do you his, know what they thought? His they, hair is way too quaffed for a straight they, man. How do they treat her? Do they treat her like a friend? Do they treat her closer than someone who they would consider a friend? Do they treat her like a sister? Sounds, Sounds like some hair envy. This is a life. So now I want to talk to you about... Um, what happened uh, before we get to actually April 6th, 2021? Did you know your sister was dating Travis Rudolph? Yes. And do you see him in here today? Yes. Okay, where is he? Right there. Okay, Judge, would you please allow the record to reflect that he's identified? All right, Jeff, I love you. I'm it going does, to Shallon, it does. All right, everybody, hang tight here. Uh, Danny on direct is, is uh, going to be abandoning us right I now. I got to abandon too. Everybody's abandoning me. Mayday, mayday. You're still going to be going when I wake up in like five I hours. I, 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 I intend to be, yes. I'll come Everybody back is abandoning me. I just got to go take a nap. <laughs> Everyone got to go take a nap. To go to bed, so it's bed. Bye. All right. Bye. Danny on direct. Oh, she, oh I was going to grift her. Everybody go visit Danny on direct. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to her, please do. Uh, you, you should be subscribed to her and should like every video she's ever done. Amazing, amazing YouTube content creator and flux is still here. So house of flux, one word, two X's house of flux. She can grift herself. I can grift myself. I have my own channel. I mostly yell about, uh, hating the government and how stupid they are. Um, and I do painting and, you know, I do calming stuff too sometimes, but mostly just yell at the government and then play Minecraft and get angry because I fall in lava and lose all my stuff. And then I don't know where all my stuff is. And then I have to do all new stuff. And, but this to, uh, this Thursday, 7 PM, I will be having Solomon Anderson on my channel. I am super excited for this interview cool. because, uh, yeah, uh, we all know, you know, uh, visibility is key. Get as much vil visibility on this case as possible. Hopefully we can get it moving in the right direction. Um, yeah, I'm going to go to sleep now because I'm tired. <laughs> Fox, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for pointing us in the general direction of this particular trial. We are here because you uh, you started harassing me in the middle of the night, sending me links to I could, watch. I and so here keep we watching are. Watching this alone, it was bad. Well, you know, thank you so much for like this is for pointing people in this general direction. Uh, we'll continue to cover this as much in real time as possible. Uh, yes. We'll we'll see how much we can get through today, and then we'll just keep doing a little bit every day that I have time that I don't have another guest. We'll be doing this trial. And we'll follow Sounds it to the bitter good. end. And I will come back and join you in the morning when wake when I wake up. <laughs> All right. And if All you right. want to say hi to Nick, he's here. If you want to say hi to Nick before you go, What's hey, up, hey, Flux. how are you? Hey, it's uh, eight in the morning here, so uh, oh. good. I've been up for four hours already. So yeah, I was gonna say you've been up since like a long time ago in the chat. 
and then doing your own stream earlier and wow so time's earlier, gonna run that together was, my stream was 13 hours ago <laughs> oh was it already 13 man i gotta go to sleep <laughs> you guys have a all right night. flux thank you so much love you to death you're awesome you you, you brought this trial to us it's all your fault however it ends up <laughs> all right yep be excellent to each other guys good night good night good night flux hey nicholas welcome thank you uh yeah We're, <laughs> so you you've, you've been lurking this? yeah i've been lurking in your uh, chat and uh yeah i was watching this well uh, on over on uh, David's stream. Uh, well, we all love ago. David, but this is the place to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is this it trial, as far as I've seen. I only saw up until the cross examination of the. Well, this is sister. all we've seen so far. We're not allowed to talk about okay. anything past I, this. I haven't thing. seen any of this. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, Displaced Viking says, Jeff, women stick together. Yes, they do. It's like they can't go to the bathroom alone. Women are not allowed to go to the bathroom unless they're in groups of two or three. We all know that. It's a law of nature. And uh, here we go. We uh, to, to to fill the void of the, the two women that left us, we have two guys. Uh, Ozzy Overlord has just joined us as well. He's hidden behind the Displaced Viking chat. There we go. We'll move the doggos <laughs> down. And there we go. The ladies Welcome sit together you. beside of the fellas. Absolutely. Yeah. Welcome, Hayden. Welcome to testosterone stream. Um, yeah. <laughs> testosterone power hour. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, MLS Live, I was just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and not a gay door in sight. Um, I, I was just there, there, There's plenty of lost tube space for all of us. I was just kidding. Uh, uh, all righty. So again, for those of you that have uh, have seen this, we don't know anything beyond what's this exact point here, where he has the picture of his dead friend on a locket around his neck with angel's wing, wearing a turtleneck with immaculately quaffed hair, amazingly sculpted eyebrows, and some diamond earrings. Have any of them testified about girlfriends of them being around them, or is this just a guy? Well, this guy's only this that guy's only been testifying for like thirty seconds so far. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Let's see where it goes from here. When did you learn that your sister was dating? But probably over a year before the incident. And do you, are you are you older than Dominique or younger than Dominique? Younger. So you're like her little brother. Yeah, essentially. Uh, did you were you aware of other men that like prior to her dating Travis Rudolph, the defendant in this case, were you aware of other men that she dated prior to him? Like, did she yes. talk to you about people she was dating? Yes. And was it to kind of get your approval, or why would she talk to you about the guys that she was dating? We're close to get my approval as well as to if someone's important to her, they're gonna eventually become important to me. Like that's my sister. Like. So when you dude, stop breathing in the microphone. Travis Rudolph, how did you feel about that? I didn't feel any type of way. I didn't know him, so I met him. Seemed fine. Okay. So you, when you and when you said when you say you didn't know him, is do you mean you did not know him before she started dating him? You yes, did not know him biblically. Know him at some point, did you meet him? Yes. Okay. And can you tell the jury, when, if you know, and you don't have to give us an exact date, just if you know, when during their, their relationship did you meet Travis Rudolph? Um, I don't know exactly at what point in the relationship that I met him, but I just remember when it was. It could have been months in, maybe a year. I'm not sure how long the length was, but it was at a party. And that's when me, Sebastian, Tyler, I think maybe Chris was probably also there as well. First, I introduced him. Okay. So that's when you recall first meeting him? Yes. And is that when you were pretty much um, made aware that your sister was, they were in fact in a relationship? Yes. Now, after you met a uh, defendant in this case, did you yourself have any, started having any contact with him? Um, yes, eventually, like a, more along, like after meeting him, a long course of time, like we would talk here and there, play the game together, stuff like that. What about uh, hanging out with him? I mean, obviously, if you're playing a game with somebody, you got to hang out with him, right? Yes. Well, not these days. I guess you can play at your house and he can play at his house, right? Yes. I'm saying so, play. That's weird. Explain adult to us men. How, how, how did you guys play games? Were you together playing games or separate playing games? Separate. Different houses. But we actually hung out 
maybe like once, twice outside like that. Okay. Had you ever been over to his house? Yes, once before. And why did you go to his house? Um, my sister had to get her hair done, and it was in that area. So I had to take her because she had just got surgery. So I went to his house to do my homework and wait for her to get done. When you went to his house to do your homework, was he home? Um, no, he was actually leaving. So I seen, I think I seen him for like a brief second and he left or he wasn't home. It was one or two, but I was eventually just there alone. So, so you, you, you basically, this was kind of like you were going to meet up with your sister at his house. It was more like, uh, I took her, I'm sorry, took her. I took her to the appointment, dropped her off since I live so far. I'm not about to drive all the way back home. He's closer. So just go to his <laughs> Why house. Why is he in an aquarium? My homework it's a remnant says, from the COVID we'll days. It's a COVID shield. Yes. Did you have any contact with anybody else in the residence while you were there? Since you said he was kind of on his way out as you were getting there. What about okay. his brother, uh, Daryl Rudolph, or his mom? Did you have any contact with anybody in the in the residence when you were there doing your homework? Um, I don't believe so. Maybe I. I think his brother might have came home for a second to get something to leave. I'm not sure. Um, how would you describe your relationship with with, with Travis? Like, after you met him at that party and um, he was dating your sister, you became aware he was dating your sister and you had a brief. There's a little bit of leading him. going on here. Your sister. How would you describe your relationship with him? It was, we knew each other personally. So it was, we had a closer relationship than just we weren't strangers like that. I know him. Right? Okay. You on social media? Uh, I was. Okay. Uh, and I mean, like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, any of that stuff that's out there. Yeah. Were you on, okay. Well, so were, were you like Facebook friends with him or were you Instagram we follow each other on Instagram? Okay, so you followed each other on Instagram. So did you follow him? He followed you or did you guys follow each other? We follow each other. Dude, stop Darth Vadering the mic, man. Once you got uh, when you're as you're at his house waiting on your sister to get done, um, did you pretty much just yes. kind of wait that out? That's and what? my sister pick her up and you guys leave. Um. Yeah, but I had to do the security, like turn the security stuff back on. So they had to give me the code for like the cameras and stuff. So I had to put that in before I left. So you're at his house waiting for your sister to get done with whatever she's doing. Is that right? Yes. Now, you just indicated that they had, had to give you the security code for certain, I guess, recording devices, systems in their house. Is that right? Yes. When you, when you were there at the house waiting, did you become aware that they had cameras at the house? Yes. Okay, where were the cameras at the house? Where did you see them? Um, they're just in the house. I don't remember the exact locations, but interior and exterior. They show the exterior as well on the exterior, like in, in the front door. Just Bedroom the cam? Around. I don't remember the exact positions, but I just knew there were cameras. And so they left you um, with uh, the, the code to put in when you left the house so that you could basically secure the house, the home, yes. Thing, right? Yes. And did you do that? Yes. And then you left to go meet your sister. Yes. Ozzy's drinking something. He didn't bring one to one for all of that, us. Did you have any more contact? Did you go over oh, no, to it's, the defendant's house? It's Nicholas. Anymore after that, Nicholas is pouring something. Incident? No. Okay. So that would have been the last time that you would have been at this defendant's house before this happened. The one time I don't yes. have an alcoholic drink in my hand. So I want to talk to you now about soon in the merch shop. Um and mm. and get into why you went over there in the first place. Okay. Mm. All right. Yes. Now, at some point, and we're talking about April 6th, all right, at some point, do you, are you made aware that something happened between this defendant and your sister? Yes. All right. And how did you become aware of that? Uh, my sister texted me. And uh, when she sent I you can't a text, tell. Is this a guy that started taking estrogen or a girl that started taking testosterone? Travis has slander, <laughs> such and such, so forth. Okay. Her and so forth. Yeah, they got in the fight. Okay. So the sister what? texted it. When you received it, where were you when you got that text message from her? I was home. Okay. And do you recall, you recall what, kind, what time of day it was? Um, sometime at night. Do you recall what you were getting ready to do? Um, I was ready to get in the shower, finish my homework, and go to sleep. I just so do his homework in the shower. Message, That's weird. When you get this text message from your sister, um. Do you get a text message in addition to a phone call from her, or is or is it just a text message about this defendant? She just texted me. I tried calling her. I tried calling Travis. No answer. And then she eventually gets home and talks to me. Okay. Um. So you were still home when once she arrived home. Yes. Now, when she got there, 
um, you had already received the text message of what happened. When you got that text message, did you immediately become angry at what your sister told you? Or about um, what your sister told you? Not really immediate anger, more confusion. Because I really don't have a, a lot of information at this point. I just, that's what she texted me. I still haven't seen her. I haven't heard from Travis either. So I'm more just confused, a little angry, but like confused more. Why did you try to call Travis? To figure out what happened. I wanted to hear like what he had to say. Like, and how many, how many times did you try to call him? Probably like four or five times, six, seven times. I'm not sure on the exact number. Did you leave a voice yeah, message for him? I'm not sure. I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, what about in addition to calling him, uh, did you send him any text messages? I, I did send him a text. And I said I'd I scratch like, his eyes I out. what I said exactly, but something on the lines of, like, there's no way you did this. Like, I forget exactly. I think, like, you're not this dumb or something along those lines. Okay. All right. And I'm going to show you those text messages uh, right now. I said, I believe you had a situation with these text messages. Uh, Mr. Scratch your eyes out, you little fairy. Pull your hair. <laughs> oh no, you didn't. You didn't touch my sister. I'll scratch your eyes out. I, I girlfriend. So you sent him text messages, <laughs> and um, in your text message, you pretty much say to him something to the effect. I think I'll show it to you uh, to jog your memory. Uh, he, you're not that dumb. Yes. Okay. That's great, Max. That? What were you trying to? What were you trying to convey to him? I just didn't think there's no way like he's. He's he's not able to like put his hands on a female. Like you got to know, like you're supposed to know as a man, you can't hurt a female. So that's what I mean. Like he's not that ignorant in, in that sense. Or they might just want him to incriminate himself Did with information that he doesn't have you? in no. a prior um, statement. Speculatively, this is fed up. This is one point two five. Good God! Imagine how how painful this would be at single speed. I wonder if his gun has a pink candle. I <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Feel free to my stand my up gun is pink. pink. Oh, I like how he just looms over the courtroom. I like this judge. He's like Snoopy doing his uh, vulture impression. I'm trying to think who he reminds me of. As an actor. Oh, why do I keep putting... I should just know not to... For some reason, doesn't like the fact that I fast forward. Weird. Like cre creeper Prince William over here on the left. He's just like <laughs> <laughs> he's like grew over there. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not not quite to the point where he's lost his hair, but um... well, he has. He's still got the comb over though. Mm. Mm. I, I like that uh, plaid uh, jacket. It reminds me of my uh, Christmas drapes. Um, <laughs> was that another hey, gift from drunk you to, re to regulate you? <laughs> All right, you may continue, Miss Ellis. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. Judge, may I approach the witness, please? You may. I'm going to show you what he wants to do. <laughs> That woman can kick your ass. Just saying. Yeah. Okay. Oh, totally. I'm not pissing her off in a dark alley. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, about a month ago, drunk me decided to go on wish because it pinged about a package uh, received at customs. So we'll have it Whoa. in a couple of days. I want. I have no idea what it is. Now, Flux says she's not. She Flux said she doesn't. Flux knows. 
Flux is the expert. Anybody else want to confirm or deny that, uh, that that has legitimate qualifications? Let me know. Okay. Asking for a friend. His friends? No. Yes. Uh, what yes. is it with the prosecutors that have, don't have the ability to use a microphone? For fuck's sake! Objection. It's admitted into evidence. They don't like having what they say to wind up on the record. We know this. Which is the last page of uh, State's Exhibit 22. That's all right. Okay, Chan Chandler agrees with Flux. Can you see that, Sean? Were you ready? Yeah, I read it. I'm sorry, to help? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, just don't trip on the wires up there. All right. That's funny. That's actually really funny. They're still not likely to be able to read that. Yeah. I'm going to read it for you. I'm going to read it for you. Any objection to that? Yeah, I think you might want to read that okay, for us. You. Into the mic, please. On April 1st of 2021, at 9.50 p.m., you sent this text message on God. Do not something crazy. Yes. So what do you mean by this text message? On God, do not that crazy. When you sent it to him on April 6th at 9 p.m. I just meant basically he's not literally crazy enough to put his hands on a woman. Like, that's basically what I meant. Because honestly, I really wanted to hear what he had to say. I was still at this point, I was skeptical. I'm like, there's no, like, I couldn't believe that he did that. So it's like, I'm just like, there's no way you did that, basically. Like, I'm, I'm still skeptical at this point. So do you, you don't get a response to that text message? No. And the minimum text messages after that? No. So now what was, and let me just go back for a minute, Keyshawn, because I asked you. Uh, Sorry, I went two hours without thinking of a uh, closed captioning. I apologize. The firearm that you currently own and that you own back when this incident occurred. Was there a point in time that you owned this firearm that you still have to this day that you went to the shooting range with this defendant? Um, yes, we did go to the shooting range, but I believe we uh, I don't, really, I don't. I don't think we can shoot something about they didn't have bullets or something. Does he hold his gun sideways or does he hold? I know it we did go to the firing range together. We went to the gun show together before that, but we did go to the, the firing range. I think that was the same day after the gun show. We went to the firing range. I don't remember, but we definitely went to the firing range. Three hours. Three hours without uh, subtitles. Sorry. Yes. There was times before that we not even close cap use the microphone for fuck's sakes. The irony is that because she's not talking to the mic and Google's not generating captions. <laughs> yeah. And the first super chat we've had in a good long time. Thank you so much, sweet Caroline. Bum, bum, bum. Necklace could be angel wings with nano container for Sebastian's asses. <laughs> asses? <laughs> Calling Dr. Freud, Dr. Hey, Freud, Dr. Dr. calling Freud. Dr. Freud. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> Dr. Freud, please report to the operating room. Oh, Lord, he has mercy. <laughs> um. <laughs> Necklace uh, could be angel wings with nano container for Sebastian's ashes. Um, <laughs> which actually, I, I like made a better joke, in which, which actually ruined the joke I was going to make. So, uh, yeah. Um, cause I was going to say, no, we, we've decided it is a picture of Sebastian with the angel wings thing. And I'm say best piece of ash he's had all day, but my mistake ruined, <laughs> ruined it. Better. You can't look at this guy and not think about asses. So we know that there's something pinging with the gate out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
this Walmart Rocky meets Walmart Mr. T vibe. I was kind of thinking The Rock and Michael Jackson having a love child. I got nothing. Let's just get back into it. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's going to clip that. You know that. Well, of course. Yeah. I just, I, I just wrote down the time frame so I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Why yes. should other clippers get the money? God dang it. I should get the money. Yes, uh, John Gordon, The Rock and OJ. Yeah. That works too. OJ on the rocks. Went to the party, that's when I first met him. <laughs> and then time goes by, time goes by. I believe I went to, I went to his sister, I believe she's getting married or something, went to their house for some type of reception. And then after that, I believe that's when it was the homework. <laughs> So that was before the, the homework. Oh, Peyton. Gun range was probably before the Chandler. homework, I believe. And then I think the homework might have been the last. Time it does look like Millie. Yeah. You had more. The more you think about it, Vanilli you had more died. Interaction with him than just one or two times. Yeah, I had many interactions with him. And did you like him? Yes. How much did you like? So, now let's talk about after you send that text message to him. You called him a Chandler's time. in bed. We invited Chandler to join us, but she's in There's bed. There's no response. Yes. What do you what do you do? <sighs> Honestly, I'm just waiting, waiting for my sister to get home. She gets home. Isn't she already home? She tells me what's happened. She's showing me like I guess bruises and stuff. I'm like, okay, I think I called Didn't Tyler. Did you just say Tyler she was, was already home? House. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I just called Tyler. Uh why'd you call Tyler? Man, I am not gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. <laughs> I think I think my sister had told Tyler and then Tyler told me to like, yo, call me, bro. Like, you want to talk to me, I guess. Um, I'm not sure, but I eventually get on the phone it's with so Tyler. Much better I think, yo, with you bro, come over. <laughs> Because obviously, like, he's close with Dom as well. So it's like, if I'm going over there, I knew, like, Tyler, he's going to come with me regardless. So it's just like, we do everything. So it's just like. Okay. Now, your sister, Dominique, sent you some text messages about what had occurred at the defendant's house. Is that right? Yes. In those text messages that she sent to you, was Tyler Robinson, was he included in that chat? I believe so. And... Do you specifically remember a, a text message from your sister, Dominique, wherein she types, shoot is shit up. Prosecutor. Hey, prosecutor. Let me get this right. Hold on one second. How can I Prosecutor, wake up. Okay, she sends a text message to you, and Tyler appears to be on this group chat where she says, please go shoot his shit up. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And that message was sent to you and to Tyler. Is that right? Yes. Right. <laughs> My Z-snapping skills need work, says so Julia 530. Everybody can join med school with more or less any type of prior education. So everybody could be pre-med. <laughs> Humble weed going.
straight out of an 80s commercial. Um. Okay, this was uh, fun. Um. um. Soon hey. in a merch shop. Let's do some grifting while they are silent. If I found find a merch shop, I have an issue with merch okay. shops not finding my address, That's so I can't join in properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, you don't remember it? Please, here, read it. Do you remember now? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you showed me on a piece of paper. Uh, Boop, 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 boop. I couldn't hear you. Got an ear infection. Yes. All right. Thank you. Without objection, states exhibit composite exhibits uh, 24 is admitted without objection, as I said. It's kind of hard to read these on the um, I'm just going to, on the um, I'm just going to read what you, what, what's written here. So on April 6th, there is some communication between who appears to be on this text message chain is you, Tyler Robinson, and your sister. Is that right? Yes. Now, mm. the name that I see here, because this is admitted to evidence and the jurors will get a chance to look at it, K-E-I, who is that? That's me. Okay. Watsy T-Y, who is that? Tyler. Doba with- Tyler is called -E Roxy. Daba, Daba, yeah, okay, that's Dominique. Okay, now, Okay. So that's all that's, that's, those are the people included in, in this thread. Is that right? In this yes. Thread. Yes. And on April 6th at 10 14 PM, I wish write, I smoked Travis indoors. Travis is a dead man walking. Is that right? Yes. Why did you write that text message? That's pretty much just hyperbole. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to <laughs> honestly to say calm shit. my sister down, make her feel better, you know, try to get her in a better headspace. But I didn't mean anything literal by that. Go kill him. Is He's a dead man, dead man walking. walking. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. That's pretty serious, don't you think? Yes. And you are telling the jury that you did it because you were trying to calm your sister down. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Honestly, I feel like I wasn't. I'll be right back. Him directly. Like, so it wasn't to the point where I'm telling him, like, when I see him, it's like this. But I was just saying that to my sister to calm her down. She then responds to you at 10.15. You wrote that at 10.14 p.m. She then responds to you at 10.15 to you and Tyler. Please go shoot his shit up. Pardon my language. Um, what was that? Hyperbole as well. My sister is just, it was a lot of emotion. She was really angry. It was a lot of emotion between all of us. Well, you, you're you calling this hyperbole. That is a dead man walking. Go shoot his shit up. Pretty inflammatory. Would you agree with that? Yes. When when you write Travis is a dead man walking. Do you have any plans or do you have any intentions on going over to Travis's house <laughs> and make him a dead man walking? No. Do you have any intentions on carrying out that what appears to be a threat and a text message? No. So you just wrote it to satisfy your sister. Yes. What did you think she was going to think by you saying that? I, I knew for a fact that she wasn't going to think I was going to kill him. She knows me. She knows what type of person I am. And she knows I would never do something like that. So it's. it's... Were you. Objection to speculation. Here to be her protector? Yes. Do you think that was the best way to try to. No. The only woman he's ever satisfied in his life. No. In hindsight. <laughs> Hey, objection. Nice. Oh, sorry. Sorry. My and mistake. Then she responds to you a minute later. <laughs> shoot his SHIT up. SHIT. Now, do you six women say shit? I didn't mean that. 
Um, I know she didn't mean that because that's something I would never do. And I know she just shoot his right shit up. I think she meant it. Life. I know when she gets mad, she says things she doesn't mean. Well, you own a gun, right? Yes. Bullshit. Right? Yes. So so two years later, he suddenly realizes, no, she, she never means that. Well, how many times has she said it before? How many times have you walked up My sister to knows one of her she loves husbands? Me and she knows that boyfriends. what I'm trying to do in life. She knows that I'm in college. She knows that that's illegal. And she knows that I could never do something illegal to jeopardize. So basically, they want us to believe there's an entire chat going on between two people. Now, Tyler's Everything on that group chat. They don't mean. Yes. That's what it sounds like. And yet, yeah, four sorry, guys no sit, set, sits in a car, drives over with at least one gun. They're all just hyperbolizing no. at each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and apparently they were hyperbolizing the living shit out of the defendant. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. See, words can be just Honestly, as deadly as bullets. I don't, I don't believe so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. It mentioned saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can break hearts. But at some point, you end up over to Tyler's house. Yes. Now, your, your Sticks and stones may break my bones, but they will end me. You left your house. Your intentions were to confront this defendant about what he did to your sister. Is that right? Yes. Why didn't you just drive straight to, 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 to the defendant's house? I mean, you, you have been there before. You guys had exchanged text messages since 2020. You Next guys message. had the gun range together. You went to his house to do his home, to, to do your homework. Seems to me you felt comfortable over there, right? Yes. So why didn't you just go to Travis's house on your own and say, hey, what happened earlier today? That would have been the case if it was just something merely as just a verbal argument. But knowing that he put his hands on my sister, if he could put his hands on, his, on my sister, he could put his hands on me. So mm -hmm. it's like at that point, no. it's like no. just in no. case. Phrasing. Support my friends. Hey, brothers, phrasing. Friends. By parking two blocks yeah. away? When you got to Tyler's house, was he there by himself? Um, I believe so. I think Chris had just got there. Well, he lives with his brother. His brother Tyrone was there, but of I course, his name is Tyrone. Chris had just got there, yeah. and then oh, a few yeah. minutes later, Sebastian had just got there. So, so yeah, apparently they all got independently to the house. Honestly, I'm, I'm not even sure who specifically. It's, it's not like one person just maybe Tyler. I don't know, but. Everybody just got together. Did you reach out to Sebastian? Come together. What Dominique told you happened to her earlier in that day, that, that day? No. Did you reach out to Chris Lowe and tell him what had happened to uh, your sister earlier that day? No. So when you got to Tyler's house, all of that stuck in my head at the moment is rock going. You if you smell the book, okay. Chris Lowe was going to be there. Yes. But when you got there, they were there. Yes. You have a conversation with them when you got there? Um. I believe so. Like just, yo, they asked me, am I okay? Like, just regular small talk and stuff like that. Nope. I have no control when over the brightness of the when of the captions. <laughs> we were mad, yes. So you guys were mad? All four of you? Actually, yes. that is a good point. Why are they gray and not white? What was on the plan? Yours? I don't know. We didn't really have a plan. Okay. Just go over there, figure out what happened. Pretty much, that's just it. Okay. So there was really no plan. You were just going to go over there and figure out what happened. Well, you... You were upset about what he had, just, had, had done to your sister earlier today. Yes. And you told the jury that, that to other lawyers, they were upset and lost, right? Yes. And they are talking to you over there. Right? Yes. So this is going to be a conversation. You're going over there to confront the defendant. Is that right? I mean, it really just depends because if, if you go to talk to someone, and they, they're talking to you, it's like, okay, bro, I'm, that's what I expected. Like, I'm sorry, bro, I didn't mean to do that. You know, we just got out. If you, you get met with that energy, it's like there's no you can't have a conversation after that. Like there's no fighting because it's not a, it's not a fight. But that's honestly in my head what I was expecting to happen when I got there. More so, more so apologies and bro, I didn't mean to do this. Like that's kind of the that what I was thinking. More so, I wasn't really thinking oh big ulcer. I'm that's my worst case scenario in my head. Like oh, it goes left, disagreement. I wasn't expecting that. He's really not the kind of guy I'd expect to be on the right. Yes. That was a bad joke. Never mind. Hey. <clears throat> yes. Why did you 
Elaine! The mic. Honestly, I really wasn't even thinking about it like that. Like, if it would have happened at 12 p.m., I would have been there at like 2, 1 p.m. Like, it just would have, as it happened, I would have, if they got into this fight earlier in the day, I would have been there earlier in the day. The fight just happened at night. So I'm there at night. It wasn't like I'm specifically going there at night. That's just how the events unfolded. Let's see if we can adjust settings here. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. Closed captions, auto generated, show in video. Uh, nope. Somebody's saying they can adjust, they can do colors and everything here. Well, apparently I can't. Well, to be fair, that's what that, that, that's what that thing made it sound seem like. Yeah, well. Oh, perfect. Buffering. Oh my god. Do we... scholarship. He would... Holy shit, snacks. Do we have to go all the way? God dang it. <laughs> and I'm gonna timestamp. God dang it. See, that's what I get for trying to appease you people. <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> I blame every one of you degenerates for this. All right, let's see if we can go back here and first one to get a timestamp wins absolutely nothing. Uh, there are no timestamps. God dang it. Oh, wait. There might be. Is that a timestamp? Is, is that a potentially visible timestamp? God dang it. Oh, the cut cage is hiding it. Oh, it is. Uh, all right. Damn it. All right. It's like. Uh, all right. Then I'm looking at it here. We, we can roughly gauge it, I think. Dang it, chat. This is the last time I ever do anything to try to appease you and make you happy. I want to say it's around the 232 mark, but I can't really see through the cut code. No, we, 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 we've, been, we've been doing this for more than three hours. So let's see here. We're looking. Yeah, well, you've been at it for okay. three hours, but there's yeah. been stops and multi yeah. chats. You, so. Judge just asked you your name. Um, so, so and, thing, so uh, three, you four, six. Okay, that's the beginning. Around the what mark? 3356, I believe I can see behind the cock cage. 23356? Sure. Okay, that was that deal. Yeah. Chat, I'm so disappointed in you trying to do this shit for me. Yeah, because I mean the red looks like it's about a quarter of the way through the video yeah. when yeah. you paused. Right about here is where yeah. I'm thinking. It looks about right. Yes. Chat. Yes. And look, because she won't talk into the freaking mic, we'll Honestly, never know the difference. I really wasn't even <laughs> right. thinking about it like that. Like, if it would have happened at twelve p.m., I would all right, there. Right. Hey, good, good, good. Yes, like, for me. Two, one p.m. Like, it just hey, thanks, it, Nick. as it happened, I would. If they got into this fight earlier in the day, I would have been there earlier in the day. The fight just happened at night, so I'm there at night. It wasn't like I'm specifically going there at night. That's just how the events. Because unfolded. it is impossible to go in the morning, apparently. Yeah. Yes. No. And did you guys take your guns with you? I didn't take my gun. I left my gun at home. Why'd you leave your gun at home? Didn't think I would need it. And you, you, for the most part, would you, would you, in terms of how you carry your gun, you had it with you all the time, sometimes, <laughs> just depends. It, re <laughs> it really depends. But I really, at that point in time, I really didn't go many places. So it's like, on a day-to-day -day basis, at that point in time, I'm in school. I didn't have a car. It's not like I went so many other different places. If I went places, like, I did take but it with you me. Rent but it's in just your like, mama's it really car. Just going. Well, that night, you were going to his house, to the defendant's house, to confront him about what he did to your sister, right? Yes. Upset, yes. To the point where you were mad about it, right? Yes. Your, brother, your sister lied her ass out. Right? Yes. Uh, um, and you mentioned a few minutes ago that... You weren't sure that this situation confronting him might go left. It'll go back. Yes. Why wouldn't you take your gun? Because I don't want to have to shoot anyone. Like that's not what. I feel like if you, if I take my gun, I'm expecting something to that level to happen. It's like I, I didn't want anything to that level to happen. So it's just like if I bring my gun, I'm expecting that I need it to to protect myself. But I just uh -huh. thought. Again, in my head, worst case scenario, maybe a fight. Wow. But actually, like, needing to, sh like, come on, I live a pedestrian life. So, like, I'm not thinking shooting 
that's not normal to me. I just got my gun. That's not. A, it's not a reaction. It's not like second nature. I just like, got oh, my gun, but I didn't want it. What? Me. So it's just like. So as you guys are there at, at, at Tyler's house, um, do how long do you stay at Tyler's house before you guys? I don't to understand the why they brought this Maybe case. 10, 15 minutes. I'm not sure. And is there any discussion at that house about anybody taking a gun with them to the defendant's house? Not to my knowledge. Um, well, at Tyler had a gun, right? Yes. How did you not know that? I mean, they asked me like, oh, are you taking your gun? I was like, nah, I don't got my gun. So I just assumed after that, they know like we on the same page. Like, What about as you guys are driving over to the defendant's house? Is there any discussion about the fact that Tyler has his gun with him? It wasn't even a conversation in the car at that point. It was literally just music playing. But just us on the way there. What about Sebastian? Does Sebastian own a gun? No. How do you know he did not own a gun? Because I know him very well. Never ever <laughs> seen him with a gun. Oh shit! And he didn't get his concealed yet. He had just turned twenty-one, literally two days ago. Two so days the incident? yes. So how well did you know Sebastian? First of all, didn't own a gun. Now you're not with these guys intimately, right? No. Do you, do you know? For certain that these guys didn't own guns. I mean, how can you say that? How do you know that? You can never say anything. Enough, so well enough to know that like that wasn't a gun in his pocket. Didn't own guns. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you what it's going to be states. Baby, don't hurt me. Baby, don't. Sleep. That's good makeup if it still holds up after all this. Well, he's showing this <laughs> no emotion anyway, so it's not like it's going to run. He really needs to stop breathing into that microphone. It's starting to drive me crazy. Here's my folks to witness, please. You may. I'm going to show you what it's going to be. Maybe it's muscle memory like the prosecutor. Oh, yeah. come on. Yes. Who is this? Sebastian. Any objection? Thank you. States 57 is admitted without objection. You may. <laughs> and in this year's nominees for the Oscar for overacting. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. So now, uh, let's not discuss what that his holding is looking like. Whose car are you driving? I'm off. What kind of car does she have? Cadillac. <laughs> and uh, obviously she let you drive it because you were driving it that night. Is that right? Yes. So you know, Nick, you just got me wondering how many of those things have actually made it into somebody. <laughs> what? <laughs> Phrasing. You're happy you're not knowing, trust me. <laughs> yes, wasn't paying attention. Because <laughs> you know there's got to be at least one. You need a second? Yeah. <laughs> His dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> solid. <laughs> That's solid. Oh. <laughs> okay, now we may see some mascara running. Well, let me ask you this. You're the driver, right? It's right. pinch here um, really, a, really hard. A, uh, Maybe a tear would come out. Ten minute recess. All oh, right. we're giving him a cry break. Uh, remember and obey, ladies and gentlemen, the four cardinal rules when you get back out there. Now you've started to hear some evidence, but keep an open mind. Don't discuss the evidence. Don't discuss anything having to do with this case. And obviously don't do any research because you'll be back in the jury room. You will not run into any of us. So we don't need to worry about that cardinal rule. See you in about you 10 minutes. Cry, cry, hush, hush. I do, I do. Cry, cry, hush, hush. All right. Uh, we can try. Uh, we can make a desperate attempt at skipping ahead ten minutes here. Where are we at? Uh, do, 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 do. Ooh, doop, boop, boop, boop. There we go. And buffering, buffering, buffer, buffer, buffer. Keep those wagons buffering, ride. ride. <laughs> Come sun, wind, and weather. We'll keep the 
witnesses together. Circle. Of, it's the circle of death. <clears throat> circle of death. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> la, 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 la. Here we go. Uh, our monetization has been limited due to suitable. What are you? This video may be limited or earn no revenue due to content identified as not suitable for most advertisers. It remains uh -huh. fully playable and is eligible to earn subscription revenue from YouTube premiums. So, well, I am now in the process of demanding a review. Yeah, we've been that we've been semi semi rejected here, semi demonetized. Yeah. Every stream I've made the last month, an hour yeah. or two in, demonetized. I think as soon as you put murder in the title. Yeah. Because I, I went oh. yellow almost immediately this morning. Okay, that might explain my uh, the Florida no, face that, either mur it. murder Mike, trial not getting ready, yeah. monetized. If the jury's ready, are you ready to bring him back in? And right. then it takes them a while to go back and review it and go, oh, it's just streaming a murder trial. He's mm, not actually... Yeah saying let's murder people but yeah so we're did i tell you my video on clarence thomas and the philosophy of natural law got um completely demonetized for u.s politics advertising cool <laughs> <laughs> i was impressed <laughs> and they waited yeah. to review it I asked uh, YouTube to uh, review uh, the Jody Ares trial that me and David are reviewing yeah. but it's still on uh, limited and we're not even got to all the fancy pictures yet mm. Mm. well he's a fancy picture okay oh he's, he's got resting bitch face damn right. pat as soon as you're ready let me i'm know. impressed <clears throat> is there a top or bottom I... oh now, he's up now 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 people None of that. <laughs> Stand on your oh, knees nice. and pray. No. <laughs> <laughs> you invited me, Jeff. You knew this was. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's bring him in then, please. <laughs> <laughs> For a housewife says, dang it, Jeff, he stopped crying the second the jury left. Right. Uh, what happened is they gave him a, a, tie, a little cry break there for 10 minutes while the jury could go urinate and whatnot. I need more ice. Why do I need more ice? So I can have more bourbon Cokes. That's why. All right. Welcome back, folks. Thank you, everyone. Be seated. All right. You may continue, Miss Ellis. Yes, ma'am. Nicotine fix. Yes. Yes. I can't hear a goddamn thing she's saying. And it's six hundred percent volume, by the way. Can we do like a change.org or a petition or something to make lapel mics mandatory? Um. I think probably to my I'm sister not, telling her to run away. I'm the mosquito sure. thing has been a thing for what is it, forty years now? That you can walk yeah. around with? Yeah. Mm. I mean, look, if you're if we were able to have those mics for the theater company at my high school, the courts can afford them. Yeah. <clears throat> no, let's have these static microphones so that you can bend a bit. Hey, I'm fine with that. If she stands in front of one of them. You may. <clears throat> well, we've already determined there's five microphones available on two podiums. They took away the picture because it reminded him of him. <laughs> Me, Tyler, my sister. Yes, Pharaoh. Ari. Ari. Jody Aries trial and 10 years ago. Perfect all, sound, we, we perfect picture. Recognize 
Yes. Okay. And these are dated April 6, uh, 2021, beginning at 1144 uh, p.m. And uh, after reading them, do they accurately reflect the text message exchange between you? Wait, and he's pre med? And Sebastian? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Has anyone made the bend over, turn your head, and cough joke yet? No. And you're no. not going to be the first. Stop it. <laughs> All right. Any objection? All right. Thank you. States 23. Uh, Can you feel the feeling? Positive finger? text yes. messages. Yes, uh, more. Among uh, this witness, Mr. Jones and his sister, and whom? And uh, Sebastian, Your Honor. Okay. And Tyler Robinson. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Are admitted without objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So the first message is uh, appears to be from uh, your sister. At 11.44 p.m. says, where y'all at? Someone uh, who is referred to as owner replies, we're on the way. RN, I guess, what is our right, right now? Okay. And then someone replies, that same person replies, owner replies, I love you so much. I got you. Is that Tyler? I believe so, yes. At 11.44, your sister replies, okay. And then... The next text message from your sister to you, Sebastian, and Tyler is at 12.33 a.m. It's almost an hour. And then the last text message is from her to you guys again. And that's obviously at, we're, at, we're on April 7th. We're in the morning hours of April 7th. The last one from her is at 12.58 a.m. where she says, call. You recall all that, right? Yes. Now, by that time... She sent a question mark, and then she says, call. By that time, the shooting had already occurred. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is going to be states composite. <laughs> you may. Yeah, he's going to be an ass doctor. Yes. I don't know the technical term for it. Okay. Oh, you're going to have to do a little better than that. Oh, yes. volume wise, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're going to be uh, laying laying the foundation for that. Oh, well, we've got Nina Infinity here. Nina Infinity says she's, she's just dropping by. She has no idea what this is about, but I wanted to stop by and say hi and leave a like. Oh, thank you so much, Nina. This is a person, an ex-NFL player, who's been charged with first-degree murder, one count of first-degree murder, and three counts of attempted first degree murder and uh, already things have gone crazy and off the trail off you know just off the rails here because uh the he apparently physically assaulted his girlfriend and the girlfriend called her brother and said go shoot up his shit and he said oh yeah he's a walking dead man but they were both just speaking in hyperbole to each other and they didn't really mean it so he while not meaning he was going to shoot up his shit grabbed three of his other friends they piled into mom's cadillac drove over to the boyfriend's house uh, and allegedly jumped him as soon as he came out which eventually ended up in 39 shots being blasted in into the car of the uh, attacking four people. So who is right? Who is wrong? This is the, the very first witness of the trial. Only time will tell. Thank you for joining us, Nina. Nina Infinity, everybody. An amazing, amazing content creator who we should all aspire to be like. Uh, Nina Infinity. Go check her out. Subscribe to her channel. Like everything she's ever done. Especially last Wednesday stream when I was on it. Hmm. Okay. Just saying. That's the best one. <laughs> She must be of a Viking blood since she's dropping by to say hi. Yes. <laughs> okay, I've caught up. Thanks. Oh, and by the way, prosecutors don't know how to use microphones. Yes. Yes. Which is fine if they know how to project. Yes. Dude, stop Darth Vader and the fucking microphone. Right, thank you. Composite 1A and B is <laughs> without objection. <laughs> Yes, you may. Watch your step, Mr. Jones. We should have a pointer if that's going to be useful. All right. Is that your pointer? Or are you happy to see so me? So that Mr. Jones isn't standing in front of that uh, area. Great. Now we're not going to be able to hear any of them. Hmm. Discount rock here steps down from the stand.
Now, you, you just told the jury a few minutes ago that you recognize this man. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Jesus. Travis's house. And you see this scar right here? What, what's exactly that scar look like? Where we were shot at. Now, this road, obviously, is North Red Road, Red Boy Drive. Is that right? Yes. And the cross road here is Key Drive. Is that right? Yes. Now, when you drove to the location where the defendant lived, right here, how did you, how did you even enter this community? How did you enter this community? How did you get, how did you get in there? Did the gate first of all? No. Okay. So, how did you <laughs> end up parking where you parked? I made a right on whatever road. What does that say? Jasmine. Uh, oh, right, right on the yeah. Jasmine. And then left on the T. Yeah, because I-95 is that way, so. So you actually would have driven past your house, is that right? Uh, not like straight past, but like. Yeah, like down. down yeah, down. yes. Okay. This is the worst audio ever, I swear to God. Ooh, it's close. But at least we can hear some of them. Honestly, I just wanted to, again, I didn't really know what type of energy I was going to get or what energy I was giving off, but. In my head, in hindsight, I don't even know if it makes sense, but in my head, I'm thinking park a little bit farther. I don't want to give too much aggressive energy, parking straight in front of someone's house, pulling up, just walk up, knock on the door, and then talk. But I don't, that's what it was going through my head at the time. Or you could just have parked, said to the guys, no. wait in the car, go up. Hey, what's oh. up? Right around where we got shot at. Yes. Yes. Did she put her head in a box or something? Well, that's all we've got. We got and for the answers. <laughs> it's like Charlie Brown Swartz classroom school here. Sorts of stuff. Yeah, but then again, as long as the jury hears, hears her, so... Yeah, just not for us. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. The court reporter might be a bit annoyed. Just drive straight past his house, make a left, and then go back the way I came. Hey, Jessica reloaded in chat. Up on Jasmine. Yeah, to make a left. Mexican Vader's been in chat for a long time. Since the beginning, but I just want to say, Mexican Vader in chat. Why not? No reason, just wanted to say Mexican Vader in chat. You may. I bet he has his legs crossed on Rock the Rock is taking the stand again. Rock is going to give testimony here now. Yeah, I'm going to have to move to one side or the other. And Prosecutor Combover is there to help. I can see fine. Yeah, thank you. God damn it, I can't hear a thing she's saying. When you guys thank you. Ooh. at that location, yes. parked your car uh, away from his house, when you guys got out of the car, what did you do? Um, I myself... I put my phone in, the, in my trunk. Sebastian put his bag. He put his in junk in the trunk, is what he's saying. I think <laughs> Sebastian and Chris had their phones. He put his junk in Sebastian's <laughs> trunk. I want to make sure I understand that. Or he something like that. I put my phone in the trunk. Chris put nothing in the trunk. Sebastian put <laughs> his bag in the trunk. And Tyler put his phone in the trunk. Put his whole bag. Sebastian didn't have his phone in his bag. Because he had it in his hand when we were walking, I believe. You believe? Do you know? I know. Well, Just two Chris, years later, something you never mentioned Chris. before. That's the phone I used to call. To now. anyone. Mm -hmm. So now you don't have your phone. You put your phone in the trunk. 
right? Why and do you put your phone point, in the trunk of your car? No. No. It sounds very implausible to me. <clears throat> no. What about when you guys park and get out of the car? And you guys are putting stuff in the trunk of the car. How does it make sense? Why are they putting junk in each other's trunk? That's weird. Ashton mentioned to you that he has a gun? No. Chris mentioned to you that he has a gun? No. You take your gun with you? No. So as you guys... Uh, Get there, park. You're now headed to the defendant's house. Is that right? Yes. Do you now? This is this is this is kind of your thing because Dominique is ultimately she's your sister, yes. right? So, do you give them any kind of instructions? Do you tell them, "Hey, this is just going to be a talk. I'm just going to confront him about what he did to my sister." Do you say anything to them about, "Look, this does not need to escalate beyond"? This is a little bit leading, I'm afraid. Confrontation or fight. Yes, that was the initial. Like when we first went, I'm like, "Yo, we just want to talk." You feel me? And Cross better be, better be like epic. How, what happened and how he feels. And... Who did you say that to? Allegedly, I haven't seen the cross, so I won't uh, be and, a and fortune what, teller. How did they react? What, was, what were their reactions? They just feel like, okay. When you guys get there, you guys still mad? We're mad. The whole, we're still mad, but it's like... We're That's true. Like, we're We've mad. seen so many times when you don't have your phone on you or there's no activity on your phone, you are committing murder. You're either dead or killing someone if you're not having your phone on. You're never taking naps in the middle of the night. And shock horror, if you're not on your phone between midnight and 1 a.m., you must be stalking your ex-wife. Yeah. Of course. I'm bored. Send super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> and it is what is it v diddy oh, this yeah. self-identifies as a super chat okay yeah <laughs> Do my Keyshawn so Jones impression. Surveillance footage. <laughs> storage device. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Or storage device. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What I did was put them on four different devices. Okay. Only because they're How can you be standing in front of two mic microphones and it's wait, wait, not? Wait, what's she saying? For instance, them arriving and parking. All right, but is 31? Is that a composite of all four of those things, or is 31 is just the first one? All right, very well. And I think I heard there's no objection, right? Thank you. All right. Stage 31 admitted without objection. So they have evidence on four different drives. Okay. That's weird. Okay. Damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> Listening to Jeff's dog's snoring is more interesting. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, bah. All right, well, they're getting the video set up, and I know I'm going to push like the uh, the fast forward, like go advance button, it's going to buffer. Oh, it didn't. Huh? Maybe it's buffered to me. Oh. Ooh, don't, you don't pushed it too that. far. Yeah, don't don't press my luck. I just pressed my luck too far. <laughs> you heard it, people. Jeff needs a customized arrow button to stick on his keyboard that just has my luck written on it, so he can press his luck. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, you know, like right now, if if I just rebooted everything, it would it would empty the cache and everything would be nice and neat and it wouldn't buffer anymore. But then that would just screw everything up. So. Hell. All right, we were at 313 38. 313 30. Oh, I didn't have to. I'm just going to reboot everything. 
Yes. God, get the video set. Edwards. What? <laughs> Kudos from the judge. Yeah, but getting approval from Skeletor is not really going to help sure. you much in this. Big bucks, big bucks, no whammy. He's nice. <laughs> that, that was the boop, 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 boop. No, it's price right. Yes. That was a great game. Great game show. I think I have that. Need an infinity. Bring in all the love. Because that's what she yes. does. Oh, for, for those of you that have not seen the future and have not uh, you know seen the next two days, do they do all of the evidence like this? They don't show it. You they just show it from an angle. That's me driving, yes. Oh, no. This is the best angle they have for showing us the evidence. Yes. So this is you coming down Redwood. Yeah, closed captions are on, but they're just not talking loud enough to trigger them, apparently. Jeff, uh, you like smoky whiskeys, right? Yes, sir. Sebastian. Look what I have. I can't see what that is. Oh, Aaron. Oh, Which one? Sherry cask? Yep. Mm, yum. Aaron, cherry yeah. cask. Good. Honestly, it's... I really don't know. I just have my fifty percent, and, kind of and it it's it, tarmac. It's oh, mm. it's so good. Yummy. Yes, it's the sm small batch. At least. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Now we see you pull up. <sighs> the microphone. So everyone's out of the car at this point, right? Yes. And then you pull up a. A little bit from where you were initially parked. Why did you pull up? Just to be closer, showing the walk. And at this point, you're still facing his house. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Our house in the middle of our street? So our house? Your castle and your keep? Those, is that the back of your car? Yes. Okay, now your lights are back on again. So is this at this point, the incident has happened, the, sh the fight has happened, and you guys are back at the car? Yes. Now you see this oh. flashing going on right here in the yes. sky? Yes. What is all that? Gunshots. He's getting lit what the were fuck you doing up. When you... Did you back up and do something... Kind of weird with the with the car. What, what Pinching zone. Back it up. Back it up. Uh, uh, back it up. Oh, wow. Okay. Who is this right here walking? Yeah, who is that guy? Right there. Can you tell who that is? No, I can't see from here. Can you tell who this person is? I get closer. Yes, you may. Watch yeah. step getting down, particularly in the dark. Let's back racist. it up a bit, please. Actually, back it up. Can you back it up to? <laughs> Courtroom video brought to you by VLC, makers of fine video production software everywhere. Didn't they stop updating like a decade ago? No, oh, VLC is the shiz. Ah! Okay, so now what are you doing right here, Keyshawn? And is that because Travis is coming towards you guys? Well, at least we got the gunshots. That was some like, oh, oh wow. So let's give the witness the microphone, please. That's okay. And you use one of those on the podium. Oh, now's where I need that. And then we just started blasting like meme. Actually, I think this is the part where you were actually. So you're in the car. Anyway, I started point, right? blasting. Yes. Bah! Wow. <laughs> of course, Ozzy's got it. Now, what, what do you actually do right here? Back up. And you wow. turn to go in the opposite direction where the bullets are coming from? Yes. Well, that's a good direction to go. <laughs> if you're going to go any direction, go the opposite of the direction the bullets are coming from. Now tell me. And again, they testified there was 39 oh, shots this, fired. You see this person here? Yes. Who is that? Travis.
And do you see someone coming from this <clears throat> little area here? Yes. Can you tell, do you know who that is? His brother. Can you just hear the dog snoring? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like really far away. At this time, state would offer uh, evidence yeah. 31. They are big snorers. Objection. All right. It's not a complaint. At least we can hear that compared to the to 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 prosecutor. I may have to take this. I would like to thank everybody for this award. <clears throat> Windows in the middle of our street. Windows is our castle and our keep. Okay, I'm going to show you what is going to be. Okay. These headphones are getting giving me sweaty ears. Some more video. Mm. All right, very well. So that's from the, the so-called ring camera. All right. The so-called ring camera? You mean like from the actual ring camera, not the so-called ring camera? Turn the light on. Okay. Technology. We. Well. Uh, apparently, the jurors are having a difficult time hearing. Me right. too. So stay with that microphone. Yes, and, I apologize. All right. And Mr. Jones, when you respond to a question, make sure you use that microphone. Oh, he's using the microphone. He's good. Okay. She's not. Okay. So, Keyshawn, who are we looking at in this video? At this point, it's Sebastian, Tyler, and Chris. This is Sebastian. Yes. I see something. Or, that's my elbow. That's that's you. Yes. And who is this person right here? Tyler. Okay, so you're gonna have to pull that podium back. So if I can speak, I'll, I'll speak loud enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll speak loud enough. No, you don't. And who is this person right here? Chris. You can go ahead and turn. All right, hoodie so it's up. midnight. It's Someone midnight. Is. Four people show up wearing hoodies, just randomly start pounding on your door. Um, yep. That may cause me concern. Yeah, no, that's the, the point home. where you answer the door, either with having already called 911 or yeah. with something in your hand that goes blam, blam. Right. Under your, like you're rubbing your stomach area. Yes. Do you have anything in your waist? No. Okay. You just had indigestion. Well, my blood alcohol content is running dangerously low and I'm out of ice. Yes. I'll return. Sebastian, right? Yes. Okay. And you see this bulge in his pocket? Yes. Do you know what that is? His phone. <laughs> yes, you do. His phone. <laughs> How do you know it's a bulge? That bulge is a phone. Oh, he spent plenty of time feeling that bulge. Yeah, <laughs> he can sense the difference between a phone and something else. Yes. And do you see this bulge right here? Yes. Okay. And do you know what that is? His phone. It's dick. And you're certain those are their phones? Yes. Did they put their phones in your trunk? No. Did they, they put their, their junk in your trunk? You guys got out of the car. No. Now you didn't. You put. You, you left your phone in the car. Yes. Where did Tyler? Oh, hang on. Is he trying to say that their phones are not their guns? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. They all just piled their guns in the trunk, but uh, took their phones with them. 
You thought Alleged, he had a shirt off. Is that right? Yes. They claim only he one gun, and off. nobody knew he had it. Yeah. Um, I was, listen, oh, I either, doubt that. I wasn't really paying attention to whether he had his shirt on or not, but it could have been when we got out the car or on the on the way there. Probably he put it in the trunk with his phone. I'm not sure. He had no idea about his shirt. No. But he knows he had his phone in his front pocket. As you guys are walking up to the house. Well, yeah, because none of them had their guns. Because otherwise, the guns would have been put in the trunk. Because you don't want a premature firing in someone's trunk. Well, let's, let's, let's listen to what they're saying here. So at that point, you still don't know that he has a gun on him. Yes. Now, hmm. that clip, it ends where we're saying, we're trapped at the Utah Tower. Yes. And was that the first that happened? Yes. Now, at some point, okay. Uh, something, I can't go back to this right now. Light? Yes, Judge, I'm sorry. Sorry. I have a couple more videos, but I need to ask you some questions first, Judge Bear. So, uh, we saw, we saw where we could see in this video where when, when Daryl opens the door, you ask, where is Travis? Yes. At some point, even though it's not on this video, does Travis come outside? Yes. And is it how long after Daryl, how long after you ask, where's Travis, does Travis come outside? Probably like seconds, like 10, 15, 30 seconds later. Okay. And when he comes outside, what happens? Basically, he comes to the door just angry, and that leads to just words being exchanged, and then the fight ensues after that. Now, I want you to tell us about this fight. Before we get to the fight, you said he comes to the door angry. What makes you believe that he's angry? Cussing. What did he say? Just exactly like, just like, what the F y'all doing here? Da, 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 like, F y'all, like, stuff like that. And are you responding? No, because honestly, I'm not. Because really it's, like, dirty, it's dirty uh, talk. It's dirty talk. Uh, before we get going here, anyway, we, we this has been outstanding a little bit, so we'll read it now. L Lacey Petta, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, there is no one else on YouTube I'd rather be bored with, heart. Actually, not bored at all. Watching y'all ooze with boredom and frustration is quite the entertainment. Ha ha, Nicholas, hi. <laughs> Oh, and perfect timing. Do you want? No, do, do you want? Not, not, not that I would, you know, say anything, but uh, as someone who is our former highest super chatter ever on my stream, you were dethroned with a $400 super chat earlier today. So, yeah. but for Unrelated, that, my channel is... Um... <laughs> <laughs> D D what see this is how this is how generous I am today. Um D D what says take a shot already for F's sake. Um this because of uh of the previous super chat that was given by old red line of four hundred dollars. We op we cracked open the the amazing bottle of Blanton's bourbon. We this this is a unicorn bottle that does not exist in Korea. We we opened that. And so we'll we'll do it. We'll do a. I can't believe I'm doing a shot of Blanton's. Curse me. Take a shot already for F's sake. Thank you so much, D. What? Space mm. case. Which one did you wind up going with? Nectar of the gods. Mm. All right. Man, thank you so much for that, D. What? Deeply appreciated. And now he's going to tell us that he's not a loud, violent person. All he's like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna shoot his shit, man. He's a walking dead man. But now he's going to testify he's not a loud, violent person. No, because honestly, I'm not really like a loud person. Like, I don't really like, even in like situations like that, like I'm always in my head. So it's just like, I'm talking, but I'm not like, no, nah, like, I'm not really arguing. I'm just like, what happened? Like, it's just, it's nothing really to the argument. End. But and this I'm, is the guy, mind you, that said he is a walking dead like man. This. I'm getting hit with just, just anger. So it's just like the situation. Do you honestly happen. believe this guy was anything more than talk, though? It's just escalating from that point on <laughs> to just loudness. Well, Jessica loudness. Reloaded is leaving like us off to bed, Jessica. Up. We love you, Jessica. Thanks for popping in. Did you have a chance to ask him about your reason for going over there, which is what happened between him and your sister? 
Thank so. you, D-Watt. But again, seriously. And, and, and why, you, not? Why, why didn't you ever get the chance to ask him what happened earlier that in the day, that well, that previous day? Because of, again, like I said, the energy. It was more of an argumentative energy. And oh, energy. Energy. energy that's what, it wasn't any time to really have a conversation. Was his brother outside with him still when he came out? Yes. Did his brother stay outside with him when he came out? Yes. And now you said that it escalated from there. How did it, what, what ends up, tell, tell the jury what happened? What, what happened after that? Honestly, I just remember, first thing I remember is I'm just picked up in the air. I get slammed. And then from there on, it was just fighting. Just like they rushed to get him off me. We fighting, fighting. And then it's like, I can't look everywhere at one time. Like I can only know what I'm, what I'm looking at. But I just remember that they get him off me. Everybody's throwing punches. His brother's fighting. Are you fighting? Yeah, I'm fighting, but like it's just it's so it's not like it's one on one fights because there's so many different people. So it's just like at at this point, I'm really just trying to assess the situation and figure out what's going on. But we're it's just in between like fighting, and then I remember at one point like they finally get him off me, and then I think Tyler, I forget exactly, but I think they had somebody. Honestly, somebody, I think Tyler, I don't even remember the exact fight, but I just remember at some point there was a break in the fight. We're standing there, and then Travis just, like, punches Tyler. And then from there, we just, now we're fighting again. And then eventually his his mom's there. She's trying to, like. When you say, let me stop you right there. When you say his mom is there, does his mom come outside? Yes. And before his mom comes outside, though, you guys are fighting with the defendant and his brother. Is that right? Yes. Hey, aren't you? So yes. you showed up at his house and fighting ensued. Sometime did you recall having... No, I don't even think I... His brother. No, I don't think I hit his brother. During this fight... Say you, Nina. Did you pull out a gun? No. Hi, Nina. Do you recall during this fight, did, did Tyler put out a, pull out a gun? No. What about Sebastian? No. What about Chris? No. So you didn't see anyone pull out a gun? No. Did you see Tyler point a gun at anyone during this fight? No. Now his, you said his mom came outside. Yes. And how long would you got, had you guys been fighting before? What did I miss? Did you start throwing around gang signs and admitting to killing everybody? Two, three, no, not yet. Oh. The name is oh, sorry, I left the Jessica thing out. Okay. Or he was just talking and fi Nina. fighting just his mom broke came outside, up. What did she do? Later, Nina. Thank you so All much right, for right, popping in. Appreciate it. Like You're great. awesome. Love you, Nina. In the fighting, I guess. And she's trying to talk to me. She's trying to show me, I guess, a video of what was going on or what had happened. And at this point, it's like, she's really trying to just calm the situation down. But it's just at this point, people are like, they're fighting. So it's just like, only, hmm. you only have so much power as a person. So he claimed that mom comes outside. both yeah. brothers Does she go to you? was on yes. him, fighting and him. She goes to and the other three trying to show you just a video. stood back. Does she have her phone or a laptop or an iPad or something? Maybe, I don't know exactly what it was, but it was something that she's trying to show me a video on. Okay. And do you know what that video was about? It was about what happened with him and Dominique earlier, I guess, because they have cameras. So I guess she was trying to show what happened. I'm not sure. Okay. I didn't actually look at the video because, again, already got already got slammed. We already fighting. Adrenaline's going. It's like. Okay. So at this point, his mom is outside. Yes. His brother is outside. Yes. And he's outside. Yes. Anybody else? And and then the four of you. Yes. When after his mom tries to show you this video on whatever device it is that she's trying to show it to you on, did the fighting resume? Did you guys start fighting again? At this point, this is before like there was a break, mm -hmm. and then he punched Tyler, and then like his mom's trying to show me this is all happening like around the same time, okay. and then at this point, the fighting is kind of subsiding. So now I'm, my focus is all right, it's time to go. Like I'm, I'm yelling like yo yo we gotta go like. Now so at what point are you yelling? Yo, yo, we got to go. <laughs> so there's a like, physical melee. On the same point. His mom's in the middle of all this, and people are still video. fighting. The situation is clearly just gotten too out of hand. I call yeah, bullshit. It's, like, it's time to leave. We got to go. So I'm trying to get, it's hard to get three different people's attention at one time when fighting is going in. Like, everything's done, subsiding. I'm trying to, yo, it's time to go. So that. When you said, yo, we got to go, is the defendant still outside fighting with the people that you came with? I, like, in that moment. At first, when I first started saying that, yes, and then he goes in the house, and I'm still saying, yo, it's time to go. Like, this is all happening, like, like literally right after one another. Like, Okay, so you say, yo, we got to go. And when you say that, there's still some fighting going on. Yeah. Between the people you came with and him, what about his brother? Um, I'm not sure. Is his mom still outside? Yes. 
And then you just said that he went in the house. Yes. Now, did you see him go in the house? Yes. All right. Where were you when you saw him go in the house? I was like a little farther away from the house, starting to get to the car. Like I'm on my way. Like, yo, it's time to go. Like I'm just on my way to the car. Cause I know I have to get to the car first. I'm driving. So <laughs> oh. it's time to go. When you said that, did any of the people that you were with, any of your friends, did yeah. they follow you as you, because the way I'm envisioning this, what you're telling us is that as you're saying, yo, yo, we got to go, there's still some fighting going on. It's a, it's a little bit of fighting, but Chris is kind of closer to me. That's so Chris is right a here lot of leading. It's time to go. Chris is right here. So mm. me and Chris start. Her whole entire questioning, questioning has been leading. Because I don't yeah. really remember like what was no, going on. No, you're supposed to tell us this. Tyler is, You're supposed to tell us this like over Travis, and Steve over Chris, again. I mean, Sebastian's next to his brother, and I think that's like that's why they came like last. Like they got to the car last. So. Okay. And so you saw at some the point. The only reason I can think that they're allowing this kind of leading is the that they the are yes. so well prepared to tear this kid a new one. Yep. <clears throat> what I think. That they do not care what he's going to say. Yeah. It's not worth objecting to. Hmm. Just give him as much rope to hang himself with, with as he likes. Well, she, uh, she did say in an opening statement that the neighbor saw a bit of this fight. So. Now, who is this that we see right here? Uh, Travis. Okay. And what is he? Can you tell what he's doing at this No, point? Farrell, it is still leading, even if they don't object. Okay. And now we see these people. Yes. Uh, all right. Feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the, the oh, question we... is leading, but you know, it's allowed if the other side doesn't object. It's still leading, yeah. whether or not they object, as Hayden was saying. Uh, okay, we, we, we already did uh, Nicholas, hi, from Lazy hi. Pettit. And we already did D-Watt. Again, thank you so much for that, D-Watt. Deeply, deeply appreciated. Pretty Mama Bear says, I'm late to the party. Why did they come to the victim's house? Because the defendant allegedly beat up his girlfriend or physically assaulted his girlfriend. She called her brother and said, go shoot his shit up. And they said, he's a walking dead man. And he collected four of his friends. They went over there. But as he was saying, he's not a violent guy. He's a quiet guy and doesn't like anger. Yeah, and yet supposedly he took on, what, two people while three of his friends just stood back and did nothing. Yeah, sure. That's believable. And it, the victim here is actually the defendant. Oh, because nice. none of these guys or the ex-girlfriend is charged with anything. Wait, what? Yeah, nobody else is charged. He literally anything. just admitted to driving a vehicle loaded with people to somewhere to start a fight. Yeah. And they're not and he's not charged with anything. Nothing. Nope. And this is Two years later, after this incident, yeah, so the jury, obviously, if you can't see, just uh, let us know, and uh, we'll make what is called uh, that we can. If standing up assists you, then some crimes do that. they can't charge them All for right. anymore. Go ahead, Miss Ellis. Mm. Uh, yeah, Jonathan, there's a couple of new trial streams now. Uh, this is, Travis, is that right? Yes, should, should be interesting. Yes. Yeah. Coffee and Coke Zero, and I need to step away for a minute. Oh, oh excited. I've only been able to pay up attention to half of this, particularly when she's not talking. Yeah. yeah, we need the microphone. Yeah, we do. For Mr. Jones. Thank you. Um, see, me in a hoodie, that's me. And if you know, if you don't know, that's fine. Can you make out who this person is right here? Uh, yeah, you might have to switch frames. What about, what about this person here? No, the, the, this person here in front, he he's the one without the shirt. Uh, yeah, Renee Minette, uh, she's not due back in court till July, though. What, what about this person here? 
his mom. Yeah, we, we did the Karen Reed stream earlier this week. We're going to do a, an update on Wednesday. So join me on Wednesday for an update on Karen Reed. So Okay. Okay, yeah. Dignified. No. On the way to the car. Sure. Yes. No. Not so much Lauren. I'll talk about that later. Though. Okay, that's actually interesting. That shows them leaving. It shows people walking away. Mm. Did you hear someone in that video saying, you got that? Yeah. Who was that? That was Tyler. And... Uh, now, at that point, you're walking to your car. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he just saw on here what his mom was doing. Were yes. you able to see that, though, as you were walking to your car? Did you know, did you know what his mom was doing as you were walking to your car? Like, by what do you mean? Like, what she was doing? Like, telling him to stop? Or, like, yeah, I can, I can hear that. So you heard it. Yeah. Okay. And um, what she trying he to He heard it, but yes. it wasn't picked up by the now, camera. Point, Weird. How he can hear things that wasn't. Yeah, you did. State 33 is admitted, was admitted previously without objection. Um, are you the first one that makes it to your car? Yes. Now we saw in the video, obviously you let that play through. You made it to your car. We saw you turn the car on and we saw what happened when you, as you were trying to leave. When you drove off, do you know if everyone was in the car? Uh, I was waiting. See the doors open, and I seen all the sides open, and I thought everybody was in the car at the time. But after I figured out that Tyler had got out, hmm. when you were when you got back in your car, where's Sebastian sitting? In the passenger seat. Passenger front or back? Front. So next to you. Yes. Did you see Sebastian point a gun at this defendant when you were driving off? He did not point a gun. No. Did Sebastian have a gun? No. What about Chris? Do you know if Chris was in the car? Chris was in the car. Okay. How do you know Chris was in the car? I've seen both back doors open and two people get in. So I know that everybody was here. Everybody was present. So you, as you drove off, <coughs> and it was going to say that you sped off. Yes. As you sped off, was it your belief that everyone was in the car? All four of you guys were in the car together? Yes. What did you learn that you were that all four, that someone was missing? Seconds later, where Chris was like, where's Ty? Where's Tyler? It's like 30 seconds later. Chris was like, yo, where's Tyler? Now, Sebastian is seated next to you. Yes. So, hmm. at what point, Chris is asking about Tyler. Do you realize Tyler's not in the car at that point? Yes. And when you look over at Sebastian, what's going on with him? This is all happening at the same time. Sebastian, I heard him. He told me, he's like, yo, I'm hit. So at that point, like I just, my head is just snapped. Like I'm, I don't even know what was, what was in my head. I'm just trying to make sure he's okay. But I, I also have to drive at the same time. So I'm, I'm touching him physically. Like I'm touching him. Like, bro, are you okay? Like, like I bet you were. It's really my brother. So I'm, I'm trying to make sure he's good. And he's telling me like, yo, I'm, I'm hurt. Like, okay. <laughs> hurt. And everybody hurt sometimes. What, what is your plan? What, what, do you, what do you? The only thing on my mind is is hospital. So I'm telling Chris, like, Chris, search up a hospital into your GPS. But Chris is so stunned, like he can't even, he can't even do that. So he's handing me the phone. So now I got the phone and I'm trying to drive, type in hospital at the same time. So I get it. I just whatever I see, hospital, click it. I'm trying to follow the GPS, drive at the same time, make sure it's be good. So a lot going on. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Jesus Christ, lady. No. No. You all be already been told by the judge. No. Get your ass in front of the mic. Yeah. Don't worry. Lorraine's old. No. <laughs> We're old. You have to be old to know REM? No. Yeah. 1988, I believe. Okay, the year my wife was born. Love it. When you drive away, you end up on Broadway. Cradle robber. What happened when you... End, when you? She's you older than me. <laughs> I guess since so many bullets went through the car, it stopped it in some way. I'm not sure. So, uh, baby snatcher. So... I was forced to pull over wherever I was, wherever I stood. I call it my cougar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's weeping again. Oh, another 10-minute break? Yep. And it stopped. Got a, got a good close-up of his comb over. 1993 for that song, really? Was it really? It was like 80. No. Wasn't that off the end of It's the End of the World album? Uh, let's see. The Rock and Roll Union was 91. Everybody Hurts, 92. Shiny Happy People, somewhere yeah, around that. Yeah, 1993. April 1993. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Hmm. Well, there you go. I guess I don't have to break out the gray hair dye just yet. All right, never mind. You're not old. <laughs> hey, 53 ain't old, so 46 ain't old. Unless you're like Hayden and he thinks we're dinosaurs. Yeah. I can't afford hair dye for covering up all of this gray. Given that I'm show. generally sitting here thinking about how old I am. Oh, wait, we're talking about his final resting point here now. Ooh. Yes. In the trunk. Literally had no time. You had Sebastian's phone. Thirty-two diamonds and hell. Thirty-two. <clears throat> no. <laughs> <laughs> the car couldn't drive anymore. And so you took the car as far as it would go? Yes. Now, do you recall whether or not you passed a law enforcement officer or a law enforcement officer approached you and asked you if they could help you? Do you recall any of that? No, that that never happened. I called 911 myself when we stopped. So as soon as you get to they are in big trouble if a lawyer, yes, if a police officer comes to the stand and said, "Yeah, I tried to flag them down." Well, you may not have seen them. Can't hear a fucking thing you're saying, prosecutor. Get to lunch yet? I was going to see how far into uh, direct you want. Can we go to lunch so I can skip an hour? Okay. I mean, unless unless the jury really uh, wants to break for lunch now, knowing that you're still going to be on direct examination when we get back. Are you? Well, then let's... The microphone is right there, lady. Okay. <laughs> no. You had to think that long about... <laughs> no, there's okay. five microphones no, right I, there. I, I appreciate that. I really do. All right. So um, let's go ahead and play the... Uh, the uh, looks like a CD. There's five <laughs> microphones there. There's two on that stand, Ow. three on another. Well, six if you count the handheld. All right, five zero. All right, state. How can the microphones be that bad that they're not picking uh, anything up? DVD. Uh, I'm sorry, CD of a nine one one call. Got it. Because one, they're not omnidirectional mics, and two, they're not facing the direction where the mics are. It's just. 
The defense seems to have it. And what the Christ was that? Okay, shut up, Jeff. We're on 30th Street, and I don't know, we're in North Lake, 30th Street, and um, Broadway? Broadway, Broadway, we got 30th Street. What's going on? Oh, this is a 911 call. He shot? He's not moving. Yes, he's not moving. He's not moving. Right, one moment. Please. Please hurry. Yeah. I'm not sure. I can't tell. He's and he's the only one that's, that's injured there? He's the only one that's up. Yes, please, please. Okay. We have help on the way here. We're sending police to Paramount. He's doing that right now. I can't tell. I can't tell. All right. I wonder if Tears will show, though. Okay, again, is he on 40th Street or on Broadway? We are, we are on 40th Street and Broadway. It's an intersection. I hear some sirens. All right. Uh, uh, what's wrong? We'll pay for you. All right, no problem. Sir, did you see the person who shot him? Travis Rudolph. Damn, the sirens got there fast. No, his name is Travis Rudolph. Apparently, they were all there. They were there. Oh. Okay, is he black, white, or Hispanic, Travis? Black, black. That's what the defense is arguing. I don't even know. He came out the house and no, sir. Okay, well, since he lives at, he lives at 48th and Broadway? No, he lives in Northlake somewhere. I'm not sure. Off, like, Northlake and up, like, Costa Rica? Like, Lake Park, I don't know. Please, I think I can take off this. I understand they're going to come help in a minute, turn around as well, but you're saying Travis Rudolph shot him here, so was he in a car? He shot him, at, he shot him around his neighborhood. He came outside with the gun and shot at him. He shot at us. He shot at all of us. Okay, but where did that happen? You guys drove to this location? Yep, we were trying to get to the hospital, and we came down the street, and the car stopped working. Okay, Northlake. Are you shot as well, sir? I, I, I don't think I'm shot. I, I don't, I'm not shot. Just him. I mean, you don't think you're Are shot. Do you know Travis's address? No, I'm not sure. The drone one's good, but it's not that good. Okay, so you guys were heading to his house. He came outside, shot you guys, and you drove to this location? We came to talk to him. He came outside trying to fight. We were trying to get to the car, and he, he went back into the house. Got a gun, came outside, we were in the car, driving away, and he started to shoot at us. Okay, Mel. How many else how many other people are with you right now? Two, and my son who was with us, I don't know where he's at. We drove away as soon as he started shooting. Yes, please, please. Okay, you see the police? Yes, we see the police. All right, go ahead and tie them down, okay? We tied them down. Please, 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 please. Right here. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna catch Please. Please, please. Oh my god, <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, I love you, bro. I love you. So, mm. yeah, yeah. Oh, you recovered from that quick. Yeah. Yep. Not a tear in sight. Isn't that weird? I don't know. It looks like the mascara might have run slightly. What's this name? Police officers. So at that point, law enforcement starts to arrive where you guys were. Yes. Do you know at this point, uh, at the point where you're on Broadway and law enforcement starts to arrive, do you know where Tyler is? No. Tyler Durden. When law where enforcement arrived at the scene, what did they do with you guys? Like, did they separate you and Chris? Yes. What, what happened? Separated us and asked us what happened. Okay. And did you tell them? Yes. Did you tell them that uh, you had a gun that night and you took a gun over there? No. Did you tell them that you went over to the defendant's house to confront him about what he did to your sister earlier the, the, the previous day? I told him I went to talk to him, yes. Did you tell them that uh, Tyler had a gun on him? No. And why didn't you tell him that? Because I didn't know he had a gun. Do you recall who you spoke with? Uh, Detective Vanderman. I'm going to show you what is going to be state's composite 12A through G. And Judge, I believe these are in my stipulation as well. All right. Thank you. All right, 12A through G uh, as a composite exhibit of multiple Judge, photographs are admitted without objection. Yes, Your Honor. And these are photos of uh, the Cadillac that they were driving that night. All right. So that's uh, seven photographs then? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And permission to publish uh, yeah. briefly, Judge? You may. You may. We're allegedly close to cross-examination. We'll have to see how long it takes us to get there. So we're going to look at now. Do you recall if any black 
I'm not sure. There's just so many shots. I don't know. She wanted you to say no, dummy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. Blue holes. Yes. Yes. Chris Mullen, uh, you have to wait and listen to the cross examination. Yes. No. Driver. And that is that's what they decided to be on, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And do you see these defects in the window here? Yes. Were these defects in the car before you went to the center top that night? No. And we're looking at the rear driver side. Any defects that you know there? No. Yes. What do you see that wrong with the Bullet hole. Is it shattered? Yes. Was it like this before you went to the center house that night? No. And it's the last one you see. And is that. If you were sure, it's in the house. You may. Yes. Now, at this point, uh, Keyshawn. Rename me <laughs> Muffle, muffle. Yes. <laughs> right. Sebastian's right? yes. yes. bag is still in the back of that car, in that, in, in that car, right? Yes. Did everything that you guys put in the trunk of that car when you drove to the defendant's house that night and put in the trunk, it's still there, yes. right? Did you ask them, hey, can I get my phone? I wasn't even thinking like that, no. Um. So after, after you have a conversation with the police about what happened that night, did they keep you there on Broadway in that parking lot or that area where you ended up uh, when the car became inoperable? Did you stay there for a while? We stayed there for a while, and then they let us eventually go home. Did you at some point um, talk to your sister? Uh, yeah, eventually. she had called, I think she called Chris's phone. I'm not sure, but I eventually talked to her. Okay. And did you tell her what happened? Yes. And did she come to where you were? Um, was it around no, that time she, she started deleting her text messages? Because Tyler was in the hospital. Hmm. Okay. Now, Tyler was an asshole? What? You said Tyler was in the hospital. Yeah. Oh, in the hospital. Now, <laughs> did you know when you were in that parking lot? <laughs> I swear to God, I heard him He's say still an Tyler asshole. was an asshole. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I legitimately heard him say Tyler's an asshole, not in the hospital. Apologies, Tyler. In that area where the car became an offer, well, did you know that Tyler ended up in the hospital? Uh, eventually, the police told me. Okay. And at some point during those early morning hours, did they let you guys go, you and Chris? Yes. Where did you go? Uh, to get Chris's car and into the hospital. When you went to the hospital, was Tyler still in the hospital? Yes. Okay. And uh, do you know what happened to him? Why was he in the hospital? I just had found out that he got shot. Shot, 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 shots, everybody. Um, yeah. John Gordon, member five months of the Clean and Sober Group, says, Prosecutor, did you bring a gun to Tyler's house? Dwayne. <laughs> I think it was Dwayne. <laughs> Dwayne, prosecutor, dot, dot, dot. Prosecutor, it doesn't matter if you brought a gun to Tyler's house. Oh, uh, that's funny. Did you visit with Dwayne. him? They wouldn't let us inside, so he was in surgery, I believe, so we had to wait until, I think, tomorrow. The next day, I forget, but yeah, I did see him. No, Tyler was not now, in the car. They left the Tyler. Do you, do you <gasps> call you guys FaceTiming with your sister, Dominique? Yes. Okay. And so what was that about? Sexting. Tell him that. We lost SB. Sebastian. Mm. And that the 
for the first time, the face paint? Yes. What happened after that? We need to get our story straight. Did you, uh, at some point, Mr. Jones, Sean, did you learn that Tyler actually did have a gun that night? Yes. And he brought it to the defendant's house? Yes. When did you become aware of that? Uh, after the fact. Okay. Uh, do you know what he did with it? I'm not sure. I, I think he said he just threw it. I don't know. I'm not sure. Everybody How run. Homecoming it? queen has got a gun. Um, I think that's just what... I, don't, I think he's. I think he told me. I forget. Or when they found it, Vanderland had. When they found it, his son exactly. suddenly remembered. I found out yeah. Was it the gun that you sold to him? Yes. How do you know that? Because that's what they told me. Dude, you sold him the damn gun the day after you bought it. I'm sorry, Miss Ellis. I couldn't hear you. Want to consult? Of course. Yes. Right. The judge can't even hear what's being said. For hell's sakes. Mm. It's not like, hey, can you buy me a gun? Sure. Yeah. I'm fast forwarding here. That's a lot. I guess they're going to break for lunch here in just a quick second as soon as it stops buffering. Um, I know why it's buffering. Because we're at 1.25 speed and it's going faster than it's buffered. I figured that out. Because I'm smart, SMRT. But uh, we, I'm not smart enough to not actually, well, while it's buffering, we'll uh, read this excited utterance, AU, either silver or Australia, one of the two. Uh, <laughs> regardless, it seems crazy he's the one on trial here. Well, I don't think so. I'll tell you why in just a second, as long as the buffering is still happening. Lorraine W., if they walked away and didn't come back, that wouldn't be self-defense. But if they came back... And as we know from Pet Cemetery, sometimes they come back. Uh, yeah, dang it! We're at the. Four, I'm gonna have to like. I'm gonna have to hit refresh. We're at the four four oh eight oh seven mark. That's where we are. Four oh eight oh seven. Yeah. Four oh eight oh seven. Yeah. It all depends on what took place out of Paul's picture. Scholarship. He was. Let's go to four oh eight oh seven. Four oh eight oh seven. Mm. Do, 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 do. Mm. Good enough. So. Mm. Mm. so one tossed the gun. One was found with his hand in a position like this, but no gun. <laughs> yeah, they they That's didn't call it. the cops until the cops were already coming. Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake. I know. Yes. I just remember hearing, stop, stop. You're going to go to jail, Travis. Oh, come on. A little bit leading, Jesus. Travis. But she said his name. You didn't say she said his name until you were freaking led. See, again, I, I totally agree with Ozzy. I mean, the 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 defense has to be so confident in what they're going right, to so get him uh, to testify to. They don't feel care. Free to stand up and stretch for a moment while I talk with the lawyers. All right. God, this well, good for the judge for stopping this every ten minutes. Uh, but I think we're going to take the lunch break now. Yeah. You let one of the deputies know, they will let me know, and I will take very swift and very firm, appropriate action. All right? Remember and obey the uh, four cardinal rules. No research, no discussion, even amongst yourselves. Keep an open mind. You haven't heard anywhere near all the evidence yet. And if you happen to see one of us out there, duck us. We'll duck you, and everything will be fine. All right, duck you, one. Judge. All right, so they're, they're coming back. There was actually a very short lunch. This is a long first day. We're halfway through the damn day, and we've already been streaming here for uh, four and a half hours. So we're going to be here for at least four and a half more hours because that's how I roll. Hmm. Um, all right, well, I, got let's, let's one I got about 90 minutes before I have to speed off to work. 
All right, we'll we'll put dot we'll put the strawberry here behind the the cut cage for a bit. <laughs> Ozzy Overlord, what do you think? Uh, first witness direct examination. How's how's it gone? Uh, what's going on here? Here's Fulton. Yeah, sorry, <clears throat> my <laughs> I too have been streaming most of the day, so my cameras decided to uh, stuff on me when uh, with the cage or whatever. Um, he is not credible in the slightest. Like aside from providing some details of what may or may not happen. As you said, I am so confident that they must be ready to tear this kid apart, that they are just give him, giving him yards and yards of rope because they could have like doubled the amount of time that they spent on this if they'd been objecting because pretty much every other question was either leading or inappropriate or something else. I mean, I personally would be jumping up and down, but clearly they have to have some sort of strategy here because... There's no way in hell a regular lawyer in this scenario is letting this go on in this way and not winding up with professional misconduct alleged at them if it goes badly. <clears throat> like, I'm sorry, but this is, you know, to, to let to be letting the prosecution go as easily as they are, something's up. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, uh, because th there was no objections made by the defense during that entire essentially three hour leading exam. I think the only the objection that I saw leading. came from the judge himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nicholas, what do you think? How did that go? Uh, well, allegedly I've already listened to this uh, cross. Um, no, we're just talking about the direct. Okay. Only about the direct. He is full of it. He is adjusting his story and the prosecution is trying to make him adjust the story a bit more to fit in more with the, what the prosecution is trying to tell. Mm -hmm. And that's all the leading questions. And I, I agree. Uh, I'm not sure because even if you are very confident in your cross-examination, I, I can see at least a, make a mark that is leading and have the judge say, yes, that is leading just to make them tone it down a bit, because you never know what the future is. You can never rely on the cross-examination alone. Well, I have a question for you, Nicholas. Um, yep. And this is kind of a lawyerly question that the, the, the chat may not understand here, but like there's different kinds of legal systems throughout the world. Mm -hmm. There's the, yep. uh, you know, the Anglo-American, the, the, the English and, and uh, American law system. There, then there's the continental law system. Is mm. is is Norway sort of a continental like Germanic, French legal system? Norway? Kind of Fuck you. Sweden. What do you mean Shit. Norway? Fuck. Yeah. I, wait, well, what's Norway? <laughs> then we'll talk about the important country, Sweden, after Norway. <laughs> what do you know about Norwegian law? Anything? Okay, nothing. All right. What about Sweden? <laughs> God damn it. Well, so it's is, a is Sweden. That's yeah. As you said, it's a total. The Swedes have you have to sit in a room with the stroming, and if you survive, you're found not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> How is the Swedish it's system? A, is it is it a continental law system basically, or uh, we we do have a civil system, and uh, we have uh, on the lower courts where you start off every trial, it's uh, one judge and uh, four layman judges. Oh, okay. And, now, what about Thoughts. leading questions? Because in Korea is also based on Korean criminal law is essentially based on German law, which yeah, is kind of a weird thing. More or less, uh, Swedish and German are similar, but not exactly the same. Because like but, uh, leading questions are not a thing in Korean criminal law. Like no. all questions are you you just you ask leading questions because you want to get your client's answer out there. So all mm. questions are essentially leading. <laughs> if you're not asking a leading question, you're asking a wrong question in Korea. Mm. So, okay. Is that the same way in, so, in, in Sweden? Yeah. Uh, we so, are more fact-based yeah. in the legal system. Yes, pr both prosecution and the defense will always try to lead, but often the head judge is, uh-uh, that's going too far. Mm. So uh, sometimes the defense, but whoever objects sets the tone. So if you mm -hmm. object too much, for leading and stuff like that, then you can't either. I don't think I've ever seen an objection in a Korean legal proceeding. Oh, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen a single objection ever. I, nothing comes to mind because it's essentially it's like here's the client. You know, the prosecutors they lay out their case. They 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 give their statements. They lay it out, mm. 
And then it's like, okay, does the defense have anything to add to this? Then the defense will give their deal. It's like, okay, you did this right. You did this right. You, he said this right. You did that right. You did this correct. And you sort of lead them down the way you wanted to. And then the prosecution will ask their questions, which are you know, pointed and direct. But both sides will submit their questions in advance of the hearing. So the other side knows the questions that are going to be asked before they're asked. Oh. They exchange the questions, basically. Oh. And then you. The, so in both of those systems, is it still yeah. adversarial, or does the judge yes. take more of an inquisitorial look at things? Korean judges will will quite often ask questions. Okay, so it's almost a hybrid system. That's interesting. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry, it's chat, efficient. for just geeking out over law stuff here, but this is really yeah. interesting comparing the legal systems amongst the countries. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it, it is efficient. Mm. Well, I mean, you kind of expected it from the South Koreans. Um, well, I, mean, I mean, that's the thing. Is like with a leading question, you, the, the the sub the, what is being asked is not necessarily objectionable. You're objecting to the way it's being asked. So if you ask the leading question, you did this, didn't you? Objection leading. Then you just have to go back and ask a bunch of other questions to get you to that exact same point. So it's kind of like, and, what's the point? Because you know that there's a way yeah. to get there anyway. Yeah, the Korean courts are essentially very, very equitable. Okay. You know, it's, it, you're, 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 it's, the, it's the outcome. It's not how you get there. Mm. Right. Uh, so someone says, Vice, do, do, do you have jury juries in Korean courts? The jury system was introduced a few years ago. I have never heard of a case where a jury is actually, I mean, sure, there may have been jury cases, but I have never heard of a actual jury case taking place in Korea, even though the jury system really? was introduced a few years ago. Yeah. You, you know, it's usually a pan the criminal case is usually a panel of three judges, like a presiding judge and then the two underling judges. And how frequently do you see dissenting judgments in those then? Um, they usually don't give the dissenting opinions. It's just here's why we decided the, the presiding judge will give the the opinion of the court without the dissent, without dissenting opinions being offered. <laughs> Name and it's asked. Not, Wait, yeah. that wasn't the defense attorney? No, that was the nope. prosecution. Yeah, that was the prosecution. <laughs> and tragic says, not as efficient as North Korean courts. <laughs> <laughs> Is <that> true. Uh, <laughs> so all right, we've skipped that? through lunch. When we're, we're skipped through lunch, we're halfway here. I, I I still I've left the room three times to go to the bathroom, but I still have not brought back any ice to with which to craft yet another bourbon coke. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take that there. We've got a couple of comments that I had starred, not super chats, unfortunately, uh, but chats nonetheless. Lorraine W. If they walked away, and see, this is what I was gonna say. If they we did this, if, they, if they walked away and didn't come back, that wouldn't be self defense. But if they came back, and that's what I wanted to go, I want to go back and address this comment because that's what I think. You know, this guy might be fudging. This guy might be hedging his bets, but. What I saw, what the prosecution said in their opening statements, these guys, they they, said they, had, they ran 300 yards or whatever it was down the road. He chased them and then you filled their car with 39 rounds of, of you know, he just shot, their car, shot at their car 39 times, um, mm -hmm. hitting some and nearly hitting others. Now, the video we saw, I saw in the video, there was the, the, they were walking away back to their car. And then shortly thereafter, the flashes, the muzzle flashes started happening. So what I'm saying is regardless of what he said, I'm sort of still personally, and from what I, that, that little bit of evidence we've seen thus far, thinking, okay, they were walking away. Regardless of what they started, regardless of what they did right now, to me, I'm sort of on the prosecution side where it shows them disengaging. The threat is gone. They're walking back to their car. They're leaving. They're fleeing. They're trying to drive away, and he's shooting at them. Mm -hmm. So I, in my personal opinion right now, just hearing the direct examination of the first witness, I think the, uh, the defense is on some very, very shaky ground. I'm curious as to, and this one's probably one for Branca more than anything else, but you guys might be able to answer it. American Castle Doctrine. At yes. what point is it fair to use, like, where's the, where's the, is it at the boundary line or is it once they're outside of the physical house? Well, I mean, the interesting thing is they, you know, I mean, you, anywhere, anywhere you'd have in Florida, you do not have a duty to retreat. 
You, right. you have the stand your ground law. But if you're going to invoke that as a defense, my understanding is you have to make a motion to do that. They did make the motion to rely mm -hmm. on a stand your ground defense, and the judge denied that. Okay. So they they can't you that that is not a defense that would make the charges go away. But if the defense can still prove that the, it would apply, then they can try to do that. And in their yeah. opening statements, the defense said the only reason he shot them was because they forced him to do it to protect him and his family's life. So they've essentially, yeah. Right yeah. Okay. So what they've got to do now is they have to at least show, again, I'm not a Florida lawyer. This is just my understanding based on previous cases that, that have been going on. And what Steve has said, uh, that if the defense makes a plausible argument for self-defense, then the burden shifts back to the prosecution to mm -hmm. prove that self-defense did not occur. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'm thinking you know, if they can show that they disengaged, they walked away, they were going back to their car and they were driving off as he was shooting at them. I think that is a big problem for self-defense. Mm. And uh, you have then the defense opening statement where they claimed he walked down, you saw them disengage, but we don't know the timeline between the doorbell video and the other vi video. That's uh, one issue. And they claim that he walked out with a gun. He saw two guys on top of his brother in the bad way. Well, it's all bad ways, but uh, now, pounding on now, it. I, I, um, do have to, I do have to, cr to criticize the chatters here for just a minute. Uh, Amanda Fence says, Jeff, the two guys had their guns out while in the car. That has not been proven yet. So that hasn't happened yet. So you, they may have said that they did this or they may have been alleged, but there's been no evidence to that effect right at this point. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going by where we are so far. I'm saying that what we're looking mm -hmm. at when you see yep. the video of them walking away and then we see you know, the guns being fired as they drive off, that is a problem for self-defense. Mm -hmm. We don't know. And you can say they all had their guns pointed out, but if you can't prove it, it never happened. So I'm saying what we know from the evidence presented in court thus far. Mm. Um, how many people get shot while running away from the cops? Irrelevant. Uh, but I understand why you're saying it, but it's irrelevant to this case. And a man defense against, they didn't walk away. They were trying a drive-by. No evidence has been presented yet. There's been no evidence to that effect for, by the prosecution or the defense. Of course, the prosecution wouldn't say that. Uh, but, but there's been no evidence presented by the defense that would that would prove that so again that's uh something that would it's just a, it's a story it's not it hasn't happened unless it's in front of the jury feral housewife right armand fence it's not walking away if you get in your car and aim your gun at the guy you came to shoot up again feral housewife no evidence has been presented in court to show that yet this is all media it's all statements it's all assertions by the defense it's all of these things it hasn't been entered into evidence yet and just to make it clear i am only going by what is put in front of the jury so let's <laughs> let's see how it goes anybody have any other comments before we move on Nice, that's why they effed around and found out. A lot of people effed around and some people found out, right? So again, mm -hmm. that's what I'm just saying. You know, uh, it's what they it's what they showed. Dina Sch Scholar, it's 2:56 a.m. Good night and be safe, everyone. Come back and check us out on the replay. Now, if they can prove there were guns pointed at them, yeah, that changes the dynamic quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that uh, but that hasn't been shown yet. Let's see how it goes. That's the that's the best we can do. We're going to push start, and I'm going to run back and grab some ice, and then I shall return, pour myself another drink as we continue along. Uh, no super chats. Everything's taken care of. All right, Liz Gu. Let's bring it back up. Release Dargi from the strawberry from the semi-cut cage. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Where are we? There we are. He reminds me of an actor, but I... Uh, that judge. He reminds me of an actor. Hmm. Okay. Well, as Chris Mullins, uh, yeah, that's, what, that's one thing that the prosecutor said in the beginning. Self, like murder begins where self-defense ends. 
What I'll happens? Seats, yeah. Please. We'll just have to see how it plays Thank out. Thank you for your punctuality. All right. Who's going to do cross examination? All right, Ms. Perlet, you may begin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, you, Chris Lowe, uh, have known each other since middle school, right? Yes. You're like brothers? Yes. Very close, right? Yes. Same with Tyler Robinson, have known each other uh, since middle school? Yes. And you would also consider him um, extremely close, like a brother to you? Yes. And Sebastian as well, right? Yes. Um, isn't it true that you guys would basically do anything for one another? To a certain extent, yes. At the time of the shooting, you testified that you owned a nine millimeter Glock. Is that correct? Yes. And you were familiar with firearms, were you not? To an extent. Well, you had a concealed weapon. Hey, look, you can use the mic. Yes, I just recently got it. I'm sorry? I just I recently acquired it. Okay, so you did not have a concealed weapons permit at the time of the incident? I did, but I didn't have it for long. How long well. did you have it for? A few months. Okay, and as part of that, you need to get trained, right? In gun usage, do, is that correct? And how to handle a firearm? Yes. Okay. So you had some basic um, understanding of how to operate a firearm, right? Yes. Okay. You were comfortable with a firearm, right? Yes. You owned a firearm. Yes. And in fact, you had purchased multiple firearms. Yes. And you, once you, you would, it was your habit to buy firearms and then quickly sell them, was it not? Not a habit. I wouldn't say that, but I did do it twice, yes. Okay. One time was to Tyler Robinson, right? Yes. And that was the 9 millimeter uh, Taurus, right? Yes. And you purchased that and then sold it to him the very next day. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Why did why did you sell it to him so quickly? I didn't need it anymore. What? I didn't what? need it anymore. So you what? You needed it for twenty four hours. Yes. And what changed that you then could buy a gun? I committed a crime that I'm not going to attest to. No and then want to dispose of the weapon and sell it to Tyler Robinson. Once you realize how it handles, how it shoots, I realized I didn't like it. Okay, so you went to the. You went shooting with it the minute after you bought it or shortly thereafter? The gun range, yes. I'm See, I'm yeah. buying this bullshit. I, I would say any nobody would buy a gun without shooting it first. I don't remember. Did you sell it or did you actually give it to him? I don't remember. You said you sold it, so which one was it? I sold it. You told me I sold it to him. Well, you agreed with me. Do you agree with anything that anybody tells you? No, but you're telling me, so I didn't did you, you didn't ask. Him? You told me. Yes. How much did you sell it for? I told you I do not remember. Did you do a bill of sale? I do not remember. <gasps> And if you did sell it, oh. he illegally sold a firearm. That, that's what she's alleging here. Uh -huh. Holy shit. I like her. She is off to a good start. Holy crap. Was not wrong, though, was I? Wow. Feral Housewife, it's 100% straw purchase. Well, duh. I, I mean, I have bought more than one firearm in my life. And I will say, I have never not tested a firearm before I purchased it to see if I like it, to see if it handles well, to see if it shoots well, to see if everything is great. And I want to spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a particular firearm or more. So this whole, I, I had no idea. I just looked at it and went, mm, me like gun, me buy. I don't buy that for a fucking second. And like, oh, I was done with it. I didn't need it anymore. That was a weird thing to say. I don't need the gun. Not, I didn't want the gun. I don't need the gun anymore. And then he apparently doesn't remember whether or not he pulled up a bill of sale and sold it legally. Interesting. Comments? Initial comments from any of you right out of the gate? All right. I can't wait to watch this. I really can't. I believe so, yes. Now, you, you said on direct examination that you're not a gun enthusiast. Remember that? Yes. Um, but you certainly have familiarity with guns. We've established that. Yes, to some extent. Yes? Yes. You also had a different gun that you said at one point that you owned a peace shield, and then you sold that one to um, a student up in Jacksonville. Is that correct? Yes. And what, what's a peace shield? Another 9 millimeter. Actually, I believe it's a 380. I'm not sure. Okay. And when did you purchase that? He gun? doesn't even remember what it was? I don't remember the exact date. What year, what month? Do you remember that? No. Was oh, it bitch, before please. after you bought and sold the Taurus? It was before the Taurus. And why did you sell that gun to the college student? I didn't like that gun either. So did you sell that one the very next day as well? I don't believe so. And how much did you sell that gun for? I don't remember. Who'd you sell that gun to? To a friend. What's his name? Landon. Landon? Yes. Okay. Um, any other guns that you've bought and sold? Nope. And you've been to uh, the shooting range, right? Yes. And you've been to the shooting range with Chris Lowe and Tyler Robinson, haven't you not? 
No. 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 You sure about that? Yes. Hundred percent. Yes. Right. She's got documentation. You gun shows. Yes. And have you been to the gun shows? Jeff is showing legs. I believe so, yes. You sure about that? <laughs> yes. You're Chris, right? Yes. So Chris has Jeff started an OnlyFans. I can't Only for a hundred dollars a night. You to the gun show, right? Yes, that is true. All right, South Florida gun show? Yes. Did you buy a gun when you went with you? No. Went with you? no. On the occasion that the three of you went together, did you buy a gun? Hello, everyone. <laughs> I Jeff I, has I shorts. He just had to close the window because it's really cold. Yes. <laughs> it's raining. It's cold. Not boxers. They're blue. They're, they're blue athletic shorts. I don't wear boxers. I, I, I wear um, boxer briefs because, you know, I like the snugness of briefs, but the anyway, just keep watching. <laughs> Yes. What, what is that? Tyler's gone. Was that the nine millimeter sword? Yes. That you sold him? Yes. Okay. And this particular gun has an extended magazine. God damn it, stop saying clip. Can you tell me what is the what is extended clip is? Uh, a clip with more bullets than standard. And why does somebody have an extended clip? If the standard because they're happy to see you. I have enough bullets. Do you know how many bullets that clip holds? No, I'm unsure of the exact amount. Has this gun been all right, all you gun enthusiasts, I guess we're just going to have to get used to everybody calling a magazine a clip, so let's not bring it up. I know I was the only one that brought it up, but, you know. Modified in any other way besides having an extended clip? No. Okay. And this is the weapon that you sold to Tyler Robinson? Yes. Ooh, it's like Fat Boy Slim's weapon of choice. Doom, 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 doom. Six. six. Any objection? Very well. So Christopher Walken dancing. And it's exhibit six. Why is it that the defense lawyers know exactly how to use a microphone, but the prosecutions can't just fucking and figure it out? You learned that that is, in fact, the gun that Tyler had with him on the night of the shooting. Is that correct? Yes. It's your testimony. You told the jury that on the night of the shooting, you did not bring your gun with you. Is that correct? That is correct. But it's your habit to carry your gun pretty much with you at all times, is it not? No, it is not. Um, but you, you, you have a concealed carry commit. What? You carry your yeah. Glock with you. Uh, I started carrying my Glock when I got my concealed license, and it depends on where I'm going, but anywhere, like, it just depends. I can't really give specific examples. I really don't have any specific examples to give you. All right. Well, we know one place that you took your Glock was when you were subpoenaed to come to the courthouse for a deposition, <gasps> right? You remember that? Holy yes. shit. All right. So you received a subpoena. And you were summoned to come to the courthouse yes. to give a deposition in this case. Yes. Um, there were lawyers present, uh, court reporter. Remember that? Yes. And you felt the need to bring your Glock with you to that deposition? It wasn't inside the deposition. It was in my car. Right. But you brought it. Yes. You put it in your sister's car, right? Yes. And you, So that's an instance, right, where you believe that it was necessary to carry your Glock. Right? Yes. Okay. Can you give us any other examples when you would take your Glock under what circumstances? I really don't have any other examples to give you. This is after I was shot at. So now I really feel the need that I have to have my Glock. Right. Before being shot at, can you tell us when you would take your Glock with you? I really don't have any examples to give you. Before you were shot at, how did you carry your Glock? Where'd you put it? Um, in my bag. In your where? My bag. In your bag, like a backpack? No, like a bag. A bag across your chest? Like yes. a purse. Not my chest, but yes. Like, yes. A purse. Like a holster? No, just a purse. What about Tyler? How did he carry his gun? I'm not sure. Fanny pack. <laughs> and at the time of the incident, do you know if Tyler had any other guns? No. Back in April of 2021, when this incident occurred, necklace. you knew that Travis Rudolph. Had you should so yes. totally do that for merch. <laughs> that he had at his home, right? Yes, that's good. And I just want to make sure I didn't misunderstand you when you were on on direct and you were talking with Miss Ellis. When you went to Travis's house on that one occasion, he didn't give you um, a code to his security cameras, did he? He did. He gave you what? a code to the house alarm, did he not? Yes, but it, all the security is connected, I believe. Okay, so you had the ability then to um, put in a code and turn on or off his cameras. Is that what you're telling us? To arm the security. I'm not sure if that turns off or on the cameras because I'm not familiar with the system because I, don't, I couldn't even tell you what system it is. But... Okay, so tell me exactly what you did. I typed in the code and clicked arm. Where do you type it into? 
I'm not sure. It was like a tablet or of some sort. I'm not sure. Like a computer, like an iPad? I'm not sure. You don't remember what you did? I remember, I told you what I did. I typed the code in. And on what? Did. Okay, so was it a, like an alarm pad on on the wall? I'm or not was sure. It, you don't remember. I'm not sure. But it basically. You typed it on something and you don't remember what you typed it on. This guy is full of shit. Did it? I'm not sure. You wouldn't do that, right? You didn't manipulate any cameras. No. And on the night of the incident, you didn't turn any cameras away from the way. Sure. <clears throat> Feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Remembering and obeying. Before. Objection. This is decrement detrimental to our case. Yeah, this guy is full of shit, man. It, this, this has already gone off the rails, and uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. How much longer do we got? We got uh, a long time left here with her. Got a, looks like a good couple hours left with her. Then we get into the crazy one. <laughs> allegedly. No, she's crazy. There's no allegedly about it. Yeah. Enough with the future talk. I'm amazed <laughs> on his lack of memory all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. That's just like... <sighs> Bloody hell. Uh, yeah. I've, just listen I've to you. I've ruined it again. One of these days, I'll learn to just stop trying to fast forward through these things. This is all me. All right, folks. Anything else to add while we're waiting for it to buffer? We what do we think? That he was purchasing the weapons specifically to palm off to his friends? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> do we <laughs> think that the friends were under uh, were under any <clears throat> inability to purchase them themselves? Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's my feeling. No evidence, but that's my feeling. Do you, okay, uh, follow up. Do you think it was more than two guns he bought and sold? Yep. Could have been. All right. <laughs> you did nothing with security codes. No. Okay. I never entered his home. You never what? Entered his home. No, I'm not talking about. The did you enter Sebastian? Oh. I thought you were talking about the night. Sorry. The, the, the time that you were at his house and he gave you some code, that was to secure the home, correct? Yes. It had nothing to do with cameras or anything else? I'm not sure. To the best of your knowledge? Yes. Now, when you were home uh, the night of the incident, you were at your apartment in Delray, is that correct? Yes. And that's Spring Harbor Apartments? Yes. That's on Linton and Congress? Yes. And who lived there with you at the time? Uh, me, my mom, and my sister, I believe. What do you mean you believe? You don't know if your sister lives with you? At the All right, it's time to make this comment because someone finally raised it. Uh, Lorraine W says, if you have arrows on your keyboard, do they not fast forward five seconds like mine or backwards? If so, they need to back in mine, hold my, yeah. Yes, and that's what that's what causes the buffering is because we're showing this at faster than normal speed. So when you know it like buffers, we're actually showing it faster than it can buffer. Uh, it's just that you know, my computer has been on for four days. Cash is probably full. The arrows just cause it to buffer at this point. So yeah. That's just and crazy. Jeff's internet is run by little people running in. So no. No, I, I actually have ridiculously fast internet, but it's just my, my cache has just been doing this cachey thing or for the last, I, my computer's been on for days. But uh, yeah, the arrows go forward and backwards, but uh, it's, you know, the buffering is is not as fast as we're watching. So anyway, it ain't keeping it. up, basically, people. It ain't basically, keeping up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I could Re reboot everything, but that would just cause problems. Hmm. So yeah, we're that, that, that's, that's not a thing that we can do. She moved out, so I don't know if it was before or after at this point. It's been a long time since then. Okay, so... So she could have lived there, yes, at that time, yes. Not sure. Not really. Three-bedroom apartment, correct? Three bedrooms. And your mom and stepdad? I'd laugh so damn hard if his yourself? sister was on the witness list. <laughs> and possibly your sister. My sister did live there. Okay. At the time, she did live there? Yes. Sure. Yes. All right, and you occupied one bedroom, your sister... I had another bedroom, room. yes. And your parents, or your yes. mom and your stepdad? Yes, my mom. Not your stepdad? My stepdad as well, yes. And you did not have a car at the time, right? No. Um, your mom had a black Cadillac at the time? I think it's like bluish black, yes. 
And at the time of the incident on April 6th, your mother- Aretha Franklin had a pink Cadillac. Jamaica, right? Yes. What about your stepdad? Mm, I don't know. When you were home that evening, at roughly 9.30, 10 o'clock, somewhere in that area, um, you received a phone call from your sister, right? Text first and then a phone call, yes. All right, and the text, we, there's been some discussion about that. That was the text that said something along the lines of um, what? Tell the jury. She just said that Travis had slammed her. Okay. And Smashed her or slammed her? received another text after that, right? No, then she called me and then she came home. Okay, and then when she called you, she was crying. She was very upset. You remember that? Yes. She was so hysterical, so flustered that you really couldn't make out everything that she was telling you. Yes. Um, so you guys actually spoke. Yes. And she told you again that oh, I thought it was a different sister. Her to the ground and disrespected her, right? Yes. Nick no, Naylor says, "Read my super chat, chat, bigot." I have not received yes. a super chat you from you, really Nick Naylor. Um, if you'll tell me what you said yeah. in chat, I will just read it. Yes. But I have not received a super um, chat from you. And then she. Uh, you missed the part when uh, he yeah. said right? the question was: She has that. cosmetic that surgery. Okay, that comes up in her cross examination. All right, so yeah, I, yeah. I do remember. So all right. We'll, we'll back up a little bit. We can back up a lot. Oh, oh, we even buffer when we're going back. This is really awesome. C cool on me. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to touch any more mm -hmm. buttons ever. Mm -hmm. And then she mm -hmm. texted you again, right? You and Tyler. That was way after. Like She came home. I got out the shower. I got dressed. And then she texted me. So the time that she texted you, go shoot up the shit or something along that line, that was after she was already home with you? Yeah, that was that. That was after that. Yeah. You sure? Why would she text you if she was home talking to you and then and text you when you were in the house? I'm not sure. Isn't it true that she texted you? Well, you better get sure. I'm not sure what time she texted me. Okay, so let let's let's do this. When she got home, you were home in the apartment. Yes. Nobody else. Yes. Okay. You had already spoken on the phone. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And you had already received a text from her saying that he slammed her to the ground two times, picked her up off her feet and slammed her to the ground and had disrespected her, right? Yes. She was crying hysterical. Yes. All right, when she got home, what did you two do? We just, she told me and I was... Hmm. You don't say. <clears throat> Ooh, we might, we might have to... Uh... Do a reboot while you just sit here and wait, folks. Yeah, that's huh. all right. I'll do our best to make sure you don't get yeeted. I told her I'm going to go over there and speak to him. That was really pretty much it. I just told her that. Okay. And in that circumstance, you did not take your Glock, right? Yes. You left that. Okay. Why uh, scroll up. I've about? scrolled up two and a half hours. Oh, plus, I also have a list of super okay. chats from YouTube oh, Studio. Okay. Plus, I also have a spreadsheet that automatically logs all of the super chats and i so don't have a super chat from you that i've seen if someone else has seen it just tell me what it is in chat basically beaten up that in this circumstance you don't take your gun to go talk to the three of my sources register no super chat but so, tell me what it is and i'll be more than happy to read it you were at the apartment with dominique you saw um, a number of bruises you testified to miss ellis you remember that yes okay and you remember seeing um Bruises on her face, scratches on her face. I'm not really sure of the exact location of the bruises and scratches. I just remember she had bruises and such. Okay, and you remember them being on her legs? I don't really recall the exact location. Just a moment, Your Honor. All right. Mm. All right. Then he might have said something in the deposition. Yeah, both sides of it said that there was a text to go shoot up his shit. The prosecution mentioned it. The defense has also mentioned it. Uh, the prosecution is saying it meant that they were going to go do it, and the defense is saying, well, it was, it was. A, oh wait, the other way. The, the prosecution was saying it was hyperbole, and the defense was saying they meant to do it. Yeah, he needs airing out too. Too bad his friend got hit, not him. Ouch, that's harsh. <clears throat> But not really inaccurate. Oh, this one. Okay. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, we read that one. Uh, this is, we, we actually read that one. This chat this is a chat that identifies as a super chat. Hayden read that. <laughs> so yeah, it that. wasn't an actual super chat. So you got the second fiddle. fiddle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm frozen Hayden again. mentioned God that. Damn it. No, you're not frozen. You're just a good ventriloquist. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're about as frozen as his witness is. Come on. <laughs> Renee Matei, thank you so much for the $2 super chat. It's been a couple, it's been like an hour and a half since we had a super chat. Congratulations. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, $2. Thank you so much. These are not the super chats you're looking for. <laughs> Feral housewife banter. I was just trying to stir shit while we were buffering. Buffering. Mission accomplished. Good job. <laughs> Consider the shit officially stirred. <laughs> but I can speed it up until she starts talking again. All right. <clears throat> God, I want this cough to go away. Oh, the, yes. the defense lawyer has lost her ability to use the microphone, too. Yes. <clears throat> and buffering. Oh. I didn't do anything. All right. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yes. No, I did not. Why? Your sister had been beaten and battered. Why didn't you call the police to report a battery against Mr. Rudolph? Because I feel as if the situation was so personal. I feel like it's easier to make that decision when you don't personally know someone. But I feel like I could talk to him, so that's what I attempted to do. What the fuck does that mean? Because she wasn't injured. She had no, nothing on her. Isn't that true? No. Okay, so if your sister comes home, you already, you already implied and suggested that you are her protector. She was beaten. You wanted to go talk to Travis, right? Right? Yes. Okay. So you're her protector. You're there to make sure she's okay. Why didn't you call the police who would have made sure that this man would have been arrested for battery? Overruled cross-examination. Go ahead. Why didn't you call the police to make sure that this man was arrested for battery? Because I felt like the situation was personal and I knew him personally. So I felt like I could talk to him. If the situation was so personal, why didn't you let your sister fight her own battle? Why did you have to go there? Because hmm. that's my sister. So? So? <laughs> so you were... That's, that's my favorite cross-examination question in the history of cross-examination questions. So? Question mark. To, to go see somebody that you're... And see, the, that, that, that right there is the definition of an argumentative question. That would be an objection argumentative. <laughs> So yep. I did, did not, did too, did not. That's that kind of, that was awesome. I like that. So I liked it so much. I'm putting up with the buffering so I can hear it again. Hey, Jeff, what's the timestamp? Was that? What's the timestamp? For me, 517 ish. So yeah, but like 516 and a half to 517 ish, somewhere around there. Okay. Because I'm just thinking, if that's going to keep doing that, um, I can share it if you want to reboot your computer. And we can just swap out, because then I can re restart mine as well and try and fix up my camera. Oh, am I, uh, hmm. Let's see how Just an offer. Otherwise, I'll just sit here quietly and look at, look pretty and be all candy. Oh, wait. You, you, wait, you, you need... How, how does what I'm doing affect you? Do we just need to like close it out? And is it, is it me what? that's causing your camera not to work? What are you talking about? Oh, God, about? no. No, no, no. I'm, I was just saying we could take turns shutting our computers down and restarting uh, to fix our respective problems. You first. Okay. <laughs> and I'm here in the middle. <laughs> that's my sister. So you went to, to go see somebody that your sister had an issue with. Yes. Okay. You've already testified that your sister is very emotional. Remember that? Yes also suggested that she embellishes remember that embellishes yeah she exaggerates i don't recall but okay but you you sort of said yeah she's emotional things can get out of control you remember something along those lines she's emotional yes okay mm. so did it ever dawn on you that maybe she made this whole thing up no of course not because she's your sister right <laughs> exactly you just took whatever she said at face value right and i went to ask him if that is true what happened that's why i went there to talk to him well, you also said that you tried calling his phone, right? Yes. Right. And did why didn't you call his mother? I don't have his mother's number. Your sister has his mother's number. Why didn't you get it from her? I didn't know she had his mother's number. Did you, you ask? You could have called his sister, Tierney, right? I don't have her number. 
Your sister has the number. I was unsure if she had, I didn't know. You're unsure you that these people who have been dating for a year and a half don't have one another's numbers? I didn't know. Why didn't Did you, you ask? Why didn't you say, hey, Dominique, you know what? Look, this, you know, mm -hmm. let, let's call Linda. Let's call Tierney. Let's try to talk this out that way. Why didn't you even think about that or do that? Because this is not something I, I do all the time. So I'm at face value, a novice at this, at, at this point, like, I don't know what I'm exactly supposed to do in every situation. It's easy to say what I should have done in hindsight, of course. Call the fucking cops. Occurred. But in the moment, you can't tell what's, what is the right decision. But that would have been reasonable, right? It would yes, of course. Call the police. Yes. It would have been reasonable to call her family members. Yes. Instead, you took matters into your own hand, right? Yes. You were going to go retaliate. You were going to go be a vigilante and take matters into your own hand, right? No, I was going to go speak to him. Okay. At midnight, right? It wasn't midnight yet, but it eventually became. Oh, shut up. It was midnight, wasn't yes. it? Yes. And why didn't you just go man to man and have a talk with him? Right? You're the big protector. Why didn't you get in your car and go? Yeah, why, why'd you bring your friends? I'm not sure. You, you said love, she's I'm... your sister. You love her. You're her yes. protector. You could have gotten in that car and drove to his house and had a chat, right? Yes. You didn't do that. No. Right. Because yes. You weren't there to talk. That's what you want this jury to believe, but that's not the truth. You were there to shoot him because no. that's what you were instructed to do. Right? No. Mm. You think it's reasonable that you're telling this jury that you were going there to talk, yet you've just said you don't know why you didn't get in the car to go talk to him. You had to bring your friends. Oh, oh I like her. Right? Yes. Why did you need three other grown men, one of whom we know definitively had a gun, the one you sold him? Why did you need there to go there with your crew, with your posse, to talk? I didn't need them, but they came with me, yes. Because what? you wanted to make sure that he never stood a shot, that you guys were going to beat him, cause him great bodily harm, or kill him, just like your sister told you to do. No. You decide, rather than going to Mr. Rudolph's house to have this talk, as you put it, that you're going to go to your one of your best friends, Mr. Robinson's house, right? Yes. So you, you planned this. You got in your vehicle, your mom's patty, and you drove there, right? I got in my vehicle and drove there, yes. Well, it was your mom's vehicle, right? Yes. Right? And you got to Mr. Robinson's house. What time was it? I'm not sure on the exact time, around 10-ish, 11, I'm not sure. All right. And when you arrived there, you, you said you, you didn't call Sebastian. Welcome, welcome back, Lowe, sir. Did you to tell him to meet you there? No. So Tyler Robinson called him to meet him there, right? I'm not sure who called them. Well, how did they get there? I am not sure. Okay. All right. So when you arrived there, um, somewhere between, you're not sure of the time, but it was before midnight, right? Yes. Okay. And you're all just sitting around. You didn't say, oh my God, Sebastian, what are you doing here? I think these are COVID holdovers. You didn't say that, did you? The plastic glasses. Sure. You didn't say, Chris, what are you doing here? Yeah, I'm not sure. You didn't say, God, I, by golly, I was home getting ready to do my homework and go to bed, and now I'm at Tyler's house, and all my best brothers are here. It never dawned on you to ask why, right? I mean, I, I knew why, because they knew I was going over there, so they came to support me. How did they know? You said you didn't call them. I didn't. And you didn't know that Tyler called them. So how did on earth did you know they were there? Because I seen them there. Well, before when you got there, obviously. Oh, exactly. That's when I figured out that they were there. But you never said to them, hey, what are you all doing here? No, because I knew what they were doing there. So what were they doing there? They came to support me. What do you mean support you? How could they support you if they didn't know you were... You mean to go over and have this talk with... Uh, with you the, didn't tell them to be there, right? but they were That's there. Serious. But how could they come so to support you, you if they didn't know you were going to be there? Three other men to go with you to have a chat. I didn't need them. But you brought them with you, right? Yes. Okay. You didn't say to them, whoa, never mind, guys. You know, this is a, I want to do this man, man to man. What the shit is he talking about? I am so confused here. Okay, he said he didn't call them to go there. Mm -hmm. But they were there to support him. Yeah, but if he didn't call them and tell him he was coming, why would they be there to support him if they didn't know he was going to be there? I'm confused. He's not sure. am, I, am I am I confused or is he just a? a, a an he's doing a really bad job of obfuscating the fact that because if he's if he didn't call them, he's not responsibility. He doesn't have responsibility yeah. for them to be there. But if they're they're any way of their own volition, there's nothing. There's no causation between it, and they can't get in trouble for being there to aid and abet in what he's doing. So as but, far as I'm yeah. concerned, he's just lying through his teeth. Yeah, Fair, yep. Feral Housewives said he's just a liar. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're there to support him, but they didn't know they were supposed to be there to support him because he never called them and said, come here and support me. Yeah. They exactly. just magically yeah. appeared. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And remember what the defense said in their opening. The police never checked their phones. Mm -hmm. 
because yep. they don't think it was necessary. Mm. They did a 10 minute interview and didn't check the phone. Um, you guys all stay here. I've got this. I'm only going there to talk, right? Exactly. No, I didn't say that. Why, why did your brothers ask you if you had your gun with you? You said that on, on direct examination with Miss Ellis. You said your brothers asked if you had your gun with you. Why did they ask you that? Because they know I have a gun. So you do carry your gun as, as a habit. Not as a habit, but I do carry my gun, yes. Okay. So you're there only to go to... But if it wasn't a habit, then how did they know that you were carrying And it? you're talking with your brothers, and somehow in that setting, in that context, they ask you if you have your gun with you, right? Yes. Okay. And you're telling the story you didn't. I did not have my gun. Yes. And isn't it true that while you were all at Tyro's house, sitting around talking, planning on going to Mr. Rudolph's house, that Sebastian kept urging Tyler Robinson to take his gun? Isn't that a fact? I don't know if that's a fact. Isn't it true you were all there together talking about what you were going to do and what you were going to do at Mr. Uh, Rudolph's house? No. So you were all in different rooms? You weren't talking together? We were in the living room. All right. All of you together, right? Is that a yes? Yes. And you're telling this jury that you never heard Sebastian, Sebastian adamantly insisting. Mm -hmm. No, I did not. That Tyler take his gun. She's, she's no, making a good passage here. Well, yeah. I mean, I was taking notes. And I, I had to stop taking notes because, like, literally every sentence she is saying is just blasting him. Yeah, because he said he had no idea how they got there. Yeah, they just but materialized no, it. They are there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but nobody contacted them. He can say that because the cops never checked the phone. Yeah, they they just used the force and just uh, you know mysteriously showed up at his door. Hmm. Weird, yeah. So I mean, I, I had to stop taking notes because this is just—he's getting brutalized. Wow. Okay. Let's Who's keep Tyrone? Going. His brother. And Tyrone Tyler's. was there too, right? Okay, Wolf Wolfman. No, it's not a portrait of Jesus with wings. It's a portrait of his dead friend uh, <laughs> with wings around his neck, with him wearing a turtleneck and earrings and amazingly quaffed hair and very, very sculpted eyebrows. It's and the other thing is, with that friend. as well, do you not see that as being inappropriate in the courtroom setting if the jury actually knows that? I see that as very inappropriate myself. Mm. Okay, as long as it wasn't just me. Yes, it's it's just his friend. Quote, I yes. Said. Okay, was there anybody else there? No. Did you guys call anybody else to meet you? No. No? Did you guys FaceTime anybody else or text anybody else to meet you at Mr. Rudolph's house? I don't believe so, no. Well, what do you mean you don't believe so? Did you? I don't remember. It's so possible. I don't know. Who's AP? Do you know somebody by the name of AP? No. You know somebody by the name of Hack? No. No? Jesus Christ, do you know anything? Know Hack Shaw. Jonathan. Okay. Who's that? Jonathan, my friend. Okay. And tell me about Jonathan. He doesn't Mr. know Hack anyone Shaw. called no. Hack. Owl? But he has a friend named Hack Shaw. Yeah. Three, I believe. How do you know him? Uh, we went to the same school. Okay. And he's also a friend of Tyler Robinson's? Not really. More so my friend. More so your friend? Yes. Okay. Did you ask Hack Hackshaw to go to, to go to Mr. Rudolph's house that night? I don't remember. So it's possible. How do you not? You don't remember. remember a fucking thing, does so he? It, you don't remember. So it could be yes, it could be no. I don't remember. Why would you even tell somebody like Hack possibly to go to Mr. Rudolph's house that night? What do you mean by someone like Hack? Or anyone. Why would, why? You said it's, you don't remember. So I'm, I'm, I'm implying or I'm, I'm taking that as it's possible that you did. So I'm asking you, if you're going to go to somebody's house at midnight to have for a chat, why is it possible that you would have asked Hackshaw to maybe meet you there? I don't know. You have no idea why you would do that? No. You would agree that makes no sense, right? Doesn't. Okay. You know this is why Natalie? this is why they allowed all yes. of the direct I mean all the leading questions on direct yeah, because they don't no give a shit what he testified to. Somebody who? She's gonna she's gonna tear now. him apart okay. independent of friend, anything the prosecution asks. Does Natalie also uh, know Dominique? Uh, no. Nicholas, you're muted. I'm not Natalie, muted. Natalie, Tyler? Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, Deanna's overly when excited sister, that I'm doing this. When uh, your sister got to the uh, <laughs> apartment before you left for Tyler's house, um, you... You've already testified about a number of injuries that she's had to her face, her legs, scratches, bruises. You said she was pretty bad, eaten up. Um, you never sought any medical help for her? No. You didn't take her to the hospital, obviously, right? No. 
Okay, and we already know that you didn't call 911 for help or anything, right? Yes. All right, so in that condition, you decided to leave her there alone and to go to Mr. Rudolph's house, right? Yes. Shaquille Oatmeal says, this is why I would be so efficient against Germans, because I am German, so no. I know where to look for weaknesses. Why didn't Tyrone go with you guys? I don't know. Yeah, he would go you know, um, no. When you left Tyler's house, you left in your mother's caddy, right? Yes. And Tyler was seated in the front seat next to you? Yes. And Ch uh, excuse me, Chris Lowe was in the back? Yes. And Sebastian was in the back seat? Yes. Okay. And... This sounds more like an elaborate juicy small a, uh, while uh, and, and a more elaborate looking juicy small a. Driving. Well, let me ask you this: How long did it take roughly to get to Mr. Rudolph's house? <laughs> juicy oh, small a. I'm not sure the exact time. Okay, and you put his address in your GPS. Is that correct? I believe someone GPS. I'm not sure who, but yes, it may have been one of the other guys. Yes, but it was GPS. Yes, and you had been there on one prior occasion, right? Yes. You remember how to get there? I did. Okay, so then why did you GPS it? Just to double check. Just to double check. <laughs> yes. So you knew where Mr. Rudolph lived. You had been to the house. Yes. That's, there's no question about that, right? Yes. Do you, can you explain to the jury, please, um, Tyler Robinson, who was seated next to you, why, while you guys were driving to Mr. Rudolph's house, that Mr. Robinson received a number of FaceTime calls from individuals? I don't know. You don't remember him receiving a FaceTime uh, a FaceTime call while you guys were driving to Mr. Rudolph's house with him sitting right next to you in the passenger seat? No. Have you, you ever received uh, a facial? Mr. Robinson receiving any text messages from <laughs> Hack uh, while he was sitting next to you in the car as you're driving to Mr. Rudolph's house? No. Do you know why Tyler Robinson, who was seated next to you in the car, made an outgoing FaceTime call at 11.29 to somebody whose name I don't know? No. Can you explain to the jury what a FaceTime call is, how that works? You FaceTime them, you click the FaceTime button and call them. Okay, and just for people like me who don't have a little, aren't really tech savvy, you're basically not speaking into the phone. You press a button on the iPhone and then that person's face shows up and you put it in front of your face and you can actually see that person's Yes. person right yes. a weird way of describing it but yes with the phone being at some distance from you right yes loud right yes you don't put it up to your ear yes that'd be silly because the person's here that's the whole purpose of having this face communication then right? it wouldn't be yes. a facial it'd be and an you're ear telling hole the jury that during this drive to mr rudolph's house with tyler robinson next to you you don't recall him receiving or making any outgoing facetime calls to any individuals including hack is that right i don't remember you don't like this mic here i don't remember Oh, she's got if phone ever, records. Yeah, she's got phone records. Oh, he strokes his micro beard. <laughs> the, <laughs> this, uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jeff is going to use back out because he had a shaving ass okay. accident. Can you tell the jury? He's playing with himself on the stand. Why? If you know. Mr. Robinson, who's seated next to you during the drive, would have texted rush, your rush. friend Hack sleep. Mr. Rudolph's address about 20 minutes before the shooting. 550 Teak Drive. Why would your friend have done that? I don't know. Did you tell Tyler, who was seated right next to you, hey, call my friend Hack, Hackshaw, and tell him to meet us over at Mr. Rudolph's house? Did no. you tell him to do that? No. Sure? Yes. 100%. 100% sure, yes. Why did he do that? I do not know. You can't offer any insight to that? No. Isn't it true that Hacksaw did, in fact, end up there? I don't know. So it's possible, right? He wasn't there. We were there, no. Jesus Christ, do you know anything no. at all? You, nope. With respect to the, uh, nope. I don't know. I don't know if I know anything. That you actually sent. Yes. The dead man walking. Yes. Tell, tell the jurors what, what you meant by mm. that. Honestly, it was, I was just hyperbole in a sense, and I just... Hold on, hold on. What's hyperbole? What, what does that mean? To exaggerate. Okay, so you sent that as an exaggeration? Yes. So you didn't really mean to shoot him, but you meant to maybe do something else to him? No, it just means that <laughs> doesn't mean exactly what he said. It's not, you don't take it literally. Okay, <laughs> so wh what did you mean by that? I didn't mean nothing specifically. You would agree that's an odd choice of words? Yes. Especially after you've been ordered to go shoot up his shit? Yes. <laughs> you wrote that because that's exactly what you intended to do, right? No. You said uh, you, you sent that to calm your sister down. 
to get her in quote unquote better headspace, right? Yes. Something along those lines. Along those lines, yes. But for no other reason. No. Yet after you sent that text, within a very short period of time, you're at Mr. Robinson's house with your friends who just mysteriously show up and they <laughs> ask you, do you have your gun? Right? Yes. And you find out that Tyler Robinson does in fact take his gun with him. No. Yeah, see, this looks really bad. Yeah. Girlfriend says, go shoot his shit up. Friends mysteriously show up. He says, he's a dead man walking. One friend says, do you have your gun with you? And yeah, this is looking really bad. No, I find it out after the fact. Well, you claim that there was no discussion at the house regarding a gun and that you didn't hear Sebastian insist that Tyler take it. Is that correct? Yes. And you never saw a gun on Tyler who was seated right next to you in the car? No. <laughs> when you, when you There's got not enough bourbon in the world for this Mr. witness. House. <laughs> Wait, did you just call him a witness? Let me ask you this. When I wish I had this a day off. Were you aware before <laughs> you left for Mr. Rudolph's house that your sister had smashed Travis's cell phone? No. No? So when you were calling him at the apartment with your sister there, and he didn't pick up, respond to texts, she never told you that she smashed and broke his phone? No. And she never offered to give you any other phone numbers, the house phone, for example, that's in his house, right? No. Or his family member's phone numbers? She wasn't home when I was calling him, but no. Oh, okay. Did your sister tell you prior to going over there to have a talk that she hit him over the head with a trophy? No. Did your sister tell you before you went over there to have this chat that she smashed his PlayStation? No. Did she tell you that she picked up a tequila bottle and hit him over the head? No. Did she tell you that she called Tierney, his sister, and threatened to have him killed? No. Did she tell you that she called his mother, Linda, and made threats to her as well? No. You, had, you didn't know any of that? No. If you had known any of that, would that have changed? What she sounds like such a problem. I'm sure. It's possible. I don't know. You were still going to go protect your sister no matter what, right or wrong, right? I don't know. You had blinders on. You didn't care about the circumstances. It just took her saying, he slammed me the ground, picked me off my feet. This is like these reflections pictures, like where you have like the main person, their picture, and then like have the, the semi-transparent side view. Cause like you've got him and then you've got the reflection of the defense lawyer over here on the left side of the screen. So it's kind of like pretty cool, but uh, we've got a couple of things I wanted to get through here real fast. Um, Renee Mateo said, we, we, these are not the super chats you're looking for. We got that. And Nick Naylor said, here's for dealing with the BS. <laughs> This is like an actual legitimate real super chat from <laughs> Nick Naylor. Thank you so much for that. More super chats are better. Thank you so much. And AT1CVB41 says, switch to gin when done with the bourbon, Jeff. You clearly have no idea who you're dealing with. Well, whilst this 1.75 liter bottle of, of bourbon may be nearing the end of its life, there's about 60 more in the other room just over there. But... You know, I do happen to have a bottle of the botanist gin on hand from Brucladi Distillery, which is my favorite gin on planet Earth. The botanist, if you're a gin fan, get yourself a bottle of the botanist. And while we're at it, I also have a bottle of Nemirov Ukrainian vodka, which is some seriously good vodka. Uh, there we go. But I do have the bottle of bourbon, uh, the Blanton's bourbon, which I just will not drink because it's just super expensive and it's awesome. So there you go. That's that's the liquor within reach. I did finish off the already finished off the sang some, which is Thai rum, uh, earlier on during the day. Yeah, that's the state of the alcohol within arm's reach. All right, guys, uh, he's getting lit up. What do you guys think? Anything? Any comments? Uh, how badly this is going for him? Just tearing him to shreds. Vindication never felt so good. Any credibility he might have had. Well, I can't speak for the jury, but my credibility for my opinion about him, if I were on the jury listening to him, I'm just from 10 minutes into the cross-examination, I would just think whatever he said happened, it's the opposite. And... Well, Renee, Renee Matei says, finish him. <laughs> I mean, tell me this, okay? How many Senate inquiries or government meetings or anything like that have you seen or sat through where someone has sat there and said, I don't recall? Yeah. 
And that's all he's sitting there doing. I don't know. I don't remember. This doesn't marry up, so I don't remember. I'm trying not to incriminate myself, my sister, or any of my friends. No, and, and see, that's the interesting thing. And that is the good thing she is doing. That is the strategically amazing thing she is doing. She's not pushing him on whether or not he re actually does remember or whether he's full of crap. Hmm. She's not even entertaining it. She's just asking him a million questions where every answer is, I don't know, I don't remember. And it's making oh, him look answer. really bad. Uh -huh. Yeah, considering What's your name? how I don't great remember. Is What's your system? Yeah, go ahead, Nick. Considering how <laughs> great his memory right? was. Yeah, considering what? how great his sisters, uh, or how great his memory was on direct, and all yeah. of mm, all of a sudden, right. I have no idea. Those uh, right. selective memory losses. Yeah, and that's and it's just making him look bad. It's like every question, I don't know, I don't remember. Well, when, when did this happen? I don't remember. Who was there? I don't remember. Why did he show up? I don't remember. Did you do this? I don't remember. And it just makes him look really, really bad. Yeah. I mean, God love him if he actually doesn't remember, but it just makes him look really bad. Say yes or no, bruh. Slam me down, disrespected me. You go take care of him. That's all it took. I just want to figure out what would happen. So, yes, I essentially went over there to talk. Right. And we know that you decided not to do it on your own, and you decided not to cool off and wait till the following morning, right? Yes. You could have gotten in your car the next day, drove over to his house, had a chat, right? Yes. You guys were pretty close. We've seen some text messages that are in evidence. You yes. had a good relationship, right? Yes. That's why I didn't think that he would shoot me. You could have also made you think, this is so out of character. Let me go over there the next day and talk to him, right? Yes, because essentially the action of him putting his hands on my sister was out of character. So that led to everything that happened next. Right. But again, there was absolutely nothing preventing you from doing God it dang. on your own or the following morning, right? No. I blame chat for what just happened. I, I, I did this. This is like all bourbon, and I was going to add some Coke, but I forgot to add the Coke. And then I just thought that was like the last of my <laughs> bourbon Coke, and I just took it like a big giant drink of it, and it was just pure bourbon. <laughs> <sighs> I blame him for this. <laughs> How's the mouth? <sighs> wow. Mm. I just look like a giant straw full of pure bourbon. That was awesome. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, so, and I, yes. I uh, man, this, this guy, I kind of, all right, this is the thing. I love when a, when a lawyer gives a witness a, an amazing beat down, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of starting to feel a little bit of pity for I'm like, like a pity for this guy. Cause he ain't looking good at all. And again, this is a good defense strategy. And you guys tell me if, if uh, you agree or disagree, whatever. The point is, did they break this off? Did they retreat? Did they end the... I mean, I, I have no doubt there was a self-defense situation initially. But did they break it off by leaving? Did they end the conflict? Did they end any threat against him? Mm. Yeah, but I, she I'm is totally to... obfuscating this. She is just like hammering him. You lied about this. You meant to go this. You were going to go there to kill him. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this to where people have forgotten that this is a self-defense thing. And they're making him look like the bad guy, which yeah. he was in the beginning. But wow, I think they're doing a great job. What do you guys think? Yeah. Uh... I think that's a part of the strategy, making these people look so incredibly bad that they ignore the video evidence. And I'm inclined to agree. They've done a yeah. masterful job at tearing this guy apart. He's, yeah. Well, because there gee. are, you you have you have a, the door cam, uh, bell cam. Then you have another camera that shows them speeding off and the gunfire. There is that portion between. That's, yeah. That is the uh, credibility issue. What happened out of picture? And the way she's tearing into him. Yeah. How would a jury, would a jury believe him? Uh, well, I've seen jury believe total crap, but... Mm -hmm. Will they believe it in Florida? The fact that people are coming into chat, and somebody's pointed out, people are coming into chat and saying, is this the defendant? I think yeah. it's going fairly well for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. And this, this still pisses me off royally. None of these people were shot with anything. And I don't know why. 
Well, I can assume why, because the prosecution does not want that weapon handed to the defense. <laughs> and I think Deanna has... Deanna, has, we're, what, we're five hours and 44 minutes into this, and we're probably going to go for another 10 hours because this is awesome. Um, <laughs> Deanna, I think, has the, the comment of the day. I can't believe he didn't bring a quiche or flowers to go talk. <laughs> 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 That's my favorite. That is honestly my favorite chat so far today that I've seen. I can't believe he didn't bring a quiche. Jim Satala has gone to sleep and awakened again. Congratulations. Good morning. Uh, this guy probably brought quite a few guns at gun shows and knows they can't tie them to him. He was the front man for his gang. Oh, Jim, does this look like a gang leader to you? Come on. I, 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 I need pictures of him out of court character i know what you're thinking but jim come on does this look like the leader of a gang to you who has a picture of his friend with angel wings around his turtleneck with his immaculately quaffed hair and ridiculously sculpted eyebrows and his his diamond studded earrings yeah his sister is the gang leader. I would believe his sister was the gang leader before i believed he is the gang leader but yes we have the quiche here uh Yes, he, he's already talked, in case you were asleep while this was happening, he did buy the gun and sell it to a friend the next day, and he can't remember or not whether he drafted up a bill of sale. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get going. This is ridiculous. This poor guy. Quiche. That's funny. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's weeping again. He's going all Amber Heard on us. He's rubbing his eyebrows out of that sadness. There were cameras outside of the house at Mr. Rudolph's. Is that correct? I knew he had cameras. I wasn't sure on the exact positions of all the cameras. Not the position, but you were aware there were cameras outside, right? That's what I'm saying. Outside would be a position of the camera. I wasn't sure on the exact positions. I just knew that he had cameras. Okay, so you're telling the jury you did not know that he had cameras outside? I knew he had cameras at his house, but I wasn't sure on the you exact. Which, where, where they were located or what they could capture? I just didn't know where they were located. Okay. You didn't see cameras when you uh, got to his door? I don't remember looking to identify cameras. Isn't it true that you knew there were cameras? I knew he had cameras, yes. Right, and that's why you guys didn't have your gun. You told everybody, hey, he's got cameras there. Keep your guns in your pockets. Isn't that true? No. No? That's the reason I wouldn't bring a gun to his house, because I, I know he has cameras. I wouldn't bring a gun. Well, you you were you had your hands up underneath your hoodie. You remember that? Yes. You, that you put your hoodie up when you're mad, right? Yes. You were fiddling with your gun underneath your hoodie? You didn't have it in your waistband? No, I was touching my stomach. When you got to Mr. Rudolph's house... You did some interesting things. You have testified that you know where he lived. Yes. Um, so there was nothing preventing you from pulling up into his driveway or parking alongside the house, right? Yes. But instead, you decide that you're going to park several blocks away on, a, on Redwood, which is not near Mr. Rudolph's house. Yes. And isn't it true that the reason you did that was because you knew he had guns, you knew he had cameras, you did not want to give him an opportunity to prepare himself for your attack, so you parked far away so that you guys could sneak up on him? No. So why on earth would you park your vehicle the first time several blocks away from his house when there was nothing preventing you from parking at his house? Honestly, I just, if I'm being transparent, I didn't really want to give off any like sort of aggression towards him. And again, this is not something I, I do often. So in this instance, you know that it looks wrong yes, to do that. But at the time, I it's like, do I, don't, I don't do that. Often. I don't go talk to people. So I don't know that it's going to like this. What was that? You said, I don't do this often. Yeah. That doesn't mean he doesn't do that. But it means he has done it before. Maybe. Fair enough. Fair enough. Bad choice of words on his part. In I don't care. After the fact. We don't get shot at. We come, this doesn't happen. It doesn't look wrong. Oh. So in this instance, I, I didn't know at that point in time that it would even come to this. So you parked, you parked far away at night so that you could sneak up on him. And that's exactly why you parked the car that far away. No. You parked you all that out of the vehicle. You put your cell phone in the trunk, correct? Yes. Okay. And you did that because you knew there was going to be a brawl or a shootout, and, no. you didn't want, and you didn't want your phone to get damaged, right? No. Why would you leave your cell phone in the trunk? Honestly, yeah. at this point, I don't. I, in my head, worst case scenario, maybe a fight, but I don't know. So you have no real good answer other than there may be a fight, so my cell phone could get damaged, and I don't know. Yes. Okay. Um, and 
then you get back to the car. Stop breathing in the fucking the microphone, Darth, Darth, Darth fucking yes. Vader. A pretty good distance from Mr. Rudolph's house, and that's where you ultimately leave your car, right? Yes. And you yeah, anytime anybody says honestly, they're lying. Up to quote unquote shorten your walk. You remember that? Yes. Well, if you want to shorten your walk, why didn't you pull up right near his driveway? Same answer before. I really didn't want to give off any other signs of aggression or anything like that. Because that's what. Okay, guys. He parked down the street because he didn't want to give off any signs of aggression. Um, I know if some guy pulls into my driveway, calmly gets out of the car alone, walks up to my house and gently on my door, I don't perceive that as particularly aggressive. No. Four guys wearing hoodies, parking down the street, coming up on my door and going... On my front door, that seems a little more aggressive than what he is suggesting. You you would think so, but apparently this guy, no, it's not aggression to... After sneaking up on your house with four people in the dark after midnight. <sighs> this guy's a turd. What was in your mind? You were going there with aggression in your mind. No. That's why you didn't do it. No, ma'am. When you parked, ultimately, several blocks from the house, you all walked up to the door, right? Yes. Okay. Several blocks. Seen the video. Several blocks. It. Not, not like half a block away, not across the street, not around the corner. It's almost like that they was so the vehicle couldn't be identified. That's what that was. Yeah. Bitch, yeah. They didn't want, yeah, they didn't want the car identified on a close by camera. Yeah, I have seen Clockwork Orange, one of my favorite movies, as a matter of fact. Yes. Yes. Malaco Velocet, one of the greatest drinks ever made. Hello. Do you recognize? Do you recognize this? Okay. Um. Yes. Can let me see how to best. Is that you just about to get shot? Can you see this from over here, Mr. Jones? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Can you tell us who this is in the hoodie? That's me. Who's this person right here? Travis's the, brother. Travis's brother? Yes. And who's this person in the back? Sebastian. Okay. Barton Billis says, please don't eat into the mic. Somebody eating into the mic? Nobody's eating. Sure. But I'm thinking you know, about it. Do you all see this or do you need to have it closer? I'm thinking about see it. Any thumbs up. Anybody having trouble seeing it? Apparently not. Okay. Go ahead. Sure. Some some retard named Nicholas says, wait for it. You are what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So you want to identify them then? Okay. So what are they? Okay, defense exhibit one is admitted without objection. I like this judge. Yes, this judge is a good judge. I like him. That is Careful, a, people like Schroeder to start with two. Something. Okay, all right. A portion of the video, uh, a still from the video, blown up. Got it. Can you see this, Mr. Jones? Yes. Okay. It too is a blow up from the yes, video? It is. Right. The ring camera video? Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. Can you tell us who this is, please? Chris. Chris Lowe? Yes. Who is this? Me. And Me. who is this back here? Tyler. And who is this? Sebastian. And can you Wasn't tell me Sebastian what Tyler is wearing? Sebastian's the lobster, Watch right? Maybe like you can't really Crab. see Tyler. Yep. But, uh, use the pointer Crab. so you don't inadvertently block the jury's view. Crab. All right. Yeah. See, I had to ask someone with a child. They would know. He does or does not? <laughs> he does not have a shirt on. Why don't you step down, please? Under the sea. Judge is a spoon. Take a look. He does have a shirt on? Don't spoon the judge. Crab, lobster, same thing. <coughs> Crustaceans. The video, the ring video that was taken at the front porch. Who is this? Chris. And this? Sebastian. And who is this? Me. This video is two days old. Okay, the witness step down, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Watch your step, Mr. Jones. <laughs> you your vision? Okay. Can you see this? Okay. You want to step over here a little bit? You sure? The way that movie's going down, she might Can as well. You? Tell the jurors what this item is in Chris Lowe's front rum pocket. His phone. You're 100% sure. Okay, how do you know that? 
because I felt it. So he had his phone and you saw him or he told you that he's putting it in his right front pocket? He told you that. How do you explain spoon devices? I think we're having trouble. Well, then maybe you need to move that over there. And then that way you can use the mic. One of them. Three if I knew, I would. Yeah. That one's gone over me too. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe we got it better. See? They have more microphones for the prosecution to use. Dude. That's just a little too... Okay. Not him. His clothing is just a little too black. Black pants, black belt, black turtleneck. Dude. Uh, uh, I had a person Never go full ninja. A, a this job and uh, yeah, he went to a lot. Uh, he liked share, just saying. Dude needs a fashion consultant because that ain't cool. Never go full ninja. It seems like their nice clothes are either for court or funerals. Or just for looking like a douche canoe. And right here, you said this is Sebastian, correct? Yes. And there He's is no Bruce a Lee. very large, what appears to be a fairly large item in his right front pocket. And I specifically said it's his clothing, not tip? him. See that pointy tip? Yes, they did. Sure, they put their phones in the trunk of the car. No, I don't want you to disagree with me. But tell me, does that tip on that item appear to be pointy to you? Or am I imagining that? I'm Cadillac. Like I'm, I'm I'm you want to know How would you characterize now? the tip of that item? It looks like it's something in his pocket. I'm not really sure. Would you represent to the jury that that tip of that item is square and flush? Or does it appear to be a tip? It looks like a corner. Okay. Stop talking <laughs> about junk and trunks and tips. and <laughs> this, is becoming dis this is becoming distasteful. With respect to the item in Chris Lowe's front. It's item. unsavory. Okay. Can, there also appears to be a, a bit of a tip, but less of a tip, and a, a, a long line or edge on the right. Do you see that? Stop yeah. talking about edging and tips and... No! Right. I can't. I can't make the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recognize this... Long lined tipped object in your friend's pocket, <laughs> which is also a clip in the ring video. Take oh, so it's another still image, and they're yeah. one through five. Yes, sir. Okay, all three, one through five, are admitted without objection. They're all stills from the ring Seriously, camera, uh, video. bulges Thank and you. tips and edging. Can you tell the jury who this is? Tyler. Okay, and is Tyler wearing the same shirt that he had on moments before? Nope. Okay, um, do you know why Tyler took his shirt off? No. You remember testifying on direct examination that Tyler left his shirt in the trunk of the vehicle? I said I wasn't sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fuck. I hate this trial already. <laughs> no, you don't. Maybe please please, please, please let him bring up a copy of the transcript. I knew he took his shirt off, but I wasn't sure where he put it. <laughs> you, ah, fuck. Is that to ready himself for a fight? <laughs> I don't know. You would agree, though, that that's what it appears to be. No, I would just agree that he took his shirt off. Dude, he's a he's black a guy. He took off his shirt. That only means one thing. They're down to fight. That's just a thing. That you had Sebastian. Yeah, because you don't want your shirt getting around. I didn't have him bang on the door. He just knocked on the door. And you don't want to pull that over your head and, like, obscuring your vision. Why didn't you? You were there to have the talk. Why didn't you go man to man and knock on the door? Why'd you have one of your buddies do it? I didn't have him, though. We didn't make a decision on who was knocking on the door. He just knocked on the door. So you would agree this is your beef. You're there to go talk to this man who disrespected your sister, and you didn't just go up and knock on I the door. I don't know. You had somebody yeah. else, or somebody else made the decision to go on there and forcibly bang on that door, right? They don't he have knocked to. On the door, yes. Bang, bang, you bang on the door, baby. Windshield that Love night, right? Shack, baby. I didn't know his windshield was broken. Love Shack. You did. Did you break no. or smash his windshield? No. Did you see bang, Tyler Robinson bang, bang, break or smash his windshield? No. Did you see Sebastian break and smash his windshield? No. Did you see Chris Lowe do that? No. Do you have any idea how that happened? No. You're aware that his windshield was smashed, right? Apparently, yes. Okay. And you have no you can't tell us how that happened? No. Did your sister do it? I don't know. <laughs> did your sister go back to Mr. Rudolph's house? After you guys made a plan to go there? No. You sure about that? That's not something she would do. I'm asking you, not whether she would or would not. I'm asking if she did. If he knows. Let's see the ring cam. <laughs> okay, well, there's been some text messages that have been admitted into evidence. You discussed them with Miss Ellis. Yes. Um, there's a text message that um, 
from Dominique, your sister, at 1144, which was roughly 14 minutes or so uh, before the shooting or before you went to the front door. And she wrote to you, where are you all at? You remember that? Or where are you all out? Yes. Okay. Why would your sister, minutes before a shooting, ask you where you are all at if she wasn't there waiting for you guys? She asked where we're at because we didn't answer her, I guess. I don't know. We didn't call her anything. I'm not sure. Whoa, 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 what's happening here? I'm confused. We're buffering. It's all this edging and shit. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, I got nothing while we wait. I'm freaked out by all this testimony. This is just like bad. I don't know why. Oh, well, now, now, now we've stepped it up. Now we've just gone black. Once you go black, you can't go back. I'm not here. <laughs> don't clip this. <laughs> <laughs> Five fifty-six, exactly. So, see, I think this is YouTube. Speculating, you don't really know, right? I don't. You would... oh, he was playing with himself there for a second, or his his medallion, anyway. But agree, this sounds like she's there waiting, and she's saying, "Where are you all?" No, it sounds like she's asking us where we're at. You told her you're going to Tyler's. You told her you're going to have a talk with this man. So why would she say, "Where are you all at"? Because the last thing she heard from us was, "We're on our way." She doesn't know exactly where we're at, so she's asking us, "Where are we?" You told us, and you told your sister, yes. you were going to have a talk with this man at midnight. Yes. Okay. So why on earth would she care where you're at? Because she doesn't know exactly where we're at. She knows we were on our way to, but that was the last communication we had. Of course, she's going to ask us, where are we, eventually. Okay. But then, in that same exhibit that's been admitted into evidence... She is dismantling him. Dominique, your sister... Well, see, now, and, and this is an interesting thing that I wanted to mention. Is that literally... In my view, what she is is getting him to testify to or not testify to, as the case may be, has nothing to do with the the issue of whether or not the defendant committed first degree murder or three counts of attempted murder, or whether it was whether or not it was self defense. She is just making him look like an unreliable retard at this point. Yep. To make him look like an absolute fuckwit douche canoe that is absolutely untrustworthy so that whatever prosecution elicited from him is worth nothing because he's an idiot he's stupid he's hedging he's lying he's unreliable and he's just basically an idiot and yep. i think it's an am amazing job that the defense is doing with him it's literally what nothing she's questioning has anything to do with the charges but she's just huh? making him look completely unreliable and the other thing is, at what point do you mention to him, if you keep playing with that necklace, I'm going to drink, bring it to the judge's attention? <laughs> right. Apparently, douche canoe was a hit term amongst the, the chat, by the way. Oh, yeah. Douche canoe is widely lauded as a, uh, yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Nicholas? You mentioned about 90 minutes ago that you had 90 minutes to go. No. Uh, you got your second well, wind? I'm looking at my clock here. Was it 90 minutes ago already? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've been doing oh, this for six hours. I just made yeah, up don't, a number. Yeah, they don't watch your stream, so I, I think I can be a bit late. Hey, Nick's employer. <laughs> uh, there you go. Now we'll find out if they watch my stream or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's find out if they really watch or not. Um, all right, let's get back to the yo, oh, Mr. Enzo bringing the heat. Union reps do not do actual work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that just oh. took the award for the for the for the chat of the day. <laughs> and and yet the moment you get in trouble, right. you call me. Right. That's the thing with lawyers. You know, everybody hates lawyers until you need one. And the same and lawyers and accountants, as soon as shit happens, that's when they come running. As we represent, as my firm represents a lot of uh, companies against the the annual May labor uprisings, uh, yeah, I think that's funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh, the stories I could tell. I actually had one labor. Oh, never mind. This isn't labor union talk. We we we. I want. I I Nick. We're gonna be on. We're gonna just like talk labor stuff. Pros and yeah. cons, one, one of these nights. 
I got some shit to say. It's like some fun stuff that I've heard. I, I've endured with labor and negotiations. All right, let's yeah, go. I, I'm not into the ship and the shipping. I don't know it's just like re, re, you know regular labor unions. Like okay, just generally, real quick. This is just a comment. It's not put out here for a discussion or whatnot. You get like these small companies that go, wait a minute, we feel like we're not being treated fairly. We want to unionize. So as soon as they get like three people together to form a union, then the umbrella unions come over and go, you want to be part of us? And they go, hey, cool, more people. So they they sign up to the umbrella unions, and then someday the umbrella union says, all right, tomorrow you guys aren't going to work. You're going to strike. And the little guys go, but but wait. What? Wait, wait, what? We don't, we don't, we don't want to strike. We want to work. I'm like, sorry, you're part of us. You have to strike. Mm -hmm. And they're like, but, 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 and, and then you go, yeah, sorry, you're, 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 you, you wanted it. We told you not to do it, but you did it anyway. Now you have to follow them because you're beholden to them. Yeah. We actually have like one labor union guy, like in their annual deals, it's always asked for something that's like ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And Steve Martin has a great, a great comedy bit about that it's like holding someone hostage it's like i want 10 million dollars a helicopter and the letter m removed from the english alphabet it's so always ask for something crazy so you can rely on it later like ha, 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 10 million dollars please <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a labor negotiation once with between the union and the company where they wanted a certain number of grams of gold for every year they worked with the company <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. But anyway, we should, we should do a labor union thing because I I did a short recently where I said labor unions were useful until they weren't, and I know that Nicholas would seriously have some objections to me saying that. Uh, so I think we should do that one of these days. We'll do a labor union thing, like pros and cons of modern day labor unions. Yeah, and I already did a video about my thoughts about the U.S. Uh, right to work stuff mm. that's going on yeah and i'm not a fan of the right to work at all because i don't i'm not a fan of laws at all mm. when it comes I'm, I'm a fan of negotiations as locally as possible don't bring me in until shit hits the fan then when shit hits <laughs> the fan it's yeah okay but the most important no. thing is our discussions of labor unions have nothing whatsoever to do with this trial. Yeah. <laughs> and we still have four hours to go. Woohoo! Let's go. Sent a text. Well, let me let me backtrack. Um, there was a text between you, Sebastian, Tyler, and Dominique. It was a group text. And so was that last one, that one where, where you all asked your sister like texted that. you guys. That, that was, was a, a group text. text that she sent to you, Sebastian, Tyler. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. So she knew you were all together. Yes. And you then How wrote back, you know? well, was it you? I don't know if that, I think believe it was Tyler. We're on our way. Is that correct? We wrote that back to what? Did you, you just said something about, you said you're on, you're on your way. You remember that? Yes. Okay. And then Dominique sent another text at 1233. So this would have been after the shooting with a question mark. And then another text to the same group at 1258 a few minutes before one o'clock in the morning, so roughly an hour after the shooting, with one simple word, call. Right? Yes. Why would your sister be following your every movement and keeping track if you just went over to go talk to him? Mm. Because just, she knows my intentions, but she's not aware of Travis's intentions. Oh, she, she's up. tracking you. Exactly. She wants to know what, what you're doing because she knows you're going over there with a gun and she wants, and you, she's Mandy? so angry at this guy she I'll wants be him back. dead because that's what she told you to do. No. She's tracking you to see if that's what was done. No. She's tracking him to cover his ass. Mm. Sebastian, prior to this incident, was not friends with Mr. Rudolph. Is that correct? No. Chris, well, Chris Lowe wasn't friends with Mr. Rudolph, right? No. Tyler wasn't friends with Mr. Rudolph? No. They didn't have a relationship, right? Not really a direct relationship, but no. They didn't hang out with one another? I mean, they met him before. He was, they were there when we went to the gun show. So. But other than that, they, they didn't really know each other like that, right? No.
I'm trying to fast forward here. When, <laughs> when you all parked the car before you went up to Mr. Rudolph's door, were the four of you together as a group? Yes. And you walked together up the walk or up the block as a group? Yes. And when you approached the house, you were together as a group? Yes. Uh, can you explain to the jury um, who FaceTimed Tyler at 11.58? Was that my ninjas? Before you got to the house? I don't know. You were, you were all together. You didn't see Tyler had Tyler making or getting a, a, a FaceTime call? No. He's Tyler Durden because he's just an imagination. Before. Tyler was FaceTimed again from somebody? I don't know. You have no idea. You didn't see that? No, I don't remember that. But you were all together? Yes. And again, a FaceTime call is where somebody's speaking to a phone like this, right? Not up to your ear. You can put it up to your ear. I'm not sure how he answered the okay. phone. <laughs> Wouldn't he answer it with his asshole? Of course he put it up to his ear. How was Tyler getting FaceTime calls? I don't know. He, oh, hold on. When he didn't have his phone, you said it was uh, in the trunk. I don't know. You can't you can't tell the jury? Yeah. I didn't I didn't know he got FaceTime calls until just now. Okay. And you you testified it was in the trunk, right? Yes. You can't no explanation. No, I have no explanation to that. Four when, and asks, what class are you picking for Diablo 4, chat? Everybody should just be who they want to be because DJ I'm Deckard Kane and I'm yes. here to say. And DJ was pretty calm and polite. Yes. I'm Deckard Kane. You demanded that you wanted to speak to Travis, right? Yes. And Deckard Kane rap out. is the most awesome video yes. ever. And when Travis came out, he did not have a gun, right? Yes. Yes, he did not have a gun. Yes. Right. And when he stepped out of the house, isn't it a fact that Tyler, the guy who took off his shirt, ready for a fight, sucker punched him in the side of the head? No. Isn't that a fact that you guys immediately attacked him, never giving him a chance to do anything? No. That's not true? No. All right, people. No, 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 no more labor no. law in chat. Explanation why you left your we're here for fun and games and shenanigans. And we're just here to talk about murder, not labor. Correct. Exactly what happened. The fight broke I, out. I've been right. listening to that crap for 30 years, so I'm doing an automatic <laughs> with morons. Rephrase, please. Are you aware? No, I'm not. That a neighbor was so concerned by what was happening oh, look that he himself went and got his gun? Listen to that. He just, she asked a question. Oh, God. And he said, she wasn't even done with the question. And he said, no, I'm not. Are you aware? No, I'm not about a neighbor doing this. He's not even listening to the goddamn questions at this point. But I mean, in fairness, are we? And who the hell was it that said refrain? No, I'm not. That a neighbor was so concerned by what was happening. I'm sorry. What was that, Hayden? Someone told her to rephrase the question. I'm not sure if the judge just automatically said that or if he said that. One way to find out. Let's go back in time. Let's go back in time. Some Huey Lewis shit. And here. buffering. Uh, and buffering. Why not? As long as we're going to buffer, let's buffer like a mofo. Uh, all right, there we go. Possible the fight was going to start, right? Correct. That's exactly what happened. A fight broke out. A brawl. Correct. So much so that a neighbor across the street was concerned and put a clip in his gun. Excuse me. Rephrase, please. That was you aware? It was a joke. No, I'm not. That a neighbor was so concerned by what was happening that he himself went and got his gun? No, I'm not. Would that surprise you? Yes. You guys attacked this man the minute he walked out of the house. All After Tyler punched him in the side of the head, all four of you jumped on him. Isn't that true? No. Isn't it a fact that Tyler cornered him after he stepped away out of the camera's view and pulled his gun on Mr. Rudolph. No. How would you yeah. know if you were the, over the here fighting with DJ? Pulled out I was fighting with DJ. They've got to have that neighbor. So you were the only um, one witness. fighting Travis? I told you at the beginning of the fight, that's when I got slammed by Travis. Okay. And then you've also... All right, we've been asked to slow it down a tad here, so we'll go back to 1.25 speed. Mind you, we still have three hours to go on this one, and then we're going to pick up day two. Testified that at some point all of you were fighting, right? Yes. All right. So if you're all fighting... How and trying to save Everybody your life, how is it that you can see hiding. what other guys are doing or not doing? Because I'm there. Yeah, but you're not watching them the whole time in the heat of the moment. I'm watching Travis. Right. You're not watching Tyler. Moment. But if he were to pull a gun out on Travis, I would see that. So you're only focused. This guy's beating you up to death, and you're now going, okay, I'm not going to look at my aggressor. I'm going to go look at Tyler and see if he's pointing a gun or doing anything. That's what you want this jury to believe? All right. Um, Approach, please. <clears throat> Feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. They're approaching, but I'm not going to touch the button because I know what happens. I'm just going to put it on like 2.0 speed because if I touch the buffering damn button, then everything goes to hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Go ahead. Speak to us, Nicholas. No, I'm just going to sell, uh, tell that me and uh, Jeff, we will have a labor union, labor law discussion in the future. And if you have questions about that, then you can go to that stream. Yeah. And, so until uh, then, shut up. Yeah. May I proceed? <laughs> yes. So are you telling the story that while Travis is beating you up, just kidding. that you're focused on Tyler and watching his actions? No, I'm saying that if a gun were to be have been pointed at Travis's head, I would have seen it. Well, you would agree that it wasn't just you and uh, you and Mr. Rudolph the whole time that were fighting. That yes, but I, I never had any altercation with his brother. It was mostly just me and Travis. Like the, the main altercation I had was with Travis. But not the whole time. The whole time. Uh, there were other times where there were other groups that had broken off and people were fighting. You're telling the story that the whole time you were only fighting one individual. And me personally, yes, I never fought DJ. Never what, what? I never fought his brother. So again, while you were fighting with Mr. Rudolph, <clears throat> it's your testimony that you had the wherewithal then to focus on what another one of your brothers was doing? Talk if a gun were to have been pointed at his head, I would have seen it, yes. Wasn't it a fact <laughs> that's exactly what happened, that he took out his gun and he pointed it at Mr. Rudolph's head? No. You would agree, though, that they there was a time where Tyler was off to the side near a palm tree and was fighting Mr. Rudolph. Do you remember that? I'm not sure. And do you, you certainly remember when Mr. or know now that Mr. Rudolph ran into his house to get his gun, right? Yes. And isn't it a fact that the only reason he did that was because Mr. Robinson had pointed a gun to his head? No. Okay. Mr. Rudolph came back out. You saw the video. Yes. With his gun in his hand. Yes. Tripped and fell, right? Yes. And at that point, you, you testified that you heard somebody say, you got this. You got this, right? Yes. And you testified that that was Tyler Robinson who said that. Yes. Right? Was he talking about so chlamydia? Mr. Rudolph was close enough. Well, do you know if Mr. Rudolph was close enough to Mr. Robinson when he said those words? You got this. You got this. In the video, you can see the distance between them. Okay. Do you know why Mr. Uh, Robinson said that? So he you could, got this. You got this. Because he had a gun in his hand. So what does "you got this"? You got this mean? If you know. That just means stop. That what? Stop. Okay. For Mr. Rudolph to stop, or that. Tyler Robinson, meaning you got this, you got this. Basically, I surrender and I'm leaving. How did you interpret that? For Travis Rudolph to stop. What? For Travis Rudolph to stop. Okay. And Mr. That's Rudolph bullshit. did in fact not shoot anybody, right? At that point. No, he ran after us. No, no. At that point, my question is, did he shoot his gun at you? I said, no, he ran after us. And did he shoot? When he got to us, yes. At the point where he came out with his gun and Tyler Robinson said, you got this, you got this. At that exact moment, did Mr. Rudolph shoot his gun? No. At you? No. Did he shoot his gun at Tyler? At that moment? At that moment. No. Did he shoot his mm. gun at Chris? No, we were in different positions. The only person who was, well, Sebastian and Tyler were more close to him. Me and Chris were on our way to the car at that time. And the reason you ran to your car was because at that point you saw him that he had a gun, right? No. <laughs> you were the first one to run down Redwood? Yes. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> listen until says, wait, you got this means stop? Isn't stopping usually because one does not, in fact, got this? Exactly. I don't know about you guys, but have either of you ever been in an altercation where there was a group of people in a fight and someone has said, you got this, meaning you're not <laughs> asking them whether or not they are, in fact, okay to deal with the individual they are dealing with? It is generally a question. You got this or you're psyching them up? As in, you've got this, you can kick his ass. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and, speaking, and speaking of got this, uh, we've been going for six hours and 18 minutes. 432 people are currently watching this trial and only 458 likes. And I know we get about an average 30, uh, about a 30 minute viewership average. So that means that there should have been a huge turnover by now. If any of you have that were here at the beginning or are still here, God bless you. You're freaks of nature. But pretty much there should have been at least, oh, 12 turnovers by now, which means we should have about 4,000 likes by, <laughs> by my lawyer math. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're still subscribed to me. And please make sure you're subscribed to Nicholas Starov, union labor law representative, law talking guy, and Aussie overlaw 
guy law talking can't believe it's a law firm your <laughs> next we win your next case or your next pizza's free uh and me <laughs> go go <laughs> go visit everybody's channel <laughs> <laughs> You like that? You like that? <laughs> oh, oh, oh I'm coming man. for you now, buddy. You better believe it. <laughs> Win your case or your next pizza's free. Oh. <laughs> well. That's why you're the judge and I'm the law talking guy. The lawyer. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've got Sorry. fucking tears in my eyes. <laughs> Sorry. I move for a bad court thingy. You mean a mistrial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I apologize for that. <laughs> but you know, anyway, what I'm trying to say is go go to both of these guys, like all their videos, uh, and and subscribe to their channel and do everything, and then come back here and take the like and subscribe poll, which I finally put up after six hours. Which is why haven't you liked and subscribed yet? Uh, your 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 choices are fairly limited. I did. Don't judge me. And sorry, bro. I forgot, but I did now because I'm dumber than the witness. And shame on me. Here's my super chat. <laughs> so you know, um, that's where we are with that. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, I've been I've been neglecting my duties to grift for my guests who for some reason are sticking here through all of this. Uh, ble bless Nicholas and bless Ozzy Overlord. Uh, subscribe to them, like them, make them successful, and make me successful as well. Um, give me all your super chats and anything left over, share with them. Um, yeah, and all that stuff. So, so let's get let's get back to the game. You know, Guys, I'm taking a minute then. Okay, go please ahead. go ahead. <laughs> I owe it to you. The end of the week, I'm officially clocking up my 12 months. I'm going to be having a drinking stream. I expect both of these assholes to be there for at least some of the time. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be starting Friday night for me, going through till Sunday morning as long as I can, right up until I fall out of my chair or I spew. And we know that that happens. That happens, yes. That's, that's so, the thing. Um, yeah, please, by all means, go over and subscribe if you haven't already, because there's, there's a excellent chance... I might actually crack 20k before then. And that would be absolutely amazing in 12 months. How many subscribers do you have now? 19,588. Dude, what happened to you in the last week? I know, right? <laughs> you were like, last time last time I paid attention was like 3D like, I'm stuck at 14 too. What? This is what happens when you get yourself out of the organic reach of the of the YouTube algorithm. All I've done is advertise the fucking channel on other platforms. That's all I've done. Where have you advertised? Uh, through Twitter, through Facebook, through a few other things that I do through my law firm. All mm. it's done is put my name under people's noses. Wow. And they like me. They really like me. <laughs> well, now I'm feeling threatened. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Ozzy Overlord. He's catching up to me. <laughs> Subscribe to Nicholas. Yeah. Because nobody cares I about have... him yet. I'm closing in on 2,000 subscribers, and uh, you will watch me today, my time, uh, later tonight, doing the Florida face-eating murderer trial. Mm -hmm. And Yeah, so it's which a one? very... Yeah, which, <laughs> which one? one? <laughs> which I, on the other hand, am covering the family one? feud murder trial, which is also a, a brilliant thing. Because it's always a smart idea to go on a national TV show and say, oh, by the way, honey, I'm sorry, but at our wedding, saying I do was the worst thing that I could have possibly done. Yeah. Because I want to win points on a game show. Mm. And then I'm loading 14 bullets into her dead body. <laughs> That's a bad thing. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but Nicholas, what do you have coming up in the next few few days ish other than the, this this uh, face murder trial eating thing well tomorrow me and uh, david at mls law show is doing a rewatch of the jody aries trial that's mm -hmm. a crap show and it's uh, interesting pictures that are not censored because this was 10 years ago that trial happened and uh, everything's out awesome. including the judge. The judge, yeah. 
<laughs> including <laughs> nice the the victim doing stuff, the perp doing stuff, videotaping everything, and it's all being shown. And uh, the next thing I have planned is for next week, which is one of my uh, weird Swedish holiday streams. I think I mentioned that to Jeff and Hayden, who are invited to it. And it will... Well, we are not allowed to promote drinking. So I will use myself as a warning example during a few hours. Don't do this. Yeah. Uh, on a, what we Swedes do at uh, when we celebrate something, which is being shit faced. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, as for me, we're doing this today. No Maritime Monday today uh, because we're doing this. We're we're just gonna go until I can't go anymore. Tomorrow we'll have Law and Lumber Rob on the channel, and uh, Wednesday we're gonna be doing a sort of a, a little brief overview of this current situation for all of the currently outstanding trials that I'm paying attention to. Thursday is OJ, Friday is Drex, and then uh, the Monday following Drex will be Maritime Monday again. There you go. I'm going to start having more guests on. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Send invites. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Mandy, (laughs) artist extraordinaire, Mandy, who's just a little bit touched in the head, but we love her anyway. Man, thank you so much, Mandy. I have 70 subs with no videos, law dorks. Mandy, <laughs> you should have a bajillion subscribers because you are an artist extraordinaire and you are you have been well endowed by our creator. Let's continue. Tend to run back to your vehicle, right? Yes, yeah, so we can leave. Yes. You would agree that the other men, your brothers, they were still oh, in the just vicinity. Chris was closer, but yes. But they were they were not at the vehicle. Chris was at the vehicle. And you would agree, or would you not, that DJ was on Redwood being beaten by one of your brothers? I don't know. So it's possible. I don't know. Did you see DJ being beaten by Sebastian? No, I didn't see that. Did you do you remember? Because you said Chris Lowe was closest to you. That Chris actually turned away back from the vehicle and started running back down Redwood so that he could help Sebastian beat up DJ. No. You didn't see that. No. He testified mm-hmm. that at one point he was close to you, right? You were yes. in the vehicle first, right? Yes. And you never, when you got into your vehicle, so that you would have been facing the very direction that Sebastian and DJ were fighting. You're telling this jury that you didn't see them fighting and didn't see Chris Lowe run back up. No. You never saw. You never saw Chris sucker punch no. DJ in the head? No. You didn't see two men on one? No. Well. Do you remember seeing Travis that coming down the street, <laughs> running to help his brother I'm at that freezing. point? No. You didn't see that when you were sitting in your vehicle facing in that direction? No. You didn't see a fight that was roughly 20 to 30 feet from the, from the point of the front of your vehicle? No. But at some point, it's your testimony that the all of the other men ran to the car and jumped into the vehicle, right? Yes. And Sebastian was in the front seat. Yeah. Yes. Dude, that was, was in the back. Ridiculously yes. loud. Holy shit. We know that you believe <laughs> Tyler Robinson made it into the vehicle, but you now know or knew. He did. He made it into the vehicle. He just got out. You don't know if he fell out or jumped out, right? He, he told me he jumped out. So. But you didn't see it with your own eyes. No. <laughs> you don't know personally whether he jumped out or fell out of the vehicle. No. Wow. And isn't it a I'm fact deaf. that Mr. Rudolph did not start shooting until all of you were in the vehicle, or part, Mr. Robinson partially in the vehicle, but the other three of you inside the vehicle. I'm not sure. Well, did he shoot? Let me ask you this. When you were running to your vehicle, did he shoot at you? No. When Chris Lowe was running back to the vehicle, was he shooting? No. When Tyler Robinson was running to the vehicle, was he shooting? No. When Sebastian was running to the vehicle, was he shooting? Interesting. No. So he didn't begin shooting until you guys were inside the car. I don't think Tyler fully got in, but I don't know. Right. Other three. That's very I interesting. So, yes. He wasn't shooting and all the reason running he started in. shooting at that point when Is? he was roughly the 20 to 30 feet away from the front of your mother's car was that Sebastian had his gun and pointed it through the windshield, ready to shoot and kill him, right? No. No, that's not what happened? No. Isn't it a fact that Tyler Robinson, who was sort of hanging in the door frame in the rear, 
pointed his gun at Mr. Rudolph and DJ, and that's why he fired his gun. No. Do you know? You this see is great here. preparation. You're right back and see next to me. From uh, the defense, because they have caught him in dubious, no, I don't remember, ba 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 ba. So now when she asks the important questions, his no, and I don't remember, automatically false. Right. And first of all, Ma Max uh, Schmidt says, damn, Jeff, you woke my cat up again. That was not me. That was Hayden. I had nothing to do with that. I will fully take responsibility for that. I do apologize. <laughs> I physically <laughs> muted my mic. I didn't realize I was unmuted in there and that it would still work. I genuinely apologize. It, it worked very It also well. shouldn't have been that loud. <laughs> It was extraordinarily loud. Uh, Nicola Maxwell, Maxwell, a double Maxwell. Free Zachariah Anderson. This one's fucked, but uh, must watch. Love you guys. We love you too, Nicola. You, you are you are the one of the most amazing people in the entire universe. Uh, but you no, know, this is an interesting thing that she's saying, and this kind of goes as I was saying what the prosecution was doing at the beginning by saying, "Look, watch the video. They are walking away. They're running. They, you know, they're leaving. They're attempting to flee, and then the firing starts." And some of you are mentioning, "No, but they, they were showing their, their, their weapons in the that hadn't been introduced into evidence yet." But now what she's saying, she she walked them down. He, she walked this witness down this path, which is extraordinarily beneficial to the defense. Mm -hmm. You know, while you were walking, was she shooting at this person? No. While you were while he was walking away, were they shooting at him? No. This person, while they were walking towards the car, were they shooting at him? No. Were they shooting before you got in the car? And then he's like, well, I don't know. I don't know if this guy was completely in the car before he started shooting. Pulls that dumb shit. And he's like, okay, you, the frog there? he didn't start shooting until, you know, other dude, Sebastian pointed the gun at him. Or was it Sebastian or Taylor? I can't remember. Who, somebody pointed the gun, whichever one pointed the gun. And he's like, well, uh, no. And as, as Nicholas was saying, he doesn't remember anything. He didn't see anything. He doesn't know anything. But he's like, no, that didn't happen. Why? Because, well, I, you know, I saw he was sitting right next to me. So suddenly he remembers that this didn't happen, but he doesn't remember anything else that happened. So while this is not direct evidence that there was a, a gun pulled on them and pointed at the defendant as they were getting in the car and driving away, it is pretty strong circumstantial evidence. Mm. Because and His, credi yeah. his yeah, credibility right. is already sacked. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is this is the thing. She's our, She got him to admit, so now it is in court that no shots were fired while they were going towards the vehicle. So it's not like he was just walking down that 300 yards or as, she, as the defense is asserting much closer. While they were going to their car, he was just like blam, 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 trying to pick them off as they ran towards their car. That is now off the table because of this witness's testimony. Now it's what happened as they were getting in or after they were in the car. Why would he start shooting at that point? And she's saying because you know, douche canoe, other guy started pointing a gun at them. And he's like, no. How do you know? Well, he was sitting right next to me. So, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, this is some interesting testimony that is starting to shift it towards the defense in a very, very strong way, I believe. Gentlemen, comments? What's there really to add? She's caught him out in enough to make him look like an absolute liar. And we've seen exactly what she was doing. She was poking holes in everything, leading him down this path that she knew he was going to say, I don't know this, I don't know that, I can't comment on this. And then all of a sudden, when it's something that may be beneficial to himself or to the plaintiff, oh, I know exactly what happened. After you've just spent the last 45 minutes saying you don't know shit, yeah, no. And there's about 30 more minutes of direct and a few minutes of recross. And then we, I mean, read, there's, let's try that again. There's about 30 more minutes of cross-examination and just a few minutes of redirect. And then we take a break. And then we get into crazy psycho ex-girlfriend that started all of this shit witness testimony. So there we are. And Nicola Maxwell. Who has changed, who has corrected 
her name to only one Maxwell, from Nicola Maxwell Maxwell to just Nicola Maxwell. <laughs> Hashtag free Zach Brandon. Jeff, your kind words just made my day. Love you guys. Honestly, stay tuned for this one. I've seen the next hour or two, and it's a must watch. Nicola Maxwell, one of the most lovely, wonderful, beautiful, unfortunately married Scottish people you'll ever meet in your entire life. She has an amazing channel where she shows some just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous Scottish scenery around her neck of the wood. Uh, you, know, you want to go to her and just check out some lovely Scottish scenery. Nicola is awesome. I hope you're recovering well from your surgery. You deserve it. You deserve a break today at McDonald's. Take care, <laughs> Take care Nicola. Mm. Uh, we enjoy uh, and, you. And just to point out... I'm not married for you, Jeff. What? No! Your <laughs> husband watches this. Don't say that. <laughs> 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 but hey, mm. you know. and for you who plan to sub or not to my channel, because you should, I have only one video about uh, union stuff. The rest is me being snarky at different people and watching trials yeah. and being snarky and sometimes drunk. Most of the time, I'm drunk. Sub! <laughs> right. All right. Um, but yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there you go. I, 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 this, this, this may be the new uh, chat of the day, but you know, just yep. saying. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, Mr. Maxwell. Maybe her husband. In that moment, you're being shot at. You said I wasn't being shot yet. When you were in the vehicle, in that moment, you're all running. We saw the clip. We saw yes. the video. Split second. You testified. You sped out of there. It's your testimony now that you're focusing on and can see fully what Sebastian's doing. Yes. So you Liar. see what Sebastian is doing in that moment, in that heat. Heat of you, your adrenaline's running, yet you're telling this jury when you're moseying down to Mr. Rudolph's house, you don't see the same person, different person sitting in that exact same seat getting FaceTime calls throughout the night, right? There's things that grab your attention. Right. So a, a gun in my face would most certainly grab my attention. Uh, every day, what, phone what call, else in your face has really grabbed on, your attention after getting shot at? The gun was Something supposed to be in your face, though. Him? You were saying you really would notice it was important. in someone else's. Unless it's somebody that you've recruited to come there and help. If he's right? driving, no. This guy is over here. Yes. His so, gun should be there, not here. Hunter yeah. yeah. Robinson fell from the. Unless he's driving and the guy's trying to reach across no, him to shoot out the, vehicle, the right? windows. Yeah. And you Wait, that way. Later learned that he was hit. I keep forgetting yes. that you guys drive and on the wrong side of the road. He basically had some <laughs> no, we don't. Wounds, right? He was released from the hospital the next day. He had a hole in his hip. He was released from the hospital the next day, was he not? He had a hole in his hip, though. But my question is not... That's not the fucking was, question, you my dick. My question is, was he released from the hospital the next day? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And, and directly after she goes to questions, I'm not sure, I don't know. I'm a moron. When, I'm a when you were being shot at, you, you ducked down. Yes. And Chris Lowe ducked down. I'm not sure if he ducked, but yes. You couldn't see him, right? Because he was in the back. Yes. Guess what? Yes, he was in the back seat. Just like Tyler Robinson was yes. in the back. You couldn't see what he was doing either, right? He definitely didn't put a gun past me, though. I can tell you that. You, so you can see what the person, one person in the Precisely. back was not doing. His eyes must be... Doing. You can see what the other person in the back is doing. Because one thing is happening in front of me, and one thing is happening behind me. Tyler's out of the car. He runs. Yes. And you later learn that he ditched his gun from the police, right? Yes. He basically tried to conceal evidence. That's what that means, right? No. You're aware that the police located <laughs> a gun later what? that evening or that morning, right? Yes. She just tried and to get him to admit to concealing evidence. After you yeah. realized that Tyler was no longer in the car, you looked over at Sebastian and realized that he shot, right? I knew that instantly, yes. So Sebastian didn't duck, right? I don't know. Duck, duck, and goose, bang. He was because he was sitting upright pointing a gun, right? No. The reason you weren't shot was because you ducked. I don't know where he was shot at, so I cannot speak if that's why he got shot. The reason Chris Lowe wasn't shot was because he ducked too, right? I'm not sure. And the reason Tyler got shot was because he was upright just like Sebastian pointing a gun as well, right? No. When you left that How scene, do you know if you're ducking you down? Steps, right? I'm not mm -hmm. sure which direction that is, but I drove. Stop asking important and questions. Rather than immediately getting yeah, on the phone, you had Chris, facts. Chris's phone, uh, you said, right? Who's phone? Yes, Chris's phone. You could have called 911, right? Yes. And you, you didn't? Yes, because that would take too long. 
for paramedics to get there. I wanted to get him to the hospital as soon as possible. Oh, fucking idiot. Yeah. Now you call them and you say, I am going here. I am on this route. This is the way I'm taking to the hospital. And they will meet you somewhere in the middle, you idiot. Yes. So rather than calling for help, 911, got somebody shot, get an ambulance here, right? You didn't do that. That would have took right. longer than me just directly taking him to the hospital. You don't know that. You're, you're, you're assuming that. No, yep. I, I don't know that. Okay. So nope. you, you're in the car roughly five miles, right? Yes. Down US-1. Yes. Well, I don't know what road, but yes. And you have in your GPS the hospital, right? Yes. St. Mary's Hospital? I'm not sure which hospital it was. And you're driving uh, roughly five miles uh, south. And do you even know what direction you're driving in? No. You're just trying to find the hospital. Just trying to follow the GPS, yes. Okay. And then how do you know you would get there if you don't even know where the fuck you're going? How do you know you're going to get there faster than the ambulance? Shut up, Jeff. Stop asking important questions. On that road, US-1, that then turns into Broadway, there are two huge hospital signs. It's subjective, but... That's subjective? What? Huge, yes. What is... <laughs> Does he have any idea how stupid that just made him sound? No, because it, this is an example of the Dunning-Kruger effect. He has no oh, really? idea he is a moron. Okay. Oh my God. That is ridiculous. And that is the greatest freeze frame I've ever seen. Oh, you're not even frozen. You were just making that face. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I thought he was frozen. He was just making that face. That's pretty. That makes it extra funny. But yeah, no, this whole. Oh yeah. So there, there's two giant hospitals. Two. What'd you say? Huge. Mm. What, whatever adjective huge. she used. Hospital signs. That's subjective. And she's like, "What do you mean? It's subjective? There's signs there?" And he's like, "No, it's subjective. Like how big the signs were. The signs were fucking there, dude." Oh my lord! Is it, what's a, you're familiar with typical hospital signs, right? Yes. They're rather large, right? I couldn't say. How, how large? You, you could say you fuck with. They're not trying to make hospital signs as small as possible, so nobody knows they're there. Oh my god! Now I'm getting pissed. They are. I'm not sure. Well, tell the truth. I am unsure of the size of a hospital sign. How would you characterize a hospital sign? The same as. It looks like? It's a sign with an H on it. Okay, and. They're pretty prominent. That's why they have them, so that people can see them and know where the hospital location is, right? I believe so, yes. And you pass two of those large signs, and then you pass the hospital, right? I'm unaware of that. Oh, shut up. Well, the hospital was five miles back from 40th and four or five blocks back from 40th and Broadway. Are you aware of that? So how did I pass it? You have to tell me. Tell because me. you're a Are fucking you idiot. I low pass it? So it was, it was on either one of my left or right sides, and I just didn't see it. I don't know. You had the GPS on. It was. But you just told me I I drove past it. It was on Forty Fifth Saint Mary's. You went. That's not. I didn't. I didn't oh, I'm gonna past. punch you in the right dick, when dude. I got out. When you landed in the automobile, uh, the abandoned shop. Yes, precisely. You could have made a right heading west to go to Saint Mary's, and you didn't on Forty Fifth. You passed. I didn't. The how, but how could I pass it if it's not directly on my left or right side? You're this this guy is being a right cunt, and now he's just being argumentative for the dick of it. Holy shit. Yeah, this guy I think just he has realized how close he has to have realized how close he is to getting his own court case. That's why he's doing this. Yeah. Holy Isn't it shit. amazing how accurate his memory is all of a sudden. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, perfect memory. He doesn't want to implicate himself. That's exactly what it is. Deanna says, legal vices, can we get any excuse for me to explain why you kept up all night? I haven't been kept up all night. It's only 7 o'clock at night here. I started streaming at noon my time, so. Holy shit, it's 7 a.m. What time is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, if, yeah. if you're up all night, that's your problem, Deanna. But I love you anyway. <laughs> but this guy's just a right cunt. Holy crap. Uh, Jeff, you think he's a cunt. You're in for a treat with his sister. No, I've seen the sister's cross-examination is why we're watching this trial. I saw the girlfriend's deal. Like Flux was sending me that, and that's why I'm like, okay, this is weird. This is crazy. And then I started looking at it, and then I watched the first couple of minutes of the prosecutor's opening statements, and went, all right, we're just going to stream this trial as much as we can. 
So yeah, I, I've seen like 90% of the cross-examination of the sister. Yeah, I mean, this this dude is an absolute cock munch. Uh, probably literally as well as figuratively, but let's continue. You're saying I passed it like it's, I'm not playing with words. You're telling me I passed it when it wasn't on my left or my right side. Okay, if I can't see it, how did I pass it? All right, wait for the next question. Of course. How the hell do you know you saw it? We end up in All of a sudden. Right. Shop. Yes. Dark, right? Yes. Bill didn't call 911. No, I, I, no, no. When, when you first arrived there, you did not call 911. I called 911 as soon as we got there. As soon as you got there? Yes. Were you inside the car or outside the car? When you I'm not sure. You remember All seeing of a sudden, I can't Officer remember. Panagua, first officer that was in the vicinity who came up to you guys, pulled up? The one I flagged down? Well, did you flag him down? Let me ask it that way. Yes, you can hear it in the 911 call. Well, you're assuming that that's Officer Canagua. <sighs> you're telling me that I spoke with him, so that's the only officer I remember speaking with. There were multiple officers there. You're assuming that the person on that... Sustained. You're oh, he got her. He did get her there. That the officer well, she was getting argumentative. Was officer you don't no. That. I'm telling you that the only officer I interacted with was the first officer I seen and flagged down during the call. So it's your testimony that you flagged down Officer Panagua. I don't know who Officer Panagua is. Um, and... <clears throat> When, when the, did you, did you flag, you, so your testimony is that you, while you were on the phone with 911, you did flag down a officer, but you yes. don't know who it is. An yes. officer. And you were outside of the vehicle or inside the vehicle? I'm not sure. But I had to be outside because I was like, hey, right here, right here. I'm not sure. And uh, where was Chris? 547 here on Tobacco oh, sure. Road. Great song by Bob Dylan, but the uh, cover by call? Johnny and Edgar Winter do? was the best version of Tobacco Road ever you mean sung in the history of the do? universe. I mean, the, Just the police arrived. And I was on the phone the whole the whole time. Right. And then eventually you got off the phone, right? Yes, and then th they were there. That's when I'm giving my I'm talking to them now. How many police officers were there at that point? I'm not sure. Was it just one, or was so it when did they do? I'm not sure. John, I do not remember. He doesn't remember if it's one officer or five hundred thousand police officers. He literally doesn't remember how many officers. Mm. Was it one or was it half a million? He has no idea. But still, he remembered exactly that it, oh, hospital signs are subjective. I know exactly who, where I was because I didn't, I, I should have, to reach the hospital, I should have turned right. How the fuck did you know? Deanna says, you forced us to stay up all night. Deanna never forced you to do anything. You did it because you wanted it. Uh, I need to be off for actual work. Nicholas has to beat off to do work. Yep. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas, thank yep. you for being here. You donated a substantial portion of your day. We yep. appreciate it. And uh, if you're still on when I am coming back from work... Uh, maybe I'll have an hour before my stream. There's a good chance I'll be here. <laughs> All Thank right. you for joining us, Nicholas. Everybody go to Nicholas Starov's channel, subscribe to him, and like everything he's ever done. Yeah, everything. I would say especially the parts where I participated, but I don't think he's ever actually had me on as a special guest. So I've been there, but like... I was never highlighted and featured as an important person. Oh, you mean like that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Still like everything uh, he's ever done. Do yeah, the label right. lower on your channel, Nick. <laughs> All right. oh. As AT1 says, Nick is okay for a Swiss guy. He's because he's from Shut Switzerland. <laughs> he's Swedish. Yeah. We just don't call him Norwegian. He, he knows. Like he knows. And I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Vice is where are you located? Says excited utterance. If it's not in the middle of the night, I am in South Korea and it is currently 6 51 p.m. Mm. In and I'm in Dark Sweden Nisa. where the sun is up since it's noon here. Well, the sun has been up for six months in Sweden. Come on. Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's either dark for six months or sunny for six months. Pick which one it is. Yeah. We have excellent summers. Last year it was a Tuesday. Yeah. Wait, Hay Hayden's doing his, uh, his potentially criminal impression. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I was leaning back in my chair. There you are. <laughs> um, I might actually also duck out for a bit so I can try and put the little one down. But um... well, then you all talk amongst yourselves and grift because I got to go take care of some business before you before you leave me alone. 
Uh, everybody, grift yourselves for the next uh, minute or however long it takes me to walk down the hall, do my business, and return. Well, I ha do have uh, Jeff uh, featured. Uh, it's about a 12 minute video where I make uh, Jeff lose his mind. And for you in the chat who knows about uh, Vikings saying hi, yeah, I have that clip on my channel. <laughs> I don't know if we clipped when uh, I uh, I called the uh, law and C word the other word. <laughs> <laughs> you should see whether or not you can get someone to go back and find that. <laughs> oh god! Oh, that was yeah. Uh, <clears throat> not entirely into the after the two hour mark, and it just slipped out. And um, four p four other people just went. Oh, what he used that word. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine because you can't unfuck a clusterfuck. You you took it in your stride, and that stream went well after that. So. Yeah, well, soon in I'm, the mode. I'm, I'm still shop. here, so that's good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, dude, we you've already dropped the c word in the last half hour. Nothing we said at this point was going to get this stream muted. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Nicholas, so uh, continue watching uh, Law and Cunt, and I'm off. Bye. And, uh, <laughs> bye. Bye, Nicholas. And uh, are, are you leaving us as well? Have you decided? You're um, I will you're just turn off the camera me. for a second because I'll go and see where they're at. But um, either way, I'll grab something to eat. So. Right. I, I, I ordered food. It's on its way. So I, I hate people watching me eat on stream, but you're going to have to watch me eat on stream eventually. Mukbang. Yeah. All right. Um, let's continue with this, uh, with this trial. Like I said, how we've got about, uh, where are we at here now? We're at 623. Um, uh, we've got about another 20 minutes of her and then a few minutes of redirect and then we're on a break and then we'll start with crazy girlfriend, sister witness. And you were on scene there for several hours, were you not? I believe so. I'm not really sure on the time frame. Well, you eventually went to the hospital, right? Yes. And... Do you remember what time that was? No. Um, do you remember while you were at 40th and Broadway that you gave a statement to Detective Anderlin? Yes. And that was a sworn statement under oath? Yes. And you never told Detective Anderlin that anybody had a gun that night, right? Correct. Is it your testimony you didn't know that Tyler had a gun, right? Correct. Okay. Um, you didn't tell mm. Detective Anderlin um, that your sister sent you a text message to go shoot up Travis's shit, right? No. You didn't tell Detective Anderlin that you sent a text message back to Tyler and your sister saying that Travis is a dead man walking, right? Yes. Why wouldn't you tell the lead detective in the homicide case that you went there after you received a text to go shoot it up and you said this man's a dead man walking? Why wouldn't you tell the detective that? Honestly, I forgot that even happened at that point. My only focus was Sebastian. Oh, come still, on. Like, that's, that's still all that's in my head is Sebastian. You spoke to her yes. a couple hours after you and Chris were on scene. I'm not sure on the exact time. Were you and Chris talking about things that happened that night before you were interviewed? No. You had opportunity to. But why would we want to talk about just getting shot at a traumatic experience? Why would we want to speak? I still don't want to speak about it. Were you present when Mr. Lowe gave his interview? They separated us. Were you present? Did you see that happen? I couldn't hear him. But yes, we were in the same area when we both gave interviews, yes. In your interview, do you remember how long it was? No. That's a rather remember personal question. How long question. you spoke with Mr. Mr. Lowe? No. But at some point, they released you, correct? Yes, eventually. And then the two of you took an Uber? Yes. And where'd you go? Chris's house. Why'd you go to Chris's house? To get his car. Okay. And did you, in fact, get his car? Yes. Okay. Did you ever find out how Mr. Lowe got to Tyler's house that evening, if his car was back at his own house? No. Okay. Um, so would that suggest that somebody picked him up? Do you know? Did you ever find out how he got there? I don't know. And after you got into his car, you went to St. Mary's Hospital, correct? Yes. But before you arrived at the hospital, isn't it a fact that your sister and you guys had FaceTimed? I don't remember. Do you remember? He doesn't remember a goddamn you, thing. You, Dominique, Chris, and Tyler, while in Tyler's hospital room, had no, all talked. You had no, all we didn't. Tyler was in surgery. How could we possibly FaceTime? You were in surgery. What? Tyler was in surgery. How could he possibly mm -hmm. FaceTime? So at no point did any of you FaceTime before Tyler was spoken to by the police. Is that your testimony? Literally, no. 
And oh, you don't she's got receipts. Calling your sister and telling her what had happened that night. I never did. Okay, maybe I misunderstood, but I thought on direct examination you said that you had spoken to your sister. Yes, I had spoken to my sister and just telling her we got shot. I didn't explain to her in any detail of what happened. Oh, so by when you said you didn't talk yes. to anybody, you by meant FaceTime? your sister? No, it was, I think it was a phone call. It was on Chris's phone. I don't remember. Okay, but it's possible it was FaceTime. You don't recall? I think it was a phone call. You're not one hundred percent sure, right? I think it was a phone call. Were you present when your sister gave her um, sworn statement to Detective Ema? No, I don't even know who Detective Ema is. Were you present when your sister gave a statement to any law enforcement officer? No. Do you know where your sister gave that statement? No. But you you were not with her. No. Um. How did, after you well, how did you leave the hospital? Was it just you and Chris, or was it you, Chris, and Dominique? Just me and Chris. How did Dominique get to the hospital? Do you know? I don't know. But she did in fact show up, right? Yes. And how did Dominique get home? Do you know? I don't know. Where'd you go after? To Chris's house. Why didn't you go back to your home? I don't know. So you went back to <clears throat> Chris's house? Yes. And again, you didn't have enough concern about your sister who had been beaten to go back to your own home to help your sister, right? Sebastian had just got shot. Okay. Tyler had just got shot. So instead you go to your friend's house and not back home to be with your sister? I literally had no idea what I was doing at that point in time. you have a clear memory of what happened that night? Yes. Despite all of the adrenaline and excitement and being shot at and everything else? Yes. You sure about that? Yes. Mm. Right. Yes, Tokyo and Korea are in the same time when you, zone. When you, saw, when you realized that Tyler was not fully in the car, but was sort of in and out of the vehicle, I don't want to mischaracterize mischaracter your words, but... At some point, you realize he's not in the car, right? Yes. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Um, you could not see if Tyler was pointing a gun at that point. I know he definitely did not point a gun in the car. But again, how, how can you tell us how? You yeah, this is the guy that doesn't remember anything. He doesn't remember what happened when his sister texted him. He doesn't remember anything going there. He doesn't remember how his friends showed up. He doesn't know if they were carrying guns. He doesn't know why they have their phones here. He doesn't remember why they're doing this. He doesn't remember who was doing what. He doesn't remember. But he, this is the one thing he remembers is that nobody was pointing a gun at the guy. This is such crap. This guy's testimony is absolutely useless. You know that while you're being shot at, as you're driving away, as you're ducking down, you've testified to the jury, you're right. ducking down. How can you see what's happening behind you? Right. You said that we didn't start getting shot until he already pointed the gun. I'm letting you know that he what? did not point a gun past my head to aim at Travis in the street because that's what Travis was. I did not see Sebastian point a gun to aim at Travis. Didn't for, see. Uh, for me, so we got shot. Didn't after, see. What you're saying, that he's seen guns were pointed. I'm telling you that I didn't see. Didn't see and no, he didn't are completely different answers. That's a thing. He didn't see. I will, maybe I will buy that. That's a little bit hard to believe at this point because I can't trust a damn thing that comes out of his mouth, but I'll give him that he didn't see him pointing a gun. That does not mean he didn't do it. It just means he didn't see it. See any guns pointed. You're assuming that. I'm not assuming. Let me finish my question. You're assuming that, based on your answer, that Tyler was pointing the gun straight straight through the windshield in order for you to see it. I'm telling you that that's not what I seen. Like, there's no way that I I could I could have missed that. But we already know that the car door wasn't closed. He wasn't pointing it through the windshield. We know that he was out of the car. He was pointing it this way. Sustained. Sustained. Did you see <clears throat> Tyler Robinson? No, I did not. Let me finish my question. Of course, sorry. Point the gun while he was hanging out halfway in and halfway out of the car or had fallen out of the car, did, could you have seen or did you see him pointing the gun at Mr. Rudolph? No. And isn't it true that you would not have been able to because he was not in the vehicle? He was not pointing it through the windshield. I assumed he got out of the car when the shooting began. So Assumed you did. By dick. definition of what you're saying, it really doesn't make sense for me not to see it. Because you're saying if it happened when he was out the car, but he got out the car after shooting started, then... I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. All right. Hmm. 
is this the look through the notes before we decide whether or not we have any additional questions to ask? Isn't it true that to this very day, the police have never checked if the gun that you owned at the time of the shooting, that Glock nine millimeter, is in fact the very gun that is currently in your possession? Um, no, but they, they can. That's not my question. My question. No, I, I answer no. They, they've never done that, right? No. So there's no way that law enforcement knows definitively whether the Glock you possess today is in <laughs> fact the same Glock that you possessed back then, right? No. That's funny. Isn't it a fact that before law enforcement got to the location of 40th and Broadway, that you or you and Chris Lowe removed a gun from Sebastian's hand? No. Can you, you, you saw Sebastian, obviously, right? Yes. Okay. Do you remember him, his hand being in a position like this, where it appeared that he was pointing a gun? No. So you're telling us you never touched his hand, right? Yes. Okay. There would have been no reason for you to? Yes. And you're telling this jury that you never, or you and Chris Lowe, never removed a firearm from Sebastian's hand? Yes, precisely. I'm sorry, I can't see your eyes. Yes. You didn't toss a gun? No. You didn't toss your own gun? No. You didn't, Chris Lowe didn't toss a gun? No. Nobody tossed a gun except for Tyler, right? The no. one that was found by police. Yes. So he didn't take a gun from Sebastian's cold, dead hand, even though he was, his hand was in the position of someone who had died holding a gun. Okay. Hmm. Just want to go back to something and make sure it's clear. At the time, isn't it true that the time that Tyler Robinson was pointing a gun, was it was never it was ne sustained. You're going to have to rephrase that question. Okay. From where Tyler Robinson was in the car, could you see? Him pointing a gun. Yes. So you did see him point a gun. No. You would have been able to see. That's your testimony. Yes. And that's true even if he was outside of the vehicle, correct? I'm not sure. So if he was outside of the vehicle, it's possible. All right, and I'm going to disappear here in just a second. The Food delivery and guy is just office, right? apparently coming into yes. my parking lot. So. And the same is true if he was halfway in and halfway out of the vehicle. When I suddenly disappear, that you it's just to get that Travis didn't begin shooting until after. So I'm unsure on what you're trying to say. So if Mr. Robinson is halfway in, halfway out, falling out of the vehicle, isn't it true that there was no way that you could have seen him pointing the gun at Mr. Rudolph and his brother? Are you saying after we were getting shot? I'm asking at the point where he's hanging in and out of the vehicle. Okay. You're focused on driving, speeding away. You're ducking down. Isn't it a fact? that you could not have seen Mr. Robinson pointing his gun. While we're being shot. My question is, at the point that he's in and out of the vehicle. Yes. You could not see that. Yes. You could not see that. Yes. Before the shooting started. But mm -hmm. you said he didn't start shooting until after. You could not know. You could not see Tyler Robinson pointing his gun while he was out of the vehicle or halfway in and out of the vehicle before the shooting started. You said Travis didn't start shooting at us until we got in the vehicle. After the guns were pointed. After There the were no guns being pointed. I know that's your testimony. Yes, ma'am. You would agree that it would have been impossible yeah. for you. Oh, never mind. I want to stop to that. To see that, I'll be right Tyler back. Robinson, while he was halfway in and out of the car, or after he jumped out of the car, according to you, before any shots were fired by Mr. Rudolph. What's the objection? All right, it, it, it is. All right, so rephrase the question, please. Sustained. Isn't it true that when Tyler Robinson, according to you, jumped out of the car, okay, before Mr. Rudolph fired a single shot, I, hold on, that it would have been impossible for you to see Tyler pointing a gun at Mr. Rudolph and his brother. Tyler did not get out the car before shots were fired. Mr. Rudolph didn't fire a single shot until Tyler and, Ms. and Sebastian pointed guns at him. Isn't that a fact? They did not point guns at him. Your testimony is that neither one of them pointed a gun. Yes. Even Hi. though it's impossible for you to see what Mr. Robinson was doing while he was outside of the car. 
that would have been after being shot. Before. But you said that Travis didn't start shooting. Oh my God, stop it, dude. That he didn't start shooting until we were all in the car. My question is, you weren't all in the car, right? You already said that. We were in the car. So Tyler Robinson was in the car as well? In the car, door closed, you were all in the car? We were all in the car, and then he got out after shooting started. The door never closed. Oh, he, he didn't say that. Same. Isn't it a fact that he never God. made it fully in the car? That is not a fact. He, he testified know. earlier. He he thought he didn't. Oh, oh, oh okay, calm, calm down. He testified earlier that the shooting started either after they were all in the car or while they were all getting in the car. That was a thing he mentioned earlier. He wasn't sure whether they were all in the car when the shooting happened or whether the shooting started before uh, Taylor, who apparently fell out of the vehicle at some point, was in the car or not. Oh, my God. I'm upset. Let's go. Because you were ducked down. Isn't that true? I'm not sure if, at what point I started ducking. Into, in relation to when he got out of the car. Right. You just testified a moment ago that Tyler didn't fully ever get into the car. You remember that? I'm unsure. Those were your words. Tyler right. didn't fully get into the car. That's what I'm he testified sure. to. You don't remember just testifying to that a moment ago? I remember saying that I'm not sure if he got fully in or not. But I'm... That's the fucking point, you nitwit. You're not sure whether he was in or not. But 30 seconds ago, you just testified that he was in the car before the shooting started. <sighs> I hate Flux for making me watch this trial. I'm not sure. So if Tyler never fully got in the car, you it would have been impossible for you to see him point his gun at Mr. Rudolph and DJ. Isn't that true? It just depends on which side he's on. Because he's you can only be halfway in and halfway out. He's right handed. He's not gonna point a gun with his left hand. So what, what side was he on? My left, behind me. So he was behind you. Yes. Okay. And your your position is that you he's not fully in the car. He's mm. on the street. And you I'm not sure. You could not see him pointing his gun. I did not see him pointing a gun. Wait. I seem to have bumped dog go cam is boop. There we go. All right, chat. Uh, I have to ask a very, very personal question. I know what I like and I know what I hate. Um, I want to watch this with you, but uh, if you're like discuss, if, if you don't mind if I eat on cam, put a one. If you want me to block out the cam so you don't see me munching on food, hit two. One for eating on cam, two for not. Eating on cam. That's all I have to say. Until then, I'm eating on cam. Just a moment, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Boop. All right, we got to adjust doggo cam here for a second, too. She's checking to see if they have any more questions to ask on cross examination. And then we will begin the redirect for a few minutes. And then apparently all the crazy happens. <laughs> no eating noise, fucking your uncle. Yeah, I don't do eating noise. But, uh, you know. Eating on or off cam is your choice. I don't normally like to do it, but, you know, this is too interesting. Just going back on a few more questions with respect to Tyler in, in the vehicle. Can you, you've testified now that um, Tyler Robinson was directly behind you, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Can you explain to this jury, please, how you couldn't see Tyler Robinson pointing a gun when he's behind you and, according to you, not fully in the vehicle? How can you see behind your head what's going on? Explain to the jury, please. Um, I'm just saying, personally, that I did not see him point a gun forward past me. So you, you don't know if he did then? I know that I didn't see him point a gun. So it's possible he did. You don't have eyes in the back of your head, correct? I'm not sure. It depends. Like I said, it depends on what side he's on. 
Like he's not left-handed. So if he's on my right side and he's halfway in and halfway out, he's not out the out the car pointing a gun with his left hand. That's he would have to point it past me. And I'm telling you, I did not see. It's not my question. My question is, you don't have eyes in the back of your head, right? Sorry, no. muted. He's behind you. Right? Yes. Yes. According to you, he didn't fully get in the vehicle. So right. either he's partially out, all out, but he didn't get fully in the vehicle, right? Those were your words. I right? said I was unsure if he, if he got in fully. I just know for a fact that as soon as shooting started, that's when he left the vehicle. And before the shooting started, you can't tell this jury or explain to this jury how it is that you can tell them now that Tyler right. did not point a gun from that position before the shooting started when you weren't in a position to see it because you were looking straight ahead. Explain That's all I was saying was. while I was muted was exactly I was, that. I was in a position to see if he pointed a gun past me in the direction. Him. So I'm confused on how any other way he could point it. Well, that's assuming that he's- You're in the front seat. After... He's in the back. Oh, whatever. Direction. What if your head was turned this way? What if your head was looking straight ahead? You just told me I was- Sustained, it is. Explain to the jury how you can see something that's happening behind you when somebody's not fully in the car. You can't tell them for sure whether he was pointing his gun or not. Isn't that true? I can tell them for sure that he did not point a gun past me to aim at Travis. That you just said again, you don't know! Look, bitch, you got to make up your mind. Can you say 100% surely with no degree of equivocation whatsoever that he never pointed a gun or are you saying that you aren't sure whether or not he did? You've said both of those things about five times in the last two minutes. Get your shit together, choose a course of action, and decide what you're going to testify to. Right? My answer? Yes. I've said that already. Yes, I do. Oh, I have nothing wow. to say. All right. Very well. Uh, All right. Assuming there'll be some redirect examination, right? <laughs> have you have any uh, briefly? Yes. Describe briefly for me, if you will. Um, okay. Very well. We'll take care of that. All right. Thank you. All right. Now it's time for some redirect. Then we're gonna get on to crazy bitch. Yes. Well, let's go back to uh, the beginning of this and just to reiterate some stuff and to clarify some stuff for the members of the jury here. Of course. When did this defendant start shooting at you guys? He started shooting at us after we got in the car, okay. trying attempting to leave. So, to be clear, this defendant started shooting at you guys as you guys were leaving in your car, driving away. Yes. Is that when the shooting started? Yes. Hmm. Did you ever see anyone with a gun? No. Did you know that Tyler had taken a gun over there that night? No. Did you see Tyler point that gun at anyone during the fight? No. What kind of fight was this? It was just a, a apparently it was a fucking gunfight at one time. Was it a fist fight? Yes. Did anybody pull out a knife? No. Did anybody pull out a? Sh Sorry, what's the objection? True, sustained. Did anyone pull out pull out any sort of weapon? There were no weapons. Defense counsel asked you the seating positions, and I just want to be. I just want to make sure that we're clear on this. On your way over to the defendant's house, Tyler was sitting in the front seat next to you. Is that correct? Yes. And when you guys were leaving the defendant's house, Sebastian was in the front seat next to you. Is that correct? Yes. Defense counsel also asked you or intimated yeah. that this was some sort of sneak attack. And that's why you parked a block away from the defendant's house. Is that what this was? No, I believe... You can't sneak up on someone at their front door. Like, I don't. What? If you were trying to sneak up on this the defendant fuck? and his family, would you guys have knocked on the door? No. And if you took the statement, and I apologize, members of the jury again, shoot his shit up, literally. When you arrived at the defendant's house, wouldn't you just have started shooting? Yes. Would it have been necessary for you to. <clears throat> Sustained. Would you have knocked uh, on his door? <clears throat> Sustained. Did you knock on his door? Yes. Did you take shoot his shit up literally? No. If I took it literally, this, there would be no fight. There would be no knocking. There would be no talking. And you could have done that because you had your back. weapon with you, correct, you Mr. Fucknut? Yes. What would have happened? I would Sorry have for yelling arrived at you. his house and started shooting and left. And I don't want to belabor this, but I want to reiterate this. Did anyone ever 
pull out a gun during this fight? No. Did you have a gun on you? No. Did Sebastian pull out a gun at any point in time? Never, no. When you were driving away, did Sebastian have a gun? No. When you were driving away, did you see Chris with a gun? No. As you were driving away, did you know Tyler had taken a gun over there? No. Did you see Tyler with a gun when the fist fight was going on? No. Mm. When this defendant went in his house, remember that video we watched? Yes. Was his mom still standing out there with you guys? Yes. And she was standing right there with you, wasn't she? Yes. Was his brother still out there? Yes. Did you or any of your brothers or friends ever drag this defendant's brother, Daryl, down the street? No. Did you ever have, I know at some point there were, there was, this was a fist fight. And so at some point it was you guys fighting each other. Uh -huh. During any of this fighting, did you ever fight with Daryl? No. Did you see who fought with Daryl? No. Can you tell the jury who was it that fought with Daryl out of the four of you? I'm not sure. Oh, and so you don't know who shot with him, but you're definitely sure none of them had a gun. Nobody said this. Nobody was there. They were all did in the car. Sebastian? You can't t I mean, testify you to any of that, but you know, do you, but yeah, you, you know, know nobody pointed a gun. Is that right? Yes. Were you intentionally trying not to get Sebastian to a hospital? I really want to make it clear that Sebastian is really like one of the closest people to me in my life. There is no way possible. Mandy's not fake. Person who's We've all seen lots of Mandy. My Mandy's not I speak not to him. I spoke to him every day. Even today, I wake up, there's a picture of Sebastian in my room. Like, this is a person. There's a picture. Because Sebastian was his friend. His, his necklace there, for those of you that have that joined us lately, uh, Mr. Perfectly Coiffed Hair and Manicured Eyebrow Guy wearing a black turtleneck with a black belt and black trousers, who has the gold chain of Sebastian, his friend who he just said he has a picture of Sebastian that he sees every morning. That's a picture of Sebastian in the middle of his necklace, which has wings like an angel on it. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> his friend. Even today, I wake up, there's a picture of Sebastian in my room. Like, yes, there this is, is a person who I consider to be, I'm the closest with him. It's, it is a narrative. So, so, simple, simple answer, yeah. sustained. Heard. <clears throat> Driven past two hospitals? No. In order to dump a gun? No. And Sebastian just dies? No. Now, we saw the pictures of that car. Were those windows on that car tinted? I believe so, yes. And mm. when you heard the gunshots, when you heard this defendant firing all those shots, did you hear several times? Were they just ripping? One after 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 one? They just kept going. And at some point during all this gunfire, Sebastian had a gun. He's your friend, right? He would. Do you think he would have fired back at him? Yes. At least one time? Uh, there would have been shots fired back, yes. We love you, Mandy. Lastly, well, one question before that. The phone that we collected in this case, when you were asked to give us your phone, did you consent to us getting your phone? Yes. Did we have to get a search warrant to get your phone? No. And did you delete any text messages out of your phone? No. So while you, once you arrived at that location where the car became inoperable, did you say, oh, you know what? Let me get rid of these doggone text messages. I mean, I, I, I need to get rid of this stuff. No. Mm -hmm. And sitting here today, Keyshawn, <clears throat> do you own the fact that in retrospect, it would have been prudent. The best thing for you to have done would have been to call the police after you learned what this defendant did to your sister. Yes. And do you regret not doing that? Yes. There's nothing further. All right. Any reason why Mr. Jones can't be uh, going on about his day? Thank you. All right. You may step down, Mr. Jones. Stay safe. Uh, let me talk to the lawyers real quickly, and then we'll take a break, folks. I just need to figure out how long a break. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was some interesting. That was an interesting witness, and it went for a long ass time. Hang on. Let's, let's stop this here and uh, <clears throat> take that out of the way. Uh, get rid of uh, the lawn cuck thing here. There we go. <clears throat> All right. The first witness, the prosecution's witness, did not do so well. 
I don't think that went very well for them at all. He, I found him to be personally completely unreliable. And as I said, in my head, listening to the prosecution's opening, I thought the prosecution did a good job with the content of their opening. The presentation was bad. The demeanor and the mannerisms of the prosecutor was not ideal. But the content of it, I thought, was good. Where they were saying, uh, let me go back in ye oldie notes here. Um, he was walking away. They showed the video of the people walking away. They were walking away towards their car. They were retreating. They had disengaged. There was no longer a threat. You know, whatever happened before doesn't matter because as the prosecution said, murder begins where self-defense ends. He's saying the self-defense part was over and done with. They disengaged. They walked away. They were going. They were retreating. They were leaving. The self-defense part had ended, and they were on their way. They were leaving. And then that's when the murder started, when he, when he chased them down 300 yards, and then he started. He unloaded 39 rounds into the car. I thought that was a good, powerful statement. Um. And, you know, the, the sister's saying, go shoot up his shit. The guy says, dead man, you know, this last witness, he's, you know, he says, dead man walking. He's a, he's a dead man walking. He had a gun. Uh, you yeah, know, that's... <sighs> I thought the prosecution did a good job. Then the defense took over with their opening statements, and they did the whole woman scorned thing. Uh, and they said it was only necessary to begin shooting in order to save their lives, save his own life and the lives of those that were around him. Uh, you know, definitely, definitely a uh, not so great relationship between the two. But where I thought it kind of fell apart was on his direct examination, he did okay. Because the direct examination, if you have a bad direct examination, that just means you you prepared your witness very, very poorly. You know, he's a good guy. He's doing his homework. He's got two jobs. And you know, his sister talks about getting in a fight. So in order to pacify his sister, he said, oh, I'll, you know, I'll, he's, a, he's a dead man. He's a walking dead man. Just just to, somehow he said that to calm her down. Uh, I mean, that stuff doesn't really make much sense. But yeah, it's, you know, it's whatever. But on cross-examination, I think she crucified him. She absolutely devastated him <laughs> on cross-examination. He's unreliable. He doesn't. Re he conveniently doesn't remember things. I mean, basic things. You know, like I said, what's your name? Oh, I don't remember. He doesn't remember a lot of this basic information, things that normal people would remember. He doesn't know why he brought his friends. He doesn't know how his friends showed up at his house. He never called them. But again... The prosecution never, I mean, subpoenaed uh, his the phone records. Never checked the phone records. They did a ten minute investigation of this guy. They questioned this guy for ten minutes. The police did. Uh, the police never never uh, requested. That's what I mentioned. These police never re never requested the uh, cell phone data, cell phone text messages, etc. Um, he doesn't, he does he has a concealed carry permit. He doesn't remember why he carries a gun. He, he can't explain when he carries a gun or why he carries a gun or if he carries a gun. He can't explain any of that. He can't explain why he sold, he bought a gun and sold it to his friend the next day. Other than say it didn't, he didn't like it. He, uh, he can't explain what he doesn't remember whether or not he had a bill of sale to sell the gun to the guy in the car. Uh, he just so many things he cannot remember. He doesn't know why. He doesn't. You know, he doesn't know if his friend had the gun or not. He doesn't know if his friend pointed the gun or not. But then, thirty seconds later, he says he definitely didn't point the gun. He definitely didn't have a gun. Then he says they, they're all in the car. Then he doesn't know if they're all in the car before the shooting starts. But then he says they're all in the car before the shooting starts. But then he doesn't remember. But then they are. He doesn't come across as credible. Why is that a problem? Why is that an important thing? Because if you believe he is lying about one thing, if you believe this witness is lying about one single statement, then you are completely within your rights to discount 
everything he says, because if he's going to lie about one thing, you can extrapolate he's going to lie about everything. In other words, you don't know what he is saying is true or false. Therefore, you are able to exclude everything as being unreliable and slash or false. This witness was really, really bad for the prosecution, I believe. Uh, people saying Flux is the best. This is all Flux's fault we're here. So again, I thought this was bad because he's untrustworthy. He's contradicted himself numerous times during this. He has a, he has, has, you know, just conveniently memory lapses. And then he remembers obscure things. One thing, whether or not this guy pointed up, pointed the gun at somebody else. But then he, he eventually testifies that he's not sure, but then he corrects it. So it's 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 confusing, it's convoluted, it's contradictory. So therefore, everything he says, you can discount. Not only his cross-examination, but everything he said on direct examination. Because how do we know he's not confused or lying about everything else he said? Not having nasty comment about Flux. Sorry, Jeff, can't have that, says Nicola Maxwell. Oh, it's Flux's fault we're here <laughs> watching this. So there we go. That's uh, that's my takeaway from the first witness. Now, now we're get, now we're getting into the really weird stuff. I haven't seen the direct examination of the sister of the last witness, who is also the ex. Well, I mean, ex because you know <laughs> he's in jail. But the girlfriend of the defendant, the ex-girlfriend of the defendant, the sister of the last witness. I haven't seen her direct examination that we're going to watch now. I've seen her cross-examination, which is just ridiculous. And it was Flux sending me the link to the uh, cross-examination of this next witness that made me do all of this, that made me start following this case, because it was weird. I haven't seen the, the direct. We're going to watch the direct now. So I'm going to like skip here through the break they have. Um, there seems to be a big break. Do, 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 do. Scanning, scanning for, all right, there we go. Right, boom, that took, uh, they were gone for about an hour. Uh, wow, this is a, this is infuriating. This guy's a, a jerk. So when I eat my burger, I have a burger here, by the way. So I'm, when I eat that, I will be off cam because I just, I didn't like eating on cam. It's just weird, but. This is a really delicious, this is a ridiculously looking good hamburger. I thought I would show that. That's what, that's what I'm snarfing on here. All right. Uh, my opinion on the new Godzilla. I didn't know there was a new Godzilla trailer. Holy crap. I'm going to have to watch that. Thank you, Mandy. I will watch that uh, as soon as possible after I wake up in the morning. Uh, I didn't know there was a new Godzilla trailer. Sweet. Anything with Godzilla is awesome because... Yeah, well, we'll I'll watch that as soon as possible, and I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow what I think of the Godzilla trailer. Okay, let's get on with the uh, with the hearing here. Uh, we've still got one more witness today, and then we're going to start day two because pff, in this house we say Goshzilla. Yeah, you must be related to my dad. I know Nicola Maxwell. We'll do a private. We'll do a private stream where you can just watch me yell by yourself one of these days. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is this is a place called the Burger in New York. Uh, it's, it's a good place. Um, all right, yeah. Nicola, one of these times, we'll do, we'll do a special private eating just for you. Okay, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> we have we have a starred comment. What are we, oh, Marv White. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. This was like uh, 20 minutes ago. Is this real or a reenactment? It feels fake. Marv White, thank you so much for your super chat. It's the first super chat we've had in ages, almost a decade, I believe. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while. Let's see. Just out of curiosity's sake, how long has it been? Marv, we've got some, we've got some, like, uh, Marv was uh, this. So it's been an hour and 15 minutes between Super Chats. But thank you so much for that. Getting us back on the right channel. All of you waking up now, don't forget to Super Chat in the morning. Uh, it's Super Chat morning. We have our like and subscribe poll. Make sure you like the stream. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do me the favor of subscribing to the channel and like this video and then take our like and subscribe poll, which we haven't really talked about. We've got 548 likes and only 178 votes. Why? Because we started the poll late. But our poll is 5% of you have said you 
I asked the question because we were way down on our likes. We're about, by the way, we have four, 549 likes. YouTube, the golden number seems to be about 600. When you hit 600 likes, they really put you out into the algorithm and uh, that draws people into the channel and that's an awesome thing. So we're about 48 from that now because now we have 552 likes. So there you go. Uh, hit that like button, take our poll. I asked, why haven't you hit the like and subscribe yet? 5% of you said, shame on me. Here's my super chat. There should be a lot more of you super chatting. I'm just saying. I'm not begging for super chats. I'm not even grifting for super chats. I'm just saying. Uh, 15, oh, we're tied for second place with 15% saying, because I'm dumb. I'm Oh, no, because I'm dumber than the witness. That, you know, that's a feat. Uh, also, 15% of you saying, sorry, bro. I forgot, but I did it now. 65% of you say, I did. Don't judge me. All right. That's where we are with the like and subscribe. We'll check it out later. Mandy has also said the Godzilla, the next Godzilla is another King Kong versus Zilla rematch. Shouldn't be a rematch. They were buds by the end. We'll have to check it out. I'll do a full review of the uh, the trailer tomorrow, probably. So thanks for that. Uh, going back, making sure we didn't miss any of the super chats. Nicola, I, I we read your super chat, didn't we? From from a bit ago, where he said it's uh, this one's fucked. It's a must watch. Love you guys. I think we did that, but just in case, I did it again. All right, with that, let's jump back into this. Why is Jeff slapping us all in the face? Mandy, only you, because you like it. <laughs> all right, let's 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 get back to uh, the second witness of the day, the girlfriend of the defendant, the one who apparently had something to do with the origin of this dispute, which led to the death of someone and charges of, a, of murder in the first degree and three charges of attempted murder in the first degree. Let's let's get into the let's get into the testimony. The second witness. It's just kind of weird. She's a goofy one. And what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find the there we are. <laughs> I couldn't find the right window to take that off. All right. Bringing up the okay, we have to stop the screen from the last one. And uh we're gonna bring it up for the next witness. Boop. Boom. All right, here we go. Court. <clears throat> You're welcome. You're going to bring the jury back. All righty. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll turn the camera off while I eat, but I'll keep the mic on, but I'll try not to make any munching noises. Only for Nicola, though. She, she likes my munching noises. That poor dog. <laughs> Ozzy's back. <laughs> Never really left, to be honest. Uh, all, right. <clears throat> all right. Welcome back, everyone. Go ahead and take your seats, folks. <clears throat> all right. The state's next witness is. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> The witness is the girlfriend. While we're waiting for Ms. Jones to come in, my understanding from uh, Deputy Lubinsky is you're okay if we go a few minutes past five, right? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that going to cause a problem for any of you? Very well. Thank you. This is why I like my judge. He specifically said they're not going to go any later than 4.30 every day on the dot. People's comments aren't being deleted, as far as I know. If anybody's deleting comments, don't. Uh, I don't know who's doing it, but uh, <laughs> if there's something that needs to be deleted, someone draw draw my attention to it, but I haven't seen anything that needs to be deleted. Oh, now we're, now we're buffering. Dang it. <clears throat> All right, Ms. Jones, will you please, when you're comfortable up there, say and spell both your first and last name for the record and for the jury? Dominique, D-O-M-I-N-I-Q-U-E, and Jones, J-O-N-E-S. All right. Thank you very much. You may inquire, Ms. Edwards. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good afternoon, Ms. Jones. Could you please tell the member of the jury, um, how do you know someone by the name of Keyshawn Jones? 
Key is my little brother. And how much younger than you is Keyshawn? He is two years younger than me. And how would you describe your relationship with Keyshawn? Um, we're extremely close. There, we have three siblings. It's me, him, and an older brother. But me and him are the closest. Okay. Mm. And the older brother, did, did he live with you around the time that this happened back in 2021? No. So who was living in the home? Come on. Don't do this while I'm while I'm eating. You reject. Well, come on, it's law and crime. We know that the videos are kept on some deep, dark, like... Well, we'll, we'll go to normal speed here just for a bit. So that we can... 736.41, just in case. Hmm. Ew. Harry. Thank you no. for that, Harry. <laughs> no. No, Harry, that's wrong. No, thank you. Not even Joe jestingly for that. Oh, yeah, if someone said something about Flux, fuck you. Seriously. Flux is one of the greatest people out there. If you don't like Flux, you can just, like, fuck right off. There you go. I've said it. <clears throat> um, but come on. Come on, Law. Come on, Law and Crime. 736.41. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's hit the reset button. 736. Boom. All right, not too bad. All right. Hmm. Wow, this is like a, a serious uh, buffering episode here. La 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 la. How would you describe your relationship with Keyshawn? Right. There we go. Um, we're extremely close. There, we have three siblings. It's me, him, and the older brother. But me and him are the closest. Okay. And the older brother, did, did he live with you around the time that this happened back in 2021? No. So who was living in the home in Delray at the time? Um, me, Keyshawn, my mom, and her husband at the time. All right. So um, tell us a little bit about your brother. Was he in school? Was he working cool. around uh, <laughs> the time this happened in April of 2021? Um, he's been a full-time student even up until now. Um, he goes to the Honors College at FAU. What about yourself? What did you do for employment back in April of 2021? I was a realtor. And what do you still have Real that license okay. till this day? I oh my god, all right, all right. Um, huh, <sighs> I think it's me. Uh, hang on here, so dear real estate. Okay, um, huh. Back in uh, April of 2021, uh, take us <gasps> oh, in time. This was around interesting. COVID, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. me. Is All that right. yes? The yes. problem has been solved forever. And um, did there come a point where you could no longer take you sort of downloading go out something in the background by and do realty work? Yeah, so I got my license in March. No comment. And then um, <laughs> COVID kind of happened in April. So they closed the office when that happened. So I really wasn't working during the time. So you mean March of 2020? Correct. So hang and on, is this the one the that time actually told him to go and shoot him, or is this a different sister? Yes, this is the girlfriend of the defendant. They had the, and she's the one that said, go shoot up his shit. See, this is terrifying, because she strikes me as someone that would be a working professional, and yet she's caused this to happen. That That's a terrifying thought, personally. Yep. That's her. <clears throat> Where's Drex when you need him? Right. Fuck. A year later, sort of things haven't fully opened up yet. No. Um, tell us a little bit. Do you know someone by the name of Travis Rudolph? Yes. And how did you know Mr. Rudolph? Is he a red nose um, reindeer? Dating. And can you tell us, um, did you know Mr. Rudolph prior to starting a romantic relationship with him? Um, I met him. I've, I've known him through mutual friends, but actually meeting him one on one, I met him at a club. And can you tell us approximately when your relationship began, the romantic relationship? Which part um, I would say when you that met him I was like sleeping over. I was around him consistently for the beginning since like March. But I would say like the relationship actually started around November. So when you say March, you just have to make sure we put it in context of time. Are you talking about March of 2020? Correct. 
So mm-hmm. that's around when COVID is hitting. <laughs> yes, I'm at his house every day. I'm sleeping over every day. I'm around his family, et cetera. Um, et tell cetera, us a little bit about cetera. that family. Did you come to meet his mother, Linda Randolph? Or Rudolph, sorry. And and if any of you say espresso for your coffee, shame on you. Knock that shit off. It's espresso. Just saying. Let me ask you a question. I'm sorry. <laughs> Racist. Are you here to repeat that? Did you come to meet his mother, Linda? Yeah, me and her were pretty close, very close. Um, would you say that you considered her sort of like a second mom, or did you not have that type of close relationship? No, we had a very, very tight, tight relationship. Um, anything about Travis, like she would come to me, she would talk to me about it, things like that. All right. Um, and did you also feel comfortable enough to talk to her about things? 100%. What about um, any other relatives that were living in the home? Where was Travis living? I has- yeah, and for those of you that are following at home or haven't been or haven't been following at home, rather, uh, at the beginning it was it was mentioned in the opening statements that uh, she was married for a year and a half. I mean, well, she's married longer than that. She was dating the defendant for a year and a half, and during that year and a half, she never mentioned to him that she was actually married to someone else. Oh, Clossy. And mom lived where exactly, if you remember, what city? Lake Park. So that's the 550 Teak Drive address? Right. All right. Um, And how many bedrooms, if you recall, were in that residence? Mm, I believe three. And would that mean that Travis had his own bedroom? Yeah, he had his own room. His mom had her own room. And then his brother had his own room. Um, What was Travis's brother's name? Daryl. Does he sometimes go by the name DJ? Have yeah. You ever heard DJ. People yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what about your relationship with DJ Daryl? How was that at the time? Um, I guess he looked at me like a sister, he would say. Um, he said that plenty of times. Um, he's pretty to himself and quiet. So, um, You said that there came a point in your relationship where you spent a lot more time over at the Rudolph residence. Mm -hmm. Were you sleeping over at night? Yeah. Stuff there, sleeping over basically every night. It was COVID. There was really not much to do. So yeah, I was there a lot. Okay. And now keep um, this in mind. This comes up in cross examination. But did you believe at some point that you were in love with Mr. Rudolph Travis? Of course. Um, did you two start discussions at that point about future sort of marriage, children, things like that? You know, like in the beginning stages, you have conversations like that. And um, when I say it was 100 percent that serious at the time. No. But yeah, we did used to have little conversations like that back then. And did you believe yourself to be in a committed relationship where it was just the two of you and not an open relationship? As in, yeah, 100 percent. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, can you tell us um, whether or not during that time period, it was your belief that you were seeing Mr. Rudolph and that he was seeing you and that there should not have been any other persons involved in that relationship? Like your fucking husband? (laughs) That other guy? (laughs) Look at look at that. What is that? What is that catfish looking fucking grill thing going on there? <clears throat> oh, that's implant. That, that's injections. No doubt about I know. it. But her tongue is like poking out. Looks like. Oh Holy yeah, she she's being seductive. She thought she was in a committed relationship with him, and there was nobody else involved except for her husband. <laughs> well, your husband isn't involved. And again, I I have the only thing I've seen from this trial, other than what we've seen up to this point, is her cross examination, and. uh she gets grilled. Excuse me. She gets grilled pretty damn hard on that. Uh, you didn't bother to tell your boyfriend you were talking about getting married to and having children with that you were already married to somebody. Uh, this is coming out. Oh my lord in heaven. Um, I would say up until November, like we did have conversations to be truthfully honest that he did say like he wasn't ready for a relationship, and I respected it, but I just started to, you know, do me and just live my life as a 20 You do, you boo. Woman. And then he started to get to the point where he was like, okay, I do want you to be my girlfriend. 
So let me just have you explain that timeline wise a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so I please think you explain said the it. beginning of the relationship, or at least when you started romantic relations, mm-hmm. were around March of uh, 2020. Is that right. And you said in November of 2020 is when you're having the more serious conversation about you becoming his girlfriend. Yeah, like my birthday is October. So it was like October, November. That's when like more of the serious conversations like started happening and it became that. Um, did there come a point where there were any discussions about you moving into the Rudolph Ooh. residence with Travis and his relatives? No. So no. it was never going to be the type of situation where you sort of shocked up or moved in? If it was anything like that, it would be our own, but it wouldn't be at his mom's house, no. Okay. All right. Um, Mandy, that's the weird second comment you I made about shitting my go pants back in today. Time you're a little you're bit weird. To sort of what was happening, sort of in the weeks prior to this incident taking place, um, did there come a point that you had a surgery? Yes. And I as a result right. of that, were you still in pain, and did you need sort of, you know, to take care of yourself so that you weren't injured again or re-injured? Yes. Can you please not describe re-injured. Was that something that was no? What was that? Can she please describe the type of surgery that she had and why she decided for the extra double wide butt implants? (laughs) Okay. Spoiler. (laughs) Was it really butt implants? No, I was joking. (laughs) Well we, well, we do know from cross-examination that it was elective cosmetic surgery. So this re-injured thing doesn't uh, doesn't ring true. Um, mm. I, I think you might be right. Who knows? I, I have no idea. Right. Sure? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll find out. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know uh, what the surgery was exactly. Maybe we'll be able to piece it together as we go along. Catherine says, yes, it was butt implants. I really hope you're wrong. And if you're right, I hope Hayden knew that and he's not just messing with me. But yeah. Known to Mr. Right. Rudolph. Yes. Right. Um, what about your brother, Keyshawn? Yes. And what about his friends, Chris? Um, yeah, everyone knew. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. So. Travis took care of me. So uh, during the point where you're recovering from the surgery, you're boyfriend, Mr. Rudolph, at the time, was helping to take care of you. Yeah, for like the first one. Oh, no, Mandy, I forgot what about the LGBT by taking reps. care of you? Like physically helping you? Physically helping me, doing everything that the surgery required from the doctor. Like he was there helping me. Okay. Um, and during that point, did you, were you still in this boyfriend-girlfriend relationship or did there come to be a break in the relationship? I mean, if someone's with you every single day and they're helping you and you're not leaving my sight, I would say like it's a relationship to me. Okay. So let me ask it a little oh. simpler. Okay. I really wasn't um, trying so to. So you thought you were in a anymore. relationship. I just yeah. wanted to know, were you still in a relationship? With yeah. Them? Okay. Um, okay. So um, did there come a point um, and when did the surgery happen? Was that March or February of 2021? Um, it was of 2021, February, uh, February. Okay. Yeah. All right. So by the time this happened on April 6th, 7th there, um, were you fully recovered? Not at all. Okay. Were you still in pain from the surgery? hundred percent. Okay. Um, talk to us a little bit about the state of your relationship with Mr. Rudolph. By that, I mean, what was your status around that time? Did you still see each other? Did you still communicate? Um, he would pick me up. I had to sit like a certain type of way in the vehicle. So he would pick me up and things. Well, now, 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 before she continues to elaborate on the current status of her relationship with Travis Rudolph, I'd like her to explain a little bit about her, uh, the current state of her relationship with her husband. The fact that the prosecution is going so hard to avoid mentioning the fact she was married at this time mm-hmm. is a it's, a it's a thing. Skeezy, sneaky, skanky woman here. And now all the stuff that comes out on cross-examination is beginning to make a little more sense to me. It's like that. We weren't seeing each other as much. 
but um we were talking every single day and i feel like it was like kind of getting a little bit disconnected but nothing was ever said mm -hmm. as like we're not together oh excuse me um and again, I understand this is a terribly personal question, but did there come a point where there was a break in like physical interactions between you and Mr. Rudolph? Meaning, what about her and her husband? To engage in sexual activity while you were recovering from the surgery? No. Okay. Oh, Jesus. It's like, what? was there any time when you weren't knocking boots with your, with your, your paramour? What? With a side piece. Yeah, with I think it's effectively what he was. Yeah, oh, he wouldn't. Yeah. Oh come on! So were you not able to smash? Were you, we're not able to smash or knock boots with your boyfriend because you got you got butt implants or a butt job? Nope, we were still doing it. We could still do the butt stuff. And then, um, is that when you sort of noticed that there was a difference or a break in your connection? Um, I just noticed him. Yeah, kind of like there was just it was just different a little bit. OK, um, did you two have any conversations about the state of your relationship, what was going on and whether or not you would continue to remain in this relationship? Um, we did have a conversation. I kind of said, like, I think we should take a break. OK, and, she asked for the break. Well, you have the messages, which I'm sure you'll show. Um, I was kind of saying, like, I think we should take a break just for the simple fact that I wasn't seeing him and mm -hmm. it really wasn't a lot of communication between us now. So, um, but that's how it led to the day of the incident. Okay. Now, um, before we get into the text messages about the, the conversation with the break, um, when this conversation about a break happened, were you still continuing to communicate the I love yous and all of that? Of course. The, the relationship mm. didn't actually break. No, um, nothing was ever said. Like, and even a break, I wouldn't say was breaking up. What? That's literally what the right. fucking so word means. Going to approach a witness. Judge Please, we know you. Were you for Ross? Twenty. It's already been provided to defense counsel. I do not believe you have an objection. It would be text messages between the defendant and Miss Dominique Jones. All right, yes, you may uh, approach. And uh, is there any objection to admitting that into evidence? I just object right. to her. States mm. exhibit just her, not her testimony, just her. Submitted without objection. And that's text messages. All right, thank you. What the hell is with the prosecution's inability to basically manage to use a microphone, even accidentally at some point? Does this accurately reflect sort of what was going on in the relationship and the communications you had via text messages about it wasn't a relationship? The other things you just it was a fucking booty call. Correct. Thank you. Just Thank you for admitting booty call. You, you may. You may. I like this judge. She's a good judge. I'm just trying to work out which actor he reminds me of, and the closest I can get is Ed Harris, but that's not the one that I'm thinking of. Hmm. Sure. Sure. And uh, find the pointer so she can use that. The wooden, the wooden pointer. Mike, where's that? Oh, okay. There we go. <coughs> Watch oh. your step getting down, ma'am. Miss Jones. Miss Jones, you can. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry. I don't need her ever. Well, they can see the colors anyway. I'm a judge. I'm closer than they are, and I can't see it. I'll try if you like. You want the lights down? Sure. I wish we could hear what they were, what the prosecution was saying. Text messages. Focus. Focus. 
I can see. All right. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> I have 2020 vision. So I. Not, uh, I can't see it. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Who so I the first message here in blue, can you tell us if that is a message from you or Mr. Rudolph? Travis. So that is Mr. Rudolph. He will be represented in the blue um, messaging um, as we continue. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So Mr. Rudolph writes you on, um, according to this, April 6, 2021, at about 12.15 a.m., saying, I'm sorry. Yes. What was going mm. on there? Just basically, I was just telling him I felt like <clears throat> the relationship has been like, you're not coming to see me. You know, I have surgery. You're in Miami every weekend. Just like, you know, girlfriend relationship things. Like, I just was feeling a certain type of way. And he responded and he said, I'm sorry. Feeling a certain that type of way. conversation that you're talking Could you about be less was over the phone. It was a direct phone and more vague, please. Right? Um, Prior to the I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, I don't remember if we talked on the phone or if there was more messages, but that was what that was from. I guess right. pulled memory runs in the family. Respond, is that you in uh, green there saying, okay, Travis. Correct. And then his response, I'm not going to argue with you and what you wrote me. I agree with that. If you need a break, I'll give you that because, spelled B-U-C-Z, which I assume is just because, shorthand. Is that correct? Correct. Lately, all we have been doing is disagreeing with, an, uh, with other. Do you remember that being the response? Correct. That's when I told him, I think we should take a break. Okay. Um, and then, of course, you said, I agree as well. Okay. Perfect. Okay. No, she said, I ugly. And you thought it said, I agree. <laughs> Something like that. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It's just as plausible as those. Yeah, more so. Another message shortly after the last one you just sent, this time at 1229.56 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, and is that a message again in blue from Mr. Uh, Rudolph? Yes. And that's the, I love you. And you also respond in kind, I love you too, correct? Correct. All right. Um, and uh, really next message from Mr. Rudolph is you're going to need. Um, did you, do you know what that's about? You're I'm going to need? Question mark. You're going to bed. The second message is where he clarifies the need for bed. Okay, got it. So need was an incorrect word and he meant bed, meaning are you going to bed? Correct. Open Bob's. Show milk. Then it looks like he sends oh, another Jesus. message, which is just sort of like a period. Like Send Bob's and for Jean. Okay. Yeah. And then you respond, not just yet. Is that correct? Correct. So um, just to clarify, this is still early morning hours of the 6th, the day this incident started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So then the next message you get mm -hmm. from Mr. Rudolph is, okay, W-Y-D. What does that mean? What are you doing? All right. And you respond, I'm watching Netflix. Correct. Turn your camera on, Hayden. And then another message I'm from Mr. Rudolph, I'm about to lay down. <laughs> okay. And then I'm respond, still trying to pick okay, dinner. Well, we'll talk. It's 9 o'clock and all the shops are closing. I already ate all mine. What's your problem? I know. Before I did. Yeah, well, I had to put a four-year-old down, too. Okay. Then uh, it like, seems you received another message from Mr. Put her Rudolph. down, put her down, or just, like, put her to sleep? Uh, she doesn't fall asleep unless she's cuddled up in the crook of my arm. Mm. Yes. All right. This time around 12.29 a.m., and he's asking you. So not, like, a lethal mark, injection put her down. Correct. No. It, it's both adorable and really annoying. It is. So I know. Correct. I've been there. Then the next message from Mr. Rudolph. Okay, I was planning on going home tomorrow after I get done working out. Was trying to see if I could maybe spend some time with you. Do you recall that? Yes. And then your response, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Lazy, the only person mm -hmm. did is the All football right. player. It's okay, we'll remind you. All right. So no, he's, then the next he's, message he's from Mr. Rudolph is, okay, <laughs> is I'll call you tomorrow. He's a defendant. Oh, is that correct? Yes. Oh, the defendant is the football player. Oh, right. And then you eventually say goodnight as well. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. 
Okay. And then the next message from Mr. Rudolph is on the afternoon. It says 12.56 p.m. now. Yeah. On the April uh, 6th, one of those Good afternoon. Yes. <laughs> It's not a beer mug, it's a bourbon coke mug, you idiot. <laughs> oh, come on, that is such a beer stein that it's not funny. Um, actually, what I really want is one of the really big ones that's shaped like a shoe. Okay, and you respond to Mr. Rudolph's request. I've got a really big one, but it's not shaped like a shoe. Good afternoon of your own. Yes. And then Mr. Rudolph, that's not a euphemism, uh, types, I meant a glass. Uh, WYD, what is that? What are you doing? Okay, and you respond, just left my massage, WBU, what's that mean? What about you? Okay, and then Mr. Rudolph responds, just got back to four spot from working out. Did you understand? Oh, the that boy was... toy that she told to shoot the shit out of, that was her brother. Okay, well, what did you understand? Hope it wasn't her boy right. toy. She told her brother to shoot his shit from being with his friend. To be and fair, I, yes. with this chick, we don't quite know. Then the next message from Mr. Rudolph, movies, question mark. Uh, what did you interpret that to mean at the time? Um, do I want to go to the movie since the previous message said that? Okay. And um, okay, what you want to see is your response. Correct. Okay. She looks those guys response, in Phantom Menace you know, that lived in the swamp mark. that Jar Jar Correct. Binks was part of. Exactly. That guy. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. The Gungans. Yeah. The gun Gungans, that's what they were. Yeah. yeah. She looks like a yes. Gungan. Fit trial. Respond, honestly, I don't want to watch that. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And he responds, me either. And I want to see something intriguing. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you respond, where are you going to pick me up? Or did you want me to drive? The Gungans, not the hut. Has had surgery. So it was He's not big enough to, drive, to be a hut. So he would pick me up sometimes. Okay. Mm, give her another few years. Close your mouth, you fucking mouth breather. Now the Thank response you. of Mr. Rudolph to your last request, Same. I was planning on yell, corrected to two. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you know what that meant? Um, I guess. <laughs> what is this podcast trial? He was planning to pick me up, I guess. I don't know. At the time. So you said, okay, and then his next response is, I'm home. Is that correct? Okay, so yeah, I guess I'm driving at this point. And that was what you understood. And what yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm not that reading good. that, but it's funny. <clears throat> So you then ask, okay, so what's up? And he responds, you were supposed to call me when you leave the uh, Lacey, okay. one charge of murder, three charges of attempted murder. Yes. The guy mm -hmm. has yet to take a stand. I don't think we've even seen him in the court thus far, have we? They've showed, him, showed him, they showed him a couple, they've showed him like like the back of his head a couple of times. Okay. <clears throat> but basically, this is the chick that started it all. She's the one that sent her brother over there to have her side piece, the football player. Um, basically... She said shoot these shit up, but I think she probably meant for him to be roughed up rather than wind up in a pine box. But oh. um, it was yeah. her brother's friend that wound up dead in his car. So hopefully that helps. A message from Mr. Rudolph, but I found the movie I want to see. Is that correct? Yes. And your response, what's it called? And the response from him, nobody. Is that correct? Correct. And that was oh, nobody's a good movie. Conversation um, from the start of early morning hours of the sixth through the seventh when this incident occurred. Correct? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I turned my ca my camera off because I was eating ketchup straight out of the packet and so I didn't so want people to see that because I'm ashamed. With Mr. Rudolph and with Mr. Rudolph's mother and his uh, brother Daryl. Mm -hmm. Did Mr. Rudolph have any other siblings that you were aware of? Yes. Who was that? Here. Did he? Did you have any husbands that he was aware of? Also, that's a sister then. Mm -hmm. That's yes. really stuck in your craw, isn't it? And um, how it is. How did you describe the relationship with Tony? <laughs> Um, me and Tony were really close. Like, if I had any issues with Travis, I would call her and talk to her about it and things like that. Um, and was it the kind of relationship where um, you would expect to get good advice from Tony? Yes. Okay. Her um, name is Tyranny. How much good advice can she give you? Um, with a Rudolph family. Is it really? Yeah. Yes. Um, in August. Her sister's name is Tyranny. Of the COVID year, so that be 2020. I threw her birthday And it's party. spelled like Tyranny. Um, Christmas. <laughs> Um, my mother and I attended their Christmas party, and then February. And people the wonder why we call them German Shepherds. Holy shit! We went. She never stood a chance. Wedding. My mom, my little brother, and me. Okay. So Tyranny got married um, earlier in the year of 2021. Correct. We were all present for that event. Correct. 
Is it fair to say that at that time you felt that you and the Rudolphs were a family? I mean, I'm not inviting someone to my wedding if I'm not in a relationship with them or a family. Right. But how did you feel about it? Yes, 100%. Um, and I'm going to try to um, bump it to 1.5. At that point that you were in good standing with all of them, meaning uh, let's start first with um, mom, Linda Rudolph. Mm-hmm. I believe you had a good relationship at the point prior to this incident happening. Yeah, me and her were the closest, 100%. Okay. What about with Tyranny, the sister? Of course. Yeah. And Daryl. If it's too fast, let me and know. Daryl, very distant. We didn't really have a relationship like that. It was just more of a high by basis, things like that. So you said Daryl sort of kept mostly to himself. Is that why? Yeah, he kind of was to himself. Like, but when he would come out, he would speak, he would say hi, and, you know, we would have conversations. Okay. And were you familiar with the fact that the Rudolph residents had surveillance videos um, on and inside the residence? Correct. Um, and did you know about the fact that there was a ring camera um, that was at the door? Correct. Um, and at this time, Judge State would be entering into evidence. Uh, states 32 it's the entirety of the ring video from april 6 2021 when miss jones arrived to april 7 2021 i believe that's without objection all right and you said that's 32 yes sir. okay states uh, exhibit 32 the uh ring camera recording she's a business says she's wearing a 650 dollar bracelet look up like h bracelet uh amazon her man wearing an amaz bracelet i thought it was a tiffany it's like tiffany color so i thought it was a tiffany bracelet so i knew it was expensive but so Ms. If it's a Hermes and it's only six fifty, that's like poor people money for Hermes. Yes. Yeah. And what was the intention when you were there? What was the purpose of meeting up? I just missed him. I haven't seen him in a while. It's been a month, and that's basically what it was. Okay. And was it still your intention that you two would be going to the movies that night? Yeah. Approximately what time in the day did you get there? Was it still light outside? Yeah, it was still light. The movie was around like eight or nine or something. So I got there probably around like five six. Okay. And when you got there, was Mr. Rudolph home? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Oh, it is. It is. What about yeah. his other relatives? Was his brother Daryl present? No one was there. Just me and him. Was his other brother uh, Daryl present? That you left the residence and went to a store. Yes, we went to the liquor store by his house. And what did you purchase from that location, if you recall? I'm a bottle of liquor. I'm not sh- exactly sure which one it was, but we bought like a bottle of liquor. I purchased it. Okay. So you purchased the item. Um, and actually, I want to pause here uh, a little bit to talk about the financial situation in your relationship. Of course. Um, was Mr. Rudolph financially supporting you at this point in your relationship? Since the day I met him, he has never financially supported me. So you have always supported yourself. You married. I should hardly. And Mr. Yeah. Rudolph, you mentioned that he was. Six fifty is actually like really cheap for a. a yeah. So. For Ms. So thing, every time you yeah. would spend time over with Mr. Rudolph, it would be at Linda Rudolph's residence. Correct, because he didn't have his own place. Okay. Um, and you said on this particular day you purchased the the liquor, the item that you um wanted that day. Correct. Correct. Liquor. So Hell, it killed her. Happened, after the purchase of the liquor, did you return back to the Rudolph residence? Yes. Um, and were things. Uh, how were things with good like we were just laughing happy you know i haven't seen him he hasn't seen me he missed me i missed him everything was good like when we got actually got back to the house um i need to ask you prior to this day was your relationship plagued by any accusations of cheating or infidelity at all um i kind of felt that way just because he was in miami for so long and obviously i had my surgery i had to be home so i did kind of feel like i didn't know where we stood even though you know someone can tell you something but i kind of felt like i didn't really know where we stood at so you were getting the i love you's but you weren't sure if he was actually committed correct um, did you try to have a conversation with Mr. Rudolph about that, the insecurity that you were feeling? That was prior to me coming to his house. So that was like the text messages prior to the phone calls, prior when he's in Miami and I'm at home. I would like ask him questions like, what are you doing on there for so long? Things like that. You're not coming to see me. I just had surgery. You know, regular girlfriend questions I would ask and stuff like that. But that day, it really wasn't any issues. Like we were happy to see each other. We were just vibing at the beginning. Okay. So after you come back from the liquor store, do you enter the residence? And if so, what do you do inside? Yeah. So we come into the residence and like we like to play Uno. Like, we're competitive, so we started playing. <laughs> yeah, it's a game. Uno, right? the most competitive so, um, of games. Like, oh, let's play Uno for shots. So, like, hey, there's been many a divorce over Uno. Take the shot. So that's what we started to do. And that day, do you recall who was winning or losing? I was winning. Okay, so then Mr. Rudolph would have been the one taking the shots. Correct. I, I, I so then he just punched you in the overall. fucking face because he didn't want to lose so Uno, right? Where Mr. Rudolph left the bedroom um, and left his cell phone behind. So oh, my bitch is the kind of guy that tries to pull up Uno. And um, Reve- Darryl, I, um, his, uh, his draw four on the last curve. So when he pulled up, his phone was on the couch and he went outside. By him, you mean Travis's phone? Correct. Um, and tell us a little bit about the relationship at that point. Um, was it um, the kind of situation where, um, actually, let me back up a little bit. Did Mr. Rudolph have a password to his cell phone? Yes. And was it the kind of relationship where he had shared that password? Gee, with Pastor you Flash. Months ago? You've you mistaken me for someone who gives a shit like at this phone. point. Okay, so on the day of this incident, when you entered Mr. Rudolph's phone, that was as a result of this trust relationship where he had offered that password? Yes, a couple months prior to that. But thank you for I was your feeling, input. Like, oh, I might be in a relationship and things like that. And he's like, all right, and we started establishing that we were going to be in a relationship. He gave me the password to his phone. Okay, so on April 6th of 2021, when you entered the phone, it was with the password that you had already received. Correct. Um, and up until that point, your belief is that you're in this committed relationship and you're happy with your man. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's fair to say. 
even if you go through ups and downs or you're uncertain, I still believe like we're together and, you know, things happen. But yeah, I'm still committed 100%. Why did you enter Mr. Rudolph's school? Because I felt uncertainty for that whole month. I didn't see him. What? So it was your impression at that point. You're happy you don't know. You might be seeing someone else. Right. When you entered Mr. I love you, Pastor Pastor Flash. Is that what you want to hear? Anything that caused you concern for your relationship? Yes. Um, (laughs) And what um, did you see? I seen stuff. I know you might not want to get into the details because obviously this is very personal, but did you see evidence of cheating? Yes. Are we talking about Yes, in my own marriage because I had a husband. husband. Everything. There he is. Um, And how did that make you feel? At that point, I'm just like, all right, it's time for me to go. So I went into the room to go grab my things. And when I went to go grab my things, he had came back into the house and seen because his phone was laid out and seen that I went through his phone. And um, how was that interaction when you realized that you had actually seen the evidence of the, the infidelity? Um, so after I seen that, I went into his room because I had like a bag that I had in his room. I picked up the bag and I started trying to walk out. And he's like, no, you're not going anywhere. Like, we're going to talk about it. Fair to say at this point, Ms. Jones, that you were upset about the fact that your boyfriend was cheating. I was upset. And I, but you guys have to understand, it's been a month that I haven't really seen him. It's been a month that like, I kind of already had accusations in my head. So like, I was upset, but I was more hurt, not like upset as an angry. It was just more hurt. Like, let me just leave. Like at this point, if this is what you want to do. I'm just going to go. Okay. So did you communicate that with Mr. Rudolph that you wanted to leave his residence? A million times. <laughs> and what do you mean by that? I know a million is obviously an exaggeration, but where you repeat- They're all getting anxious now and they're all talking he's faster. I might have to slow it, get, slow it down again here. Times? Because he's blocking me from mm. the door. So at this point, you're in his bedroom? Correct. And he's standing at the end, the doorway to exit the bedroom? At first, he wasn't standing at the door. He had put me like in the corner kind of, and he was standing in front of me. So I'm like telling him like, back up, I'm leaving. Like, and he's like, I want to talk, I want to talk, I want to talk. And I'm like, there's nothing to talk about. So then he, he got up, he moved out of my face. And then that's when I, I grabbed the trophy and I said, I'll hit you with the trophy if you don't get out of my face. And he was like, you know what, you good, walk out. And then I ended up being able to walk out of the room. Okay. So when you grabbed the trophy, I assume that's something that belonged to Mr. Rudolph. Yes. Okay. And you picked it up in a sort of threatening way to try to get him out of your way. Is that what you're testifying? Correct. All right. Did you actually hit him with a trophy at that point? No, oh, not hit him with a trophy at all. So essentially, when you armed yourself with the trophy and threatened, he gave in. He said you could leave. Yeah, he said to leave. Okay. So did you attempt to leave the residence at that point? Yeah, I was grabbing my stuff and I started walking out. And then that's when the name calling and the altercation started. Ex and when there is no Maritime Monday today because we're doing this. As much as you can recall, um, what was being said by Mr. Rudolph? I, I know it's embarrassing, but we no, just disrespectful things. I'm just gonna it's just disrespectful. That's it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. He just said disrespectful things to me, got in my face, calling me the B word, and just being disrespectful. More of the story. So when you say disrespectful, was he comparing you to other women? It could be that, yes. Not could it be that or not? The jury just sort of needs to know what's happening, right? Comparing me to other women, um, trying to lower my self-esteem because I just had surgery, like and it was cosmetic, right? This wasn't like heart surgery. It was cosmetic, yes. It was cosmetic surgery. And so he was picking on that fact that you had done cosmetic surgery? Correct. And you said he was calling you the B word, I assume the B word. Calling me a bitch, telling me get the fuck out, your honor. I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm about to curse or not. If that's what he said, then yes. Okay, calling me a bitch, get the fuck out of my house. Like, I don't fucking like you anyway. Like, just back to back to back to back to back. Um, and at this point, I'm walking out, like, going to the door, like, leaving. I'm saying things, too. I'm not going to sit here and act like I didn't say anything back. I'm saying stuff back to him, too. But the initial start of the whole argument was him. Okay. Um, I assume that you all his fault. hurt by that. Oh, of course. Yeah, I was hurt, 100%. Were you also becoming angry? I wasn't becoming angry until we got outside and it started getting like a little bit more physical. That's when I started getting angry. I'm more so just like, let me just get my stuff and leave. And whatever, if we're going to call names, we're going to call names, whatever. But like, I didn't really get that upset until we got outside and it started a little bit physical. So tell us about that physical interaction outside. What led to you? All right, I'm going to slow this back down to 1.25. So I think this is important. So my whole point after I seen his phone was to leave. So I'm walking out to leave. So it's not like just like a, have to leave his room, go through the living room and then go through the walkway. So during this entire time, he's yelling, screaming in my face, calling me this, calling me that. So once we get outside, I'm, I can't really, I'm going to be 100% honest. I can't remember exactly how everything went down. You guys have the footage, so I'm, I'm not sure exactly how everything played out. So did there come a point where it became physical to the point where you were physically hit by Mr. Rudolph or manhandled in some way? Correct. Um, and can you tell us if- oh, so okay. Now, this is, is the first allegation of ground. physical violence, like physical yes. abuse. Yes. <clears throat> Um, how did that make you feel? Um, I was furious. Okay. And why? Mandy. Because um, his brother's yelling. You finally get a Maritime Monday off? Chill. Like, he, he sees how erratic and how crazy he's acting over. I saw your like artwork that. earlier so, this morning. Yeah, I started getting furious. And I started putting my hands back on Your me. library so artwork. So after being um, put on the ground by Mr. Rudolph, did there come a point, like you said, that you were physically hitting him back? Yeah. And were you hitting him back in response to things Wait. that he was saying? Not even things that he was saying. He was telling me to get my things out of his house. 
Like he's like, get all the, all that shit you bought, get it out of my house or whatever. So I'm trying to walk into the house, get my stuff, and he's like trying to block me. So the, I started hitting him, like move, like. He's gonna lose it. <clears throat> no, no. So this this is the prosecution. This is the one that's trying to put Mr. Defendant behind bars. This is the one who is weaving the, the story, the narrative of the abusive mofo who is crazy and just shooting random people. And uh, they've got uh, Michelle Obama here on the stand. And, you know, she's, uh, they're saying, you know, and, and, you know, he was hitting you, so you were hitting him back. And she literally just said, no, I wasn't hitting him back. He was blocking me from getting my shit out of his house, so I, I started hitting him. She's just admitted to being the aggressor in this situation. She didn't say, no, he was hitting me. He was blocking me from getting in the house, so I started hitting him. She has just admitted to starting this shit. Can I just say that if a certain blonde was that dumb, that's a certain other trial would have been over a lot quicker. <laughs> like, let me yep, get my you can say it. Go home, <clears throat> and you can't even hear his brother saying, "Like, let her do get her stuff so she can leave." Like, leave, like telling me to leave at that point. All right. So I'm gonna uh, with this uh, court's permission. You know, she doesn't see an issue with it as well. All right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. She started hitting him. She just said that. That was that was not very smart of her. Nope. She started hitting him, and then she or orchestrated for, what, four people to go and kick his ass? Or shall we say, shoot up his shit? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to be surprised if there aren't charges after the, at the end of this. We need Drex on the panel for this witness. Drex will be a separate uh, panel member. Well, not a panel member. We'll be doing a separate interview with him on Friday. Drex will be a guest for my Friday stream. There you go, chat. There's a challenge for you. Take a take this video from Lauren Crime. Cut it down into like five minutes so that he can show it to Drex. Yeah. Watch Drex. Oh, oh sorry. I forgot on. captions. Um, yes, we can. Yes. We can have captions. Yes. It looks like you're on your cell phone and uh, having a conversation. Was that with Mr. Rudolph or someone else? I'm not sure. Um, you have to call your friend. Legal lemon. Oh, just about eight hours of craziness. No, I don't know who I was talking to. I'm gonna be honest. Answer the question. Oh, does that refresh your recollection as to whether or not that's Mr. Rudolph on the other end of the phone? I I can't call if that's him or not. All right, let's go to the next clip, please. Yeah. It's interesting that her and her so brother have the same mannerisms. I'm gonna be honest when I, I lie through my teeth. I don't know. So you would have been ringing the doorbell or something. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm waiting for him to open the door. And at this point in the day, nothing has happened yet as far as this argument between the two of you that got physical, correct? No, nothing's happened. And I guess that's Travis opening the door. Okay. So it sounds like you're giving another woman some advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably on the phone with my homegirls and I'm talking to her and then, yeah. Okay. All right. So at some point the door is open and you said that was by Mr. Rudolph? Yeah. Yes. Is that Mr. Rudolph? Yes. Um, that's us coming back from the liquor store. Mm, 
Liquor. Liquor, I barely knew him. She hid in there. Oh! What the fuck was that? Putting your hands on Mr. Rudolph. Yeah, I said it. And in this clip that we're watching, is this the persecution? That indirect response. Yes. Correct. Okay, they've done this to get ahead of this because I knew what was coming. Yeah, she, he called her a bitch, so she started swinging, and that, that's yep. exactly what they're doing. Right? Hey, they're getting in front of it because if they don't show it, the defense is going to show it. They're going to bring it up. So yeah, they, they they're going to create this narrative that's you know like okay yeah so she. She was abusing him this one time, but oh, I want to see. I, I definitely want to hear how they spin this, because that yeah. was the shit right there. That was such an instigation that it's not funny. Holy crap! And who's the other dude? All right, I'm gonna go back in time here, like Huey Lewis in the news. One more, one more cycle, circle, 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 circle. Stop circling, God damn it. All right. Well, there we go. Oh, it's, it takes it's, time to build up the however many giga, gigawatts of energy to go back. It does. Uh, yeah. When, when I'm gonna take this. So she put her hands on him first. Mm. That's his backup. They never fight fair. So, and, and she did that because he called her a bitch. Gee, whatever would whatever would prompt him to do that. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, well, now why isn't this? Why isn't it doing anything? No man. This clip that we're watching um, was that in direct response to him calling you a bitch? Correct. If you could let it play. Now, who's the other guy? Uh, these two gentlemen. That's why they're showing it. Now, um, caught them in movement. They're trying to show that there were two blokes. Yeah. That's Daryl trying to hold Travis back. That's me trying to go in there and get the rest of my things. Daryl, okay. that's DJ, Travis. This is brother. Right. Okay. So um, before this, if we could back it up a little bit to what happened on the lawn of the Rudolph residence with yourself. And that's his uh, brother, Rudolph Travis. His brother wasn't putting up with any shit from her. Clearly, and pushed her on the ground. He slams me to the ground. And is that what uh, you're talking about? his brother is trying to hold him back and pull him off? Correct. He's saying that's not a slam. That another that, clip. That's she got He's pushed. Saying, Stop! Yeah. Like you're tripping. Keep going. Yeah, that was not a slam. Hulk Hogan does slams. Not that's that. what you're yeah. talking about. The stop and the pushing him. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Can we see the next video, please? Is that Daryl? Yes. Now tell us, are you still inside the Rudolph residence at this point? No. Continue. It looks like Mr. Rudolph just picked up a brick. What happened there with that brick? What? Do you remember ever having that in your possession? Um, I was throwing things that could have been in my possession. Um, after I got slammed, I got very, very, very upset. So that is something that could possibly have been in my possession. A brick was in your possession? You picked up a fucking brick? Are you serious? A brick was in her possession? You just randomly have a brick in your possession? She's trying to make it sound like she picked up the brick after they threw her on the ground. I don't see enough time for that to have taken place. If that brick was in her possession, that was in her bag the, the whole time. And that's premeditated. The hell? I'm going to bump this back just a wee little bit here, because that was weird. 822.11 is where we can read. Oh, I guess it's not going to let us. All right, I'm going to bump this back. Just And it's going to buffer and just deal with it. Oh, it didn't buffer. How cool. How cool is that? Wait. Uh, let me readjust the size. There we go. One more time. Uh, yeah, see? You push it. I, I'm allowed one, one five-second either way thing, I guess. And that's just because we're uh, watching an extra. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a second. That could have been in my possession. Um, after I got slammed, I got very, very, very upset. So that is something that could possibly have been in my possession. All right. Is one of the things that you threw an emotional support brick? Yes, that was way before all of this. <laughs> this was inside the residence. Correct. This is when I first went through the phone and everything, and in his room is when I threw the cell phone. 
was this uh, throwing it at him as you're accusing him of the cheating or sometime after? No, I just knew there was videos and things like that of me and him and his phone. So I just threw it because I was Did like, I was done. Yeah, because he, she was accusing him of cheating. Videos? Right. Yeah, of me and him. Mm-hmm. If you could continue to play. <clears throat> She frustrates me. She disgusts me. This argument that's happening now, that is not between you and Mr. Rudolph. No, I'm not there anymore. Okay, so you have left the residence. Um, yeah, like, I don't, who, I don't see the cars right there. Okay. And you had parked in the front of the residence. Right? Yeah, I always park in the front of the residence. At this time, you've left. I left. Next class. Now, this interaction between um, Travis Rudolph and Daryl Rudolph, was that out of the ordinary as far as you could tell between them, their relationship? Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. When you left the residence, was Daryl Rudolph, as far as you could tell, upset with Travis about what had happened with you? 100%. All he kept saying is, let that girl go home, leave her alone. And he was holding like Travis back the whole time. Okay. So... football field that's not <laughs> what we saw though and again, you're not at the Rudolph residence. That's no, just, I don't, she is not there so how I the fuck does she know someone. i've never seen these videos right who's the uh young woman in the phone that's his mom yeah. linda um, the young woman is his mom between you and mr rudolph in the front of the residence it had caused i guess whatever decorative lights were there to some of them came out of the ground probably i'm not sure right um and you again are not present at the residence when this happened at all so why the hell are you showing her this video that's a good point she can't attest to anything in it nothing What do you mean? Okay. Back, go back, play the whole thing. That is the doctrine of completeness. If someone introduces uh, some evidence that isn't the complete video, the complete document, the complete audio, whatever it is, you can insist, you can demand that they show the entire thing from beginning to end on the doctrine of completeness. And that's what they've done here. We, we want to see the complete video. Here's the, the guys showing up. When your brother and his friends made their way to Mr. Rudolph's residence, were you at Mr. Rudolph's residence? No. Where were you if you were um, anywhere um, near here? I was in Dory. So you were not in. Um, where is this? Lake Park? This is Lake oh, Park. Oh, wait. So Lorraine Dory, W., I accidentally blocked you. Right? Hang on. I'll unblock you. And, um, the <laughs> Shit. Lorraine got in the way. <laughs> she got caught in the crossfire. Um, do you see your brother in this frame? Hang yeah. on, Lorraine, while I liberate you from blocked him. Up and over his head? Correct. Um, and you referred to um, Keyshawn. Uh, is that the brother? Yes. Uh, and you said he's younger than you. Is that correct? Yeah, he's 23. Uh-huh. Is uh, Keyshawn um, a, a person that runs around with a game? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh, but... What the fuck was that? What was that laughing shit? You horrible woman. Want to be heard? Yes. Go ahead. What a horrible woman. Yeah. 
Ms. Well, no, that was Ms. Ellis asked about uh, rounding up the posse. Well, yes, but it started with Ms. Perwet asking that question. No, well, I they got him. I think it started with Ms. Ellis' question on direct. Um, yeah. Ellis, so you know that is correct. I'm sorry. You did say posse, exactly. All right, so yeah. go ahead. Direct quote, Judge, as Ms. Perlette was uh, doing her cross-examination, that I just said those words. But okay, I'll move on. Thank you. So um, your brother, um, do you recognize the friends that he's with? Yes, he's been friends with them since eighth grade. And were you the kind of sister that was involved enough in your brother's life so that you would know his friends? Yes, we are close, all of us. Okay, so you were close with not just your brother, but who else can you see in this frame? Tyler, Sebastian. Lorraine W., Chris you have been of, liberated uh, from blockdom. The, you're me, back. Personally. Sorry about that. You got caught in the crossfire. It's me. He was kind of new. So your closest relationships, obviously your brother and then Sebastian and Tyler. Correct. Okay. Um, and on the day of this incident, you said they all knew about your surgery? Yes. Um, and did you at some point communicate with your brother about what had happened between you and Mr. Rudolph? Yes. Is that the reason they were there? Correct. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the messages that were communicated. And if we could stop this exhibit, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. You can probably do it on top. Only. So um, we, the jury's already seen some messages that came in through your brother where you were communicating with him something about shooting his shit up. Do you remember sending that message? Yeah, and I, and I just want to clarify that if I can. Sure. Well, that's not the proper objection, but it is going to be a narrative, so you're going to have to I will ask a question. Thank you. <clears throat> Tell the members of the jury what you meant. Okay, so sometimes you yeah, get let's give you time to fix up your story. Sometimes you say things that you really genuinely don't right. mean. And if I can go back in time and not say that 100%, a million percent, I would. Because just like I love my brother, I love Travis as well at the time. And I would never want to see nothing bad happen to neither one of them. So it was a, it was a horrible, 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 horrible choice of words that I should have never said. And I take full accountability and full responsibility. Um, if the situation never happened, the words would have never meant anything. But since it did, it's like a stigma on me, kind of, because I said those words. But my adrenaline was just rushing because of the incident that just occurred. And I did make a wrong choice of words. And I can stand up and I can say I do feel guilty about Hang that. On. And you I was pause for a second? That. Are we just going to skim over the fact that that video clearly showed her there at the same time as her brother and the other friends? And he swore black and blue that she wasn't there? Yeah. We're just going to ignore that. Okay. All right. Move on. 100%. <laughs> think at any point after sending that message that your yeah. brother would actually shoot Travis. If you know. Overrule. If you know. So I can speak? Yes. Yeah. So, no, you're fine. So when I got to the house, Keyshawn was still there. Keyshawn. I don't know if everyone knows that. And he did not bring his gun. So I knew for a fact that if you're not going to bring your gun, how are you going to shoot someone? And you knew your brother had a license to carry with someone else's gun or their friend's gun or something like that a firearm. yes what the? and you said that you know he did not bring his gun how did you know that because before I went, he literally like when i got there he's like you and travis are tripping like y'all y'all doing too much like you know how relationships are like people can see out better than you can see in if that makes sense huh? no it doesn't you get heated in a relationship and you do things in a relationship but other people might look at it and be like you guys are just overly reacting or you guys are overly tripping so when i got there his response to me was just like you guys are tripping like it's not this serious like i'm about to just go over there and like call at him because he felt like he had that relationship with him so his gun was on his chest drawer which i've stated several times and i've seen it before he left the house did your brother have any other firearms to your knowledge no so yeah. when he left the residence was that the one in delray correct your brother was not armed? No. Okay. Um, did you check on your brother throughout the night to see what had happened between him and Travis, if he actually talked to him? When I started calling, nobody was answering. So I'm on the phone, like, with one of my good friends, and I'm just like, they probably went to go see some girls or something. I'm never thinking in my brain at this moment in time that anything like this will happen because, like I said, I'm in a relationship with this person. I'm not I sad, Raven. Right? I'm hungry. I, I still haven't decided what to eat to until an hour later. Family. So... I'm just personally thinking like, okay, they probably talked and it's squashed out because it's hours after at this point. So I'm thinking like, it's just squashed at this point. Um, if I may approach a witness with state 17, <clears throat> it's gonna be an excerpt from her phone extraction, her call list for the relevant days. 
April uh, 6, 2021 through April 7, 2021. You may. Say again? Sure. This is, these are not the documents that we went through? These are not the documents you're looking for. All right. Move along. <laughs> She's a hot mess. Oh, all right, let's see. Uh, yeah, we got about 45 minutes left of this. Then we'll start on day two with the cross-examination of this crazy woman. What's going to happen? Well, well, we'll do this while the judge is like uh, being quiet. What's going to happen is I've already set it up to automatically feed me into the, uh, the the next stream, which will be day two. We're going to do a completely separate stream. But between one and two, when we shut this down, I'm going to completely reboot my computer so that everything goes fresh and uh, we're not like laggy and buffery like we are now. Oh, Don Wells, goodbye. We we have to get rid of you too. That sucks. Nicola, welcome back. Lorraine W. Yeah, thank you. No, you, no, no. No, that that you just got caught in the crossfire. Um, um, I believe. So yes, you may approach. Go ahead. You were innocent. And thank you. And uh, that's admitted into evidence without objection. And what was what was the number again? Thank you. State seventeen. Thank you. Could you tell us whether or not you recognize no, your, this is uh, fun. phone's Brr. call log from the time period, um, April 6, 2021 to April 7, 2021, probably even a little bit into the 8th. So what, this is just me basically calling people? I'm just asking you, do you recognize that as yours? I don't recognize this document at all. So I know you didn't create the document. I just wanted to know if this has your information on there. Okay, yeah. That's okay. my name and email and my phone number. Okay, all right. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, now you mentioned that you made several calls on the day of this incident. Um, what happened to the calls related to that? Did you make all those calls on FaceTime, regular phone connection, or any regular. other apps? Do you recall? Um, I don't recall. Nobody recalls Some anything calls on the prosecution. On this particular phone log, it doesn't mean that you didn't make that call, correct? Correct. Now, um, did you ever delete any calls? No, and I gave my phone. All right. When asked, I will talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Did you delete anything at all from your phone prior to handing over your phone to law enforcement? Yes. Yeah, so once I realized mm -hmm. Travis actually shot at them, I deleted the message where I said shoot his shit up because now it looks ridiculous that this actually. You think? <laughs> she tells him to shoot up the shit. There's a gunfight. Then she decides to delete the text because it looks really bad. You think? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I got nothing for that one, Aiden. Uh, help me out here. I'm. Uh, well, I, I, I want to respond to legal layman. Isn't that evidence tampering? I'm pretty sure that's the least of the yeah. charges that are probably going to be laid at her feet at the moment, okay? But yes. <gasps> Holy crap. <laughs> They've got a video you for assault. Shit. Oh my god. They've Lord. got a trespassing. They've got like oh my god. Uh I told him to go shoot up the shit. And then he actually went over there and sh actual shit was shot up and someone died and there was guns involved and then like after people got shot I deleted that text because it looked bad. Holy Crap. Look, at least she's actually for once being honest on the stand, even if she's not doing it purposefully. Yeah. Wow. Um.
that looks really bad. <laughs> yep. I mean, just, just, <laughs> just really bad. At this point, would the result of the like would be? Do you think there's enough of a break in the chain of causality, or do you think that she could potentially be charged with conspiracy for attempted murder? I think they'd have problems showing that there was a substantial step taken towards the actual attempt to murder the defendant. Okay, hang on. So, okay, well, let's go negligent homicide then, because it's a death as a result of a commission of a further act. She... Okay, like a felony murder kind of thing. <sighs> yeah. She sent them over there. This is just me talking right straight out of my ass. I, I think it would be difficult because she only told her brother. Her brother was the one that called the other people. Oh, okay. He, the, these guys magically appeared. She didn't call them over and he doesn't know how they got there. So they just magically like were summoned by the powers that be. I don't know. But I mean, she was still physically present as well. It's... Mm, I... I I think you could you could take a crack at her. I don't know that you'd be able to necessarily reach the lo the bar, but if you found a scummy enough um, prosecutor, <clears throat> gravely, <clears throat> the, you might at least get a case. You can take a crack at her. She probably mm. has a very very large one. Mandy says it's not racism; it's just pattern recognition. I can't remember what that was about because it was an hour ago, but thank you, Mandy. And I'm sorry it took me an hour to get to your super chat. Um, Pretty sure that was about me using the word asks, acts instead of ask. People it was, it was right. It was right around there, but I don't think it was whatever we were talking about directly before that, if memory serves me correctly, but okay. thank you, Mandy. You're awesome. And we love you. <sighs> Let's get back to this happened and then i said that message and were you upfront with the fact that you had deleted messages when asked yeah i told her you told the detective on the case yeah and um when were you asked to turn over your phone um whenever they asked me they asked me to turn it over and i said um they asked me to turn it over and i said um i think next day i turned it over right. i'm not sure the exact day it was a while ago it wasn't a situation where you're asked for the phone and 10 days later you're turning it over. No, when they asked me for the phone, I gave them the phone. It was just a matter of getting to them because I lived far at the time. Did you ask a friend to take it for you to the yeah. department? Yeah, so since I couldn't make it over there, I asked my friend to bring it. I gave it to her and she brought it to the um, detective. And did your friend live closer to where the detectives were? Correct. Um, yes, Dragon Church, that is COVID blast. downloaded and to be searched through? Yes. And they didn't have to obtain a search warrant to get into it? No. She asked me for my phone. I gave her my phone. I just, I just left it at that. Now, on that phone were several text threads with different people in Mr. Rudolph's family. Do you recall that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to be approaching the witness with um, states 18, identified as um, Dominique and Daryl's text messages, Judge. I believe that's without objection. All right. State 18. Yes. No objection. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, states 19, text messages between Dominique and Tereni. Thank you. And states 21, messages. We haven't heard that Dominique yet, I don't think. Okay. It may be, may be coming, but I don't think we've heard that exactly. Permission judge to approach? I did, I did. Thank you. If that's legit, yeah. that may change my opinion on what she could be charged with, though. Wait, these are like this is like exactly the same person. Okay. What is so it? So I'm handing you the first item, states 21. Um, could you identify whether or not that's a message between yourself and Travis Rudolph's mom, Miss Linda Rudolph? Um, this is Miss Linda. Okay. And to the best of your recollection, is that the communication that you had on the date of this incident? Correct. Okay. That was captured, of course, in text message. All right. This is not a call log. No, this is still the yeah, state. So I call. I think I spoke to her first prior to this. Okay, so you called Miss Linda and then these messages. Well, they both have like exactly the same hairstyle. They're both wearing black suits. Uh, anyway. Is correct. Okay, and that's an accurate reflection as far as you can recall of the interaction that you two had via text message. Correct. Okay, thank you. Then the next set of messages identified as states uh, 19. Could you identify oh, who you're you communicating with in that text thread? I don't know. 
Tyrannus. Hey, I'm more impressed you were able to hear me through that too. Is that a yes? <laughs> okay, and did you also call Tyranny on the day of this incident um, mm -hmm. to try to talk to her about what had happened between you and Mr. Rudolph? And are these text messages a result of what happened after that telephone call? Um, correct. So we spoke first. Correct. And then she sent me this first blue text message. And I just said, love, I don't have to say much. Okay. And I said, call my mom if you want to talk about anything else. All right. And does the conversation flow back and forth between the two of you? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? yes? Okay. And that accurately, as far as you can recall, captures a text message conversation between you and Mr. Rudolph's sister. Correct. All right, oh, thank you. Excellent. And finally, if you could identify who you're finally. communicating with in this series of text messages. This is DJ. And DJ again is Mr. Rudolph's brother, Daryl. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. And again, um, are these communications that you're having with Mr. Daryl Rudolph on the day of this incident? Yes. And um, to the best of your recollection, does this accurately reflect those communications between the two of you via text message? Right. All right, thank you again. And permission to publish, Judge? You may. Well. I will publish each. Uh, it's three exhibits. They're not very lengthy. All right, very well. That's what she said. Let me start first with um, States 21. And Ms. Jones, there appears to only be two mess messages in your communications with Ms. Linda Rudolph that day. Um, is blue you or um, green you? Green is me. Okay, so then blue would be Ms. Uh, Rudolph. Correct. All right, and you're hearing from her, I don't know what up with you and Travis. I'm not home. I have not raised him to disrespect any woman. I love you like my own daughter. If he not doing right by you, moved on. I talk with him when I get home. You both are grown. I let you calm down and talk later with you. Do you recall receiving that message? Correct. Did you call Miss Rudolph and threaten her? No, I would never do that. I never threatened her. <clears throat> and so this communication was you telling her about what had happened between you over the phone and she responding this way? Correct. Okay. And then your response, he picked the wrong one. That's all I'm going to say. Or yeah. I'm going to say. What did you mean by that? I just meant in the entire situation of him cheating and things like that, like, I'm not the girl that's going to go for it. Like, you mean like cheating on your yeah. fucking husband, you okay. coward? I, I would never threaten her. She was like a mom to me, literally, as you can you see. You never in cheat, right? Is that, that what you're saying? You would never disrespect you're me. saying you would never cheat, miss? I'm married and didn't bother to tell my boyfriend for a year and a half. You wouldn't cheat? Is that... <sighs> Moving right along. 100%. Overly you respected her. Okay. Moving now to States 18, your communications... Actually, if I could go first to, yeah, let's do 18. Yeah, who are? That you identified as between you and Daryl Rudolph. Again, he Oh, and uh, just real quickly here to clear out some of these things that have been uh, building up. We have the Dragon Treasure has been a member for two months of the Clean and Sober crew. It says, can we all agree that no one in this entire thing didn't do nothing? <laughs> and... And speaking of the dragon's treasure, one of the most amazing tea manufacturing, well, tea, uh, what, what do we, what do we want to call it? Manufacturing, uh, tea proprietors on the internet, the dragon's treasure. You want to go to the dragon's treasure.com where you can find every month, 60 different teas, loose leaf, tea bagged, whatever, different sizes, different volumes. And as a matter of fact, if I wasn't drinking bourbon and, uh, and, and Coke at this point, I would be enjoying this right here. I would be enjoying this uh, candy apple dragon's treasure tea because it's amazingly delish. Like there's little chunks of apple in here. He, he, he blends by hand each and every single little package of tea that comes down the way. You want to go to the dragon's treasure for all of your tea needs. If you like the loose leaf, it's there. If you want someone to teabag it for you, it's there. Go there. The Legal Vice. The Legal Vices. That's me. Go to thedragonstreasure.com. Not, not slash. Just go to thedragonstreasure.com. Use code VICES and get 10% off your order of the Dragon's Treasure tea. And surprising thing is now he does coffee. Tea and coffee. He's gotten the coffee game. So the dragon's treasure, 
Go there for your tea and now your coffee needs. Use code VICES. Get 10% off. It's a win, win, win. He gets a sale. You get 10% off. I get a 5% kick, kickback, which lets me buy more tea from the dragonstreasure.com. And he says, use code VICES because U.S. Customs stole over $2,500 from me last week. Customs, you suck. All right, so that's a that's like the the the, the dragon's treasure grift. It's amazing tea, and like, like, even people like Steph, the alter nerd, she said she 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 adamantly professed she didn't like tea. Then she ordered some dragon's treasure tea. Not only did she like dragon's treasure tea, she started an entire weekend show specifically dealing with tea, uh, drinking her tea from her teacup. Dragon's treasure tea. You'll love it. If you have any interest in tea whatsoever, if you want to take a little break from coffee, whatnot, whatever, just get the Dragon's Treasure tea. If you like coffee, get your coffee from Dragon's Treasure, because why not? The dragonstreasure.com. Use code VICES. It's you 10% off. With that, let's get back to our regularly scheduled program. And enough about the Dragon's Treasure teabagging. Here, can you identify whether or not you are green or blue? I am green. All right. So the first message is green and... It appears you say, listen, love, you don't want problem. Get your sister, TF, what does that mean? The fuck. The fuck. Um, <laughs> off my phone. You dead ass don't want problems with me. What is LMAO? Laughing my ass off. On my dead ass grandma, no, I really awesome. don't shake anyway. some shit. Stop it. Yeah. What is going on there? I'm frustrated. I'm mad. Tyranny's threatening me. Talking about my brothers are going to get killed. Like, I'm just frustrated and I'm upset and I'm mad. So I'm saying I stop. You can see, like, I just stop texting because I'm like just trying to calm down from the whole situation. Even that's the same reason why I stopped texting his mom because I'm not trying, like, we're family. You know what I mean? Family go through things. Like, I'm looking at it in that aspect. So, like, yeah, sometimes you say things that you really don't mean and you don't mean it in that context. But, like, at this point, I'm just really, really frustrated about everything that has happened and occurred. So then you get a response from Daryl. Damn that shit. This DJ. Is that what you called him? Yeah, DJ. Okay. Call my phone, Dominique. Um, was that an encouragement to call you instead of texting? Correct. Um, and then the next message, I tried to stop y'all, Dominique. Why you ain't tell them the truth? Um, them N-words that ass wrong for pulling up at my mama crib trying to jump my little bro. Oh, Jesus bro. Christ. Can someone please translate this for me? I have no idea what the fuck they just said. I'm far too Caucasian for this conversation. What is going on here? I believe that the brother sent her a message saying that it was bullshit that the guys showed up to try and jump the defendant. Well, now she just said that tyranny was threatening her. Up to this point, I have believed that tyranny was her sister. What? No, no, no. The sister is the defendant's sister. She was messaging tyranny. the defendant's sister. Tyranny is the defendant's sister. No. Tyranny is the chick that's on the stand, isn't she? Yeah. But she, yeah, yeah. No, no. That, that, this, no that, that, her name isn't Tyranny. Oh. Her sister is Tyranny. I don't know what the hell's going on. Well, I know that they're talking about um, Travis's sister at the moment because she messaged the mum and his sister, th supposedly threatening both of them. When the abonics are so bad, the Australian has to translate for the American. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Well, tyranny, tyranny is the defendant's, defendant's sister. sister. Yeah, where'd that okay. go? Yeah, yeah. I lived in Detroit area too long. I understand. Okay. All right. So tyranny is the defendant's sister. Up to this point, I believed tyranny was her Please. sister. All right. Got it. This is so confusing. Do I want cheese sticks? Of course you do. That was a dumb question. Okay. Of course you want to. Why wouldn't you want cheese sticks? Idiot. I don't know. All right. All right. Let's go. Brother, I just want to emphasize jump. Okay. I don't need you. Jump. Jump. Everybody jump. Jump. There wasn't a question. Was there a question? I haven't asked one yet. Yeah. All right. So ask a question. So <laughs> Overruled. Go ahead. Start. So um, was that a response that you received from DJ? Right. Okay. And then he keeps uh, sending messages. Is that correct? Right. I tried to, I'm um, oh, sorry, I already read that one. So then the next one was my mama crib. Mm -hmm. And did you get the impression from these messages that Daryl was upset about the fact that any altercation had happened at Mrs. Rudolph's residence? Um, I got the impression that he understood what was going on from those messages you just read. 
All right. Don't then the next set of Julia. messages also from Daryl Rudolph. Is that correct? Correct. Um, the I don't know oh, who them N words is and what the um, talk you and Travis got going on, but I don't like how you got them N words to disrespect my mama crib. Mm -hmm. Is that what does that mean to you, my mama crib? Is he talking about the residence? The residency that they all live in. And From mother's and place of message, residence. Dominique on some real N shit. Uh, forget what the fuck you and Travis got going on. I understand, but them N words, I swear on my life, they disrespected my mama crib. Uh, fuck this shit. Mm -hmm. And again, what are you understanding from these messages? Say, I'm it's a communication, Judge. Sorry. It's a communication. It's what this witness is understanding from the communications. Overruled. Here you go. Boom! She convinced the judge that she needed it. Well, that's right. She can that's say what, how she thinking. interpreted the message that he sent to her. So yeah. That's what I asked, Judge. And that's what I was going to answer. Overruled. Go ahead. So how did you interpret this message? Um, I basically interpreted, basically, he was just saying, like, um, my brother came now I'm starting to understand who all came there because he's saying more than one person so I'm interpreting that more than one person had came to the Rudolph residence now at this point to your knowledge had a shooting occurred did you know that not at all no I, I did not know a shooting occurred I'm going to be 100% so honest with you I even called Daryl when I went, was at the hospital because I'm not thinking that Travis shot them so at 12.42 a.m. on the morning of April 7, 2021, when this message is coming to you from Daryl Rudolph, you were unaware of the fact that Sebastian had been shot, Tyler had been shot, any of that at all? Completely, because in the previous messages, I jumped. So I'm thinking maybe they got into a scruffle or whatever, but I'm not thinking anything with like gun violence happened at all. So just to be clear, what is a scruffle? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they got into an argument. Maybe I, I, I literally did not know, but I knew I sent him over there to talk and I know how calm. Keyshawn is so I wasn't really a scruffle sounds like a pile on by furries bringing all these niggas over I started thinking like what's going on okay, Holy so, uh, shit. okay so what's going on that's when I start trying to understand the messages a little bit more were you surprised that your brother went with his friends they're always together so it wasn't a shock that he went with other it wasn't a shock it wasn't like a old gang of thing trying to no not at all they're always together like they're always at the house together they go places together so no all right, so at some point you uh, write back to Mr. Daryl Rudolph to stop writing me. I don't know what you're talking about. Please leave me alone. What? What's this? I didn't know what he was talking about. I'm confused. I don't know there's a shooting. I don't know that they got into a fist fight. I, I know how my brother is. He did not bring no gun. I'm not thinking that Travis is going to shoot a gun at him. So at this point, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm like, there's no point for us to argue. The only thing for us to do right now is both calm down and keep it like that. All right. So you get another response from Daryl Rudolph. Is that correct? Yes. And that's, no, nah, fuck that shit, bro. I saw you as a sister. Them N-words came to my mama crib where I lay my head trying to jump my little bro in front of my mama. Fuck that shit. Mm -hmm. um, question. What does jump my little bro mean? I guess fist fight. Is that a slang? Jump is, is a term used as fighting. Okay. Jump is attack from behind in a disrespectful and manner and dishonorable saying. manner. Correct. Um, did Daryl also send another message? I would have done the same for my sister, but the way that situation was handled was wrong as fuck. And no, it them n words about my mama. And to it, it's a wrap. What What did you take that to me? I'm not really. I'm going to be so honest. I'm not really knowing what's going on. I'm reading these messages. Anytime while someone says I'm going to be so I'm honest, here, means like, they're not. Yeah. I'm just trying to start putting. I'm on the phone with my friends, so I'm trying to start putting two and two together. I'm reading her the messages. I'm like. He's saying all this stuff. Daryl keeps texting me, things like that. I'm really not understanding until I get the message that Tyler's in the hospital. That's when things start clicking, clicking for me a little bit. Now, what is Mr. Rudolph Daryl referring to here as I would have done the same for my sister? When, no, when, illegal layman. We because he's seen how he tried to slam me on the ground twice and he was trying to stop him. So he's basically saying he would do the exact same thing that have some go see about the situation for his sister like anybody would. So you respond to Daryl Rudolph, is that correct? Yes. You say, DJ, stop writing me. Nothing needs to be said between us anymore. I will never talk to y'all again. Before I got to my car, Travis slammed me twice, knowing I had just had surgery. I sat in his room and said to him, let me clear it before I ever put my hands on him. And you wasn't there at that point. My brothers are always, in capital letters, going to come see about me, same way you would for tyranny. At that point, it's out of my control. What are you saying here? I'm saying that my brothers are going to come and they're going to see about the situation. That does not mean nothing physical. That does not mean anything violent. But the situation is going to be spoken about because I am his sister. Now, were you also comparing that to the relationship that the Rudolph brothers had with their sister? They've had plenty of disputes and they do the same thing. So let me just pause you there. Okay. 
Sure. You can approach. Feel free to stand up and stretch, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm going to stand up and go away, so Ozzy can grift while they're being quiet. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, guys, you know me. If you don't, fuck you. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, law, news, and laughter, guys. Pretty much every day, sometime between 3 and 5, depends what time I wake up, because it's like 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. for me. Uh, I'm going to be finishing off the uh, Family Feud murder trial, which is going to, which is interesting. A um, little bit of a different one, you know, guy goes on a game show, says that the worst thing he ever did was say I do to his wife at their wedding. They go through a very messy pre-divorce and all of a sudden she winds up with 14 bullets in her, in her, in their home. So it's interesting and it has good audio as well. So it's a, it's a nice short, sharp one as well, because the videos that we've been watching are cut down by the news channel. And um, so we don't have to worry about all the, like, all of this crap, basically. So, but, you know, keep an eye out. I may or may not get to one tomorrow morning, not going to lie, given that it is already 10 p.m. And from the sounds of it, we're going to be going for a while. Anyway, Are you going to join me for the second stream? Wasn't sure if you'd want me or not, but uh, I'll, I will certainly I say... I want you to want me. I need you to need me. Going on I... like 80s. <laughs> Went all 1980s on your ass. Are you Fell asleep devices and then transferred to Aussie. I doubt that happened. Um, <laughs> actually, it might have been the might have been the opposite way around, Raven, because um, I did the first like the first morning of the Family Feud, feud trial, going into your trial, the start of this stream, basically this morning, and um, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Kiranos says Vice is as drunk as hell. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just having fun. We're we're hitting our stride here. I'm we're building up to the cross examination of this woman. I'm the cross -examination that's what I'm, funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm building. We're building up to the cross examination. Love some cheap tricks, says McLeod54. Looking at you, awesome. So what was that cheap trick? Be, oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Are you gonna be uh, joining us for the second stream, Ozzy? I will certainly join you at least until my eyes start dropping out of my head. But given that I've got a calzone on the way, you've got me at least for another half hour, 20 hour. Well, that's uh, about another half hour is all we got till second stream. So about okay. 20, well, 20, 25 minutes of second stream. And then, like I said, we're going to shut this down. After the end of today, we're going to uh, try to feed everybody over into the new stream. And while it's all cycling through, we're going to take about a three or four minute break while I completely reboot my system. All righty. Um, while they're figuring their shiz out, uh, we have the dragon's treasure. Uh, no, we already did that one. So sorry, dragon treasure. You don't. You don't. You don't get a tuber. <laughs> uh, I guess we got everything. Uh, we're currently at five hundred and twenty-five concurrent viewers. You guys are awesome. You guys make me laugh and smile a lot because you're still here at five hundred twenty-six viewers now because someone else decided to join. 659 likes awesome that means we you know this we hit the 600 like mark which just seems to be what youtube likes take our like and subscribe poll while the judge is uh randomly talking to people it's uh because we started this like a long time ago but by a long time ago i mean about uh, halfway through the stream ago uh so it's like why haven't you hit the like and subscribe four percent of you have said shame on me here's my super chat there needs to be a lot more people super chat i'm just saying I'm not grifting for more super chats because I don't do that. I only grift on fuck it Fridays. And that's like three weeks from now. We'll we'll talk about that a bit later. Fuck it Friday will be the third Friday in June. First, like this next weekend, I'm busy. The second weekend, I have some major, major things coming up. I have a wine festival to go to on Saturday, my Saturday, which is your Friday in America. Uh, and it's like an all you can drink wine thing for this the New Zealand wine festival here in Busan. And then Sunday, Ooh. uh I, I have my friend's uh, three-year death anniversary stream. So it'll be the third week of of June that we'll be doing the Fuck It Friday. So, yeah, I don't grift for Super Chats, only on Fuck It Friday, but we still need more Super Chat. 15% uh, of you said I didn't hit the like and subscribe because I'm dumber than the witness. 17% <laughs> said, sorry, bro, I forgot, but I did it now. And 63% of you said I did, don't judge me. There we go. That's what we got out of the way. We're waiting for them to uh, plow through their nonsense over here. Let me see if we can actually do at least one little jump forward, one five-second jump. Boop. Nope, we can't even and do one five-second jump. 
<laughs> yep. All righty. That just made it worse because that's what you, I did. You, tr you tried to co-opt Lofrodati's boop and it didn't go well. It didn't. That's <laughs> me. Oh, there we go. Boop. There we go. I just did it again. Oh, no. We've made it twice as worse now. Um, anyway, just saying. Yeah, once this gets back to them, I will never. This is why we're going to reboot it. The, the the cash seems to be to be full and things are not going well. Jeff, will you ever do a DSP stream? See, this is one thing that like, well, well Hayden just kind of figured out who DSP was this morning, really. Um, I, I, well, I didn't even really. I mean, people keep saying that I'm winning in a look lookalike contest with the guy. And even. it's start, it's starting to make me think that I need to shave. Anyone? No, anyone that says that, just ban them immediately because they're fuckwits. Okay. Uh, see, I've been watching DSP for like 13 years. Right. Just like he's like a cockroach. Just keeps like, coming back. You can drop a nuclear weapon on him and he won't go away. Just when you right. think he's not going away, but like Panda, Panda's my girl. Like, you know, okay. he did Panda wrong, man. Panda, she she's she's got a special place in my heart forever for putting up with his shit for as long as she did. But she's doing quite well there in uh, Seattle, uh, mm -hmm. so good for her. But yeah, you, D DSP, he's just literally like a cockroach. No matter what you do, he will not go away. He'll always find a way to have some, you know, the the, the pay pigs and shit that uh, keep his channel alive. So you know, don't don't plan no, on him what's, going what's away. What's the actual point of his channel, him. though? I mean, does he actually provide any content, or is it just people laughing I, at him at this stage? Well, he just plays games. He's just he's just like, you know, watch me play games. And if you donate like $100, I put on a pair of sunglasses. Uh, he puts on a vest. He puts on a hat at certain things. And then he just bitches and, you know, yeah. And jerks yep. it on cam. Wait, is he the guy that jerked off and then went straight into a stream? Yeah. Yeah, that was oh him. Where, where he's like, oh, oh, the camera was on the whole time? Okay. And didn't even bother to wash his filthy hands. <laughs> Yes, that was DSP. Okay. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. I guess I'll just start throwing around a band hammer then. Um. <laughs> oh, come on, people. How much longer are we going to put in this sidebar? This is like a lengthy sidebar. All right. Looks like they've started back talking about there. All right. I've just skipped forward a little bit. Let's skip through like three minutes. Being there, it's an hour. It's about oh, no, time. I went too far. Ag biochemist, I'm concerned how you know about that. What was that? I'm concerned how AG Chemist knows about that. What What does he know about? Uh, apparently, DSP has a micro penis. A micro penis? Well, of course, he's DSP. I just assumed that was like a thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't expect anything else. And everyone's going to be calm, cool, collective because it's a whole hour in between from the fight. So the question was, what does pull up mean in that context? Okay, no, this is an actually an interesting question. So sorry to put, have you ever seen a trial where the defendant joins in the sidebar? They all have the right to be involved in the sidebar. Um, if you watch like some of the Florida trials we've, we've watched, uh, you'll see them like when they go to the sidebar, Fox. the the defendant will put on like headphones. And what the yep. headphones is doing is it's connecting them to the microphone of the judge so that the defendant can hear what their lawyer and the opposing lawyer and the judge are saying at sidebar. So, I mean, they have the right to, to hear what's going on. And that's a, that's the thing. So yeah, I've seen it before, but normally it's where they're sitting at the defendant's table, wearing their headphones, listening to what's being said at the sidebar. Uh, uh, not, for me, the I've main never time seen I've ever they... seen someone as a sidebar is if they're self-representing. Yeah. I mean, as far as like someone who has representation, I've never seen them actually stand up at the sidebar. Normally, they're wearing the deal. flux. Get back in here, bitch. Get in here. <laughs> you wake up. And get in here. Uh, all right. Let's keep going. Well, that means in that context to pull to the house. So to drive or come to the house. Correct. Right. Got it. Thank you. All right. At some point, do you also text Mr. Um, Rudolph uh, Daryl? Um, it says 2.27 a.m. So this is after the incident. Is that Correct. Right? You're going to jail, you killed someone? Yes. Did you mean that he personally was going to jail? Yes. All right. And then he responds, get the fuck off my phone. You sent them N-words over here to jump me at my house when my mother was here and I was trying to defuse the situation, whatever. Y'all got going on, don't bring that shit to my house. I didn't ever do a fuck thing to you, Dominique, or anybody. I've been in my room minding my business. The fuck you mean you kill, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. Is that the end of Anisarias? Yes. 
is that the end of your conversation with uh, Daryl that day? Correct. Okay. Um, no, I'm lying. I'm not lying, but no, that isn't the end of the conversation. I, before there's a part missing, I called them before I sent that text message. Okay. Because I still did not understand that Travis shot at my brother. So you're trying to put everything together and figure out why he's sending these messages? Exactly. So I'm at the hospital, right? I got a text message on Instagram from Tyler's older brother saying, do you know what hospital he's at? So I'm still not thinking that Travis or any of them did anything to him. I'm thinking something might have happened because Lake Park is a dangerous city. So I'm thinking something might have happened or anything like that. So I'm like, no, what hospital is he at? He's like, he got shot. He's at St. Mary's. So I flew to St. Mary's hospital and Tyler's mom was there and said, the, um, like they got shot at the car was shot up. Um, and then once I got there, um, they told me when Tyler went into surgery, he said, make sure Keyshawn's okay. So then I started putting, I called Daryl and I'm like, what, I was like, what happened? Like, what's going on? Like, I'm so confused. Like, did they get, did somebody try to shoot at them? Like, I'm still not even accusing them of shooting at them. So that's before this last message. That's before the last message where I said, you're going to jail, you killed somebody. So that's what you're saying. There's something missing, meaning that telephone conversation. Exactly. That telephone conversation obviously isn't there. So I called Daryl's number and I'm like, what's going on? Like, why? I'm I'm at the hospital. Where's Keyshawn? Like, I don't know where anyone is. And Travis is just in the background. Like, fuck that bitch. Hang up on that bitch. Like, I don't give a fuck. Sustain. Judge, it's a party opponent. Finally, a hearsay objection. All right. So at some point... Um, are you actually at St. Mary's? Yes. Okay. And do you eventually get Nicholas? By shut up or get back yes. in here. Um, did you also <laughs> love you, Nicholas. Sebastian had passed away. <laughs> yes, my little brother called me. He was crying. He said Sebastian passed away. At, at that point, were you having any conversations about the details of what had happened? Get back. Not in necessarily. Here, I, like he was trying to rush. Flux, the car was so here. shot up that he couldn't drive to the hospital. Yeah. Assumes facts, not inevitable. I'm just trying to explain. So just myself. without no. explaining. Okay. If just you answer know, without explaining yourself, shut up and whether answer. Whether or not you spoke to your brother about all the details that had happened at that point. No. Okay. So at some later point is when you had that conversation. Correct. All right. Um, I want to talk briefly about um, marriage. Okay. Have you ever Law been married? And marriage. Um, and was that to man. Mr. Rudolph? No. Was it to another man? Yes. Oh. Was Mr. Rudolph aware of your relationship with that other man? Correct. Not what? The marriage, but the, he was he wasn't knowledgeable about the marriage, but he was knowledgeable about what? Yes, he wasn't. But yes, what? The relationship. So she had supposedly told him that she was in another relationship, but not that she was married. So presumably See, to him, the they weren't way. exclusive. I took that to be her saying, I told him I was married, but not in a relationship. Uh, I know that I'm going to regret this, but I'm going to go back 10 seconds. See, to me, what? this sounds like she said to him, and this, this sort of, this this is really the pot calling the kettle black man and having double standards, because Raise if it. she's told him she's in a relationship with somebody else, but they're not exclusive, and that's why she's still dating him, then she shouldn't be calling him out for supposedly cheating or anything like that, because they're not in a, a, a committed monogamous relationship. Before we go back 10 seconds, uh, no, again, no, I'm not. I know I just read that already. Uh, Jana Bell says, Jeff, have you ever seen a trial? Nope, I already did that one. Uh, Brad Best, banning people isn't okay. Support freedom. Is I haven't banned anybody. We only ban disgusting uh, porn bots throwing racist shit out. So uh, no, I, nobody I think that was in response banned. to me saying I'd get the ban hammer out of people comparing me to DSP. Ah, well, they deserve it. Either way, I generally don't ban people. There's been one person in, my in 12 months. There's been one person. No, two, and one of them I released. Flux, no excuses. Get in here. Do your morning stuff and get in here. Jeff just dropped a burger. He feels fine. Yeah, <laughs> I did. That burger was actually really good. That's the that's the first burger from Burger in New York here in Korea that I've had in like 10 years, and they really, really improved. That was awesome. All right, let's continue. Let's hear what she actually said. I backed it up 15 um, seconds. Yeah. Billy, no. I didn't ban. Well, uh, actually, he may have been banned here, but I had an altercation with him this morning. I just want to clarify: he's not banned. A glitter I just was said that banned I putting up here. With shit, and he didn't have to watch me, so he said bye. Yeah, glitter was banned here for something, and uh, didn't want to work it out, so he's still banned here. But you know, I don't like it. I don't want it to be that way, but that's the way he chooses to address it. But that's not what we're talking about. <clears throat> Um, and was that to Mr. Rudolph? No. Was it to another?
Okay, so she, that's where she says she wasn't married to Rudolph. She was married to another guy. Other man. Uh-huh. Yes. Was Mr. Rudolph aware of your relationship with that other man? Correct. Not the marriage, yes. but the, he was he wasn't knowledgeable about the marriage, but he was knowledgeable about the relationship. So, okay. as far as he's concerned, they're yeah. not in a monogamous relationship. Why the fuck does she think she can get away with beating his ass for supposedly cheating? If he knows that yep. she's in a relationship with someone else as well. I'm sorry, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. It's extra good for the goose because the goose pays the fucking bills! No, just kidding. Um... <laughs> isn't, hang on, isn't the goose the female? Yeah, never mind. That was, yeah. I'll just shut up. I'm gonna check out my calzone. I'll be back. All right, and I'll just, I'll just like learn the difference between goose and gander. Yeah, it's good for the gander because he pays the bills. No, anyway, I was just joking about that. So yeah, what she's saying is she was, and for those of you that uh, didn't catch this, like, what are we, like eight hours ago? She has been married to another dude the whole time. She was in a relationship with the defendant for a year and a half, never bothered to mention she was married to another dude, even though her and the defendant were talking about marriage, talking about children. They were having all these discussions, but she never once mentioned to him that she was already married. And now here she's saying she knew he she had a relationship with another guy, but he didn't know that she was married to the other guy. That's bad news. And we're just coming to the end of her direct testimony. Then we'll shut down this stream. We'll feed me over to the new stream and uh, do day two. Uh, And at the time you started the relationship with Mr. Rudolph, were you and your, I guess, husband at the time still living together as a married couple? No, we were separated. I was at his house every day, every single second of the day. And if I wasn't there, I was at my own home. So... So what happened between you and your husband? Had you been broken up? Yeah, we were legally separated. We're just separated. Right. So you weren't together in that relationship anymore. So this relationship with Mr. Rudolph was not, quote, cheating. No, I haven't spoken to him. And I haven't Wait, spoken what? to that man that I was married to until know. this incident happened. He reached out to me. All right. And at some point, you have become legally divorced. Yeah, I'm divorced. That was yeah. the plan from way. Yeah, you, you think he, he, he apparently he divorced her a couple of months after she told her brother to go murder someone, allegedly. <laughs> Apparently, he decided, okay, we're done. You're, you've, you're seeing someone else for a year and a half. Uh, you're, you're, you're involved in a criminal trial at this point, and all these bad shit is happening. So, yeah. Hey, back then. So before even Mr. Before Rudolph. even anything, it's just it personally wasn't my business to tell or to expose to anybody else. You know what I mean? And I felt like I didn't need to whatever happened in the past is the past and it, I don't need to bring that into new relationships. That's how I felt. It's not the past. It's the present. Mr. Rudolph by not telling him about the marriage that was now in shambles, essentially. No, there's, there's no deception. You can look up. It's, wait, 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 She's still married to the guy. She didn't tell him, but it's not deception because it's not because it's in the past. And by in the past, she means still married to the guy. But oh, it's not yeah, deception. It's shambles, so it's okay for her to lie to him and say that, that, that she's not married, or you know, lie by omission or whatever. Right. A marriage. There's no deception at all. Have you ever been asked by Mr. Rudolph directly about any marriage? Why the fuck would you ask someone if they're married to someone else if they're living with you? Essentially, you would yeah. just naturally assume they're not. Uh... Overruled. Had you been asked about being married to the gentleman that he knew you were in a relationship with before him? No, he no. I told him everything about the relationship, but no, I never told him I was married. clearly not that you were married. I told him everything about the relationship except the fact we were married. I think that's probably a big part of the conversation. All right, and you are clear. You and that gentleman were no longer in a romantic sexual relationship at all for two years. Way prior to me and Travis. One moment. There's more to marriage than sex, babe. I just hate to tell you that. Judge? You may have a moment. What the frick is going on here? Holy crap. 
Ooh, you can hear her clacking her nails like a little cockroach skittering. During your interaction the with Daryl Rudolph on the day of this incident, the text messages that we saw and your phone conversation, did he ever tell you about um, your brother or anyone else pulling guns on him? It's relevant hearsay, and it's not oh, hearsay. Relevant hearsay. It is hearsay, and um... there's no such thing as just relevant hearsay. It's hearsay, and that's why the judge said no. It is hearsay. And let's hear what else he has to say. You're going to have to uh, come up on this. I'll tell you what. Um, no, let's approach. I want to finish the direct examination. So before I let you go. The calzone's here, but I forgot the drink. Are you going to make him go back and bring in another one? Yes. Good for you. How long is it going to take him? Oh, I don't know, probably 20 minutes. Good. It's good for him. It builds character. <laughs> That's what I do. Oh. You have to go all the way back and bring the drink? Well, you should have brought it the first time. No, I'm not going to pay you more. Kiernoth bringing us our first super chat in like a bajillion years. And by a bajillion years, I mean almost two hours to be exact-ish. Uh, thank you so much for that. Two hours of no super chats. Bringing the two dollars. Jeff, I am so edged up for cross. Stop saying edge. That's weird. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, cross cr the cross examination is how we got involved in this. Flux sent me the cross examination link, and I watch it, and I'm like, okay, this is ridiculous. Uh, we're gonna have to watch this. Sorry, but Calzone, that's a bit DSP ish. That's actually funny. That's actually pretty funny. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, uh, because he he's always talks about how he's Italian. Oh, really? Yeah. That's funny, actually. I'm assuming he has a Kiwi Farms page. Would that be the fastest way for me to get up to that? Dude, no. That would be like the worst way for you to get. Because he, I believe DSP has the largest Kiwi Farms page. Ah. I mean, thousands and thousands of pages long. All right. I, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if Keffel's Chris Chan or DSP has the larger Damn. Wiki, okay. But I believe I believe DSP has the largest overall because there's so many sub pages and different pages. I believe DSP has the largest wiki, you know, the Kiwi Farms page. Uh anyway. Still upset. Um when? So that break in the conversation in the text messages where you're calling and asking what's going on, did he appear to still be upset as he's talking to you? Well, that's what I was trying to say previously when you guys had said hearsay, Travis was the main person talking. All right. I'm responding because right. Travis- oh, Stop, Ms. Jones. Oh. Um, just to answer the question, did he appear to oh, you well. to be upset? Travis, Zero wasn't talking. Travis was the one talking. No, different. Did Daryl say any words to you? It As was, you were asking him, what is going on? They're both yelling at the same time, but the person that I'm hearing is Travis. Okay. So if you could stop for me. You said they're both yelling. Is one of the persons, Daryl, that's yelling? Um, I can't really recall. Okay. Whom did you call? I called Daryl's phone because... Not the because, just who did you call? Daryl. And as you said, you call Daryl. There's yelling in the background. You identify Mr. Rudolph's voice. What about Daryl Rudolph? He's there. I just don't recall if he's upset, if he's angry. I, I think he is angry saying like, oh, you had them pull up to my mama house. And like, they were saying something like that dreadhead nigga, like stuff like that. <laughs> what, what, what? Just so what? we're clear, did you delete any messages between you and Daryl Rudolph that had anything to do with any firearms? No. Did you ever receive any messages from Daryl Rudolph as he was angrily sending you those texts about a firearm? No. Um, the messages with tyranny, um, those are already in evidence. We did not go through them, but were those also angry messages? Yes. And what was the substance of the messages? Anyone pull up to her um, mom's house is going to die. Okay. And did you interpret that as a threat? I interpret it as a threat, but I feel like people say things when they're angry, so I didn't take it literal. So you did not think your brother was going to die if he went over? No, I didn't. Like, I, she just invited him to the wedding. I'm thinking it's just, I don't know. I didn't take that literal. Okay. One moment. You literally told him to go shoot his shit up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long day, so we're going to take a break for the night. Um, uh, I have to thank Judge Weiss on the record because she wants... All right, we're not going to go through all this shit, all this goodbye stuff that the judge does. Um, what's going to happen now? 
Thank you everybody for joining me for day one of this insane trial. We're going to go through Super Chat, then we're going to feed immediately into day two. We're gonna, It's a brand new stream, so everybody here should be automatically transferred over, but that never happens with YouTube. It seems that about one-third of you get sent where I direct you. One-third are kind of left here in the chat to figure out what the hell's going on, and about one-third of you are sent in random directions. Um, if you don't get transferred over automatically, there should be a little box that comes up at the top of chat that says, something's happening over on Legal Vice's channel. Click on that and see what's happening. Uh, click on that. If that doesn't show up, then just go back and go to Legal Vice's, my channel, and click on the new live button whenever that crops up. Because uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut this stream down. And then I'm going to reboot my system to clear all the cache and all this other stuff. Maybe help a little bit with the buffering. And that should bring us up new. So it'll be about two or three minutes before we get the, uh, the new stream up. Five at the outside. So bear with us. But before that, we got a couple super chats to get through here. Kiranath, uh, we got that so edged up. Uh, Marv White, two minutes of no super chats. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Marv White. It is deeply appreciated. Uh, Jeff should box DSP. Oh, I'd love to knock the shit out of him. That would be awesome. I would, I would love more than anything to box DSP. Then I could die a happy, happy man. Uh, Bella Stella just got off work. Thanks for the entertainment. Now I can continue watching in peace. Yes, we're going to do our new stream. Uh, Ozzy Overlord should join us there. Flux allegedly will join us there as soon as she gets done. Uh, Stingy, Stingy has just sent an amazing picture of an amazing burger and onion rings. I wish I had onion rings. Onion rings are the shit. All right. Uh, we're going to shut this down here now as we go over and again. We should be automatically sent over. If not, you get get back there one way or the other. Uh, Flux, I have sent it to you. It's in uh, Twitter. You have been tweeted it. And with that... Thank you for day one, people. Thank you for being here and joining us for that. Mods, thank you for being here for however long you were here during our nine-hour and 24-minute stream. And thank you for all your generosity in the Super Chats. Everything gets reset on the reboot. We'll see you back here in a matter of minutes. Go over there, automatically shift you over, and wait for me to arrive. Uh, mods and everybody else that gets automatically sent over. Let everybody know I'm rebooting the system and I'll be there as soon as possible. We'll see Flux there. We'll see Ozzy Overlord over there. And we'll start this again with day two, the cross-examination of Crazy Psycho Girlfriend. Until then, see you in a couple of minutes. I am Legal Vices. This is Legal Vices. Subscribe to Hayden, Ozzy Overlord. Like everything he's done. Look at Strawberry sleeping over there in the corner. And uh, we'll see you in just a bit. But if you somehow get sidetracked and you lose your way in life, don't forget to enjoy your legal vices. Lorax saying, peace out. <laughs>